Mickey. That sound's making too much noise. The guards are sure to hear us on these bars. Bite your tongue, bite your tongue, Bennett. We've been looking so far. What happens if they catch us trying to cut our way into the corridor? It'll be a long time before either of us see the outside of these prison walls. That's what happens. I don't care to see them if we can't do this, Blackie. Well, I... shh. The guard's coming. Duck down. I'm already down. <sighs> Whew. That was almost the end of that. Could it be... Maybe we'd better not go through with this. It's too late now, Brennan. Besides, this is something I have to take care of personally. Got to be black. If things go wrong, you'll never get out of that uniform you're wearing. You'll be number 6859437 for the next ten years. Oh, I don't know. If I'm a good boy, they might give me a different number just to break the monotony. Uh, there, we did it. That's three bars sawed through. I think I can crawl through the window now. Thanks for the help, Brennan. I'm the one who should be thanking you. Well, don't thank me yet. I haven't done anything so far. But you think you can do it, don't you? Well, so far, I've done everything I said I would. I don't... Here goes. And I'll bet this is the first time on record anyone ever broke into a state penitentiary. <laughs> And now, back to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. Now, wait a minute. All right. Attention. Attention. My attention to the exercise yard. All men of cell blocks five and six, roll call for breakfast in five minutes. Five minutes. Gee, some nerve they got telling us an exercise yard. Who's exercising? That Kevin? I don't know. All I know is it ain't us. You see him around anywhere? No. No, I'll let you know when I do. I promised you, didn't I? Well, this is the day. The day I got to take care of that rat. That's what I promised myself. And nobody's going to stop me. Oh, I wouldn't say nobody, Kevin, huh? unless you call me a nobody. Boston Blackie. And in prison. Well, what do you know? Hi, Kevin. Who's your friend? His friend is me. The name's Joe. What's it to you, Blackie? Don't make me answer that. So the great Boston Blackie finally wound up in stir. Well, what do you know? Beat it, Blackie. Sorry, Kevin. I went to too much trouble getting in here. Relax. We've got talk to make, you and I. Wrong boy, Blackie. Me and the friend Joe are talking to each other, and we kind of like it that way. I'd keep moving if I was you, Blackie. You heard what Kevin said. Don't get tough with me, Joe. I don't like it. Uh, in fact, I don't like you. So walk away somewhere. In fact, don't walk, run. Go away. I want to talk to Kevin. Blackie, I wouldn't talk to you if we were the only two cons inside these walls. Now get out of my sight before Maddie Ennis finds you here. Hey, Kevin, what's Maddie Ennis want with this guy? Only his heart, Joe. If any two guys in this world hate each other, it's Maddie Ennis and Boston Blackie. Only maybe I'm in there, too. I hate them both as much as they hate each other. Listen, Kevin. Ennis is just a guy that I want to talk to you about. Talk to me about rat poison. I'd like it better. And you keep out of my sight or up. Uh oh, the alarm. Some fool trying to make a break for it, the jerk. Something big, all right. Hey, <laughs> some nerve they got. What for? Something screwy somewhere. That's all I know. I'm going to say something. Can you make out what it is? No, but they're passing the word down this way. Hey, fella. Hey, what's up, boy? Shut up. Listen. We'll find out what's happened. They found Maddie Ennis murdered in his cell. 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 They Look, Warden Ross, if you'll just get hold of Inspector Faraday of the Homicide Squad, he'll identify we me. We have a call in to Faraday already, Blackie. That's what your name is. You'll just have to wait. But it might help if you told us what you're doing here in prison uniform. I can't tell you that, Warden Ross, but believe me, I didn't break into prison to kill Matty Ennis. And I have a permit for the gun that you found on me. You don't have a permit to break into this penitentiary, Blackie. What did you do it for and how? Suppose we settle for the how. I got over the wall and sawed my way into the corridor in cell block five. Where were we all night? Not in the car, though. No, I hid in the washroom. I knew I'd be safe there because all the prisoners had been checked into their cells for the night. You're still luckier than smart, Blackie. I've heard about the crazy things you've done, but I want you to know that this is the... Huh. Maybe this is your friend Faraday. I hope so. I want to get out of here. There's no point in my being here now. Hello? Hello, Warden Ross. This is Faraday, homicide. I got your message. What's the matter? Well, first of all, a man broke into this prison last night. <laughs> I guess we have a bad connection, Warden. I thought you said broke in. I did say break in. He... Or broke in. Connection's good. It's the situation that's bad. 
Somebody broke into Langley Penitentiary? Yes. Last night and wasn't caught till this morning in an emergency checkup of prisoners. Well, there's only one man who would try such a wacky thing and get away with it. Boston Blackie. Well, that's exactly who this fellow claims he is. Would you know his voice if you heard it over the phone? Yes. Put well, him just, on. Just a minute. Hey, Blackie, he wants to talk to you. Thanks. Hello, Faraday, old pal. Well, that's How... enough. Put the warden back on. He wants to talk to you, warden. Okay. Well, Inspector, is it Boston Blackie? Yes, it's Blackie, all right. What do you want to do with him? Get rid of him. I have enough trouble on my hands as it is. Okay, let him go. He's all right. Only, don't tell him I told you so. Tell Faraday I can hear him. It'll spoil his day. I'll Inspector... spoil that guy's face one of these days. What's this about other trouble, warden? A convict was found murdered in his cell this morning. That's so. Anybody I knew? You might remember him. It was Matty Ennis. Matty Ennis? Yes. And Blackie broke into prison last night? Don't let Blackie go. Don't let him go? Why not? Why not? Because Boston Blackie promised he'd get Matty Ennis one of these days. That's why not. And it looks like, as usual, Blackie's kept his word. Now, uh, this way, Blackie. Saying you're a special prisoner, I guess there's no time limit to you in the visitor's room. Only, uh, don't break out, will you? That's new wire we just put up. <laughs> okay, God, I'll remember that. <laughs> Who's the wants to see me? Oh, some girl. You didn't say that right. If it's a girl, it's uh, Mary Wesley, and she's some girl. I got to look at it. You're not kidding. <laughs> uh, you can say anything you like, Blackie, but uh, just don't invite her in. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> Hi, Mary. Blackie. Oh, Blackie, how did you get into this mess? Why, this isn't a mess I'm in. It's penitentiary. Oh. Why well, do you like me in this number? Or do you think I'd uh, look better in a snappy 547925 instead of this English drape 5735210? Oh, now, Blackie, don't try to be funny. <laughs> Gee, I heard you broke into this place. Now, why did you do anything like that? Well, I'll tell you a secret. Uh, promise not to tell it to any member of the police force or your ladies club. You know I won't tell anyone. Well, in that case... What's the use of bragging? Oh, Blackie. I'm sorry. I'll tell you why. Do you know who Johnny Brennan is? Yeah. He owns that restaurant we go to on Ralph Avenue. That's right. Well, his son Kevin is serving five years for being mixed up with a gang of young West Side hoodlums. And now he's in a worse jam than ever and doesn't know it. Well, he couldn't be in more trouble than he is right now. He is, though. His father found out through the underworld grapevine that Kevin was going to be framed for the murder of Matty Ennis. Matty Ennis? Well, he was found dead right here in prison this morning. I heard it on the radio. But, gee, I, I, I didn't hear them mention Kevin Brennan. No, but they'll mention him soon. Young Brennan and Ennis had adjoining cells, and as soon as they find out Kevin hated Ennis, it's going to look bad for the kid. Well, why didn't Kevin's father write his son and tell him about the frame? No, Brennan tried to ward Kevin, but his son wouldn't see him. Brennan wrote letters, but Kevin returned them unopened. So Mr. Brennan asked you to see his son. Mm -hmm. And Kevin wouldn't talk to you either. I got here a little late. And don't say we should have gone to the police about the frame, because after that, if Ennis was murdered, that would have made Kevin the number one suspect. But, Blackie, you're still in jail. Oh, but I'm a special prisoner, Mary. I even chose my own cell, the one Ennis was murdered in. Oh, fine. Well, if you see any ghosts, tell them goodbye for me. Hmm? It's what's next to the late Maddie Ennis' cell that interests me, Mary. What? Kevin Brennan has the next apartment. And I want to try to get some information out of him. Well, I should think you'd want to get out of here. That this place must be... must get you down. It does. But I'm not going to stay down until I turn Ennis Killer up. Hello? Brendan's restaurant. Uh, Mr. Brennan, this is Mary Wesley. Mary. Did you see Blackie up at the prison? Yes, and he tried to kid about it, but he's in trouble. And you've got to get him out of it. Now, look, you've got to go to Inspector Faraday with me and explain why Blackie broke into prison. Well, Miss Wesley, with any debt, I can't do that. But... If I say I ask Blackie to go and order to stop my son from being suspected of his murder, they, they throw the book at me, boy. I can't go. Blackie didn't say he couldn't go when you asked him to break into prison. Oh, but that was different. This could mean me boy's life. Or Blackie's. Well, I tell Faraday myself, but he won't believe me, and, and, and Blackie won't talk. Now, you've got to do it, Mr. Brennan. Please don't ask me to do that, Miss Wesley. It'd be like killing me own boy. I'll go to see Inspector Faraday with you if you want. But I can't tell him why I asked Blackie to go to penitentiary. Hey, Kevin. 
Kevin Brennan, I want to talk to you. Shut up, Mikey. I'm busy. Kevin, do you know how Matty Ennis was killed? He was stabbed. What about it? That means someone had to get close to him. Who could get closer to him than you? This cell I'm in is the one Ennis was in. It's the last in the row. You're the prisoner nearest to him. So what? I didn't kill him. Now, keep your talk in your own cell, will Listen, you? Listen, Kevin, I want to tell you something. You're, you're not... You to say shut up, didn't you, Blackie? Who's that? It's me, that's who. It's Joe, my cellmate. And we're having a nice, friendly little game of cards. So for the last time, shut up and let us alone, will you? Not a chance, kid. You're going to listen to now, me if it's a... Now, Blackie, I'll tell you something that will maybe make you shut up. Oh, the tough character again, huh? What do you know, Joe? You ain't funny, Blackie. The kid don't want you to talk to him, so don't. I'll start taking it personally. Know what I mean? I hope so. I'm still unhappy with myself for not taking a poke at you in the yard. Maybe I'll make myself glad about me tomorrow, though. Oh, tomorrow, huh? Well, you got a date, Blackie. You see, maybe the kid didn't like Maddie Ennis, but I did. He was my friend. I don't like guys who kill my friends, which is one more reason that I don't like you. Now, back to Boston Blackie. Because he is not on speaking terms with his father, and because he refuses even to read his father's letters, convict Kevin Brennan is unaware that he is to be framed for the murder of Matty Ennis, a fellow inmate of Langley Penitentiary. So Boston Blackie breaks into the jail to see Kevin, but before he can force young Brennan into conversation, Matty Ennis is murdered. Because Ennis and Blackie are sworn enemies, Inspector Faraday feels Blackie has something to do with the killing. And Blackie is held in the penitentiary, pending investigation. As we return to our story, Mary Wesley and John Brennan are in Inspector Faraday's office. Please, now, now Inspector Faraday, before you go up to the penitentiary, tell me that you know Blackie didn't kill Mr. Ennis. I don't know anything of the kind, Miss Wesley. Sorry, be Inspector. Why, why would Blackie kill Ennis? Why, Mr. Brennan? Because Blackie said he would someday. Well, now, Blackie says a lot of things that he doesn't mean. He meant this, Miss Wesley. Ennis was sent to jail for a $100,000 robbery in which two little girls were killed in the getaway. We couldn't pin a murder rap on Ennis, and Blackie said he'd take care of Ennis himself. Oh, but that was just an idle threat, Inspector. Blackie hasn't been idle a day in his life, Mr. Brennan. But I have more against him than that threat. Ennis swore he'd get him someday because Blackie broke that case. And I have an idea Ennis and Blackie met. Ennis went for Blackie. When Blackie broke into the prison, only Blackie, Blackie was too quick for him. Well, that would be murder in self-defense, Inspector Faraday. You can't... I know it. what it is, Miss Wesley. But it's still murder. You don't think I like to see Blackie in a jam, do you? Well, I... I hope not. But, but... he is in a jam, Miss Wesley. Why did he break into Langley Penitentiary if not to kill Ennis? That's what has to be answered before he has a chance to get out of this mess. Well, I could tell you why he did it. And I'm supposed to believe you? Sorry, Pete. Do you think Blackie broke into that jail to kill Ennis? He might have, Mr. Brennan. Ennis was caught after that robbery, but we never found the money. Maybe Blackie went after Ennis to force him to tell where he'd stashed the dough. Well, I remember the Ennis robbery, Inspector. Ennis had an accomplice who wasn't caught. You don't remember enough. (laughs) Ennis had an accomplice, all right, and he wasn't caught right after the robbery. But he was caught a little while ago. And according to the records I went over this afternoon, it looked as if he wanted to be picked up. Yeah, the clever Joe Atherton walked right into a trap. Joe Atherton? That was Matty Ennis' partner? Yes. Thought he'd be. Joe Atherton is Miss Owen's said, Miss. So what? Nothing. Well, no wonder Kevin has turned against me so. What do you mean, turned against you? I have his last letter written several months ago, telling me not to bother writing to him anymore. Huh? He had a friend, Joe Atherton, who was going to show him the right way to make good. He didn't want to be bothered with any more of my preaching. That's typical of all youngsters who get in with hardened criminals, Mr. Brennan. It, uh, it may not be too late to straighten your son out. I'll see if I can have him moved away from Atherton. And, and will you see if you can have Blackie moved out of the penitentiary, Inspector Faraday? Getting out of jail is strictly up to Blackie, Miss Wesley. Well, when I get there, he's got to tell me what he was up to when he broke into jail. That is, if he hasn't broken out by now. <laughs> Inspector, you have no idea how cute you look behind that chicken wire. Just like a setting hen. You're going to be looking at me through bars if you don't start talking, Blackie. Listen to the setting hen cluck. Blackie, you going to tell me why you broke in here, aren't you? Uh, I read any good books lately, Inspector. All right. Then you can stay in here till you're 95. Well, that's a relief. I thought my, you might have them keep me here for life. Uh, 
Look, Blanky, why did you kill Matty Ennis? Oh, Inspector, come now. Maybe I'm a bad boy, but I'm not that bad. You're plenty good. Good enough to break in here without getting caught. Good enough to find Ennis and try to force him to tell you where he stashed the 100000 he got in that robbery. Good enough to beat him to the punch when he tried to kill you. Will you be good enough to tell me what I'd want with that 100000 Uh, You're not the richest man in the world. No, but I wouldn't go to Ennis to find that money. If I wanted it, I'd try to find his accomplice who wasn't caught and beat it out of him. His accomplice is right here in this prison. Is he? Yes. And in a cell right next to where Ennis was killed. Kevin Brennan didn't work with Ennis. No, but Joe Atherton did. And Atherton and Brennan share the same cell. But I don't think that's news to you. I think you knew it. Keep your you... badge on, Inspector. Keep your badge on. How do you know Atherton and Ennis were partners in that robbery? Because we got a description of the accomplice who got away when we grabbed Ennis. And Atherton fits that description. He fits something else, too, Inspector. Go back to sleep and dream that the Ennis murder is solved. See me later, and I'll make that dream come true. Hey, Joe, you asleep? No, no, Kevin. What's the matter up there? Bugs in your bunk? No, I'm just thinking, that's all. Yeah, what about? Blackie. He went to an awful lot of trouble to get in here to talk to me. Maybe I should let him have his say. Yeah, what for? Because he's an all right guy. He did get to say something about Matty Ennis to me and about me getting into trouble because of him. I'm beginning to think You're beginning that... to go off your nut. I go to sleep. I did a lot of talking about hating Matty Ennis. Yeah, I know. I know, kid. But you want people to think you're a tough guy, don't you? I don't know now. That was your idea. And maybe I shouldn't listen to your ideas. One more crack like that, I'll pull you down out of that bunk of yours and slap you around. We'll try it and see what happens to you. Oh, you think you're real tough, huh? Hey, well, we'll see. I'll get you down hey, out of there. Cut it out, Paris. Oh. Hey. There you go, hey. kid. Let's see if you're up there. Hey. My turn, Paris. Hey. Hey. Oh, oh, yeah. the guard. Keep your mouth shut now, Kevin. Yeah. And you keep your mouth shut. Hey, listen hey. To me. what's going on in there, Brennan? You, Atherton. What are you up to now? Uh, nothing, 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 guard. Sounded to me like you two were fighting. Maybe you'd both like a little solitary, huh? No, we weren't fighting guard, just, uh, just swatting flies. Swatting flies? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah, yeah, just swatting flies. Sure, I was just trying to exterminate an insect. Hello, Warden. You sent for me? Yes, I did, Blackie. Come in, sit down. Thanks. That's one of the best things I do. Lucky you don't know that Ennis was stabbed with a spoon shaped into a crude knife. Probably by some convict who had access to an emery wheel in the machine shop. That sounds normal enough. After dinner yesterday, we checked the silverware the prisoners used. We do it after every meal. The spoon was missing. We searched, but couldn't find it. We know it was missing from the bench where young Brennan ate. But Joe Atherton uh, ate there too, didn't he? Yes, but there was bad blood between Ennis and Brennan. Atherton and Ennis got on pretty well. Blackie... Young Brennan worked in the machine shop. Didn't Atherton? You see, you keep overlooking one fact, Warden. And that is that Brennan's cellmate, Atherton, had the same opportunity to kill Ennis as the kid did. Exactly the same. Your point, of course, is that Atherton had no reason to kill Ennis, and Kevin did. Well, let's make believe that Atherton had no reason you know of. What are you getting at? Warden, would young Brennan be foolish enough to kill a man everyone knows he hated in a way that had to be traced to him? I doubt it. Look, can you arrange a baseball game between the convicts for tomorrow morning? Yes, of course, but why? You want to know what the score is, don't you? I guarantee I'll be able to tell you when Joe Atherton comes to bat. Your attention, all prisoners. Your attention. Okay, Warden Ross, okay. You men are allowed in the exercise yard today pending your best behavior. And I'm allowing this baseball game because I don't think it's fair for all of you to suffer for the actions of two or three. I think it's a good idea for us to take our minds off Matty Ennis for a little while. But you're to be allowed out here only as long as you behave yourself. All right. I'll umpire the first few innings. Let's play ball. Come on, the warden said play ball. Stop yapping out there on the mound and pitch to me. All right, let's go, men. Well, Blackie, I didn't know you were a catcher. I've thought more than baseballs in my time, Gordon Ross. 
I didn't know you were an umpire. I'm not. Who's going to argue with the warden? <laughs> I see what you mean. Come on, come on. Stop that rolling out there. Let's play ball. Come on, pitcher. Burn one in. You're too good for this guy. You're too good for him, pal. Send this it. is one you're not going to feel in that mini yours, Blackie. I'm going to slam this one over the wall. And don't you wish you could go over the wall after it? <laughs> you said Here it. Here comes the pitch, boy. You can't get it. You can't. Hey, you got it. Fair ball. Battle up. Get the next batter in there. Lucky hit, kid. Lucky hit. Just keep on in the middle of this old mid here. Burn it down and they'll never see it. Pitch it to me, boy. Pitch it to me. He's going never, to never reach you, Blackie, and a pass of the first one a mile. Well, look who's up. Joe Atherton. Suckers up, kid. Throw him a hook and he'll break his neck. I'll break yours. I get half a chance. Wouldn't surprise me at all, especially after what you did to Matty Ennis. Blackie, don't fool with me now. I'll... Hey, run. What do you mean? Nice pitching, kid. Nice going. The guy needs a paddle, not a bat. Now, one more in the same place, boy. The next one goes right in your head, Joe. It's try to beat your brains in. That's something that would be impossible for me to do to you. No brains. Boy, you are so... Sure what do you mean? See, Atherton? You turn back to look at me, and um, my boy puts another one right over. You put one over on Matty Ennis, too, didn't you? You killed him so you'd get the money he'd stashed away after you got out. Lucky after the game, I'm going to fix you. Shut up. Money. You're not going to do anything. Now, come on, kid. One more gets this sucker out here. Oh, a sucker, huh? Sure, you uh, You didn't think I knew that you were Ennis' partner in that hundred grand robbery, did you? Who told you? For oh, the Brennan kid, huh? I should have framed him better than that. Okay. Oh. Okay, Blackie, you talked me into striking out, but you know too much, and I'm going to... Not with that bat, John. Warden, look away. Blackie, you could have hit you with that bat. Sure, but I hit first. Warden Ross, this character killed Ennis here and was going to frame young Brennan for the murder. A baseball game is a swell spot to tag him, too. He had two strikes on him from the time I broke in here. Well, Inspector Faraday, are you satisfied we have Matty Ennis' killer? Uh, what I heard Atherton say to Blackie at home plate was enough to convince me. Yes, Warden Ross, Atherton's our man. Uh, you don't mind if I wait in this office of yours till my men get here to pick him up, do you? No, not at all. Well, you can wait here if you want to fire a day, but I'm leaving. I've had enough of this penitentiary to last me for a hundred years. <laughs> Blackie, I ought to send you here for a hundred years and a day. But not telling me why you broke into this place. Well, I couldn't tell you, Faraday. And if I did, you wouldn't have believed me. Besides, if I told you Kevin Brennan was going to be framed for killing Matty Ennis, what would you have done when Ennis was found dead? Well, I wouldn't have accused Kevin Brennan. Because I have to have proof before I accuse anybody of anything. Oh, is that so? You accused me of killing Ennis. Did you have proof? Well, no. But that was different. I can accuse you of anything. And be right most of the time. Pal, you're so far from ever being right, the fellas called you lefty. Yeah. You would have picked on young Brennan, all right. All right, so I would have arrested him and made a mistake. So he would have been released. I, I suppose you never made a mistake. I made a mistake not figuring out who had a motive to kill Ennis before breaking in here. If I'd known Ennis' accomplice was in prison, too, I could have saved myself a lot of trouble. I guess you think it's my fault for not telling you. I didn't even know you were working on the case. If I'd told you what I was going to do, you'd have worked on me. But I've had enough of this case and enough of this jail and too much of you. That's so. I'm getting out of here. It's all right for me to go now, isn't it, Warden Ross? Yeah. Yes, Blackie. There's nothing to keep you here now. <laughs> this Faraday here wants to prefer charges against you for breaking into jail. I can do that too, Blackie. Well, I could prefer charges. I know what you could prefer, Faraday, but I know you prefer not to have me in prison. Just how far would you get on your cases with your body in your office and your brains in jail?
Tucker. And is she pretty? Come on in, young lady. I'm bound for Little Ben, but I'll drop you anywhere you like. Thank you. You're very kind. My name is Blackie, Boston Blackie. I'm Florence Newton. Want to give me an idea of where you'd like to be dropped off? I want to go to the farm. Anyone in particular? My own farm. The one my father owns. Uh Uh-huh. I've been wading in the creek, and I hope he won't mind. Well, there isn't much to do out here in the country except go wading, is there? No, there isn't. What do you kids do for excitement? Saturday night dances, movies, that sort of thing? Yes. That sort of thing. You're, um... Not particularly talkative, are you? I guess I'm not. Good guessing. This is the farm right here. Would you please stop? Why, sure. Thank you very much. No trouble at all. You may have a little trouble with that door on your side. It sticks. Oh, wait right where you are, and I'll go around and open it for you. Thank you. Be there in a jiffy. Well, here we are, Inlet. Now, where did she go? Florence. Florence Newton. Hmm. That's funny. Maybe she went into the house. Guess I'd... I'd better find out. Yes? I imagine you must be Mr. Newton, is that right? Yes. I just drove your daughter to the door, and when I went to help her out of the car, she disappeared. I thought maybe she came in the house here. My daughter? What did she look like? Uh, Young. About 21, I'd say. Attractive. Brown hair, blue eyes. About so high. She'd been waiting in the creek, and I gave her a lift. Well, what's the matter? Isn't she here? No, she isn't. You described my daughter all right, but she was drowned in that creek you were talking about three years ago. And now back to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. Well, Thompson, I guess you close your case against Butch Heathers tomorrow morning, don't you? You're going to close it, Inspector Faraday, and get a conviction of murder, too. I've never been as sure of a case since I've been district attorney. No reason for you to doubt you'll get a conviction in this case. Boston Blackie's going to send Heathers to the chair for you. (laughs) I've never known you to be so sure of Blackie before, Inspector. I thought you two didn't even get along. Oh, we rib each other a lot, but we don't mean it. At least I don't. Uh I know I can depend on Blackie when I really need him. Well, I need him this time, Inspector. Blackie says he saw Heathers kill that man. If he repeats that statement in court, that's all I want. Sure it is. It's all you need. Blackie's word is reliable. When he says he sees something, he really sees it. Howdy, Blackie. Welcome to Little Ben. Uh, This is uh, Harry Oldfield. Pleasure, Blackie. How are you, Oldfield? Well, Sheriff, do you have those records on Butch Heathers ready for me? Sure do. So Butch went to the big city and got himself into real trouble, did he? He sure did. I want his local record to turn over to the D.A. I knew that boy was no good when I arrested him for stealing Clyde Ransom's shotgun five years ago. Well, here's all the dope on him as a local bad boy, Blackie. I made copies so you can have these. Thanks, Sheriff. Those records going to send Heathers to the chair, Blackie? These records plus what I saw, old Phil. And speaking of seeing things, Sheriff, I saw Florence Newton this morning. Flo Newton? Well, she's been dead three years. So her father told me. (laughs) Blackie, now don't you try to pull that old one on me. I've been hearing for years about people picking up ghosts in every town in this country. But I did pick up this girl, Sheriff. Uh, she said she was Florence Newton, and her father admitted the girl was his daughter when I described it to him. <laughs> Blackie, I'm afraid the country air has gone in your head. Better stay in the city where you don't see things. Look, now look, I don't believe in ghosts any more than you do. 
But that girl got in my car down by the creek, oh. rode up to the Newton farm with me, and then just disappeared. Well, Blackie, she acted like a ghost anyhow. <laughs> Believe me, Blackie, Flo Newton's been dead for over three years. All right, Sheriff, I believe you, but believe me, I picked up a girl in my car this morning, and she was Florence Newton. Well, it's possible, Blackie, but where did you get wings for your car? Huh? <laughs> okay, Larry, if you want to. When I see things, I see things, and I say I'm not getting anywhere with you. Thanks for the records on Butch Heathers, and so long. <laughs> Goodbye, Blackie, and, and, and say hello to Miss Newton on the way home. Huh? <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah. Oh, well, now, uh, how do you like that, Mr. Oldfield? Uh, Boston Blackie suddenly seen ghosts. Well, that's some <laughs> story, sir. If you think I could make anybody believe it. <coughs> well, you're a writing man, Mr. Oldfield. Your paper sent you up here to get a story on Butch Heathers, but I think you got a better one on Blackie and the ghost of Florence Newton. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good morning, Mary. Come on in. Mm, I certainly will. Blackie, have you seen the morning paper? No, I haven't. I was out of the city yesterday, and I didn't get back to town until early this morning. <laughs> I'll say you were out of the city, and out of your mind, too. Look at this newspaper. The whole town's laughing at you. What for? What if I... Uh-oh. Blackie, since when do you not only see a ghost, but tell the newspapers about it? I didn't tell the papers about it, Mary. We... Hey, wait a minute. That fellow Oldfield in the sheriff's office must have been a reporter. Oh, fine. Well, you phone that paper right away and get a retraction. Wait till Inspector Faraday reads this. He'll haunt you with it for years. Oh, I can't help that, Mary. I did see that girl. I talked to her. I had her in my car. I took her home. You I... fell asleep. You had a dream and talked out of turn to a reporter. Now, Mary, stop that. If the girl was a ghost, she was a ghost. But she was in my car, and now let's skip it. I have Butch Heathers to worry about today. I'm going to help make a ghost out of him. Oh, so you can keep seeing him for the rest of your life, too? Look, let's forget about the ghost of Florence Newton and worry about the trial of Butch Heathers. I thought no one was worried about it except Heathers. Well, you saw him kill that man, didn't you? Mm-hmm. And I have some reports on him from little Ben that should help cinch the case against him. You going to be in court? I wouldn't miss being there. You're the star witness for the state. Yes, and when I get in the witness chair, it's going to be another kind of a chair for Butch Heathers. <laughs> <coughs> Will Boston Blackie take the stand? Raise your right hand. <coughs> do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, sir, if you got? I do. I'll take the witness chair. Thank you. Proceed, Mr. District Attorney. Thank you, Your Honor. What's your name? Boston Blackie. Do you know Butch Heathers? Yes, I do. Could you point him out in this courtroom? Of course, there he is. In that end seat at the first table there, the man wearing the green shirt. Will you tell this courtroom where you saw Butch Heathers and what he was doing on the night of June 6th last? Well, <clears throat> well, I was walking through the alley behind the garage where I keep my car, and I saw Heathers approach a man known as Ellie Spry, pull out a gun, and pump three bullets into him. Yes. Then he ran. I chased him, but he got away. You say you definitely saw Butch Heathers kill Ellie Spry. That's right. That was definitely Butch Heathers. Thank you, Blackie. Your witness, Mr. Walters. Thank you, Mr. District Attorney. Blackie, you say you saw Butch Heathers kill Ellie Spry. Yes, I did. You saw the murder committed with your own eyes? With my own eyes. Those same eyes that yesterday morning saw the ghost of a girl who'd been dead and buried for over three years? Well... Harder! Harder in the court! You did see a ghost on the road to Little Ben yesterday morning, didn't you? I... I saw a girl. You claim you saw Florence Newton, Blackie. The description was perfect. But Florence Newton is dead. Isn't she? Oh, yes, so I understand. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you have just heard this man frankly and openly admit that he saw a ghost. 
Now, we all know there are no such things as ghosts, except in fairy stories, and in the minds of people with overdeveloped imaginations. <laughs> Order! Order in the court! There will be no outburst. Blackie, Inspector Faraday of the Homicide Department is one of your best friends, isn't he? Yes, he is. And you'd like to see him send Butch Heathers to the chair, wouldn't you? I'd like to see the guilty punished. And you'd like to see your friends come up in the world, too, don't you? And the conviction of Butch Heathers might get a promotion for Faraday, mightn't it? He's a good police officer. He's deserved a promotion for a long time. And you'd like to help him get it, wouldn't you? I've always helped Faraday whenever I could. Thank you, Blackie. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, by this witness' own testimony, the facts are clear. There's no proof here that Butch Heathers killed Ellie Spry. This man sees ghosts. So he can see things that don't exist. This man who claims he saw my client commit the murder claims so in an effort to aid and improve the status of the police department friend of his. How can you convict a man on the testimony of a witness such as this? How can you send a man to... Will the defendant please rise? Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. We find the defendant, Butch Heathers, not guilty. <laughs> Court is adjourned. Oh. Hey, Blackie. Blackie. Oh, hello, Fernie. Well, looks as if he got away from us. Yeah, he got away, all right. A great guy you are. I counted on you to help me send this guy where he belongs. But you have to go out and see a ghost. You don't believe me either, do you? I'll say I don't. Do you realize what that ghost has done? Sure, he got into this trial and got Butch Heathers out of a jam. And we can't touch him now. He can't be tried again for the same crime. I know all about that. And I know something about that ghost, too. Will you stop talking about that ghost? I'm going to find that ghost and let it do the talking, Faraday. I'm going to find it if I have to follow it to the happy haunting grounds. And now, back to Boston Blackie. On his way to the country village of Little Bend to get the criminal records of Butch Heathers on trial for murder, Boston Blackie gives a lift to a girl who says she is Florence Newton. Later, it turns out Florence Newton has been dead for over three years. Blackie is star witness in the trial against Butch Heathers because he saw Butch commit the crime. But the defense attorney wins an acquittal for Butch on the grounds that a man who sees a ghost can see a lot of things that don't exist. As we return to our story, it is the day following the trial, and Mary Wesley is with Blackie in his apartment. Blackie, I'm sorry I teased you about Florence Newton. Can't you do something to find her again? Oh, I've tried that, Mary. I drove out to Little Bend again last night and asked everywhere for a girl who might look just like the dead Florence Newton. But no luck. Well, that's because there was no ghost. Now, will you stop trying to convince yourself there was? Mary, did it ever occur to you that I never said the girl was a ghost? The girl was real, flesh and blood, real. It was a father and the sheriff and everyone else who said if I saw Florence Newton, I saw a ghost. Well, you described the girl to Mr. Newton and he said it was his daughter. He said it answered the description of his daughter, but that it must have been the ghost of his daughter if it was anything. Oh, if I could just find her again. Well, I'll help you, but I certainly never thought I'd help you look for another girl. I'll get Faraday in with us. Maybe we could... Oh, speak of the inspector and he rings the doorbell. Chances are that he'd rather ring my neck. Come in. Boston Blackie. Florence I... Newton. What? Florence, am I glad to see you. Thanks, Blackie, but... Blackie, if this girl's a ghost... I'm not I'm... a ghost, Miss... Oh, excuse Miss... me, uh, Miss Newton, Miss Wesley. Uh, hello. So you are real, aren't you? Mm, real pretty, too. Uh, Miss Wesley, I came here to explain all about what happened. It's about time somebody explained something. To begin with, my name isn't Florence Newton. I'm Vivian Peters, and I was paid $1,000 to play that trick on you. Who paid you? Butch Heathers? Yes. He was out on bail, but I didn't know that. Or him. He said it was just a gag. Mm -hmm. When I read in the papers this morning that he was acquitted because you said you saw a ghost. Well, I realized why I'd been asked to pose as Florence Newton. That's the best thing you've realized all day, Miss Peters. 
But you're going to be one of his worst enemies for telling me this, you know. Why? What have I done? You proved my testimony against Butch was correct. Well, so what, Blackie? Heathers was tried and acquitted for killing Ellie Spry, and he can't be tried again for the same crime. No, he can't, Mary, but maybe there's some other way to get at him. I'm going down to see Faraday. Miss Peters, did anyone see you come to my apartment? No, Blackie. Good. You and Mary stay here till I get back. Everything's going to be all right, unless I'm all wrong. <laughs> Come in. Hello, Wallace. Oh, Butch, come in. Thanks. Well, how's it feel to be a free man? Great, Wallace, great. You did a good job for me. You're the best lawyer in town. You didn't kill Ellie Spry. That's why I got you off, Butch. Yeah. But Blackie had me nailed for that killing until you pried me loose with that business about the ghost. I knew that ghost story would make Blackie sound silly. <laughs> what do you mean you knew it, Butch? I didn't know it myself until I saw the papers just before the trial. <laughs> I got news for you, Wallace. I give you a little assist in beating the rap the state had on me. I fixed up that ghost. What are you talking about? Cost me a thousand clams, Wallace. Don't worry. We'll come out of your feet. Wait a minute, Butch. Did Blackie think he was Florence Newton or didn't he? Sure he did. It was a girl I hired to say she was Flo Newton and go through the whole routine. Just as Blackie said. Butch, I hope you're lying. No, nah, I'm not lying. I'm bragging. That was a pretty smart trick, wasn't it? You see, I knew about Flo dying in that creek a while back because I was living a little bit when it happened. Get out of here, Butch. Huh? You heard me? Get out! I took your case and defended you because I thought you were innocent. Now I know you're not. You did kill Ellie Spry, didn't you? Is that what the jury said? No. Because you did something behind my back to ruin Boston Blackie's testimony. Sure made a mess of it, didn't I? <laughs> Laugh if you want to, Bush. <laughs> Laugh because you know you can't be tried again for killing Ellie Spry. Laugh because you made a fool out of me. But you're a killer, Butch. Yeah, smart one, though, huh? <laughs> yes, you're smart, all right, but so am I. <laughs> Legally, you're free, but I'm a lawyer. And I'm going to find some loophole in the law to bring you to justice. Maybe that girl can help me. Maybe she can go to the police and tell them. Think so, Wallace? She's a ghost, remember? And all the ghost can say is, Boo! <laughs> go ahead, Butch. Have a good laugh. Go out and have a good time, too. Because she won't be having a good laugh or a good time for very long. Hey, hey. Who are you calling, Wallace? The police. I won't be a party to a conspiracy. I think you better not, Wallace. You don't frighten me with that gun, Butch. But you bother me with that phone. Put it down. Or I'll knock it down, you... I think I'd better take that gun. You think so? No, so. Uh. 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 Now I gotta go get another lawyer. Blackie, get out of my office. Before you start seeing things in here. Look, Friday, will you start seeing things? Will you start seeing how and why I was made to believe I picked up Florence Newton on the road to Little Bend? I know why you think you picked up Florence Newton on the road to Little Bend. You're a big dope. You mean I'm a big dupe? Dope, dupe! What's the difference? No. Faraday, that girl's real name is Vivian Peters, and she was hired by Butch Heathers to pose as Florence Newton. How do you know? Because she's in my apartment. She told me all about it. Butch hired her when he was out on bail. Now you're not only seeing crazy things, you're saying crazy things. How would Butch know about the death of Florence Newton so he could rig up such a stunt? Butch lived in Little Bend. He knew what she looked like, and the records show that he was there when the Newton girl drowned in that creek. So he was there. So he knew the girl was drowned. So what am I supposed to do now? I can't send Butch Heathers where I want to send him. He can't be tried again for killing Ellie Spry. I know he can't, but I've got to... Listen... There's your phone, Faraday. I know it's like he... I gotta know something. Faraday speaking. Inspector Faraday, this is Madeline Wells, Harold Walters' secretary. Yes, Miss Wells. Inspector, Mr. Walters has been killed. What? He's in his office, dead. He's been shot. Wait a minute. Blackie, Butch Heather's lawyer has been killed. I know, I heard her say it. Stay where you are, Miss Wells. Yes. Don't touch anything. We'll be right up. All right, Inspector. Well, Blackie, what do you think of that? It's not what I think, Faraday. It's what I know. Butch Heathers has made another mistake. Only this time, we're going to make it his last. Oh, no, Blackie. You bungled things the last time I had, Butch. Go have yourself some fun in a graveyard. Meet some new ghosts, maybe. You're out of this murder. I'm out? Oh, no. You're out? Oh, yes. From here on, I'm handling Butch Heathers all by myself. You mean mishandling Butch, don't you? I'm going to surprise you, Blackie. I've got an idea. 
In fact, I've got two ideas. You'd better get an idea how you can pin the murder of Harold Walters on Butch before you do anything else. We're just guessing he's our man. He's not our man. He's my man. And I know how I could pin this on him, providing I get no interference from you. I'm going to have you kept here in this office for an hour, so I can have my way, and you can't get in it. You know, Inspector Faraday, it's a funny thing how many uses you can get out of a fire escape like this. Mm. You can get out of a building on it, Hang laundry on it, sunbathe, and sleep on it. Yeah, and keep quiet on it, too, Muldoon. All right. The glass in this window to Butcher's room isn't soundproof. Yeah, but it's sure almost look-proof, Inspector. Why, it's so dirty I can hardly see through it. I can see enough. I can see Butch in there and the door to the hall. Are you sure that uh, Peter's girl will do what you told her to do? She ain't better. <laughs> You know, you know, I'm sort of proud of myself about this. Yeah. This is the kind of idea Blackie would get. He's not the only one who's smart. Well, uh, what if it doesn't work? What do you expect from Blackie's ideas? Uh Uh-oh, there must have been a knock on the door in there. Butch just got up and walked over to it. Well, now he can lift up the window a little, huh? Yeah. Quick, while he's on the other side of the room. All right. Uh, uh, That's enough. Butch just opened the door. Is it the Peters thing? It sure is. Well, Miss Peters, it took long enough getting here. Come in. Thanks. We can hear pretty good. You phoned and said you want to talk to me, sweetheart. Well, what about? You ought to know what about. I didn't know I was going to save you from the chair when I said I'd play ghost for Boston Blackie. Hey, well, what you didn't know didn't hurt you too much, did it? <laughs> you got to breath the country air out of it, too, didn't you? <laughs> you got out of a murder rat, Mr. Heathers. And everyone knows you killed Ellie Spry. Blackie's testimony was right, every word of it. Yeah? You've made an accomplice out of me, Heathers, and I don't like it. Inspector, oh, you don't? You... Well, well. Uh... <laughs> yeah, it's too bad. It's so bad that I'm going to the police. Oh, I wouldn't do that if I was you. But you are not me. Look, look, I killed Ellie Spry and got away with it. I killed Harold Wallace, my lawyer. I'm going to get away with that, too. I'd include you in that list in a minute. And don't forget it. Gee, the Roger. police will know who killed Walter. Yeah, they won't even suspect me. Then Wallace just went a case for me. <laughs> Anybody in this town ought to know that Wallace and I are the best of friends. Now don't go to the cops, sweetheart. Won't do you any good, and I wouldn't like it. You understand? Come on, Muldoon, let's yes, go. I I've heard all Jay. I need to hear. I understand. Right, I'll raise the window now. Hey. Who's out there? No time now. Let's go right through the glass. Right. Don't move, Butch. Cops! Duck, Miss Peters, there may be shooting. Yeah, she ain't ducking, but I am behind her. Go ahead, shoot, cop. Hit this dame. See if I can. Oh, no, don't. Inspector, don't shoot. You'll hit the girl. You mean to kill a girl, don't you? She makes a nice target, doesn't she, Inspector? A nice target, but a better shield. Don't Your shoot. pals ought to see you now, Butch. If you were as tough as you claim to be, you wouldn't be holding that girl in front of you. Ah, uh, cut the talk, me. pal. Go ahead and shoot, why don't you? You know I'm not going to shoot. Ah, uh, polite cop, huh? You don't shoot ladies, huh? Well, you don't shoot me, neither. And you don't catch me. There's a couple of more steps back, and I can reach the door. You did this all wrong, Inspector. Well, I'm at the door, Faraday. Go ahead and shoot if you want. This is your last chance. <laughs> so long. So long, copper. And here's your girlfriend. Maybe you'll stop. Go to sleep, boys. You're tired. Blackie. Yes, Inspector. Blackie with a black jack. Are you all right, Miss Peters? Yes, thank you. But I think my arm's going to be bruised tomorrow. I think Butcher's head is bruised a bit, too. Or maybe this blackjack got the worst of the deal. Faraday, it's a good thing you told the guard to let me go in an hour. Yeah? I knew where you were heading and stayed out there in the hall to wait for you. And I imagine you heard Heather's confession. Well, sure. You heard him admit he killed Ali Spry and his lawyer. Yes, and it's a good thing I was outside the door. Faraday, what would you do without me? I don't know. But I'd sure like to try. <laughs> Don't do it, pal. You're a big man, on account of me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The morning papers are going to say that Butch Heathers is another of the feathers in your cap.
That's uh, eight to sixty out of ten, Miss Cronin. That's right. Here's your change, Miss Cronin. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye, Miss Cronin. I hope your dad likes the ties you bought. Oh, he will. I. Oh, he's there again. Miss Cronin, what's the matter? For weeks and weeks there's been a man staring at me everywhere I've been. He's everywhere I go, and he's standing out there now across the street, staring at this door. Having a nice time, Eva? Don't you remember me, Bob? I'm Eva Cronin, the girl who always has a nice time. But this is special because you're here. Oh, 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 well, thank you. By the way, you seem to have another admirer sitting at that table in the corner there. He's been staring at you oh, for the last... Bob, let's get out of here. What? It's that man I've been telling you about. Everywhere I go, he goes and stares at me. There he is again. <laughs> That you, Eva? Yes, Dad. You're home early this evening. You're up late, Dad. Composing? No, just killing time. Have a nice time tonight? Yes, till that man showed up again. Now, Eva, you know it's only My your... imagination. Oh, no, it's real. He's real. Some night I expect to find him staring at me through the window here. Eighteen stories above the street. Now you're being a little ridiculous. I'm nervous. I can't help it. I look out of the window expecting to find... Oh, Dad! What's the matter, Eva? It's that same man again in one of the windows across the street, staring at me. And now meet Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. Inspector Faraday. Goodbye, Blackie. This is police headquarters, not a day nursery. That's right, but who told you? Have your mother put a tag on you and somebody will take you to school nice and safe. So long. After so short a visit? Uh Uh-uh. Faraday, if you'll answer a few questions, I'll be out of here in a few minutes. Well, that's the best news I've heard since you came in. What do you want? Besides to make a nuisance of yourself. I want to make a good cop of you. Is there any trace yet of the stalking killer? No. And a guy has to be more than a good cop to catch that guy. He's got to be a wizard, a genius. He's got to know something. Well, that lets you out. Well, uh, where was he last seen? Over on the north side. That was about a week ago. Mm-hmm. Since then, he's disappeared. But we're still looking for him, and we're going to catch him. Why do you want to know about him? Because he hasn't disappeared. Eva Cronin, a friend of Mary's, saw him just last night staring at her from a window across the street from her apartment on Elm Street. He's stalking a new victim, huh? Miss Cronin says he's been watching her for two weeks now. For two weeks? Why didn't she come to us? Why? You know what happens when the victim is given a police escort. The stalker just fails to show up. I know, I know. Then after we drop the escort, the stalker comes back. And a few days later, the victim's dead. What I don't understand is why does this guy stalk his victims? It's a psychological effect, Faraday. That constant leer of his doesn't only annoy, it drives people half crazy. Uh. They'll do anything if he'll just disappear. That's when he asks for money, and he gets it. And if his victims pay off, he has no reason to murder them. But he does. He's no shakedown artist. He's a killer. He's a killer so he can continue his shakedowns. But his victim's dead. If he's ever caught, he can deny he's the stalker. None of his previous victims is around to identify him. Faraday, I went in on this case. Maybe I can grab the stalker. Go ahead. See what you can do. At least you won't be bothering me. Thanks, pal. You know, I'm always willing to go out of my way to keep out of yours. You know the way I feel, Eddie? feel like I want to meet up with that stalker right this minute. feel like I want to bend my nightstick over his skull. Ah, you're getting nerves, Marty. Trying to find a guy we never saw is making you jump. You're not kidding, I'm jumpy. Watch the Cronin Dame's house, Faraday tells us. She's next on the stalker's list. Okay, so we watch. So the stalker don't show. And the dame ain't been hurt either, Marty. Remember that. Whoever the guy is, he's smart enough to lay off when we're around. Now, the chances are, if we'd been tipped off to the others, he'd never have knocked off the three dames he's conked already. All I know is I got a gun, I got a nightstick, and I got a great big yen to use either one or both on that character. (laughs) Now, there's the call box. Report in, will you? Yeah. Anybody ask for me, say I'm sitting on the curb waiting for the stalker to show up. (laughs) Okay. I'll light up a smoke. 
Maybe that will help. You don't need help. You need action. I'll see what headquarters wants us to do. I'm in favor of giving up this job, right? Headquarters? Hogan? Hogan, this is Clancy. Give me Faraday and Homicide. Hold it. Faraday. Clancy, Inspector. Yeah? No news on the stalker. Mm. Miller and I have walked ourselves weary patrolling Elm Street where that Cronin dame lives. He ain't going to show, Inspector. How do you know what he's going to do? How does anybody know? If I pull you off the Elm Street assignment where he was supposed to have been spotted, he'll knock off somebody there, sure as anything. We're supposed to stay here? Where do you want to go? Home? Well... Now, look, Clancy, I'm going to spot you and Miller, two of the best cops I've got. Come on back here. We've got to get a break on this case. The stalker's got to open up soon. Maybe you guys ought to be here when he does. Okay, Inspector. If that's the way you want it, so long. So long. Well? Let's go, Marty. No more walking around waiting for the stalker. This time we sit around waiting for him. Blackie? Uh Huh? What are you doing with that sheet of paper? I'm studying the past performances of the stalker, Mary. I might figure out a way to catch it. Oh, I'm getting sorry I told you about Eva Cronin. We were supposed to go out this evening. Remember? I know. You want to go to the movies, don't you? Well, at least when we go to the movies, you don't have to solve the mystery. The greatest mystery about some mystery movies is why they were made. <laughs> well, there's the phone. Are you in? Oh, I don't know. I'll look. Yes, I'm here. Oh, do you want me to take it? <laughs> I'm nearer. Thanks, anyhow. Hello. Boston Blackie? Yes. Blackie, this is Eva, Eva Cronin. Oh, hello, Eva. It's your friend Eva, Mary. Hmm? Uh, yes, Eva, what can I do for you? Blackie, he's here. I mean, he's across the street watching me. The same fellow? Yes, I'd know him anywhere. He's across the street watching this house, waiting for me, I just know. Uh, just a minute. We're in luck, Mary. The stalker's watching Eva now. Oh, golly, I don't know whether I'm glad or scared. Eva, where are you? At 3232 Eastern Road. 3232 Eastern Road. I'm at a party here, Blackie. I was about to leave when I saw him. Stay right where you are. I'm coming up there. The fact that the stalker is waiting for you is just what I've been waiting for. Eva, where in the world have you been? Missed me, Bob. Now, Eva, please don't be cute. Where were you? You disappeared ten minutes ago and nobody knew where you went. I had to make a phone call. Who'd you call? Bob, stop asking me questions. Oh, honey, I'm sorry it's... It's just that I was worried. I'm all right. I'm perfectly all right. I went to make a phone call. Is that such a crime? I know, but this is a party. Besides, you don't have to get so excited. I wasn't trying to pry. Then don't. Oh, Bob, can't you see? I'm nervous. I'm upset. I don't know what's happening to me, and I, I don't want to guess. The, uh, the man who stared at you in the restaurant last night? Yes. I just called Boston Blackie to tell him that the same man was across the street staring at me when I went to the window a few minutes ago. Oh, Bob... Bob, what am I going to do? Call the police. They'll know what to do. Oh, it's no use. I'm going to wait right here until Boston Blackie comes to pick me up. We're in the 3200 block on Eastern Road, Blackie. You better slow down. All right. 3232 will be on your side of the street, Mary. Watch out for it, will you? Uh Uh-huh. I don't see anyone standing on the sidewalk in this block. I'm afraid we're too late to catch the stalker. (laughs) I'm glad to say. (laughs) I'm afraid you're right. I'm sorry to say. Oh, here's 3232 right here. Thanks. Blackie, that house is almost dark. Doesn't seem to be a party going on in there. Well, it's late, Mary. Maybe most of the guests have gone home, but I'm sure your friend Eva waited for us. She sounded scared to death on the phone. And she certainly had good reason. No doubt about that. Well, let's go up to the house. Okay. Come on. Blackie, um, and maybe, maybe the stalker's hiding around here somewhere. Maybe. If I thought it would do any good to search for him, I would. But our best bet is to get Miss Cronin and stick to her till the stalker shows up again. Well, you stick with her, Blackie, and I'll go home. On uh, second thought, though, maybe I'd better not go home. Eva is a little too good-looking. How can a girl be too good-looking? I hope you never find out. <laughs> There's um, only one light on in this house, Blackie. Yeah. yeah, obviously the party is over and the other guests have gone home. Yeah. Eva's there, though, I'll bet on that. Mary, maybe we'd better take Miss Cronin to your apartment tonight. Okay. She certainly can't be stared at there. You're 22 stories up and there isn't another building that high for eight or nine blocks. Mm. 
Oh, someone's coming at the door. I was beginning to think there was no one home. What do you want? Well, uh, well, uh is Miss Eva Cronin here? Who? I never heard of no Eva Cronin. Well, she was at a party here tonight. A party here? There ain't been a party here in 30 years. Well, this is 3232 Eastern Road, isn't it? Look, if you can read signs and numbers, you'd know that without asking, mister. Well, I can read, but I can't understand why a Miss Cronin isn't or wasn't here. She phoned me from here about an hour ago. Not from here she did, mister. There ain't no phone in this house. There ain't been no party here, and I ain't heard of no Eva Cronin. And I ain't in the mood for talking to you or anybody else this time of night. So beat it, mister, beat it. And now, back to Boston Blackie. Young, beautiful, and wealthy Eva Cronin is being constantly followed by a man Boston Blackie and the police believe is the notorious stalking killer, who already has extorted money from three victims and then murdered them. Eva phones Blackie to say the stalker is watching her at the moment. Blackie and his friend, Mary Wesley, rush to the address to find that Eva has never been there. The house has no phone. As we return to our story, Blackie is in Eva's apartment with the father of the still missing girl. I don't understand how you can sit there and play the piano, Mr. Cronin, when your daughter's missing. Playing the piano helps me think, Blackie. And besides, I don't think Eva's missing. What's more, she's not really my daughter. I adopted her some years ago. You're not trying to say that you don't care if she's in trouble, are you? Of course not. When her father died, I promised I'd take care of her, and I've taken good care of her. There's a father there that uh, sent a picture on the piano. Look, Mr. Cronin, I didn't come here because I thought you could help me track the stalker. You couldn't know anything about him, I know. But I'm going to stay here until your daughter shows up. Well, you may have a long wait. I still don't understand what brought you here. Mr. Cronin, your daughter phoned me from 3232 Eastern Road that she was being watched by the same man who's been watching her for two weeks. My daughter has a fantastic imagination. And if she keeps using it, she'll imagine herself into insanity. I don't get you, Mr. Cronin. The stalker's real, too real. He's killed three people already. Eva may be the fourth. She isn't in trouble right now. Why wasn't she at that Eastern Road address? I don't know. I didn't even know she'd gone out this evening until you came here looking for her. She must have slipped out with Bob. Bob? Who's he? A fiancé. He's the fellow in the picture to the right of her dad, right here on the piano. He's a fine boy, but uh, I'm afraid he wants to marry Eva for her money. Your daughter is wealthy? Very. She inherited several million dollars from her father. She was a dad's pet. She has two other sisters and a brother somewhere, but, uh, well, they got nothing. They got nothing, and I'm getting nowhere. It might help a little if you knew where you wanted to get. Look, Mr. Cronin, doesn't it mean anything to you that your daughter might be dead? It means nothing to me that you think she might be, no. You're taking this awfully easy. She has been threatened by a murderer. We know he's a dangerous killer. Your daughter called me and said she was being watched by him tonight, an hour or so ago. When I got to the address she gave me, she wasn't there. Doesn't that add up to you? All it means is that there's a combination of circumstances which it isn't my business to explain. Eva will show up, Blackie. I'm sure she will. No, you are. Well, I'm sure she won't. I'm more sure now than ever. She's the latest victim of the stalker, Mr. Cronin. Your daughter is dead. Am I? What? Why doesn't somebody tell me these things? Hello, Eva. Eva, where'd you come from? My room. I came home while Daddy was playing. Didn't want to disturb him and went right to my room. What happened to you, Blackie, after I phoned you? What happened to me? What happened to you? I went to that address you gave me. There was no party going on there. There most certainly was. A dozen people can tell you that. When you didn't show up, I got Bob to take me home. Well, good night to you both. I'm going out. Where do you think you're going at this hour? It is rather late, Eva. Perhaps you ought to take Blackie with you. It's impossible. Please, Blackie, stay here. Don't try to follow me. It'll only mean something we'll both regret if you do. Okay, hold it, <laughs> Miss Cronin. <laughs> Recognize me? I should, don't you think? Uh-huh. Nice of you to meet me out here in the country like this. Oh. When I wrote you that note, I wasn't sure you would. Why not? You're a brave girl. You know, I've killed three people. I know. But they paid me well before I killed them. You're going to pay me, too. 
Only more than they did, because you have more. I'll take 50000 from you. Then will you leave me alone? Pay me the 50000 first. I'll have it for you by tomorrow. How will I get it to you? I'll let you know. Tomorrow. You'll see me sometime tomorrow. You know that, don't you? If I pay you, you'll leave me alone, won't you? Please, when I pay you the money, go away. Go far away and leave me alone. You know, I may do that. I have another young lady to call on, a lady on Brewster Road. After she pays me, maybe I'll leave town. Maybe I'll kill her. Maybe I'll kill you. Oh, no. I don't know why I don't. I can tell you why, pal. Oh, Blackie. Blackie. So, I've been tricked, eh? Well, it doesn't matter. I can handle two like him, like this. No, 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 no. I'll see you later. Get to the nearest police box, Miss Cronin. I'm going after no, this. No, Blackie, you're real shady. Me, Cronin, you. let go of it. Oh, no. I'll never catch him now. Oh, why did I have to walk into that right hook? That was better than going after him and running into a bullet. I wouldn't have given him time to shoot. Oh, Blackie, if he hit you, I could never have forgiven myself. Oh, please, I, I'm shaking. Take me home. Please take me home, Blackie. All right. But you should have stayed there. I couldn't. I had to meet this man. He sent me a note. Only you shouldn't have followed me. I begged you not to. The note warned me not to tell anybody. Blackie, I'm going to pay him what he wants. I've got to. Please don't interfere. I can't promise that. Maybe you're going to pay him what he wants. But I'm going to see that he gets what he deserves. <laughs> Scott, take this report Blackie gave me. Yeah? It's got a description of the stalker in it, a good one. Flash it to all radio cars. Sure, Inspector Faraday. I'll do it right away. Faraday speaking. Inspector, my name's Hester Jones, and I live at 19 Brewster Road. Yes? The stalker just ran into 18 Brewster, Brewster Road, right across the street from here. He was staring at me. He's at 18 Brewster Road, huh? Yeah. He'll be right there. Scott. Yes, Inspector? Get me a squad car and flash all radio cars. We're going to grab the stalker. Yes, sir. We're not trying to call Blackie. Let him know. Definitely not. I can handle this alone. Now get me a squad car and a dozen men. All right, men, quiet. This is the place. And stay just as quiet as you can. Quieter, even. We'll catch this guy here, Inspector Faraday. The city ought to make a monument out of 18 Brewster Road. Yes, yeah, Scott, and bury the stalk around it. And yeah, we've got the street roped off. There's a high wall back of the house. It's too high to climb. Okay, then we've got him trapped. Everybody in position? Yes, Inspector. Yes, what position am I assigned, Faraday? Oh, no, Blackie. What are you doing here? The same thing you're doing here, closing in on the stalker. But you had no way of knowing he was holed up here. Oh, yes, I did. The woman who called you called me first, and I told her to call you. Oh, you're dead. What's the matter? Is the stalker too tough for you? <laughs> That's right. He did clip you, didn't he? Sure, but don't forget, he was the one who ran away. Uh, you guys out there, get away from here. What was that? It was the stalker's voice, as I remember. It came from inside the house, Inspector. I know it, Scott. Read it, all of you. I'll start shooting. I'll kill the first one that moves toward this door. Hear that? We've nailed the stalker, all right. You heard me? Get away, I told you. I'll kill you all. <laughs> Uh-oh, this guy's going to shoot his way out, huh? And where's Saps if we try to break in? We'll get him, but he'll get a couple of cops before we do. Don't you think I know that? Beat it, Blackie. And let the stalker get away? Oh, no. I almost had him earlier tonight. This time, I'm going to get him. This is my job, Blackie. I'll do it. And you'll lose men doing it, Faraday. I've got an idea. Whatever it is, forget it. Listen, let me borrow your squad car. I'll ram it through the door. If the stalker fires at it, the bullets will just bounce off. Then once I'm inside, I'll grab him. That doesn't sound bad. Only you're not going to do it. Scott. Yes, sir. You heard what Blackie said. Now go on. Get in that squad car. Oh, no, he doesn't, Faraday. It's my idea, and I'm going to carry it out. Blackie, you crazy fool. Come back here. Sure, but I'll have company when I do. Think you'll make it, Inspector? I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't bet against Blackie. There he goes. Heading right for that door. Full speed. Come on, you guys. Let's get moving in case Blackie needs help. Where were you, Inspector? I don't hear any shots. That's a good sign. Come on through the drawer. You see how good a sign it is. There, Inspector. There's Blackie. He's struggling with that guy. Let's grab the stalker for us. Good guy, Blackie. Okay, stalker. Cut it up. Hold him, Blackie. I've got him. Let go. I've got him. Good boy. Come here. Stalker, meet my friends. The police. The police? Oh, wait a minute. What's this all about? This is about the last time you'll see the outside of a prison cell. You're wanted for three murders and for planning a fourth. Are you crazy? No. We're not crazy. But that better be your plea when you come to trial. 
Only a whack would stalk his victims the way you have. Oh, you think I'm the stalking killer? Ah, you're crazy. You aren't the stalker? Why did you fire at us just now? Because I, I didn't know you were the police. I just heard the whispers and I saw people snooping around outside. Yeah? Then why did you run in here after staring at that woman across the street? I didn't stare at any woman. I went in here because this is where I live. Those are pretty fair alibis, except that I saw you with Eva Cronin earlier tonight and you were demanding money from her. Why shouldn't I ask her for money? Eva Cronin's my sister. Your sister? Yes. Now, why can't I ask her for money? I'm broke. My father never left me anything. But Eva's still rich. Blackie, what's going on here? This guy isn't the stalker. He's just a dumb, frightened guy. He's not dumb, Faraday. He's smart. Maybe he's the smartest killer we've ever run across. We can't prove he's a killer. The stalker's victims are all dead. And if this fellow is Eva Cronin's brother, she'll admit it. And that'll mean he isn't the stalker. Come to think of it, Eva Cronin never said this guy was the stalker. But what are you going to do, let him go? Of course not. I can hold him on suspicion for a while. Do that. I have something on the fire that may cook this guy's goose. Hang on that extension phone, Faraday, and don't say anything. I want to say something right now, Blackie. You're wasting my time. You're wasting your breath. Hello? Uh, Miss Cronin, this is Blackie. Oh, yes, Blackie. What is it? Uh, the police have caught a man they think is the stalker. He's the same guy who slugged me when I followed you last night, only he says he's your brother. Well, he is my brother, Blackie. He's not the man who kept staring at me. He's my brother, and all he wanted was the money. That's why I didn't want you to follow me. This was strictly between him and me, don't you see? What did he want the money for? Well, he had none, and I have plenty. Why shouldn't I give him money? He's my brother, isn't he? He's your brother, but he isn't broke. The police found thousands of dollars in his house, money he took from his victims. He's the stalker, Miss Cronin. We know that, and so do you. Yes. Yes, Blackie, I knew it all the time. I tried to help him, but I guess it didn't work. Only you can't hate a girl for trying, can you, Blackie? To protect a killer, you most certainly can. That's all, Miss Cronin. I'll see you in the morning in jail. Miss Cronin's in cell three, Blackie. Thanks, God. Any time limit on my visit? For most people, it's five minutes. Well, I'm not most people. I may take a little longer than that. Suit yourself. <laughs> Yell for me when you're leaving so I can lock up. Okay. Hello, Miss Cronin. Oh, it's you. What do you want here, Blackie? You caught my brother. You had them put me here. Isn't that enough reason for you to leave me alone? Perhaps, but there are some things I don't know, and I want to clear them up. What, for instance? Where did you fit into all this? I knew my brother was a stalker. I wanted to help him, so I pretended I was being stalked. Then if the police arrested my brother, I could deny he was the man who was following me. Girl's own brother wouldn't be stalking her, would he? In this case, yes. Incidentally, what you told me was exactly what I'd imagined... When you gave me that phony address on Easton Road, I figured you were in on this somehow. That address wasn't phony. I told you where I was. 32 Easton Road. You said 3232. That was very clever of you, now that I think of it. Later, you could have said all you were doing was repeating the number. The police hadn't found that money in my brother's house. That's what I would have said. I wanted you to be under the impression someone else was a stalker. I had to protect my brother, don't you see, Blackie? No. He was trying to get $50,000 from you, as I remember it. I would have been glad to give him that money. I would have done anything to get him out of town. I knew he was a stalker. I knew he must have had some money. But I thought the money I gave him would be enough to make him quit killing. I honestly don't know how much money he did have, Miss Cronin. But you said the police... That the police found it? Yes, I said that. But I did it only so that uh, you would talk. And you did. Oh, you... You're in jail, Miss Cronin, but you shouldn't be too unhappy. After all, you're practically the only living member of the Stork Club.
What was that address again, Mary? Uh, 2400 Wallace Street. It should be in the next block, Blackie. You want me to wait after I drop you off? Well, that depends on what you've got to do. If it's something that might lead you into trouble, wait for me. Well, you know I never get into trouble, Mary. It's only the criminals I go after that get into it. Well, that's the way it's been up till now. But every time you leave me, I start to worry. <laughs> Don't you trust me, lady? Oh, Blackie... You know how important you are to me. Well, I'm kind of important to me, too, Mary. Now, stop worrying. And here's that 2400 address. I'll pick you up in half an hour, if you like. Oh, I don't know how long I'll be. You better go and I'll take a cab. But, Blackie, please... I promise not to get hit by some gangster's bullet, if only because we have a date tonight, okay? <laughs> sure. I'll see you tonight. My cold ought to be better by then. Well, I certainly hope so. Bye. Bye. Morning. What can I do for you? I'm Mary Wesley. I phoned you earlier this morning. Oh, that's right. You did. Sit down. Thank you. Okay. What's your problem, Miss Wesley? First, is this as good a private detective agency as you advertise? We're modest, Miss Wesley. Or even better than that. Well, we'll soon find out. I have a difficult job for you. Harder they are, better we'll like them. What do you want us to do? I want you to follow someone. Shadowing's easy, Miss Wesley. So easy we sometimes hate to take money for. Oh, but we will. Well, I think you'll find it rather hard to follow this person. And whatever the cost, I'll pay it. Money is no object. Then what is the object in following this man? Well, that's not important. I just want you to follow him everywhere he goes. Now, don't let him out of your sight for one minute. I want you to get a detailed report on everything he does. But everything. Can do. My man will watch him every minute. Now, just one little detail. What's the name of the guy you want shattered? His name is Boston Blackie. And now, back to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. <laughs> Hello, boss. Hello, Tommy. Where you been? Me? I've been... No, no, don't tell me. I know. Gone down to the Herald building to get your newspaper off the truck again. But I had a boss. I just had to see what Dick Dash Detective did to Peach Face, and I couldn't wait. Uh, you take your sweet time about going to see your dying mother... But you can't wait for the paper to come out to see what happens to Dick Dash. Ah, oh, boy, sometimes I wait for the paper to be delivered. You wait for the paper when you won't. Don't wake up till just before it's delivered. Now, look, sit down. I want to talk to you. You want to see Dick Dash? He's going to take the fuzz off Peach Face's kiss, Annie. Look, sit down or I'll take the nose off yours. Now, we got this new stick-up racket going, and it's going great. But it... Can be greater. Yeah, I know. We've been doing awful good lately, ain't we? Yeah, but it's only the beginning. Now, listen, Tommy, I want... Want me to duck, boss? No, just sit where you are. I might need you. Oh, I get it. Come in. Hello, Fredericks. Well, Boston Blackie, what do you want down here? As if it would make any difference to me. Any other time, Fredericks, I'd resent talk like that. Now I'm taking it. Well, what's the rover boy got roving around in his mind? Uh, you know Tommy, don't you? Who'd want to? Look, Blackie, maybe I... Sit down, small stuff. I came here to see your boss, not to clip you. Oh, is that so? Well, kid, let's start something right now. Get up, Tommy. Okay. Blackie may want something here, but I don't think it's trouble. You're right, Fredericks. It's a job. A job? I didn't think you worked, Blackie. Except on people like us. Well, the time has come when I think I ought to work with people like you. That's <laughs> all right. Laugh if you want, Fredericks, but I need money. That's not funny to me. You broke, Blackie? I don't believe it. I'll tell you how broke I am. You're in a good racket. The risk is high, but so is the take. I want in. Oh, now, Blackie, please. Aren't you being just a little corny? You don't think I'd trust you within a mile of me when I'm doing a job, do you? I didn't expect you to, no. 
But you could give me a chance. Find out if you can trust me. Then if you can, let me in. I could be a big help to you. And that's the first thing you've said that I can believe, Blackie. I'll tell you what I'll do. You can come in on a job with us tonight. All right. Now, now, wait a minute. I'm no sucker. You're in on my terms. I'm listening. There may be trouble. And if there is, and if I have the slightest idea that you were responsible, I'll kill you before you can move an eyelash. Mary, this is Blackie. Oh, Blackie, I called your apartment ten times since I got home and you weren't there. Now, where are you? In a phone booth on Wheaton Street. I've just come from seeing Fredericks. Seeing him or trying to see him? I saw him. And he didn't see through me. Well, not completely. But he's ruined our date tonight. Well, I don't mind that too much as long as you got what you wanted. Only be careful, please, Blackie, for me. I'll do my best. I'm going out with Fredericks tonight. Sort of a trial. I'll be with him from 8 till midnight when we pull a job. Well, then uh, I won't see you till tomorrow? Yeah, that's the way it looks. Oh, uh, how did you do with your end of the deal? Oh, don't worry. A man from the Brown Detective Agency will follow you everywhere you go. He'll see everything you do. Good. Now all I have to do is hope that Inspector Faraday doesn't interfere. Yeah. Because if I'm in the groove tonight, Fredericks and his boys will be in the bag tomorrow. <laughs> Moving through the bushes to you under that first window there, Blackie. All right, Fredericks. And Tommy and Bill will drop the stuff down to us. Yeah. Hey, you did a good job on that lock, Blackie. Thanks. That's my new business from now on. Yeah. Hey, Fredericks, huh? did you have to pick a place surrounded by bushes? Ouch! Those thorns hurt. Yeah, you'll get a worse pain than that from this gun in your back if you cross us tonight, Blackie. Why don't you stop that talk? I'm in mean, this because I want to get something out of it. And that's all. Oh, I'm glad we're out of those bushes, though. Which window do we stay under? Oh, the one just above us now. Oh. Hey, there's Bill up there. Toss the stuff down, Bill. Okay. Where's Tommy? Yeah, watching the entrance of the building so Bill can work without having to be his own lookout. Hey, down there. Catch. <laughs> I got it. Hey, what is this stuff? Just something that's easier to steal than earn. One guess. Money, huh? A uh, good guess. Hey, Bill. Yeah, boss? We're ready to make a break for it. You stick up there as a lookout till we get away. Sure, boss. I'll stay up here. Hey, boss. Yeah? Yeah, hey, watchman. He's coming around the back of the building. I can see him from here. I'd better let him have it. Yeah, make it snappy. Wait a minute. Right up there, Bill. He'll hear you. Fredericks. Oh, Blackie, start talking. I'll okay. handle the watchman, okay, with you? Okay, but do it fast. I'm on my way. I ought to be able to tag him just before he comes around the corner of the building. Now, wait here, Blackie. Only don't get cute. Just don't get cute. Something awful funny's going on here. Good night, Fred. Oh. Oh. I tagged him, Fredericks. He won't move for a while. Better shoot him, Blackie. If he's alive, you'll know what you look like. You're the boss, boss. Well, Fredericks, I knocked him off. We better get going now. Okay, Blackie. That was nice shooting. All right, come on. That shot will bring the cops here in no time. Believe me, I'm not waiting around to say hello to them. Let's go. Yeah. For some reason or other, I don't mind the thorns on these bushes as much as I did. Maybe it's because you don't have a gun in your pack now. What does that mean? It's your okay, Blackie. I can use you. Shooting that watch must set you in solid. Thanks. Hey, there's Tommy at the car. Where's Bill? Probably still in the building. But he'll get away. If he doesn't, so what? <laughs> I've got you to take his place. I'm awful proud of what you did last night, Blackie. I think we ought to celebrate. Suits me. Like to go to the call tonight? Mm, you talked me into it. <laughs> <laughs> We're celebrating a little early, you know, honey. I'm in the Fredericks gang, all right, but I still have to find out where the next job is so I can have Faraday there to grab them. What would the inspector do without you? 
And for that matter, what would I do? <laughs> oh, that's what I like. An interruption when the conversation was oh. getting good. Come in. Hello, Blanky. Hello, Faraday, old pal. Mary and I were planning to go out to celebrate. Want to join us? Blanky, when you and Miss Wesley go out, she's going home. And you're probably going downtown with me. You mean there's a doubt in your mind? Not much of a one, I'll tell you that. Blanky, you've been trying to get something on a guy named Fredericks, huh? Uh, don't look now, Inspector, but I've practically gotten what I want. I was on a job with him last night. That's what I thought. You shot the watchman on that job, didn't you? Sure, with blanks. Blanks? Since when would a blank cartridge kill a man? What? That watchman was found shot to death, Blanky. Well, listen, we... Not that it should be any news to you. Blanky. Hold it, Mary. You know how wrong Faraday generally is. Inspector, for your information, I went on that job last night to get evidence you need, and I did shoot the watchman, just as I said. But I used a blank cartridge, and that's definite. Uh, maybe, only I don't believe it. Let me see your gun. Well, sure, if you want to. But I've taken the blanks out and reloaded it with real bullets. That's all. You never had blanks in it, Blanky. Blanks don't kill people, and that watchman you shot is dead. Are you serious? You're the one who makes jokes, not me. Wait a minute, Faraday. I didn't kill anybody. This was part of a plan, and I have an alibi. Yeah. Mary hired a detective to follow me everywhere I went. He was there when I fired at that watchman, and he must have seen that watchman get up as soon as Fredericks and I ran away. What? I wanted in on the Fredericks gang so I could turn them over to you. Mary hired a private detective, so if something like this happened, I'd be in the clear. Uh-huh. Our private detective from the Brown Agency, Inspector Faraday, he saw what Blackie did, and he'll prove that the watchman wasn't really shot by Blackie. Well, let's have him prove it. Okay, I'll call the agency right away. I hope this guy saw what happened, Blackie. He saw everything, Faraday. He was instructed not to let me get out of his sight. And that agency has good men. Mm. I got a good mind not to even wait to find out. You've got a good mind? Your mind is so dull you could be arrested for carrying a blunt instrument. Now, just wait till you hear what this detective has to say. I'll wait. Brown Detective Agency, Brown speaking. Uh, Mr. Brown, this is Mary Wesley. Oh, Miss Wesley, glad you called. I've been trying to get in touch with you for hours. Well, I haven't been home all day. Mr. Brown, I want you to speak to Inspector... Well, Miss Wesley, I'm afraid I have to give you an unpleasant report. Huh? My man lost Boston Blackie's trail late this afternoon. Couldn't find a trace of him after that. And now, back to Boston Blackie. A man named Fredericks heads a stick-up gang, and in an effort to trap him, Boston Blackie joins him in a robbery. During the robbery, Blackie shoots a watchman. A private detective was supposed to be following Blackie to testify, if necessary, that the watchman got up after the shot because Blackie used blanks. It turns out, though, the watchman is found, shot, and killed. And when it is learned that the private detective lost Blackie's trail before the robbery, Blackie has no way of proving that he didn't kill the man. As we return to our story, Faraday prepares to take Blackie to jail for murder. Faraday, you have to listen to me. I'll listen to you in the lineup, Blackie. And when I get you into that light in the detective bureau... I want you to talk plenty. I like the light I'm under right now. Have you ever seen a prettier chandelier? I've never seen a prettier mess than you're in right now. Inspector Faraday, please, now let Blackie... Uh, quiet, Miss Wesley, But, huh? Inspector, all Blackie needs is a little time, and then he'll find the man who killed that watchman. You've been around Blackie so much, you're beginning to think like him. If you'd stick around, maybe you'd start thinking, period. Uh, give me just a few hours, and I'll clear this up for you, Faraday. I it's, promise it's you. clear enough already, Blackie. So you're going to headquarters. And no tricks. Why, you know I'd never pull a trick on you. No, not much. But this time you don't get a chance. Turn around, Blanky. I want you back to me. It's impolite. All right, apologize to Emily Post later. Turn around, I said. Mm. This time I'm going to make sure there are no tricks. Faraday, you're making a mistake. Sure, sure, I know. All right, my back is turned. Oh, Inspector, won't you listen? And not to you, Miss Wesley, so be quiet. No. All right, Blanky. take your gun out of your pocket, and then put both hands over your head. With my gun in one hand? Yeah, with your gun in one hand, pointing at the ceiling. You can't shoot me with your gun in that position. I can walk over and take it. You're a clever, Inspector. All right, my gun is in my hand and my hands are in the air. And I'm coming up behind you and... Oh! Blanky, what's happening? Hey, the lights. Blanky, come back here. Come back, where are you going? The same place to light that chandelier just went, Inspector. Out! <laughs> Out! 
This guy, Dick Dash, sure is great, boy. Sure is great. What do you do all night, Tommy? Wait up for Dick Dash to come out in the morning? Oh, he went down and got off the newspaper truck again this morning, boss. Yeah. I think the guy's nuts. Well, I'm glad you're not, Bill. Smart work after the stick-up last night. <laughs> what made you get down to make sure that watchman was dead? This sap looked up when you and Blackie ducked through the bushes, boss. Oh. I was still watching in the second-story window. I saw him. Hey, boss... Dick Dash has Peach Face backed into a potato Shut up pillar. About Dick I'll... Dash, will you, Tommy? All right. So, you shot the watchman yourself, huh, Bill? Yeah, and just in time, too. He was just getting up. I let him have it, and that was all. You know, I wasn't surprised that guy was alive. Didn't trust Blackie. Yeah, I almost didn't. I sure don't now. Think we better get out of town? No, no, not yet. Blackie will be here pretty soon. He knows the score. He knows what's happened to him, and he'll be here to make sure something happens to us. Uh, Tommy. Hmm? Tommy, you put down those funnies and listen to me. Oh, sure, boss. Look, you get in this closet here. In the closet? What for? Insurance. What are you talking Blackie about? Blackie may be here to cause trouble. If he does, he'll be standing with his back to the closet when he starts it. I want you to come out and finish it. And him. Oh, yeah, sure. Dick Dash did something like this once. Sure, boss. I'll listen from in here. If it gets tough, well, just leave it to me. Leave Dick Dash out here. You can't read in the closet anyway. <laughs> Bill. Yeah? First chance we have, let's get rid of that guy. Yeah, that comic detective is gets on my nerves, too. Guy goes nuts waiting to find out what's going to happen the next day. Well, he's not the only guy who's nuts about those things. I'm just getting so, uh, well, I don't like the guy anymore. Oh. Yeah, I'll lay on such Blackie. If he starts something, you know what to do. Yeah. Come in. Hello, Fredericks. Hello, Bill. Hi. Hi. Well, three out of four of us are here. Where's Tommy? Out getting his funny papers. Getting them a little late this morning, isn't he? Yeah. Well, I'll take care of you two before he gets here and then handle him. What? Don't reach for your gun, Bill. Tough, aren't you, Blackie? You'll find out, both of you. Okay, reach. And turn your back to me. What's wrong, Blackie? You know what's wrong. That watchman was found dead and Faraday thinks I killed him. Well, you shot him, remember? <laughs> cozy, weren't you, Blackie? I thought so at the time. I'm a little cozier now, though. Tommy! Out of that closet. Nobody's in the closet, Blackie. No? Then what's no. the comic page of this paper lying around here for? Tommy's here all right, and he's in there. You coming out, Tommy? Want a personal invitation? All right. Neither of you guys get cute now. You won't like what happens if you do. There's nobody in there, Blackie. All right, Tommy, out. No? Okay, I'll drag you out. Okay, Come on, you little... Ooh. I did it, boss. Just like in Dick Dash Detective. When he yanked open the door, I let him have it. Like he'll be out for an hour. Good. It's the only place he knows about where he can find any of us. Now beat it, both of you. I'll get in touch with you. Maybe we're out of business in this town. But after Faraday picks him up, I guarantee you, so's Boston Blackie. <laughs> Oh, Blackie, where you been? Most of yesterday, I was unconscious on the floor of Frederick's office. Blackie! Uh, I'm all right now, except that I still have my cold, and most of the night I've been hiding from the police. Oh, well, well, don't come up here. My apartment's being watched, and not because the police think I'm cute. I know, they think I'm cute. Oh. Well, I do have a cute bump on my jaw. Blackie, go to see Faraday and try to explain what really happened. No, Mary, he's got no reason to believe me yet, and I've, I've got to be free in order to clear myself. Well, how are you going to start? I'm not sure yet. Of course, I know who killed that watchman. Yeah. It's one of Frederick's men. Yeah. But I have no proof, and I've got to find Frederick's if I can. Oh, well, Blackie, please. Now, now, don't do anything foolish. If you haven't found what you want by morning, give yourself up. Oh, please. I, I'm scared. I think how scared Frederick's ought to be about now. Well, I've got one lead on how to get to him. Yeah. A lead that has to do with the comic pages. Only believe me, it isn't very funny. <laughs> Okay, number 
number six are all loaded. Get rolling. Okay. Oh, hold number seven. You got to haul a few hundred more this time. Hey, you. Yeah? Uh, sorry to bother you when you're busy. Hey, I I'm... know who you are. You're, you're Boston Blackie, I mean. Hey, you're in an awful jam, Blackie. I know I am, and I'm here to get out of it. Some guy comes here almost every morning to buy a paper off one of these trucks. Yeah, sure does. Well, he hasn't been here this morning. Well, not yet, I mean. Well, look, when he gets here, I want to talk to well, him. Well, sure, Blackie. Want me to point him out to you? No, I know what he looks like. Only it's late, and looks like he's not going to show up. Yeah, it could be. Sure would like to help you, Blackie, if I could. I'm That's sorry. Right. Okay. Thanks, anyhow. Blackie. Yeah? The guy you were talking about. Here he is now. That's the guy, all right. Give me that paper and tell him to step behind this truck to get it. Okay. Oh, but Blackie... Give me that paper, quick. sure. Here you are. Now, send that guy back here and don't tell him who he's going to meet. Okay. Say, mister, I'll have one of those papers this morning. I got to see Dick Dash Detective before I leave town. Oh, you're leaving town? Yeah. Well, there's a man behind this truck with some extra papers. He'll sell you one. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Hey, you and the papers, give me one of those things. I got to see... W- you have to see me first, Tommy. Blackie. And don't reach for a gun. No. Don't yell. And keep your back up against that truck. I didn't do nothing, Blackie. I didn't hurt nobody. That watchman was more than hurt at that holdup. He was killed. And I think you killed him. No, I, I didn't kill him. It wasn't me. Who was it, then? I don't know. Oh, lucky I didn't hear you, Tommy, or you'd get another clip. Now, who killed that watchman? Wait, Blackie, wait, wait. Don't clip me again. It was Bill. Yeah. That's all I wanted to know. Okay, where is he? But he left town last night. I don't know where he went. Why, wait, 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 Blackie. Honest, I don't know. I'll find out where. He killed that watchman with his own gun? Yeah, Blackie, yeah. How do you know? I heard Bill tell Fredericks. Where's Fredericks? I don't... Tommy, I'm going to okay. knock... He, he's living under the name of Colfax in the Walton Hotel. That's different. Okay, Tommy. Here's your funny papers. Let's see how you like reading them in jail. <laughs> Blackie, this is the first time I've ever arrested a man and then let him go to a hotel. The things I let you get away with. Faraday, you let me come here to the Walton, but you came with me, didn't you? I surrendered to you on that condition. But you let me do this. Yeah, I know. All right. Here's 905. This is supposed to be Frederick's room. And this is where I take a chance on letting you run out on me again, isn't it? No, Faraday. No chandeliers. And no more than five minutes. Or I'm coming in there and arresting you for good. You mean for murder, don't you? You know what I mean. I always do. Very funny. But do you? Faraday, listen at the door now. I promise you an earful. Mm, you and your promise. Get out of sight, Faraday. I'm out of sight. Well, you just be sure to stay in that room. Shh. Yeah, who is it? It's Tommy with the funny papers. Hello, Fredericks. Now, don't close the door. I'm coming in. I'll keep you out. Stop pushing, Fredericks. I'm in. Yeah. What do you want? To finish what I started in your office last night. Only this time, no closet gimmicks. This is going to be done my way. It won't do you any good to kill me, Blackie. I can tell the police you didn't really kill that watchman. I'm the only one that knows that Bill did it. I'm your only alibi. Oh, you've got to keep me alive. Do I? We'll see about that. I see you're packing. Going somewhere? Yeah, you know i got to blow town. Not taking much, William. This is sort of a small valise. Well, I like to travel light. I want to see how light. Hey, what are you looking for in that suitcase? Money. The dough you got from the stick-ups. And here it is. Well, I'll take this and you. Maybe you know a lot, Blackie, but it's not going to do you any good. Outside that window behind you, it's a long way down. And I'm going to see oh, that yeah. you find out personally. Okay, I'll Frederick. Show you. I've been okay, waiting for that. I'll give you... Oh. Come in, Faraday. Okay, okay, I heard everything. So this guy there on the floor is the guy in the back of all those robberies, huh? Uh, that's him. Name is Fredericks. That character Tommy I brought down to you works for him. Yeah? This, this guy here is the boss. Mm-hmm. The guy who really shot and killed the watchman is a fellow named Bill. With a little coaxing, either Fredericks or Tommy will tell you where he's hiding out. Good. It's going to be a lot of fun coaxing him, too. You know, Blackie, maybe it takes a little longer when we work alone on a case, but we sure get results. Uh, want to know a way we can solve cases quicker? Well, I sure do. On the next case, when we work alone, I'll work alone.
What's the matter with your appetite? Nothing's the matter with my appetite, Mom. Ask me what's the matter with the stuff you cooked. If you don't like what Mom cooked, don't eat it. Don't make any remarks about it either. Why don't you shut up? Donald, don't talk that way to your brother. Kenneth isn't making any trouble. He isn't making it any pleasant around here either. Maybe you'd better leave the table, Donald. I might as well. <laughs> don't let him upset you, Ma. He's just in one of his moods this morning. Oh, he's always in one of his moods. Ah... Uh... I don't know why I put up with you two. You don't know why you put up with us. Well, I like that. I don't know how we put up with you. You refuse to work. You won't help me around the house. You won't do a thing ever. You let your brother support you and me wait on you. It's a good setup, isn't it, Mother? But you want me to move out and do things my way. Maybe that wouldn't be as bad as I've always imagined. Maybe I ought to let you. (laughs) You won't. You'll do anything to keep me out of trouble. By the way, I need ten dollars for this afternoon. I won't give it to you. All right, then. I'll better give it to him, Ma. You just go out and try and steal it if you don't. Thanks, brother. Sometimes you're almost a good guy. You ought sure. to be ashamed to take money from me, Donald. It's Kenneth's money. He works for it, and all you do is spend it. That's the way it's supposed to be. He makes it, I spend it. Where's the ten dollars, Ma? I'll get it for you. But believe me, this is going to stop one of these days. When it stops, I'll start. That's simple, isn't it? Keep me happy, I keep out of trouble. Maybe I ought to let you go. You'll end up in just one place, the electric chair, and maybe that's a good idea. And now, on to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. <laughs> I'm leaving now, Mr. Williams. Is there anything you want me to do? Uh, No, Kenneth. I think you've seen enough of the office for today. (laughs) Uh, You put everything in the safe, didn't you? Uh, Yes, sir. Well, then, I guess that's all. I guess that's all, Kenneth. See you in the morning. Good night. Good night. Night, Miss Holloway. Oh, good night, Kenneth. There's a fine boy, Miss Holloway. Hard worker. He'll go places someday. Mm, He's all right, but have you ever met his brother? Once, that was enough. Mm. How two brothers can be so different. It stopped raining, hasn't it? Yes, it stopped about a half hour ago. That's good. I hate to go home in the rain. Well, we might as well call it a day ourselves, Miss Holloway. Say, what's Kenneth using for a head this afternoon? He didn't put everything in the safe. Look at those ledgers on the table. Why, that's funny. (laughs) Kenneth never forgets those ledgers. Well, he's entitled to slip up once, Miss Holloway. (laughs) I'll put them away. Would you hand them to me? Yes, yes, of course. Thank you. Say, Kenneth really must have something on his mind. He left this office supply tray out of the cabinet. Well, I'll put it back. Uh, never mind, I'll Oh, do. I've got it. Oh, oh, little Williams, I'm oh, so sorry. Oh, my fault. Always let a woman have her way, I always say. Guess I should have let you carry it. Oh, well, I'll pick up the stuff that's spilled. Oh, don't bother, Miss Holloway. Nothing but paper clips, thumbtacks, a uh, couple of pencils, even for the cleaning woman. And for Pete's sake, don't look so conscience-stricken. Oh, it wasn't dear. your fault. Well, I, all right, I won't look like that anymore, but I, I better write a note for the woman who cleans telling her that... Uh, come in. Mr. Williams, he has a gun. Good heavens, man. No, don't be a fool. Yeah, who was it? It's your mother, Donald. I want to clean up your room. Okay, come on in. Clean it. Who's stopping you? Why didn't you do it today while I was out? I'd like to be alone in the evening. I like to spend my evenings doing something besides housework, too, Donald, but there's too much to do around here. Not for me, there isn't. But I like it that way. Oh, Donald, your dress is a mess. Can't you ever put anything away? Why should I? It's too much bother. Everything's too much bother to you, isn't it? Did you go to see Harry Brown as you promised? Ah, uh, saw the bum this afternoon. I went way across town to see him. All he wanted was to give me a job at his gas station. A job wouldn't hurt you, Donald, and Mr. Brown's company pays well. So what? You didn't take the job, did you? (laughs) 
Are you kidding, Ma? Oh, Donald, you're impossible. Look at these dresser drawers. No wonder your clothes are always in such a mess. Suppose one is worse than the other. Hey, 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 keep out of that drawer, Mother. I'm going to clean this room of yours inside. I told you to stay out of there. Donald, where did you get all this money? Money? There's no money in that drawer. There's no... Wow. Hey, the... Hey, that must be $25,000. You didn't know it was in here, did you? Oh, no, Ma, no. I, uh, I took a shirt of cans. I didn't want you to see it. A gun. There's a gun in here. So you have a gun, too. Ma, that money isn't mine. That gun isn't the mine. The money isn't yours because you stole it. But the gun is, and you got this money by using it. It's been fired recently. I can tell by the smell of it. Put up your hands, Donald. Put that gun away, Mom. Warning you. I'm warning you, Donald Carver. You do as I say, or when the police get here, they'll have to take you to the morgue. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Blackie. This is Mary. Oh, hello, Mary. You sound excited. What's the matter? Well, did you hear what was on the radio a minute ago? No, I didn't. Mine isn't on. Well, Inspector Faraday just solved a robbery and a murder in one hour and 30 minutes. And guess who was arrested? Who? (laughs) Donald Carver. Donald Carver? Who's he? Oh, Blackie, don't you remember the woman who came to see you about a year ago? The woman with the son who needed a talking to? Oh, yes, of course. (laughs) My talking to him didn't take, huh? <laughs> well, it took for a year and then wore off. Apparently, there was a robbery and murder early this evening, and Carver's mother found some of the stolen money and the murder gun in her son's dresser drawer and phoned the police. His own mother turned him in, huh? Mm-hmm. Gee, it must have been a pretty tough thing for her to do. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. I just remembered something else about Mrs. Carver. Huh? She said if I didn't straighten Donald out... She'd do something drastic to get rid of him. Yes, yes, that's right, she did. Mary, it's not like a killer to keep a murder gun in his dresser drawer. It can be found too easily. Well, this whole case was over in 90 minutes. I think the case has just begun, Mary. Who was killed and where? Uh, a man named Williams and his secretary, Miss Holloway. It happened in Mr. Williams' office where Donald's brother Kenneth works. Uh, that's 18 Oval Square. 18 Oval Square, huh? Uh-huh. Well, I'm going to Oval Square right now. And I'll bet before long I have Faraday running around in circles. While strolling through the park one day in the mirror... Very nice voice you have there. Back up there, young fellow. You'll get your feet wet. When I scrub floors, I scrub them and everything on them. In the merry, merry month of... Uh, I'm sorry to bother you while you're working, but I'm Boston Blackie. A murder was committed in this room this evening, I understand. Mighty good understanding you've got. Month of May, I... Uh, How long has it been since the police left? Oh, about an hour. Take a look around. Never see such a mess. Must have been some fight here before the killings. Taken by surprise Uh, by... Apparently. Was that stuff on the floor there when you came in? Yep. Pair of roguish eyes. Paper clips and thumbtacks and papers and all. Yep. Cops figured out they got knocked on the floor during the struggle. What's it to you? I don't know yet. Well, thanks for letting me interrupt your work. I'll be seeing you in the merry, merry month of May. Blackie, are you sure this is Mrs. Carver's house? I'm positive. Well, let's go in. All right. I'm with you. Careful, Mary. It's muddy. Oh, oh. It was an awful rain this afternoon. It's made an awful mess of the walk to Mrs. Carver's house. I'll say. You can tell a lot of people have been here. <laughs> a lot of policemen, I know that. <laughs> I'll bet that's Faraday's print right there, the big flat one. <laughs> <laughs> that one there is probably Mrs. Carver's. And Mary, huh? look at those prints going around to the side of the house, the path that leads to the kitchen. Oh, yeah. There's an unusual design in one of the heels. See? A round indentation in the mud. Yeah, yeah I see it. But I haven't been interested in mud since I stopped making mud pies. Come on, let's go in and see Mrs. Carver. Well, that is what we came down here to do, isn't it? You go out there. But 
Get away from here. Well, wherever Blackie goes, there's trouble. I said get out of here. Blackie, he's holding a shotgun. I know, and he's holding us up from going in, too. Hey, look, you, uh, we want to see Mrs. Carver. You heard me say to get off these premises, didn't you? Well, get him fast. Mom isn't seeing anybody. Now, get out of here before I count three or I'll... What's the trouble? That's okay, Put down that gun. Who is it out there? It's me, Mrs. Carver, Boston Blackie, and my friend, Miss Wesley. Oh, Blackie, come in. Please come in. Kenneth didn't know you. Well, Mom says to come in. What are you waiting for? (laughs) Never saw such a contradictory young man. Angry because we came here, and now he's angry because we won't come in. I don't care how angry he got as long as that shotgun kept cool. (laughs) Hello, Mrs. Carver. Hello. Hope you don't mind a couple of visitors. Come in, Blackie. You too, Miss Wesley. Kenneth, put away that shotgun. Okay, Mom. Sorry about the gun, Blackie. Didn't know it was you. I guess you're here because of my brother. Yes, we are. Uh, Mrs. Carver, it must have been very difficult for you to turn in your own son. It was, Blackie. But not so difficult to find some of the stolen money in the murder gun, huh? It was in his dresser drawer. I was cleaning. That late in the evening? I had a lot of washing to do during the day. You know, Mrs. Carver, I remember a remark you made about a year ago concerning Donald and his antics. You said you might not be able to stand them or him much longer. Are you hinting that Mark killed those people and is trying to blame Donald? Well, not Can so blow. Do you mean you want to try? Why, I'll... Blackie, you... please, now, don't hit him. Whether or not he gets hit is up to him, Mary. Get out of here, Blackie. Get out before I throw you no, out. Blackie, please, now, let's not have any trouble. Please, Blackie. Wait a minute. Uh, what time did you come home tonight, Kenneth? At a quarter to six. At exactly a quarter to six? Yes. I left the office at 5.30, and when I leave then, I'm always home by a quarter to six. How do you know it was exactly a quarter of six? I looked at the clock just as I came in. That's one way of telling, isn't it? Yes, I suppose so. If the clock was right. Where is it? I want to check the clock. In the kitchen, right above the stove, Blackie. Mm-hmm. I use it to tell how long a roast has been cooking. You know, you've got to cook a roast. Wait a minute, Ma, please. All right. Blackie, a little while ago, I told you to get out of here. What are you waiting for? Nothing now, Kenneth. I just want to know all the facts, that's all. Well, good night. Night. Mary. Mary, where are you? I'm out here waiting for you, Blackie. Oh. Well, seems to me the murder case is pretty much solved. Faraday has arrested Donald Carver, and you've found nothing to indicate that Donald didn't kill Kenneth's boss and the secretary. You know, Mary, I like to agree with you. It makes things so much easier for the two of us. (laughs) Only you've never been so completely wrong in all your life. And now, back to Boston Blackie. Mrs. Martha Carver has two sons, Donald and Kenneth. Son Donald is a 'er ne'er-do-well whose demand for money keeps the family broke. Shortly after son Kenneth leaves his office, his boss and boss's secretary are both shot and killed by a man who then robs the safe. Part of the stolen money is then found by Mrs. Carver in her son Donald's dresser. A recently used pistol is found there, too. So Donald is arrested. Boston Blackie, however, feels that Donald has been framed, but he can't prove it. As we return to our story, Blackie is in Inspector Faraday's office seeking further facts. Blackie, you have no more right in this case than I do in the Ladies' Aid Society. You have no right in this case either, Faraday. No right answers. Oh, I suppose you do. Well, so far, I'm only guessing at things, but I've had pretty good luck with my guesses. When were Williams and the secretary killed? None of your business. 5.30. Well, at 5.30, where was Donald Carver? He says he was with a man named Harry Brown. Had he checked? Sure, but Brown left town at 6.30. Well, we should try. I didn't have to. The gun found in Donald's dresser was the murder gun. So what? The money found in his dresser was part of the money stolen from the Williams Company safe. Where's the rest of it? How do I know? Maybe he spent it. Donald Carver has a bad reputation. And you're going to have a worse one if you don't let him go. I've already let him go. What? I had to, in spite of the evidence against him. Harry Brown called in from out of town, and he swears that Donald Carver was with him from five to six. And Brown's office is 50 blocks from where the murder took place. Well, with Donald Carver free, who are you going to get to take his place? No one. I still think Donald Carver is guilty. With a perfect alibi? I'm going to prove his alibi isn't so perfect. Don't bet. I could tell you where you'll find your killer, though. He could tell me, he says. All right, tell me. Well, if I were you, I'd invite me to go back to the Carver house. 
I think it would be a good idea if we had a good talk with Mrs. Carver. Well, what are you sitting there looking at me for? The police let me go. They think I'm innocent. Is my own brother going to convict me? Why don't you get out of here, Don? Want to try to make me? Yeah. You know, kid, I have an idea I was framed. And I got a very good idea who did it, too. Maybe you and Mom did this thing together. You never were much good, Donald, but just how low can you get? I ought to Why knock every... try, Mama's boy, scared? Not of you, and this will prove it. <clears throat> so you do have a little blood in your head, kid. Well, I'm going to see just how much and what color it is. That's what you think. <clears throat> That's what I was waiting for. <clears throat> All right, all right. I should have killed the rat. Are you all right, Kenneth? Yeah, Blackie, I'll live. But get that guy out of here or he won't. I'll take care of your brother. Let go me, Faraday. I'll let you all have it. Let go. Let him go, Faraday. Okay. I've owed him a workout for a year. Where's your mother, tough guy? Who knows? Where is she, Kenneth? I don't know. She left here right after you and Miss Wesley did. Only I don't know when she's coming back or where she went. I think maybe you had the right idea about talking to Mrs. Carver, Blackie. I've got another idea, only this one is a question. Kenneth, I went up to your office after the murders. The cleaning woman showed me a lot of office supplies. Uh, thumbtacks, paper clips, pencils, the usual stuff. Only they were on the floor. Well, what am I expected to know about that? Oh, I thought maybe it was spilled during the day. An accident or something, was it? Not while I was there. Uh, Blackie, I don't know what you're trying to prove. All I know is you haven't done it. Now let's get out of here. I'm going to send out an alarm for Mrs. Carver. When we pick her up, this case will be over. From the very beginning, this case has been over, Faraday. Over your head. Stand right where you are, Blackie. What? Well, Mrs. Carver... And again. What are you doing in my apartment? You're looking for trouble, Blackie. It looks like I found it. Why the gun, Mrs. Carver? I don't want to hurt you, Blackie. But if you don't stay away from my boys and me, I'll kill you. I don't know who killed those people, but I don't want you to find out. Mrs. Carver, be smart and put down that gun. Why should I? Because I think you trust me. After you put down the gun, you're going to do one other thing. What is that? Call your sons, both of them. They're at home. And you're going to tell them to meet you in Inspector Faraday's office. Am I? Yes. And do you know what you're going to do in Faraday's office? What? You're going to confess that you robbed and murdered Williams and his secretary and tried to blame it on your son, Donald. Don't be funny, Blackie. Mrs. Carver, your guilty son has succeeded in outsmarting the police so far. But you really want him caught. I know that. And I promise you, I'll prove a case against him. So, won't you help me do it quickly and get it over with? I shot and killed Mr. Williams and his secretary, Miss Holloway, and robbed the safe. Then I put part of the uh, money... A little in... more slowly, Mrs. Carver. This is being typed as you talk. I'm sorry. Are you even with her, Casey? Um... Uh, yes, Rick Faraday. All right, Mrs. Carver, go on. Mother, why did you let them talk you into this? You know you're not telling the truth. I know what I'm doing, Kenneth. And now I know what you tried to do to me. I'm sorry, Donald. Go on, Mrs. Carver. I know this isn't pleasant for you, so let's get it over with. Uh, finish your statement, Mrs. Carver. Never mind, Blackie. All right. Then I put the money and the gun I used in my son Donald's dresser drawer. I did this so he would be sent to the electric chair and my son Kenneth and I could live in peace again. Donald made our lives miserable. I think that's all I care to say just now. I think you've said enough too, Mrs. Carver. Let's have it, Casey. Here you are, Inspector. Now you'll just sign this, Mrs. Carver, and we'll let you rest. Thank you. Where do I sign? Uh, there, just after the word signed. Blackie, you and Casey uh, sign as witnesses, will you? Yes, sir. With pleasure, Faraday. No, 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 you can't do it. Now, wait a minute, Mom. Don't sign that. I won't let you. I'll admit it. I did it. No, no, Donald, I don't try to protect me. No, 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 Mom, not protect you. I'm just telling the truth. 
Wait a minute. What is this? This is what I've been waiting for, Faraday. Donald, I was hoping you'd confess. You just couldn't see your mother go to the electric chair, could you? No, not for something she didn't do. Let her go, Faraday. I'm the guy you want. Ma, tell me the truth. Tell me you're lying. I'm sorry, Donald, but my confession stands. No, it doesn't. It's a lie. I know you hate me and I don't blame you, but you're not going to jail for something I did. I killed those two people. I'll take over from here, Mrs. Carver. <laughs> Faraday, on my way back down here, I stopped and bought a large box of thumbtacks. Mind if I spill them on the floor? Blanky, this is no time for fooling around. You've messed things up enough. What's the idea of the tax? Well, pardon the pun, but it may tax your mentality to get the idea. Now... But if some people can sleep on a bed of nails and prove something, I can walk across a floor of tacks and prove something. Now, uh, I want you to watch this, will you? What are you trying to do, Blanky? Trying to pick up a tack and pick out a killer. Oh, stop wasting my time. Mrs. Carver just confessed to the crime. Now Donald Carver has confessed. I thought you had this whole thing figured out. I do, Faraday. And I did when I came in. Uh, now, look at the bottom of my shoe. <laughs> there, what do you see? Some tacks. So what? Now look at the bottom of Kenneth Carver's shoes, and you'll see so what. Are you nuts? He didn't walk across these tacks. No. But there were tacks on the floor of the Williams office, weren't there? Yeah, but what is that? Uh, let's see one of your shoes, Carver. What for? Just let's see one of them. Okay, okay. Hey, yeah. And there you are, Faraday, a large-headed thumbtack. Look closely, and you'll find it's the same kind you found on the floor of the murder room. A guy can pick up a thumbtack anywhere. Not the kind you have in the heel of that shoe of yours, Kenneth. And I have further proof you murdered your boss and tried to pin the crime on your brother Donald. Oh, you don't have any proof. If he didn't do it, Ma did. She wanted him sent to the chair. If she did, she picked a very poor time to frame him. Your mother knew your brother had an appointment with Harry Brown, 50 blocks from your office. Mrs. Carver, you knew your son Donald was nowhere near the Williams office, didn't you? Yes. But you didn't know it, did you, Kenneth? So I didn't know it. So what? What does that prove? Any more than the fact that I have a thumbtack in the heel of my shoe. That proves plenty, that thumbtack, believe me. Kenneth, you didn't leave the building the night of the murders. You came back, shot your boss and his secretary, and stepped on one of the thumbtacks that were on the floor. How they got there, I don't know. Maybe there was a fight, or they were dropped accidentally. Wait a minute, Blackie. Don't get me all mixed up. Suppose this Kenneth guy picked up the thumbtack on the street, any place at all. Just because it's in his heel doesn't mean he was in the office. Oh, but it does. You see, it had been raining when he got home, and Kenneth, good son that he is, wouldn't go in the front door and muddy up the living room. He went in through the kitchen. Remember, Mrs. Carver? He told me he looked at the clock, and you told me it was in the kitchen. He did Remember? come in through the kitchen that evening. Uh-huh, sure. And the footprints leading to the kitchen had a small, round indentation in the heel. I noticed it when I came to the house with Mary. I could have accused Kenneth then, but I wanted the whole story first. Now I know he kept most of the money and put the rest of the money and the gun in Donald's dresser. He tried to frame me, did he? I'll tear that guy up. But don't bother, Donald. I've already done that to his alibi. Faraday will take it from there. Everybody meet a buddy... You better pull your shoes back, young fella. You'll get them soaked. Well, I didn't want to interrupt your song by telling you I was here. I heard you come in and knew who you were without having to look at your face. I can tell by your shoes. You're the young fella, Boston Blackie, who came around asking questions the night of the murder. Coming <laughs> through the right... Well, I'm the same person, all right. I came back to thank you for your help. Help? I didn't do nothing to help. If a buddy kiss a buddy... You did quite some helping, though. You practically made that brother Kenneth confess. I was reading about it in the papers. Well, it was the supposed to be bad brother Donald that set up the whole thing, you know. Should the buddy cry, every lassie has her let... Say, one thing I never understood. Why did that woman, Mrs. Carver, come to your place with a gun? Well, she came there because she knew it was Kenneth that did the killing. And she didn't want me to try to prove it. When I told her I could prove it, with or without her help, she agreed to my plan. She found Kenneth wasn't such a good son when he was willing to stand by and see her confess. Mm, she sure did. None they have, say I... Say, what happened to Donald? Well, he got a job in a gas station, and according to Mrs. Carver, he kind of likes the idea of honest work. Never hurt nobody. And all the lads, they smile at me when... Ooh, coming through.
Blackie, I... Surprised to see me, aren't you? Hey, what goes here? This is... This is Blackie's apartment. Somebody called a little while ago and said Blackie wanted me to bring a canary from my shop up here. Was that you? Yeah. Cute, don't you think? Blackie's out. So I'm going out with his girlfriend. Headed for your shop. Had a date with you. Thought I'd borrow his apartment and you... Made the call because I wanted you here, Joe. Look, I don't want nothing to do with you. I told you that in my shop yesterday. You know that? Well, maybe you had sense enough to change your mind. Well, I didn't. Joe, I could make a fortune using the back room of your pet shop for a gambling joint. I told you once, nothing doing. I've been in trouble with the law before, but no more. No more for me, Bob. I'm running that pet shop honest, and nobody's going to sell me on nothing else. Afraid you'd say that. That's why I got the idea of using Blackie's place to convince you. Nobody's going to sell you. That's what you said. But you didn't say nothing is going to sell you. This gun, for instance. Hey, wait Make a minute. Make your mind up no. quick, Joe. You with me? No. And I'm going straight to the cops and tell them you figure on operating in this town. Give me that gun now. Come on. I'll take it. Give me that gun, will you? I said, come on. Come on. Get it just the same. Now. Nice and convenient. Cops in Boston Blackie's apartment. I think I'll pick up this canary. Go on up, Inspector Faraday. And then call it a day. And now on to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. Oh, Blackie, look, that cock spaniel's still in the window. Gee, I guess your friend Mr. Nelson really meant what he said when he told us to come back this morning. Mary, my friend Mr. Nelson, or should I say the former number 8478949, has always meant what he said, including the time he said he'd robbed the 4th Avenue Bank. Well, now, Blackie, don't be too hard on him. After all, he has reformed since he got out of jail. He's running this pet shop now, and that's certainly behaving himself, isn't it? If he's running this shop, he's doing it in a strange way. You can count on that. Hmm. He's not anywhere in sight. Nelson! Hello! Hello, Nelson! Hey! Nelson! Oh, Blackie, there doesn't seem to be anyone here. Well, maybe he's in the back. Hey, Joe! Joe Nelson! There's the phone, Blackie. If you can't bring Mr. Nelson out, that phone should. Well, Mary, there's no one in the back of the shop either. Oh, that's funny. I wonder if it's funny ha-ha or funny peculiar. No, there's somebody else to do it, so I'll answer the phone. Well, if there's someone asking about that cocker spaniel, tell them it's sold. <laughs> Mary, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Hello. Boston Blackie? Yes, this is Blackie. Who's this? I'm important. Hey, wait a minute. How'd you know I was here? I know a lot of things, Blackie. Oh, and you want to tell me one or two of them, huh? Guessed it. Know where you can find Joe Nelson? You do? Where? In your apartment. In my apartment? What's he doing there? Nothing. Just lying nice and still. That I already own, Blackie. Just called Faraday and told him to rush up there, too. You called Faraday? What for? Joe Nelson's met with a little accident. He's dead. Been murdered. And I imagine Faraday wants to see you. That's what for. <laughs> If I killed Joe Nelson, you know I wouldn't leave his body right here in my apartment. I didn't say you killed him, Blackie. Even in self-defense. Why would I kill him even in self-defense? You got the dope on him that sent him to prison. Guys like Nelson here get a little peeved at guys who do that to them. But Nelson wasn't sore. 
I saw him in his pet shop yesterday, and he told me so. Uh, you saw him in his pet shop yesterday, and today he turned up in your apartment, dead. That doesn't look good for you, Blanky. It doesn't mean a thing, Faraday, except that Joe's killer saw me in Joe's pet shop and saw a good chance to commit this murder and frame me. That's the only explanation for that phone call, too. <laughs> I know, I know. The phone call you got clears you. You are being framed, Blanky. I'm convinced of that. I just wanted to tease you for a while. Ha uh-huh. ha. Well, you got your laugh. Where do we go from here? Well, I. Hey, what's that razor blade doing on the floor? Hmm? Where? Oh, oh, that's mine. What do you do with your old razor blades, Blackie? Just toss them on the rug? This blade is a lot sharper than you are, pal, and a whole lot less rusty. Mm, I suppose you're so sharp, you're going to tell me who killed this guy, huh? Sure, sure. Just give me time, Friday, and I'll give you the somebody who made a dead body out of Joe Nelson. Yes? Are you Frank Nelson? Yes. Well, talkative, aren't you? I want to talk to you, and I want to get more than a yes out of you, too. What do you want? First, I want to close this door. Behind me, of course. Oh, please, whoever you are, I don't want any trouble. I've had enough trouble already. I, I've had you, all mean, you mean your cousin's death is trouble to you? Well, it's, it's Think yet. how much trouble it was to him. Uh, are, you, are you a policeman? No, I'm Boston Blackie. My, my cousin's body was found in your apartment. I, I heard it. I heard it on the radio. I... The radio was right, but what you gather from what you heard is wrong. I didn't kill him. Oh, uh, see... In fact, I'm here to investigate his death. You care who killed him? But you once sent my cousin to jail. You, you, you sent him. Sure I did. When he was wrong. But he was all right after he got out, and I don't like to see this happen to anybody. Who killed him, you know? The radio said you might have killed him. It, I heard it. Do you think I did? Oh, no, no, of course not. I wouldn't think of anything like that. Murder, oh, oh, please go away. I, I'm upset enough over my cousin's death. Please, I... Funny, I'm... as I recall, it, uh... You weren't even speaking to him. But no, we weren't. We never really have, uh, except to say hello, but, but not speaking to somebody and, and, and murder. That two, two different things. It, it, yes, it... one's fatal. Look, Nelson, don't fall apart from fright just because I pay you a social call and ask you a few simple questions. You are Joe Nelson's next of kin. Yes, I'm... Well, yes. You don't know who killed your cousin or why, well, eh? No, no, I, I don't. I don't know. Okay, Nelson. I think maybe we'll meet again. So long. Goodbye. Had a hand it to you, kid. Huh? Who are you? Just me. Who are you? I never I never saw you before. No, but your cousin saw me. Saw me just before I killed him. You you killed him? Did a nice job of it, too, don't what? you think? Right. Leaving his body in Blackie's apartment and all that? Why did you do it? Why did I kill your cousin or why did I dump his body where I did? Why did you kill him? What had he done to you? He didn't do me a favor. Oh. Didn't let me use the back room of his pet shop, a little business I'd like to be in. Well, so Wouldn't sell the shop to me. Didn't want to cash in on his pet shop. What? So I cashed him in. Oh, where did you come from? What do you want with me? Came in the back way. I was about to chin with you when I heard you talking to Blackie. Well, uh, like the way you handle the guy. Think you and me will do all right together. What do you mean? I mean the pet shop's yours with Joe dead. Well, yes, the pet shop. You and me are going into business together. In the back room, mostly. Running a little game. Well, what? The... Nobody would suspect we'd be running a game in a pet shop. Oh, no, 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 we're not. I don't want any part of that. No? No. You... Well, maybe you want all of... <laughs> That's only a sample of what happens to you if you don't do what I say. Gotta do what I say. Gotta do it. No rents. Hello. 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 I want to speak to Boston Blackie, please. Speaking. Uh, Blackie, this is Frank Nelson. Yes? I- I'm in trouble. I-, I found out who killed my cousin. When you tell me, he'll be in trouble. Who is it? I, I don't dare talk over the phone. C- could you meet me here? Sure, but where's here? Oh, my home. C- come right away. Quickly, will you? Keep your jitters on, Frank, and keep that tip on tap till I get there. <laughs> Blackie. Hello, Frank. Did I get here soon enough, didn't you? I was afraid you wouldn't come at all. I... What's the matter with you? Are you afraid of everything? Oh. Well, you said you knew who killed Joe. Now, who was... Bob! Oh. Oh. Smacked Blackie good, didn't I, Frank? I think he got even a peek at me. All right, I got him here so you could knock him out. Now are you through with me? Now will you leave me alone? Partners, now, that's us. No, no, we're not. Just begin and awake together. What do I have to do now? You, you hit him awful hard. You might have killed him. You didn't you... I? Just knocked him out. But I'm going to finish the job. Do you have to do Yeah. That? You're going to help. What are you going to do? Well, something I haven't done to a guy for years. Oh, tie his hands, tie his feet, tie his hands and feet together. 
Then put him and a few weights in a gunny sack and toss him... In the river, Bob, no... Why not? Guy gets giddy in a beam when he wakes up in a sack at the bottom of the river. Oh, Ty. But not so light-headed, he floats. Well, what is it? Well, what is it? Is it? I'll tell you what it is, you Buster Evans. Yeah? I'm Michael's homicide department. I'm supposed to bring you to headquarters. Me? What for? For a little matter of murder. You're crazy, Jack. The records say you had a bust-up with Joe Nelson when both of you were in prison. Sure, but that was three years ago. I know, I know. But Nelson has been murdered, and that was yesterday. So Inspector Faraday wants to see him. Yeah? Yeah, and he's rounding up everybody who might have had a motive to kill Nelson, and you're pretty high on the list. <laughs> Lady, did I ever tell you how wonderful I am? Oh. I'm going to take you out of a joint like this. You'll be singing in a class A spot when I'm through with you. Sorry to interrupt Listen, you, I Sam can... Tobias. That's right. Who are you? Blaine, homicide department. Oh. Shut up, you. He's got nothing on me. Well, what is it, Flatfoot? You and Joe Nelson never got on, did you? What about it? He's dead, and Inspector Faraday wants to see you at headquarters. He wants to see everybody who didn't like Joe Nelson on account of Nelson's dead. Get your hat. Okay, I'll be out in an hour. Honey. Yeah? I guess you could wait another hour till I fix up your career for you, can't you? You shouldn't have made me come along, Bob. You shouldn't have. Why not? Need you to help me dump Blackie's body overboard. Well, uh... Funny deep out where we are now. Blackie's still sleeping, Frank? I don't know. I'm not sure. I I think maybe I saw the sack move once. No, man, anything... Cut the motor, huh? Bob, let's turn back. Blackie's still alive Cut and we... Cut the motor, I said. Okay. Blackie? Blackie? You awake? Maybe, maybe, maybe he's dead. You hit him awful hard. Got a hard head. Tell you something, Blackie. Just in case you're awake. Oh, Bob, stop it. We've got to do this. Let's do it and get out of here. I'm scared. I'm... A minute, Frank. Get this, Blackie. What? Yeah. This is what happens to guys that know too much. Oh. We're out on a river. My life. Nice night. Nice night for a swim tied up like a roast turkey. Let's see how nice you can paddle. <laughs> well, please, let's get it over get with. Get it over with, huh? Okay. Pick him up. Uh, hey, it's heavy. Uh, guess he's still out. That's a boy. What? Oh. Here he goes. <laughs> And now, back to Boston Blackie. Joe Nelson, pet shop owner and ex-convict, is found dead in Boston Blackie's apartment. Joe was killed by a man who wanted Joe's pet shop as a front for a gambling house and who tried to throw the blame on Blackie. Frank Nelson, Joe's weakling cousin, knows this, but is forced by fear to work with Bob. And with Frank's help... Bob knocks out Blackie, ties him up, puts him in a sack, and dumps him into the river. As we return to our story, it is several hours later, and Mary Wesley is in Inspector Faraday's office. Inspector Faraday, you have to help me find Blackie. It's his own fault if he got himself in a jam, Miss Wesley. He stuck his nose into this case. Inspector, he didn't. He was forced into this. All he did was go to that pet shop with me and look at the Cocker Spaniel, and the next thing he knew, he was involved in a murder. I know it, Miss Wesley. I know he couldn't avoid getting messed up in this, and I'm as worried as you are. I've had every suspect on the Nelson murder picked up and grilled. No luck. Everybody's got an alibi. Are you sure Blackie went to see Frank Nelson? Well, he said he was going to, but he said he'd phone me in an hour. Well, that was six hours ago. Yeah. I don't have to guess he's run into trouble. I know he has. Well, then do something, Inspector Faraday. You do think something. I don't want to do something? But what? I don't know where he went. Maybe Frank Nelson led Blackie into a trap. The kind of trap that closes and stays closed. Oh, Inspector, you, you don't think he's dead, do you? They killed Joe Nelson. We can't do them any more harm for two murders than we can for one. Oh, but, Inspector, will you just... Anybody miss me? Oh, Blackie! Blackie. Oh, Blackie, darling. Hey, hey, wait, Mary. Wait a minute. Don't get so close until I can get into some dry clothes. Oh, Blackie, you're soaking wet. Where have you been? Not in a dry place, Faraday. Had Joe Nelson's killer at bay, so they dumped me into the river. And in a sack, too. In a sack? 
Well, how'd you get out if a guy doesn't get put in a sack and tossed in the river and lift the talent? No. It was not only a sack, but my hands and feet were tied together. What an imagination the guy's got. Oh, gee, how did you get out, Blackie? Well, you know I'm loaded with trick gadgets, Mary. Oh. You've saved my life a dozen times. Mm. <sighs> Someday one of them won't work, and I'll be a happy man. Inspector, please, you're the one that helped me get away this time. Uh, remind me to apologize to myself. How did I help you? Remember the razor blade you saw on the rug in my apartment this morning? Yeah. Well... It had come from the heel of my shoe. It's a trick heel, hollowed out. In my apartment, the blade probably slipped out, so I slipped it back in. And then when I got dumped out of the boat into the river, I slipped it out of the heel, and that saved my life. You you, you cut your way out of that sack under, underwater with a razor blade? And it was tough, but not too tough, Mary. <gasps> my hands were tied to my feet, but my fingers were free. Yeah. I slipped the heel of my shoe aside, got out the blade, cut the rope binding my hands and feet together, yeah. ripped open the sack, and swam to shore. Sorry I'm so late. Oh, sorry you're late. Oh, Blackie, we thought you were dead. Oh, when I swallowed those first few gulps of water, I thought I was too, Mary. <laughs> Faraday, I know Joe Nelson's killer. Yeah? Who, who is it? Well, all I know about him is that his first name is Bob and that he's working with Frank Nelson, Joe's cousin. Hooray! You want us to pick up every guy named Bob in the city? No. In fact, I don't want you to do anything. You see, right now, I can't prove he's the guy who killed Joe and tried to kill me. But I still think that I can find him, and when I do, I'll make him talk. Blackie, how are you going to do it? By forcing Joe's cousin to tell you where this Bob can be found? Forcing him, Mary? Yeah. Mm, that wouldn't be quite possible, I think. Oh? No, he'd be too scared to tell me about Bob. He know Bob would kill him. No, Mary, it's got to be much cuter than that. And it also has to provide the proof I need. Offhand, that sounds like a pretty tough order, Blackie. Yeah, maybe. But haven't you heard, Inspector? I'm a pretty tough character. Push the table a little closer to the wall, Frank. Bob, I can't do anything more tonight. I, I got a feeling that something... Not no time for feelings. Got to get this room ready for business. I Push know. around to the table. Yeah, that's got it. I sent word around to the list that you gave me that we'd be open for business tomorrow night. But do you think that maybe Thank we ought to wait? tomorrow isn't too soon. Could open tonight. Room is ready. Uh, it, you know, the it, guys it, want to gamble, so are we. <laughs> when our black he is. Uh, when our long he's been dead. Do we have to talk about Why it? Why not? This makes me... <laughs> What if he died quick like a smart oh. guy? I kicked up a fuss like a hero. He was unconscious when we threw him overboard. I don't think he even knew what happened to him. Hang it in. Well, he usually wakes a guy up. Oh, That's a point of sacking a guy and dumping him into the drink. Yes. Gives a guy a surprise like a gag at a party. Oh, can't <laughs> talk about something else. It's all good. you'll be hearing about for months. What happened to Boston Blackie? Oh, I wish you <laughs> And nobody will ever know. Well, I'm not so sure. Oh. Huh? Wouldn't talk if the cops put the heat on you. Would you, Frank? Oh, no, 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 Bob. I, I won't know a thing. I won't know... Uh, Wouldn't no. like it if you did. Oh, I won't talk, Bob. I, I'm as much in this thing as you are now. Are you Good thing you know that. Well, but, Bob, uh, what if the cops do get to us? Well, what if Blackie doesn't stay at the bottom and there's something about that sack that leads him to us? What Nothing about, about the what? sack or anything that'll lead him to us. Huh? <laughs> Funny well, thing, though. See what it said on that sack? No, I, I didn't pay any attention. I didn't really... You'd seen what it said, Frank. Give you a laugh. It said, contents perishable. Keep in... Cool, dry place. Throw your head on the chair, Mary. I'm going to work and you're going to watch. Oh, seems to me that's all I've done tonight. Watch you come back from the dead and watch Frank Nelson's house just now to see that he got home. He's home and he's alone. That's all I care about. When I was supposed to be unconscious in that sack, I heard this character Bob talk. I think I can imitate his voice. Oh, now, what good will that do? I imagine you're going to call Frank. But what can you say to him over the phone that will either lead you to Bob or give you the proof you say you need? Wait and see, lady. Just wait and see. I could follow Frank and get him to lead me to Bob eventually, but this way is better. It's faster. Now, listen. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've got Frank's home number written down here. Yeah. Here it is. Indigo 1561. Watch me trick him into telling me where Bob can be reached. Listen. Okay, okay. Hello? Frank? Yes? Gotta talk to you. No, this is... Oh, sure, Bob, I know. What's the matter, more trouble? No, and there ain't gonna be any. Oh, that's good. First of all, throw my old phone number away. Well, yeah, I was gonna do that. Not gonna work with my... from my place anymore. Want me from now on call Hillside 3267. Got it? Oh, wait a minute, I'll, I'll write it down. Here's your old number in my book. 
What number did you have for me? Uh, making 6784. Yeah, making 6784. Cross it off and put the new one in. Hillside 3267. That's if you want me from now on. Okay, Hillside 3. Now get this. Want you to meet me right away. Lincoln Park. What? Want to see you. Entrance to Lincoln Park. At this hour, but Bob, you only left me a half hour ago. What's wrong? Is it Blackie's Blackie? You know we got rid of him like it did your cousin. Yeah, sure, I know, but I can't imagine what the trouble is then. I can't... Meet me and find out, that's all. Right away. Goodbye. (laughs) Well, Mary, how'd I do? Oh, Blackie, you were wonderful. And you got Bob's phone number. Well, that was one of the reasons for the call. Now I'm calling Bob, pretending to be frank. I get it. And I'll get the two of them out at Lincoln Park. Lincoln, six, seven, eight, four. Yeah? Uh, uh, Bob, Bob, I'm really scared. You've got to meet me right away. Scared? But, yeah. What are you but, scared of? But, well, well, I... Ghosts? That's all we got to worry about, Frank. Then, well, you, you got to meet me right away. I, I got to talk to Sit you. Sit and shut up. Nobody knows I knocked up your cousin up, Blackie. What's eating you? Well, I'll tell you when I see you. Bob, uh, Bob, either you meet me right away or I go to the police. Oh. In that case, better meet you. Better meet you right away, too. Whereabouts? At Lincoln Park. Hurry, will you? I'll be what? there. Don't you worry about that. Well, Mary, that did it. Okay. Now to call Faraday and get him to Lincoln Park so we can link those two guys to murder. <laughs> That you, Frank? Sure, it's me, Bob. Sure, you do. The time you got here. Now, what's all this about being scared and going to the cops about me killing your cousin? Uh, what, what are you talking about? I don't... Uh, yeah, what... say it to my face, can you? What? What, what was... Too yellow? Huh? I kid, you're not going to any cops now or never. Well, you, you... In fact, you're not talking to anybody now on. Oh, no, Bob, no. no. Oh, oh, Didn't finish, huh? Well, let's well. I don't think so, Bob, but this will finish you. <laughs> You got him, Blackie? Did you? One smack is all it took, Faraday. He's through. He's all yours. Okay, I'll take care of him. I want to see how bad Frank is hit. Frank. Frank. Blackie, how did you get away? Never mind about that now. Where did the bullet get you? In the side. I don't think it's too serious. I hope not. I wouldn't want to cheat the state out of the fun of putting you on trial. Look, Blackie, look at the cute cocker spaniel in the window. Oh, I want it. <laughs> now, you know what happened the last time we went dog shopping, Mary. Well, we... I still didn't get the dog, and that's all I remember. And, Blackie, if I remembered anything else, I'd remember to make you promise me you'd never fool with Inspector Faraday's murder cases. Would you like that? <laughs> no. No, I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> well, if your heart's set on having a cocker spaniel, let's go in the store and get oh, it. Oh, thanks. Come on in. Hey, Blackie. Doesn't seem to be anybody here. Oh, don't tell me this is starting all over again. Hey. Hey, somebody. Oh, Blackie, we're jinxed. There's something wrong here, too. Let's get out of that. Oh, no, we're sticking it to something haywire. I want to find out what. Hey, anybody here? Anybody? Did, did you want something, please? Oh, mister, am I glad to see you. <laughs> what is I can do for you? We'd like that black cocker spaniel in the window. What's his name? Uh, the black one? Uh-huh. Well, his name's Blackie. What else would it be? Oh, Blackie? <laughs> oh, no, I, I just gotta have him. He, he's very playful, miss. He likes nothing so much as he's chasing cats up a tree. Oh. oh, by all means, then, Mary. Let's have him. He'll remind you of me when I'm not around. Well, he's much cuter. And besides, just because he chases things up a tree, why should that remind me of you? Well, Mary, isn't that where I generally have Faraday? Oh, Blackie. <laughs> <laughs>
Yes? Mr. Martin? Yes? Uh, there's a John Burns here to see you, Mr. Martin. He said you'd know who he was if I told you. Oh. Johnny Cash Burns? Yes, yes, Miss Arden. Johnny Burns sent him right in. Yes, sir. Mr. Martin? Mr. Burns, Mr. Johnny Burns. That's right. Come in, come in. Sit down. Have a cigar, Mr. Burns. No, Have thanks, a... chum. Don't smoke. Don't do anything but sell woolens. At a price. See what I mean? <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Now, are you really serious about the number of bolts that you can sell me? Sure. Serious about the price, too. I didn't want to go into details over the phone. I like to do business uh, man to man. See what I mean? Yes, yes. Yes, I do. Uh, this firm hasn't had imported woolens in any quantity for years. You could put us back in big business if you could deliver imported material. Your firm can have a large quantity, Mr. Martin, for a uh, corresponding amount of money. See what I mean? How much? It'll be a dollar a yard less than you're paying for domestic woolens right now. A dollar a yard less than... Mr. Burns, are you a legitimate operator? Do you want imported woolens, Mr. Martin? Yes. Well, what do you care what or who I am? Well... You want woolens? I'll get them. I'm going out of town, but I'll be back in a few days. And when I come back, you're back in business. See what I mean? And now on to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. Well, Johnny, I got my helicopter loaded to the blades. Are you ready to take off? I will be in a minute, Sam. Want to make sure I got my copter loaded evenly. See what I mean? Hey, be sure you get home with those woolens, Johnny. It, it's my money that paid for all this, you know. It's my idea that put your money to use. And money without an idea isn't worth the room it takes up in a bank. Well, I guess I'm loaded. Uh, Johnny. Yeah? You know, we, we should have chartered a regular plane and flown this stuff into the country. You crazy? The reason we're using copters is so we can drop down behind the woods on your farm and nobody will notice us. See what I mean? I know, but a regular plane is so much faster. Yeah, if we used a regular plane, we'd go to jail much faster, too. Yeah. We'd be reported if we used a regular airport. Yeah, that's right, sir. Okay, I'm all set. How about you? Oh, all set. Uh, when are you delivering this stuff to the Martin Company? We'll cross the border just after sunset land at your farm by dawn. Then I'll get in touch with Martin, and we'll be rich. Great. Happy landings, Johnny. Yeah, happy landings yourself, chum. Happy landings. Are you sure you can't come to the party with me this evening, Blackie? I'm not going to like it without you. Oh, Mary, I'd love to, but I can't. The police department is raising funds for the underprivileged children's league, and I promised Faraday I'd help out. Mm, I know. So I'll just walk you there, if you don't mind. Well, you're giving up the party for a good cause. I guess I shouldn't complain. I'll try to join you later if I can get away in time. Otherwise, I'll call for you when the party's over. Yeah. Whose party is this, anyhow? Johnny Burns. You know him, don't you? Johnny Burns? Mm-hmm. No, I don't think I do. Oh, you met him once or twice, I think. He's always, uh, well, he always puts see what I mean at the end of his sentences. But he's really very nice. Don't you remember him? Oh, yes, of course. We met him at the Bradfords one night. I remember him. Rather nice guy. Mm -hmm. He gives nice parties. Well, he lives in the neighborhood of nice parties, I'll say that. Which house is his? Uh, the third one down the street. Oh, you've been here before. Mm, yes. He and his aunt gave a bridge party about a month ago. London Bridge? Oh, Blackie, your jokes are falling down. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> well, here we are. I'll call for you when the party's over if I can't make it sooner. Call me if you need me. You can get me through Faraday's office. Have a good time. But uh, not too good without me. Oh, Blackie. <laughs> I'll pick you up and take you home around midnight. I'll be waiting. I'll be there. <laughs> Sam. Johnny, what happened to you? You you said you'd be here at 8.30 last night, and I hadn't been able to get in touch with you anywhere. Well, what's a day between friends, chum, huh? Well, it's a hundred years if you're waiting for the kind of money I'm waiting for. Didn't hurt you, did it? It hurt me plenty. Uh, how did you make out with Martin and those woolens? He bought. See what I mean? The whole lot? Every bolt, every yard. Cash? What are you talking to Johnny Cash Burns, remember? <laughs> Well, I remember we're supposed to split the money now, so let's split, huh? 
Let's split up, you mean, don't you, Sam? What do you mean, split up? Our partnership is over. See what I mean? But why? There, there was plenty of profit in just this one trip, Johnny. We'll make a fortune after a few more. No, I'm going to work alone now, Sam. You see, I just needed your money to get me started. What? Not that I am started. I'm rich and you're through. All right. All right, I'm through. Give me my half of the money we got from Martin and I quit. No, I'm, uh, I'm keeping your half, too, Sam, because uh, you're not going to need it. See what I mean? Johnny, what, what are you doing with the gun? That's what I mean. Right now, I'm uh, just holding it, Sam. But don't worry, chum. I'll see that you get a good funeral. See what I mean? If anyone has a nice funeral, it's going to be you, Johnny. So where do you think you're going? To the telephone to call the police. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Well, you're not me. And you're not very smart. <coughs> well, what's the matter, Sam? Does it take more than one slug to drop you? Oh. Well, that just hurt me, Johnny. All right, get out of here and I won't. Ever tell who shot me. You can call the police, write letters, send telegrams, send planes up to write it in the sky, but you'll never be able to prove I shot you. No? No. You won't be able to prove I was even here. Oh, Johnny, you're a fool. You're a mad crazy... Oh, my. Guess you need one more slug, huh? Oh, Johnny! <laughs> that did it. In fact, that does it. Three slugs and you're out. Three steps and I'm out. The phone. The phone. Yes, Mr. Blaine? Smith, get the police, quick. Well, what's the matter, Mr. Blaine? I, I, I've been shot. Uh, you, what? Johnny Burns just shot me. Get, get the police in a hurry. I'm dying. I... I, I... You killed him, didn't you, Burns? You pumped three bullets into him. Burns, you shot him down in cold blood. Stood there and let him have it. You did it, didn't you, Burns? You did it. Fired three shots into him. You killed him, we know you did. Talk, Burns, talk. Talk or you'll never get out of that chair. You'll sit under that light till you dry up, Burns. Admit it, Burns. You killed him, didn't you? Uh, you know, I have an idea. You boys think I killed somebody. Why, I... Hold it, hold it, Danny. This guy's stubborn. He's not going to talk. Go out and see if Miss Wesley's here yet, will you, Sergeant? Yes, Inspector Faraday, right away. Miss Wesley will tell you I was with her when Sam Blaine was killed, Inspector. That's a lie. Sam Blaine told his operator at 10.30 this evening that you were there in his apartment and had shot him. And when we got there, he was dead. But was I there? No, I wasn't. See what I mean? You weren't there then, but you were there at 10.30 when Blaine was shot. You were there and you shot him. I was at home. Playing host to Miss Mary Wesley at that hour. I didn't see Sam Blaine tonight. In fact, I haven't seen him in several days. Uh, what was Miss Wesley doing at your house? Uh, visiting. I've uh, known her for a long time. I uh, know her friend, Boston Blackie, slightly. Met him once or twice, so what? So this, I'm going to... Inspector Faraday. Yes, Sergeant. Miss Wesley's here. Good. Send her in. Boston Blackie's with her, Inspector. Do you want him to wait outside? I want him to, but I know he won't. So I'll send him in, too. Thanks for the invitation, Faraday. But why the sudden interest in Mary? Maybe he sent for me because he knew you'd come along and he needs your help, Blackie. Miss Wesley, you're around Blackie so much, you're beginning to talk like him. Oh, is that bad? No. Uh, <laughs> Seriously, Inspector Faraday, why do you... Oh, Mr. Burns. <laughs> I wondered when you'd notice me. We're, uh, seeing a lot of each other, aren't we, Mary? Miss Wesley... You know this man? Why, yes, he's Johnny Burns. Baby, baby, tell the man about tonight so we can all get out of here and go home, huh? See what I mean? Uh, what do you mean about tonight? This guy says you were with him in his home between the hours of 10 and 11 tonight. Yeah, that's right, I was. Mary, you weren't at Burns' place tonight. That was last night. When there was a party there, I was supposed to pick you up at midnight, remember? Well, I was there tonight, too, Blackie. Oh? Uh-huh. I left my compact last night and went back for it tonight. Mr. Burns was there and asked me to stay. Yeah. And, uh, we had a nice, uh, nice quiet hour together. Didn't we, baby? Had a very pleasant one, Johnny. Uh, Blackie, you were busy with the police athletic club for children again tonight, so... Well, don't scowl at me for finding something to do. Well, Mary, you weren't at Burns' place tonight. I called your apartment house when I got through at the club, and the switchboard operator told me that you were at Burns' house, so I went there... But when I got there and rang the bell, no one answered. What time was that, Blanky? 
Well, about 10.30. But I was there, Blackie. Until quarter after 11, in fact. And don't look at me like that. I'm telling the truth. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Faraday, why is it so important for you to know where Mary was tonight? It's important for me to know where this man Burns was tonight. Especially between the hours of 10 and 11. A man named Sam Blaine was murdered at 10.30 tonight. And I know this man Burns shot him. Well, that's impossible, Inspector Faraday. He was with me at that time. Sorry to disappoint you, Inspector, but I told you this would happen. See what I mean? Quiet, Burns. Miss Wesley, do you swear you were with this man from 10 to 11 tonight? I swear it, Inspector Faraday. In fact, he wasn't even out of my sight for a single minute. And now, back to Boston Blackie. Johnny Burns and Sam Blaine illegally fly imported woolens into this country by helicopter and sell the entire lot to George Martin. But instead of dividing the take with Blaine, Burns kills his partner. Blaine phoned about Burns after he was shot and even named his assailant. But the police can't prove Burns killed Blaine. At the time of the shooting, Burns claims he was in his own home with Boston Blackie's friend, Mary Wesley, and Mary insists he was, so Burns goes free. As we return to our story, Boston Blackie and Mary Wesley are in Blackie's apartment, and the doorbell rings. I'll get him, Mary. All right. Yes? Boston Blackie. That's right. I'd like to talk to you. Come in. Thanks. My name's George Martin, Blackie. I'm a dealer in fabrics. I take it that's not immaterial. And if you object to remarks like that, don't feed me straight lines. Feed you? <laughs> For that, you ought to be sent to sleep without supper. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> Mr. Martin, the young lady with a sense of humor is Mary Wesley. Oh, Mr. how Martin? do you do? How do you how do? How do you do, Mr. Martin? I hope you're not here to sell me any cloth, Mr. Martin. No, no, Blackie. I want to tell you about a man named John Burns. Johnny Burns, he calls himself. Johnny Burns. I'm trying to find out something about Johnny Burns. What do you know about him? Well, he sold me some woolens a few days ago. Genuine imported woolens. And at a ridiculously low price. Mm-hmm. I thought everything was legitimate, but... I'm worried now that I know he was involved in a murder. You're worried? Yes. So am I. The police convinced he shot and killed Sam Blaine, but they can't prove it, and neither can I. Blackie... I won't be involved in this because I bought the woolens from him, will I? Well... I think now that Burns brought them into this country illegitimately. And I know he was associated with Mr. Blaine because I picked up those woolens at Blaine's farm. Hmm. So Burns killed Blaine to avoid splitting profits. You'd better return those woolens, Martin. Oh, I've already done so. I told Burns the stuff was damaged. Blackie. Yes? Johnny Burns didn't kill Blaine. Burns was with me. And you know I wouldn't lie to you. I don't say you're lying, Mary. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Martin. Yes? Something crazy is going on in here, and I'm too sane to figure it out. Blackie, Johnny Burns was with me, and that's all there is to it. There's much more to it, Mary. There's a trick to it somewhere, if I can only find it. Maybe you weren't at Burns' house, ever think of that? (laughs) I happen to know where I was, Blackie. And at what time? If you were there at 10.30, as you say, why didn't you answer the doorbell when it rang? Because you didn't ring the bell at his house. I don't think you know where you were. I know where I was last night. And I'll admit one thing. I certainly don't know where I am now. Mary, come on. What are you hiding? Nothing, Blackie. Believe me, Johnny Burns and I were at his house. In fact, from 10 to 11, we were listening to the radio. The Balin Symphony Concert. He's a lover of good music. And it was his idea that we listened to this symphony last night. Blackie, who are you calling, Blackie? I've got an idea, Mr. Martin. Right now, I'm calling up Faraday, and then we're calling on Johnny Burns. Faraday, this is just the way it was when I came here for Mary last night. I rang the bell, no answer. Well, let's not ring the doorbell anymore, Blackie. Let's use your peculiar genius with locks and just walk in, huh? Why, Faraday, what a terrible thing for you to suggest. Oh, uh, turn your back. I want my genius with locks to stay peculiar to me. All right. But wait a minute, Faraday. We've rung the doorbell a dozen times. Nobody answers. Nobody's home. Yeah, uh, Mr. Wright. And no one was at home here between 10 and 11 last night when Sam Blaine was killed, either. Well, if that's so, Miss Wesley was lying. She claims she was here. 
And Johnny Burns claims he was here. But they weren't either one of them. Uh, close your mouth and open the door. Turn your back. It's turned. And the lock's turned. Well, that was easy. That was genius. Well, let's go in. Go in and wait, you mean. According to you, there's nobody home. It can't be. Not anybody who can hear, anyhow. You mean hear bells, don't you? You know what I mean. There's no one in this house. Morning, gentlemen. What? <laughs> Johnny Burns, good morning. So there was nobody at home, huh, Blanky? What's this about a bell? What bell are you talking about? Your doorbell, Burns. Oh, oh, that. I forgot to tell you it doesn't work. Hasn't worked in a week. Ah, that explains how Mary could have been here last night and not hear the bell, but that's all it explains. You want things explained, Blackie? Or so do I. I want an explanation for you busting in. Either that or you get out of here, both of you. I'm reading. See what I mean? I'm going to do a little reading myself before this day is over. Your confession. What are you going to use to get it? A rubber hose? I got nothing to confess. Oh, I, uh, see you're interested in books, Faraday. Would you like to borrow something from my library? Not if all your books are like these. Examining the subconscious. Who'd want to read a book like that? The inside of the mind. That sounds worse. Burns, where were you last night between 10 and 11? Listening to the radio with your girlfriend. The symphony, John. You should listen to it yourself sometime. Music is uh, good for the soul. As a matter of fact, I did hear the symphony last night on my car radio when I was driving back from the police athletic club. Symphony music in a library full of screwy books about the mind. What are you, Burns? One of those intellectuals? It's possible, Faraday. He's outsmarted us so far. Annoying, isn't it, Blackie? Annoying to feel so sure of something and know that you'll uh, never be able to prove it. You know, there's something about you that makes me want to clip you, Burns. Maybe because I'm not excited. Well, maybe this will get you excited. One well, Blackie, you don't smack him. Let no. go of me, Faraday. I want to plant one of this guy. No, Blackie, not now. Maybe you can <clears throat> take your tough friend out of here, Faraday, I... before I have him arrested for annoying me. No... Okay, Faraday, I'm clipping. Let me go. All right, but behave yourself. Behave yourself, Sonny, and find your way out of here fast. See what I mean? I'll leave, Burns. But let me tell you something. I know a lot more about you than you think. George Martin came to see me about some imported woolens he bought from you. George Martin, George Martin. Never heard of the guy. No? No. He told me he did business with you, and I believe him. And I'm going to do a little business with you. And, brother, I mean business. Hello, Mary. Oh, Blackie, come on in. Well, is everything over but the shouting, or do we still have to whisper? Yes. I don't have to now. (laughs) Here's the evening paper. The girl at the desk downstairs said you hadn't picked yours up yet. Oh, thanks. Oh, gosh, this is awful. What is? Well, didn't you read the headline? A hundred people were killed in a chemical plant explosion last night. That's not news. I heard it on the radio last night, and so did you. I listened to the symphony with Johnny Burns last night. Remember? Well, I was listening to the symphony, too, at the same time you were. And they broke in with a news flash about the explosion. Don't you remember? I remember the symphony concert. And it wasn't broken into by anything. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hmm? Now I know what happened. While you were at Burns' house, he left for half an hour or maybe more. Oh, but, Blackie, that's impossible. I know. But I also know it was done and how it was done. <laughs> I figure this way, Faraday. Martin told me he picked up his woolens from Burns at Blaine's farm. Yeah. Burns wasn't at his house. Maybe he's out here at the farm. Well, here's the farm. What goes on now? Look, Faraday. There goes Burns now, running out toward the barn. What for? Is he in a hurry to milk the cows? The barn door's open, Faraday. Ever see a cow with wings? Hey, that's an airplane. That's a helicopter, and I'll bet it's loaded with woolens. That's why Burns is scramming. Hey, Burns, where do you think you're going? Don't run him down, Blackie. Run him down? I'll knock him down. Burns, you're not going anywhere. Oh, that's what you think. Oh, yeah. Come here. Oh. Get up, Burns. Come on, get up. You're not hurt. Good going, Frankie. I see this plane is loaded with woolens. The smuggled woolens you told me about. No wonder Burns tried to scram, huh? Were you going somewhere with those woolens, Burns? I was. Well, you're going somewhere else now, Burns. Because I know why Mary could honestly believe she was with you while she was really at Blaine's apartment... While you were there murdering him. Are you really as clever as I think? 
No, but I don't have to be. You see, you aren't as clever as you think, either. Concentrate, Mary. Concentrate. How can she concentrate, Blackie? She's almost asleep. Then she's all set for what I want to do. Listen to what I tell you now, Mary. How can she hear you? She's asleep. Is she? We'll see. Mary, you left your compact in Inspector Faraday's office. Blanky, what are you talking about? Her compact isn't Quiet, in my... Faraday. Mary, your compact is in Faraday's office. In exactly one hour, you will go down and get it. In exactly one hour, you will go to Inspector Faraday's office and get your compact. Now I've heard everything, Blanky. And Miss Wesley hasn't heard anything. I tell you she's asleep. We're going down to your office now, Inspector. In exactly one hour, you're going to think you're dreaming. <laughs> All right, Blackie, the hour's up. <laughs> Where's Miss Wesley? Well, she'll be here any minute, Faraday, and when she comes, I'll show you just how Johnny Burns could be in two places at once. She's not going to show up at all. How could she? She was fast asleep when you told her to come down here for a compact. She didn't hear a word. You... Hello there. Oh, what uh, were you saying, Faraday? Nothing, now that she's here. Uh, hi, Miss Wesley. Hi. I'm uh, sorry to interrupt a conference, but I uh, was under the impression I left my compact here. Anybody see it? Nobody's seen your compact, Mary, but Inspector Faraday has just seen something else. He's seen how I hypnotized you. You what? I hypnotized you in my apartment, Mary. Just as Johnny Burns did in his apartment the night of the party. Wait a minute. Miss Wesley wasn't hypnotized. She was asleep. Faraday, hypnosis is an acknowledged science. And it includes post-hypnotic suggestion. Whatever that is. Well, uh, listen, I'll try to explain it to you. After Burns hypnotized you the night of the party, Mary, he gave you a post-hypnotic suggestion to return there the following night to look for your compact. The compact he then proceeded to take out of your bag. Well, I don't remember anything about being hypnotized by him, Blackie. Of course not. But listen, Mary. Hmm? Your subconscious mind made you come back to Burns' house the following night. Made you come back there and fall asleep when he snapped his fingers or his lighter or said some key word that he had planted while you were under hypnosis. On your second visit to his place, the night of the murder, he put you under. Now, during hypnosis, you're completely unconscious of time. You were ordered to have no recollection of falling asleep or of being hypnotized the night before. And I did all this? You had to, Mary. The subconscious is very strong. Burns used hypnosis and you as a perfect alibi for his time while he was murdering Blaine. Okay, I heard enough. I'm calling the detention room. It would have been easy for Burns to drive from his house to Blaine's and back in a half hour. And I'm convinced this is the way he tricked Miss Wesley. Yes, Inspector? Sergeant, get me Johnny Burns. Yes, sir. I'll be right in. And I'll have a confession in an hour. Yes, sir. Oh, Blackie, I'm so sorry. I honestly thought I was telling the truth when I said Johnny Burns was with me all the time. I know you thought you were telling the truth, Mary. But let this be a lesson to you. Stay away from guys like Johnny Burns. Why? He seemed like such a nice man. Mary, if you were working for me, you know what I'd say about people like Johnny Burns? No, what? Play with Burns and you get fired. <laughs>
Maybe I could listen to that all night, Henry. Like, huh? Sal, you play so easy. I've been playing this thing all evening. Well, play it some more. Ah, a little. Ah, that's wonderful. Not too loud, Henry, the neighbors. You know. Yeah, that's better. You should be able to get a job in a nice spot easy the way you play. I bet you find a job tomorrow. Well, I tramped all over town today, and it was nothing doing. Well, you didn't expect to ring the bell your first day in town, did you, darling? Yeah, I'd better ring it soon. I'm low on dough. I'll lend you some. Excuse me? Yeah, mm hmm. Hello? Sal, this is Bill. What do you want? Not what you think. No? You toss me out of your life, I'm not gonna bounce back. I want. You want what? Do I hear a harmonica? Well, it's not the Boston Symphony. That guy Henry Peterson's with you, huh? The guy you told me was coming to town. Uh Uh-huh, and there's nothing you can do about it either. Oh, no? No. Well, when I get through with that joker, he won't be playing a harmonica. He'll be strumming a harp. And now on to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. Will you put down that harmonica and listen to me? You don't have anything to say. I don't go with a gal who still has a boyfriend. I heard that phone conversation just now. It's nothing to me anymore. You're something to him. Henry, you're going to stay here whether you like it or not. Well, I don't like it. And I'm not staying. You have to. I gave up Bill for you. The day I got your letter about coming here to live, I told Bill it was all off. Well, it's all off with us, too. I know Bill Foster's repping his record, and I don't want to be the reason the cops are looking for him for murder. Henry, if you walk out on me, I'll kill you. <laughs> what a choice. If I stay, Bill will kill me. If I leave, you kill me. I'll take a chance you won't. So long, Sal. Be a good gal. I'm warning you. You leave and I'll use this on you. Oh, the gal has a gun. My mother never told me which way to duck in a case like this, so I think I'll just duck out. Well, think again, music man. I gave up an awful lot for you. Bill loves me, and Bill's rich. And I turned him down for you, and now that I did, I'm keeping you. Forget it, will you? You and I were a quick thing that just isn't anymore. Go on back to Bill. I'll go back where I came from. So long. Henry, if you walk out on me, I... I said so long, Sal. Oh, yeah. Here. Here's a little thing to remember me by. (laughs) You shouldn't have done that, Sal. That hurt. Should have done more than that. Should have killed you. Why don't you fall? Why don't you die? Uh, Give me that gun. You don't want the gun anymore. Give it to me. What are you going to do? What I started out to do. Walk out on you. But I'm taking the gun with me. I'm shot bad, but I said I was going out of here. And I meant what I said. Who's that? Me, Bill. Who's me? Turn on the lights and see. This is your apartment. Turn them on. Who are you? I'm Henry Peterson. Henry Peterson? Yeah. What's left to me, anyway? Hey, what's the matter with you? What are you... Hey, you've been shot. Yeah, nicely, too. I held on just about as long as I could. Just... Long enough to make it here. What, you idiot? What are you trying to do to me? What's the idea of coming here? I just wanted you to know who did the job. Your pal, Sal. Sal? <laughs> She's a good shot. This is the gun she used. Oh, well, you're dying, you jerk. Now, get out of here. I've got a record. If you die here, the police will never believe I didn't kill you. Now, don't frame me, kid. Go on, I'm get out. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Bill. Just... Just don't think I got the time... Blackie, are you getting lazy? No, I'm getting this letter finished. No, I'm getting impatient. Yes? Is Boston Blackie in? Oh, yes. I'm Sally Rogers. I'd like to speak to him, please. Yeah, come on in. Thank you. You're Miss Wesley, aren't you? Yeah, I am. How'd you know? I've seen your picture in the papers with Blackie. Oh. Uh, Blackie, there's someone here to see you. See me? Mm Mm-hmm. 
A very pretty girl. Very pretty girl? You said someone, Mary? <laughs> Blackie, this is Sally Rogers. And uh, something tells me she's in trouble. Are you, Miss Rogers? No, I'm not, Blackie, but I'm afraid Henry Peterson is. Who's Henry Peterson? He's a friend of mine. He's a professional harmonica player. When he left me last night, he said he'd be back this morning, and I haven't heard from him all day. I'm afraid something's happened to him. What, for instance? Well, I was engaged to Bill Foster before I met Henry. Henry was going to see Bill when he left me. In other words, Bill Foster's happened to him, huh? Well... That guy shouldn't happen to anyone. Are you talking about Bill Foster, the racketeer, Miss Rogers? Yes, Miss Wesley, I am. And Bill threatened to do something terrible to Henry. Blackie, will you help me find him? Your boyfriend has been missing less than 24 hours, Miss Rogers. I don't think there's anything to worry about, but if there is, why don't you go to the police? No, I'm afraid to because of Bill. He may be watching me. Go to the police, Miss Rogers. And if you're afraid of Foster, ask them to protect you. The police would love to pin a rap on Bill Foster. They'll give you plenty of help. Well, if you think I should... I know you should. And if you're not satisfied with what the police accomplish, come and see me again. Thanks, Blackie. I'll do that. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye. So long. Well, you certainly got rid of her in a hurry, Blackie. What's the matter? Isn't she your type? I help people who need help, Mary, and she doesn't. Well, you seem very sure. I thought she was terribly upset. <coughs> and if it... Hey! Good night. What was that? Oh, gee, someone in the hall just screamed. As if you didn't know. Come on, let's go and see. Oh, Blackie, I have an awful feeling. Mary, it's not a feeling anymore. It's oh. a fact. Look there on the floor. Oh, yes. Near the elevator. That's Sally Rogers. Got a nasty gash on her head. We'll take her into my apartment, and you can do whatever nurses are supposed to do in cases like this, while I have Faraday grab Bill Foster, which is what I do in cases like this. Foster, what did you do with Henry Peterson? Let me handle this, Faraday. Foster? Where did you hide Peterson's body? Blackie, I've never even seen the guy in my life. How many times do I have to tell you? We don't want to hear you say that again, Foster. We want the truth. I'm telling the truth. Didn't even know the guy was in town till I called Sal and heard him playing the harmonica. Miss Rogers told Blackie you threatened to kill him. Sure, Inspector. Sure I did. But I was just kidding. Some sense of humor. You slugged Miss Rogers outside my apartment, but first you killed Henry Peterson. You did kill Peterson, didn't you? Come in. Inspector Faraday? Yeah, Blaine? Inspector, there's a man out here who wants to see you. Well, who cares? I'm trying to get this guy here to admit he killed Henry Peterson. But the man outside is Henry Peterson. Henry Peterson? <laughs> and I killed the guy, huh? Yes, you... Send him in here, Blaine. Yes, sir, right away. Uh, come in here, Peterson. The inspector will see you. Well, I think you're about through with me, aren't you, Inspector? Sit down, Foster. I have a hunch. There's inspector, a lot... Inspector, this is Henry Peterson. Come in, Peterson. Thanks, Inspector. <laughs> what an entrance. What an audience. I understand you think I'm dead. Uh, I had reason to believe you were. That'll be all, Blaine. Uh, yes, Inspector, sure. Do you know this man, Peterson? This one here? Yes, yes by reputation only. He's Bill Foster, isn't he? <laughs> I know him all. I understand he's supposed to kill me. Whatever gave anybody that idea. Well, I'm sure I don't know, Henry, but I'm glad you showed up before these guys beat a confession out of me. I'd uh, be here. Peterson, uh, I understand you're new in town. Yeah, just got here yesterday. Came in yesterday. Is there anyone in town who can identify you? That is, besides Sally Rogers? Well, let's see now. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I haven't seen anyone else. I have my driver's license right here in my wallet. I'll show you that. Uh, you look at it, Faraday. Peterson... I understand you play the harmonica. Yes, how'd you know? Sure, I play it. Miss Rogers told me. You don't by any chance have a harmonica with you, do you? Yes, certainly. I always carry one right here, sure. But can you play one? Shall I play what you want or what I want? Anything. Well, I don't know that. <laughs> but how about this? Well, Blackie, what happens now? I don't know. Only I don't feel too badly, because I guarantee you don't know either. That's enough of the harmonica, Peterson. Here's your wallet back. <laughs> Little number I wrote myself, okay? <laughs> well, Faraday, do I go now? Yeah, Foster, you can go. Now, wait a minute, Faraday. Keep Foster under guard until we've made one more test. What more do we need to believe this guy is Peterson? His driver's license says he is. He plays the harmonica the way he's supposed to. Right. But he ran out on Sally Rogers the way he wasn't supposed to. Let's take Peterson up to my apartment to see Miss Rogers and see what name she calls him. Mary, how's Miss Rogers? Is she all right? Oh, yes, Blackie. Uh, the cut on her head wasn't as bad as it looked. She's lying down in the bedroom. She has an awful headache. Yeah, and I'm going to have one. This guy here isn't Peterson. I'm who I say I am. <laughs> you take me to the south. You prove it. Yes, okay, sir. Okay, okay. Let's stop this nonsense. Come on, Faraday. Bring him into the bedroom. I'll show you I'm right. 
Come on, Peterson. I'm right with you. Drive me back. Miss Rogers, mm. are you awake? Mm. What? Oh. Oh, Blackie, hello. Miss Rogers, I'm Inspector Faraday of the police. Hello. Uh, this man says he's Henry Peterson. Oh. Hello, Henry. Where have you been? Hello, sir, baby. Is this Henry Peterson, Miss Rogers? Of course. Henry, what happened to you? Blackie, I don't know why you're standing there with your mouth open. Except maybe it's because this case is closed. Hello? Bill? Yeah. This is Sal. They let you out of jail at last, didn't they? Couldn't hold me, Sal. Not when I hadn't done anything wrong. You recovered enough from that smack on the head I gave you to go home, huh? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, that ought to teach you to keep Blackie out of this. Bill, what'd you do with Henry? Never mind what I did with him. You did something, I know that. Huh. You think so? I know so. I followed him after he left my apartment. I saw him go to yours. Where is he now? Some place where he won't do either of us any harm. That, uh, bullet of yours finished him, sweetheart. He's dead? Sure. Only if I were you, I'd... Keep quiet about it. Why? What do I have to be afraid of? He died in your house. And the police will always take my word against yours. Now, look, you. It's because you didn't shoot the guy where you dropped dead right away. I almost got loused up. Now, you keep your mouth shut. Or I'll have it closed permanently. You know, I'm pretty sure you would. When they brought your friend to see me at Blackie's, I said he was Henry. I caught on quick, don't you think? Well, stay caught on. We'll go to the chair. Both of us. Don't you worry, darling. This is one time we've not only fooled the police, we've made a fool out of Boston Blackie. And now, back to Boston Blackie. Harmonica playing Henry Peterson is shot by his girlfriend, Sally Rogers. Wounded, he goes to the home of racketeer Bill Foster, Sally's ex fiance and after telling Bill who shot him, dies. Sally, who saw Henry go to Bill's, comes to Blackie to complain that Henry is missing. Blackie and Inspector Faraday then pick up Bill and are about to charge him with the murder of Henry Peterson when, apparently, Henry Peterson appears very much alive. Sally identifies him as her missing boyfriend, so Faraday releases Bill Foster and the case is closed. As we return to our story, Blackie, convinced that the real Henry is dead, questions one of Sally's neighbors. Mrs. Stone, Sally Rogers had a visitor last night. I wonder if oh, you could yes, tell me... Oh, yes, indeed she did. I heard him playing the harmonica all evening. Walls are thin, you know. Well, I just loved the way he played the William Tell Overture. I've never heard it played like that. It was simply well, wonderful. Well, that's... The way... uh, the, yes, yes, that's fine, Mrs. Stone. But uh, did you see him? Oh, goodness gracious. No, no, indeed I didn't. He was still playing the harmonica at 10 o'clock. I was fast asleep in bed. Well, And I... besides, I'm not interested in what my neighbor's friends looks like. I mind my own business. Yes, yes, of course. No, no, indeed but... I'm not. And there's no use in asking anyone else in the building because no one saw him come in or go out. Oh, you asked around? Well, maybe I was a little curious. He played the William Tell Overture so beautifully. I don't doubt it. Wonder why he played the William Tell Overture when the funeral march would have been so much more appropriate. Yeah, Clarence, I'm going to will you this house of mine for what you've done for me. Oh, there was nothing to it, Phil. Anybody could have done it with nobody knowing what poor Peterson looked like. <laughs> well, it was the way you played that harmonica to convince Faraday, though, Clarence. Yeah, it's real. <laughs> uh, lucky you thought to take it along, huh? I had an idea, Sam. I'd tell somebody who played the thing. It's a lucky thing they didn't ask me to play anything complicated. <laughs> I'm not that good. Well, you were good enough to cover up for me, Clarence, and... Uh... Thanks a lot. Oh, it was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. Say, Bill, what did you do with Henry's body? Fed it to the fish. What do you think I would do? That's not one of the boys at the door, Bill. You want me to die? No, no, no. Just sit still. Come in. Hello, Bill. Blackie. Come in. Thanks, Bill. I was in the neighborhood. Oh. I didn't know you and Henry were such good friends. Yeah, we get along. <laughs> now... Funny. 
I thought you two were rivals for the same girl. Oh, that's all We personal. both decided she'll do better back in circulation. You mean you're both in on Henry Peterson's murder? What murder? <laughs> I'm Henry Peterson. So you keep telling everybody. But I told you... Blackie, that... what's with you wasting time on the murder of a guy who ain't dead? I'm still not sure he isn't, and despite Miss Rogers' identification. She could have come to me for help and then been scared into helping you by you. Look, the police told the whole I'm story. I'm not the police, Henry, or whoever you are. Look, you have your harmonica with you? Why, sure. I never go anywhere without it. <laughs> I never know when I might get an audition and land a job, you know? Well, how about auditioning for me right now? Oh, sure, sure. How about this? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'll pick the tune. Sure. <laughs> go right ahead. Let's hear the William Tell Overture. Yes, William Tell Overture? Yes. Oh, you don't want to hear that? <laughs> you mean you don't want to play it? Well, no, no, I don't like it exactly. That's right. You mean you can't play it? So what if he can't? The musician doesn't know everything that was ever written. That's right, Bill. That's right, yes. But if Henry doesn't know it now, he has an awfully short memory because he played it for Sally Rogers last night. What? How do you know? A neighbor with big ears heard him play it. Oh, yeah? Now play a little of it for me, Henry, or I'll get big ideas. Okay. Go on, play it for him, Henry. Sure. That's not very good, Henry, and you're not Henry. Henry. Okay, Come here, give me a show you. Yeah. And here's one for you, Blackie. Oh. <laughs> you walked into that one, Blackie. So it looks like I'm the one that'll walk out of here. You're not Henry Peterson, huh? Ah, you fellas. Well, don't just sit and stare at me. Say something. Maybe his jaw is still sore from the poke I gave him, Faraday. Yeah, your eye looks plenty sore from the poke you took. Forced to do that? Yes, and it's going to be one of the last things he ever did. I'll have him here in your office an hour after I leave uh, here. One at a time, Blackie. Let's hear a few words from you, whatever your name is, one at a time. What's your name? Clarence Brown. Why did you say you were Henry Peterson? Bill Harden, you say guy. He hired you to say it because the real Henry Peterson is dead and you know it. I don't know nothing about that. I just did what Bill paid me to do. I didn't ask any questions. Well, I'm going to ask you one. Where's Foster now? I don't know. Don't waste time asking him, Faraday. I said I'd find Foster and I will. But I'm going to find a man by finding a woman first. You men are supposed to be detectives. Okay, bring in a killer. And do it fast. I want a guy named Bill Foster brought in here. I want him here tonight. But, Inspector... I don't want to hear any butts. No butts. All you guys have a description of Foster? You know what he looks like from that picture we had made up. Now get him. And get him before Boston Blackie does. You either live up to your jobs as detectives, or if Blackie gets Foster first, you'll never live that down. <laughs> Why it is, Mary, but sometimes the simplest lock is the toughest to pick. That's because your heart isn't in your work. If the lock isn't complicated, Blackie, you just don't get a kick out of it. Well, I'm going to get a lead to the real Henry Peterson and to Bill Foster's whereabouts out of this lock if I can pick my way into Sally Rogers' apartment. Oh, there. Ah, that did it. Open, Sally. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're in. Oh, what are we in for? A long search for nothing? Well, maybe, Mary. But close the door and let's go to work just the same. I don't see what it'll prove if you do find a clue to Peterson here in Miss Rogers' room. She admits he was here. Mary, we don't know what the real Henry Peterson looks like. And I have a hunch of body is going to turn up unidentified very shortly. But that's not as important as finding a lead to Foster. That's what I really want. Mm-hmm. I wonder what was spilled on the rug over here. Hmm? Where? Here. This whole end of the rug near the door. Something was either spilled on it or Miss... Rogers got tired of trying to clean the entire thing. That whole end of the rug has just been cleaned, Mary. Yep. In fact, it's still a little damp from the cleaning fluid. Well, whatever was spilled on it, it certainly made a big stain. Mary, I think the stain on this rug is going to put Henry Peterson's killer in a spot. <laughs> Faraday, I've got great news for yeah, you. Yeah, i got better news for me. 
I'm having you thrown out of here right now. Oh, no, I... Well, <laughs> look who's here. Well, again, Blackie. What'd you do, Foster? Give yourself up? Sure, right after two of Faraday's men grabbed me at the airport. I'm just going on a business trip. Sure, sure. You deny you killed Peterson? Do you deny you slugged Blackie, too? No, I did that. He got tough in my apartment and I clipped him. Now, don't tell me you're sore about that. If he isn't, I am. Blackie Foster admits he hired Clarence Brown to pose as Henry Peterson. But he won't say he killed anyone. I have a reason for that, Faraday. A very simple reason. I didn't kill anyone. No? I'll make you admit it before I'm through with you. If you do, you'll be lying, Faraday. You now, he'll see be lying the... flat on his back. Come in. Hello, Inspector Faraday. Oh, get out of here, Miss Wesley. I have enough trouble with Blackie. But Blackie said for me to come here. And he asked me to bring Miss Rogers along with me. You remember Miss Rogers, don't you? Yeah, her? yeah. Now, both of you get out of here. Uh, Faraday, to... better do some listening, some fast listening. Uh, Miss Rogers, you agreed to come here with Miss Wesley? Of course. She told me I was to hear a confession in the Henry Peterson murder case. Mm-hmm. I couldn't understand what she meant, and as much as Henry is alive, but I came just in case. Peterson isn't alive, and nobody knows that better than you. You mean Bill Foster finally got to him? I imagine the real Peterson finally got to Foster, but, uh... I'm head of my story. I... You identified a phony as Henry Peterson, Miss Rogers. Why? Foster made me do it. He threatened me. Why, that's a lie. What do you it mean? It lie. Lie. probably isn't, but it's beside the point. You identified an, an imposter as Peterson because you thought our investigation would stop right there. You wanted that. Because you killed Henry Peterson. Are you kidding? Oh, wait a minute, Blackie. You can't accuse him. Can I? Faraday, there's a spot on the rug in Miss Rogers' apartment. A big spot. She tried to clean it up, but it didn't work. Your laboratory men will prove its blood. What they don't know is that it's the real Henry Peterson's blood. They don't... Better say that slower. Better listen faster. No. Faraday, Miss Rogers shot Peterson. He staggered out of her place and made it to Foster's apartment. There's a recently cleaned stain on his rug, too. I know. I just came from there. All right, all right. You have a story, Blackie, but you got it backwards. Foster killed him and he managed to get to my place. I got scared. Lying little rat. Keep him away from me. Hold it, Foster. Hold it. I know she's lying. Her next-door neighbor, a woman with very good ears, was a big help to me. She not only heard a harmonica playing the William Tell Overture, but about 20 minutes later she heard what she thought was a backfire the night we know Peterson was killed. That was Miss Rogers' gun going off. Uh, Peterson did get to your house, didn't he, Foster? Sure, and he died there. You could see the spot I was in. He came to tell me it was Sal that killed him, and then he died. I had to get rid of the body. The cops were to build a foolproof case against me. He even had the murder gun with him. And he told you that Miss Rogers shot him? Yeah, that's right. He's telling the truth, Faraday. You can grab Sally Rogers. Nobody's going to get me for anything. Where I'm going, I'm going alone. Grab it, I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. Quiet down, Miss Rogers. Quiet down. Right now, Faraday will take you off my hands because you're going into the arms of the law. Blackie, do you have to play that harmonica? Mm-hmm. Oh, do you have to play it that badly? Apparently. Blackie, that's the last tune that poor Henry Peterson played, and look what happened to him. And he played it right. Oh, I don't know about that. He ended up on a sour note, too, in the river. Faraday found his body just a little while ago. Oh, I've got to learn to play this thing, Mary. Why? Well, a harmonica solved this case. Well, you'll never be able to solve a harmonica. That's a heck of a note, isn't it? Oh, so's that. <laughs>
Randolph, come in, come in. Uh, how's Mr. Randolph this morning? Well, he's, he's still desperately ill and fat drilling down there in the street like he's driving out of his mind. It is an awful racket. It's even bothering me. In fact, the only thing that bothers me more is Inspector Faraday. Well, could you do me a favor? Certainly. You know, my husband's too sick to be moved to a hospital. <laughs> and you have influence in town. Couldn't you phone it's and see... It's as good as done, Mrs. Randolph. Come in. Come right in. I'll call Tom Jackson. <laughs> He's street commissioner and ought to be able to have that noise stopped immediately. Oh, thank you, Blackie. I, I knew you could do something. I better phone Tom this home. He's never in his office at this hour. Probably wake him up, but after all, he's a public servant. And we're the public, don't we? Yes, and you will have that drilling stopped until my husband's out of danger. I certainly will try. Okay. Hello? Uh, Tom. Speaking. I hope I got you out of bed. This is Blackie. Well, you didn't get me out of bed, but you did wake me up. Uh... I was at a meeting at 4 o'clock this morning. What's... I'm sorry, Tom, but look, there's a sick man in my apartment building, and some of your boys are breaking up the street down below us. It's driving the poor man you almost... Want. Okay, I'll handle it right away. What's your address? The Sunset Parkway, number 51. All right, I... So, wait a minute. Is it just 7 o'clock, or has my watch stopped? It's 7 o'clock, and I want that drilling stopped. Blackie, well, there's something wrong somewhere. There hasn't been any order to repair anything on Sunset Parkway. And even if there were, they wouldn't be drilling at this hour of the morning against the law. What? Oh, there's something wrong, Blackie. But I'll look into it right away. Uh, never mind, Tom. Uh, you go back to sleep. I'll look into this myself. And now, back to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. <laughs> The drilling out in the street will cover us. Go ahead with your drill, Addy. We're working on schedule. Okay, Mr. Beecher. Do you think I've drilled into this vault deep enough now, Mr. Beecher? Yes, I think so, Larry. Looks good. How deep is the hole? Well, it's deep enough to be full with a stick of dynamite bigger than the first two I draw. Well, then let's get that dynamite in there. All right. You slide it in. Yeah, Billy, you too. Yeah, sure, Mr. Beecher. Hey, don't push it in so hard, Billy boy. You want us all to be blown up? It has to be detonated before it explodes, Larry. Oh. That's why it's hooked in ready, Billy? Yeah, Mr. Beecher. And let's get the way off to the other side of the bank and let it go. Come on, Larry. <laughs> Unless you want that vault door to fall on top of you. Oh, not me. I'm with you, Mr. Beach. What time's it, Billy? Seven three, Mr. Beach. Yes, yeah, seven. Right Last stop. Yeah, let's see it blowed up, Billy boy. All right. Here it goes. It's open, Mr. Beach. Oh, I sure draw those holes good, didn't I, Mr. Beach? Never mind about that. Let's get in that vault and grab that money and get out of here before the place is full of guards. Come on, Larry. Oh, Billy boy, nobody never heard that little noise. Not after the boss got that big idea of them drilling the streets out in front while we was working. Uh, the money's in those sacks there. Let's each grab as many as we can and beat it. Yeah, I'm grabbing mine, Mr. Peter. I sure hope Smith's out back of the cart. He will be. Well, I got a hold of two bags of stuff, Mr. Peter. Come on, Billy boy. Wait let's a minute. Go. Look back. What is it? Somebody's coming. Mr. Peter, it's a guard. <laughs> it was a guard. It's a corpse now. Oh, that sure was good shooting, Mr. Peach. <laughs> he dropped without even seeing us. He's seen the last of everything. Now, come on. We've seen the last of this bank. Good morning. Good morning, Blackie. 
Well, well, you're out early this morning. I'll call for your car right away. Oh, I'm not ready for my car yet, Harry. Say, what happened to those men who were breaking up the street out here a few minutes ago? Oh, they just left Blackie. Oh. And you know, it, it was funny the way they left, too. One guy yelled, that's it. Let's quit. And they dumped their drills into the back of the truck. And away they went. That's funny. Yes, it is that, Blackie. Never known they worked on the streets this early in the morning. They're not supposed to, Harry. And I just found out they're not supposed to be digging up Sunset Parkway at any time of the day. Oh, now, Blackie, if you think anything's maybe mysterious, I got their license number for you. You know, being a doorman, I, I make a hobby of license plates. It was a truck. And uh, the number was a crazy 012345. Thanks, Harry. And I guess that... Hey, look, Harry. It's the bank across the street. Blackie, that's Williams, one of the bank guards. Look at him, he's staggering. He's been shot. Come on, let's go over there and give him a hand. Right. Hurry up. I... I think he just collapsed behind that parked car. I wonder what's the matter with him. I didn't hear any shoot. Who could hear anything with that drilling in the street? Oh, oh Harry. He stopped a couple of bullets. Williams. Williams, this is me, Harry. Harry? The doorman at number 51. You know me, don't you? Harry, the bank, they blasted. The vault, it got away. Out the back, Harry. That was the reason for the drilling in the street to cover up a blast. Williams, did you see the men who shot you? No, I, I didn't see them. They were too fast. They got, got away out, out the back. <laughs> Williams. Williams. You can't hear you, Harry. He's dead. Oh, poor man. Harry, I don't know who killed this bank guard, but I'll find out. And you can bank on that. Blackie, get out of my office. Don't you ever get tired of saying that, Faraday? The only thing I get tired of is you. Well, then it's time you retired or got smart or something and listened to me. I've been trying to tell you something. I know. You're trying to tell me my business. Oh, won't be how to run it. The Parkway Bank was robbed this morning and a guard was killed. I know the Parkway Bank was robbed this morning and a guard was killed. You didn't tell me that. No, but I told you the license plate on that street commission truck parked in front of the bank is a clue to the killers. You must be slipping, Blackie. Haven't you ever heard of phony plates? Yes, but these plates weren't phony. They were too distinctive. All right, so they were distinctive. So what? So those plates will lead us to the truck, and that truck will lead us to whoever stole it. I think it was stolen by someone who works for the street commission. Isn't it enough to have you mixed up in this? You want to mix me up, too? You don't need any help in being mixed up. Yeah? It's not my fault they robbed a bank across the street from where I live. And don't say I was in on the robbery because my own money was in that bank. So you couldn't wait for the bank to open. You made a withdrawal, maybe. Only you added on your own interest. Look, never mind trying to be funny, will you? Let's go after someone on the street commission and I'm see if we can... I'm sorry to disappoint you, Blackie. But last night, the only man on the street commission who had access to that truck reported it stolen. Now, what do you think of that? Well, I don't know what to think. What was his name? You don't know how to think. His name is John Manders. John Landis, huh? Well, in that case, I'm going down to the Street Commission workshop and see Amanda's about a murder. Come in. Hello, Blackie. Hello, Murray. Oh, my, you look lonesome. Your apartment getting too big for you? No, but this city's too big for me. I've been all over town checking with every crew of street repairmen, and nobody's seen John Manders since late last night. Well, I phoned his home as you asked me to, and his wife says that she hasn't heard from him since late last night either. Blackie, yeah. do you really think he's a lead to the men who robbed the bank and killed the guard this morning? The fact that he's missing convinces me more than ever, Mary. Oh, excuse me, will you? Uh-huh. Can't I ever talk to you without the telephone ringing? <laughs> Hello. Hello. Boston Blackie? Yes? Blackie, this is John Manders. No, Manders. Oh, wonderful. Uh, Manders, I'm looking for you. Where, where are you? Never mind where I am, Blackie. Did you get my message? What message? Well, if you don't know, you didn't get it, so I'll give it to you now. Well, well, what's it all about? You'll know when I do... Manders. Manders. Hello? Hello? I don't know what's happened. He's hung up. Oh, Mary. Somebody hung one on him. He was just about to tell me something about a message. What message? I don't know. All I know is we've lost Manders and maybe the last clue to the guys who killed that guard across the street. Billy, send out the Billy bringing Manders in. Go open the door. Right, Mr. Bishop. Oh. oh. Well, hi, Larry. Hi, Billy boy. Here he is. 
I, I seen him make a phone call, and I gave him a crack on the head like you said to, and I dragged him in, and here we are. Good work, Larry. Oh, I didn't tell anybody anything, Billy. Believe me, I didn't. Shut up. <laughs> Got him tied up good and tight, huh, Larry? Well, you got a hog tie a guy with a loose mouth, Billy boy. <laughs> well, I, I brung him in like you wanted, Mr. Beachy. Oh, thanks, Larry. Who was he talking to? Well, you mean on the phone? Yes, of course. That was Boston Black. What's the idea, man? Yeah, what's the idea, man? This... You forced me into this. I didn't want to join you. I told you I didn't want any part of the robbing of the Parkway Bank. I told you it might be a killing, but you killed the guard. I well, sure did, man. He got in my way. I kill anybody who gets in my way. You sure do, Mr. Peachy. Yeah, you do, Mr. Peachy. And guys who double-cross you, too. Look, I did what you told me to do. I let you steal that truck and help with the digging on the park where I did everything uh, just you as you tried told to me reach to. Boston Blackie. What did you tell him? Nothing. I didn't have a chance to. What are you going to tell him? What's the difference? I didn't do it, did I? Uh, maybe and maybe not. I want to know what you said and what you were going to say. And if you don't start talking... <laughs> You're going to start dying. What do you mean, start dying? People who get in my way die quickly. People who double-cross me die slowly, Billy. Billy, gag this one. Yeah, sure, Mr. Beach. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, look, I just got an idea. Yeah, uh, Larry, you go out and get some brick and mortar. Brick and mortar, We're going yeah. to put our squealing friend in this little alcove here. Build a wall in front of him and let him suffocate quietly. <laughs> Nicely. And slowly. Oh, well, it'll, it'll be more easy to just drill a hole in him with a bullet and dump him somewhere, Mr. Beach. Easier, yes, Larry. But no matter what you do with a party, it always pops up to cause you trouble. This party isn't going to pop up till this building falls down. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a bad idea, Mr. Beach. Yeah, it's not a bad idea, Mr. Beach. But Beecher. we'll kill him before we wall him up, won't we? Oh, uh, no. Just knock him out and seal him up alive. Alive? You mean, he'll not. die more slowly that way. It'll be a lesson to him. <laughs> and a lesson to you two men, too. If you know what I mean. And now, back to Boston Blackie. The Parkway Bank across the street from Blackie's apartment building is robbed. And a guard shot and killed. The noise of blasting the vault and shooting the guard is not heard because of pneumatic drills being used in the street as a cover-up. John Manders, a street repairman, forced to join the gang, contacts Blackie to see if Blackie received his message. Blackie is not, and Manders is slugged before he can say any more. Later, he is bound and gagged and sealed behind a brick wall and left to die of suffocation. As we return to our story, Blackie and his friend, Mary Wesley, are watching repairmen fill the holes dug into the street in front of the Parkway Bank. Oh, the, those men certainly did a lot of damage with those drills, didn't they, Blackie? They didn't help the street any, Mary. But these guys with the steamrollers will soon have it fixed up. Mm-hmm. That fellow there looks as if he might be the foreman. Maybe he can tell me a few things I want to know. Hey, you, over there. Me, hey, mister? Hey, yes, you got a minute? Me? Hey. I guess so. Are you the foreman of this gang? Me? Yeah, I yeah. am. Maybe you know a man by the name of Manders. John Manders? He was the foreman of a crew like this. Sure, I know, John. All right. How well? Me? Oh, there. Yeah. He's in trouble, you know. He's disappeared. That's all I hear. Was he asking for trouble? I mean, do you know whether or not he was kicking around with any tough characters? John? Wasn't a finer fellow in the apartment. Family man, loved his kids, took his pay home every Friday without even opening the envelope. Well, uh, was he in debt, or, or do you think he was in any other kind of trouble at all? Me? Never saw John do anything or speak to no one get him into trouble. Fine man, John. Mighty sorry to hear he's in a jam. Boss! Hey, boss! Yes, Sam. We got the street repaired okay, except for a few lines in the pavement off to one side of where the big damage was. Yeah, I saw those lines. Let them go. First heavy traffic, a hot day, will smooth them out okay. That's what I figured, too. All right, man, let's pick up and get out of here. Anything else you want to know about John, mister? Hey, no, thanks. You've been a big help already. <laughs> Me? Glad to be of service any time, mister. All right, boys, let's get going. 
Get that equipment in the truck and get out of here. Well, Blackie, you learned a lot, didn't you? I learned a lot about how to repair streets, but nothing about how to find John Manders and those killers. Well, the street certainly looks smooth, doesn't it? Yes, it does, but believe me, Mary, this case is awful rough. <laughs> That's mighty pretty, Philly boy. <laughs> Looks good, huh? Oh, Philly boy, you're building the best brick wall I ever seen, I'm telling you. I like it, do you, Larry? Yeah. I should have been a bricklayer, I guess. Yeah, Why do you put those last bricks up there, Billy? It's taking you over an hour already. You want them sealed up good and tight in this alcove, don't you, Mr. Preacher? Yes, good and tight. Well, I had to lay the wall two bricks wide so he can't kick it out while it's still wet. All right, Larry, get the plaster ready. Yeah. You plaster this thing over, and it'll look just like the rest of the room. Well, you're going to let me smear some of the plaster on, ain't you, Billy Boy, huh? Yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah. Well, there's the last brick in place, Mr. Beecher. Yeah, last oh, brick, oh. Mr. Beecher. <laughs> I wonder how long Manders will live back there. <laughs> A few hours, maybe. I wonder if he's still out from that tap on the head I gave him. Well, I wonder what it was that Manders was trying to tell Blackie. <laughs> <laughs> Probably about us. But you don't have to worry about it. You didn't have time to tell Blackie anything. And now no one will ever find Manders behind that wall. Not till they tear this building down. <laughs> and we'll be dead by the time they do that. Dead from old age. Well, we're, we're leaving town, ain't we, Mr. Peachy? Oh, no. I think we ought to, Mr. Peachy. Yeah, I think we ought to, Mr. Peachy. The cops are looking for us for killing that guard. And we may have Blackie on our necks pretty soon, too. Yeah, One more we... job and then we'll decide. A bigger bank this time, though. Tell the boys to get the truck ready. We'll use the same trick of digging up the street to cover the blast in the bank. And any necessary shooting. All right, Mr. Beecher. And then we'll leave in town, huh, Mr. Beecher? If our take is big enough. If not, we'll stick around until we're really rich. You don't think we ought to worry about Blackie? Yeah. No, why should we, Billy? Manders never told him anything. In a couple of hours, Manders won't ever be able to tell anybody anything. <laughs> Blackie, won't you please stop pacing up and down? I can't help it, Mary. I've got to figure out what Manders meant when he phoned here and asked me if I got his message. Well, he might not have meant anything. But I know he did. He was about to tell me what it was when he got slugged. Well, stop pacing, Blackie. Come here to the window. It's going to be a beautiful sunset. It's going to be a beautiful crime wave in this town if I can't find that gang. I have a hunch they're not one-time operators. Well, let Inspector Faraday catch them. It's his job. But Mandis was trying to tell me something, and it's my job to figure out what it was and tell Faraday. Well, you'll figure it out at dinner, maybe. Um, let's go to... Uh, uh, no, no, I'm not hungry. Well, come over to the window and get some fresh air, and maybe you will be. Oh, look down there. You can see where they repaired the street this afternoon. Uh-huh. The last time I looked out this window, I saw some guys tearing up the street and had no idea that about... Blackie, what's the matter? Look, Mary... Just up the street from where they filled in those holes this afternoon. Huh? Where? Up there, Mary. About 10 or 15 feet from the first filled-in hole. Uh, uh, See those lines in the street? Yeah, yeah, I do. Well, those are the grooves that the repairman decided not to cover. And am I glad they didn't, Mary. I have a hunch that's the message Manders wanted to get to me. Well, Blackie, it does look like a message. The first lines make almost a perfect three. And the second figure is the letter L. I'm sure of it. And then there's a, a box drawn on the street. A box or a square. It yeah. could be a square. And that entire thing down there could be an address. Yeah, it could be. It could be number three, something or other square. Mary, you get Faraday on the phone and tell him to get right up here. Okay. I'm going to have a look in the telephone directory. The telephone directory? Yes, because if that's a message drilled into the street, I'm on the right road to a solution of this case. <laughs> What do you want me to do, Blackie? Carry an oil can with me in case of rusty hinges? I think we're walking into an empty house anyhow. This is number three Lincoln Square, the only address that fits that 3L Square message on the street in front of my building. Huh? What was the matter with number three Ludlow Square? It's a vacant lot. Number three Lawrence Square? No such address. And number three Lord Williams Square? It's a hamburger stand. Mary and I checked all possibilities, Faraday, and this is the only one that fits the description of a hideout. Your men have had time to surround the place now. Let's go in. All right. But I'll bet we don't find anything except dust. That scrawling on the street in front of your building didn't mean anything. Shh. Come on. 
He's at another door. Now, you open this one, so you can't gripe at me if, it's, if it creaks. Oh, brother. Hey, I hear somebody coming into the room from the other side. So do I, duck back. Quiet. You be quiet. Can you see who it is? Not yet. You said the place was empty, huh? Well, just... Those are my men, stupid. There's nobody else here. Faraday, I still say that was a message on the street and... Now what? I just heard a car pull up in the back of the house. Well, you stop this nonsense. We... Well, boys, we did it again. You heard that, didn't you, Faraday? I sure did. Back out of sight, everybody. Okay. Quick, men, get down. Behind anything. Stay there. Get back at this door with me, Faraday. If you're pulling your stomach, there'll be room. Now don't talk to me. The way your neck is always sticking out. Shh. We need to tuck in those drills and tools out in the bushes and back, boys. Job tonight was so easy. I think we'll stay in town. Pull a few more. Yeah, uh, sure, Mr. Beecher. Well, I, I'm sure glad we didn't have to shoot nobody like we had it the first time, Mr. Beecher. Well, nobody got on our way this time, Larry. And what's more, we didn't have Manders to worry about. You shouldn't have forced Manders to join us, Mr. Beecher. No, you shouldn't have forced Manders. Those straight guys aren't ever any good. No, no, they're, they're too Sunday school, Come Mr. on, Friday, Beecher. we've heard hey. enough. Let's grab oh, Good work, man. You got him in cuffs and make his land. Oh, I know it. I should have stayed on the farm. Oh. Shut up, Larry. All right, take those guys out of here. You know what to do with them. Get going. Get going. Get going. All right. Well, Blackie, I guess I owe you an apology. But you owe me one, too. Do I? What for? You said John Manders was the lead to this Beecher and his gang. But we found the gang without finding him. Ah. Well, I think I can find him, Faraday. Huh? Get me one of those crowbars from the truck in the back of the house. Then I'll dig them up for you. Blackie, what makes you think you'll find something behind this wall? The fresh plaster on it, Faraday. This part of the wall has just been built. I think it hides a closet or an alcove. Oh, alcohol. you're out of your mind. How big a hole are you going to knock on the wall before you're satisfied you've wasted enough of my time? It won't have to be much bigger. There. That's got it. Now, look what's behind the wall, Faraday. A pair of legs. They're moving, too. That guy's still alive. Come on, let's haul him out. Okay. I've got him. Lower him, kid. That's it. A little more. That gag on him just about choking him to death. Well, don't just stand there. Take it off before it does choke him. I'll have it off like... I've got it. Thanks a lot. I was just about done for. I'm Boston Blackie. Are you John Manders? Yeah. You got my message? I sure did. The feature and his mob almost got you first. What were you doing mixed up in this mob, Manders? I was forced into it. They said they'd kill my kids. If I didn't go along with him. Sit up, Manders. I'm going to tell your hands. Thanks. That story doesn't make much sense, Manders. Why did they run the risk of taking a stranger into the gang? The trick was to tear up the street in front of the bank. They were blessed, and they wanted a regular crewman on the job to show his credentials in case someone from the street commission came along. That makes good sense, Faraday. Hey, huh? Your hands are free now, Manders. Uh, thanks again, Mike. But, Manders... How did you have sense enough to drill a message in the street? And how did you know I'd get it? Well, I didn't know what to do about tipping the police, Blackie. Till I saw where we were pulling the job. Then I knew it was in front of your apartment. And I remembered reading your address in the papers. And I got the idea for the message. Well, it was a good idea, too. It saved your own life. You'll have to come down to headquarters with me. I have to file a technical charge against you. Right. Well, Manders, thanks to the fact that uh, I can read and you can write, everything for Beecher and his gang turned out all wrong.
Robbie Blackie. Tell him I'll be out as soon as I'm finished dressing. Sure will, Mary. I hope it is your friend, Blackie. I'm dying to meet him. <laughs> a lot of people have to die before he shows up. Coming. Miss Mary Wesley? No, I'm not Miss Wesley, but this is her apartment. Good heavens, you're not Boston Blackie, are you? Who, oh, me? <laughs> oh, no, no. I'm Herman of Herman's Trucking Service. Got a little parcel here for Miss Mary Wesley. Can I bring it in? I suppose so. All right, you better step back, lady. Colonel Harry. Well, that doesn't look like a little parcel to me. It's as big as a coffin. <laughs> Herman's Trucking Service holds everything, lady. Coffins to coffee cups is our slogan. Can I leave it right here? I don't know where else you'd leave it. Oh, Mary. Yeah. Mary, there's a big box out here for you. What are you expecting? Mm, nothing that I know of, Hazel. I'll be right out, though. Oh, she don't have to hurry, lady. Herman's Truck and Service don't rush his clients. You can sign for it. Oh, all right. There you are. Thanks, lady. Guess I'll take my rollers. You don't want them. No. Well, so long, lady. Remember the name, lady. Anytime you want anything hauled, just call for Herman of Herman's Truck and Service. Hmm. Mary! Mary, come and look at this thing. It's as big as a... Oh, I see it, Hazel. Ooh, how lovely you look. <laughs> Pretty dress, isn't it? Hope mm-hmm. Blackie likes it. <laughs> what in the world is in this box? Well, I hope it's not what it looks like. Uh, does look like a coffin, doesn't it? Handles and all. I wonder what it actually is. I wonder how we uh, open it to find out. Here's something that looks like a latch. It is a latch. Huh? I think this thing will open now. Something needs oiling. You know, I think... Oh, no. Mary. No. Mary, what's no, the matter? No, no. Hazel, there's a body in there. A dead body. And it's... Oh, no. It's Boston Blackie. And now on to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. If he's still alive. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friends. Wait a minute. Yes? You are Boston Blackie, aren't you? But, yes, I am. <laughs> uh, you like it, don't you? My name, the weather, or your remaining anonymous? I mean it. You liked it, <laughs> didn't you? What's it? It is what I sent Miss Mary Wesley this morning. I'm Percy Wayne of the Wayne Wax Museum. Uh, may I come in? Well, that's the first question you've asked that I can answer. Sure, come in. Uh, thank you. Now, what's this it I'm supposed to have liked? The wax figure of you in the coffin I sent to Miss Wesley. The what of what? <laughs> she must have thought it was really you in that coffin, too. But you, you must be slightly out of your mind. If you have a mind to be out of... Oh, oh, please, don't phone the police. I can explain everything. Well, I'm not calling the police. I'm calling Mary Wesley. Just have frightened her to death. <laughs> yes, I imagine I did. What's the idea? Well, it's really very easy to explain. I sent a likeness of you in that coffin to Miss Wesley to show you how good a sc- wax sculptor I am. Why didn't you just let me take your word for it? Oh, but you didn't know me. I, I want to show you an Inspector Faraday in my wax museum, closing your latest case. Why doesn't she answer? Well, perhaps she's gone for the police. The figure in that coffin looked awfully real. <laughs> Hello? Hey, Mary, this is Blackie. Oh, Blackie. It's all right, Mary. I'm not dead. Oh, that was I'm a Blackie. wax image of me in that coffin. Oh, Blackie, I know, but... Well, at first I was sure it was you. Now, what does it mean, Blackie? What well, I'll you... tell you what it means when I see you. In the meantime, relax, and a man will come and get that monstrosity out of there. Goodbye. Bye. Wayne, you heard what I said to Miss Wesley. Now, get that coffin out of her apartment. <laughs> she thought it was really you, didn't she? Yes, she did. It's a fine joke. Now, go get that thing out of her apartment and fast. Well, right away, Blackie, but may I use you in my museum? I'm just opening it, and I want to show all the famous local crime breakers and police and criminals. Sure, sure, I don't care. Just... Get out of here and get that wax morgue piece out of Mary's apartment. Oh, oh right away, Blackie, right away. And, and thank you very much. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, now what? Never a dull moment at the club, Blackie. I better answer that. Some people have some sense of humor. Hello? Blackie, this is Faraday. What are you so proud of? That you remember your name? Uh, don't work on me, Blackie. This is no social call. A wax figure of me was delivered to my office a little while ago with a note on it telling me to contact you about it. Now, what's the idea, Blackie? It isn't my idea, pal. A man named Percy Wayne wants to include you among the famous figures in his wax museum. Oh, he does, huh? 
famous figures, huh? And they want me? Sure, they're going to display you as a dummy. Very consistent, I'd say. So that's what it is. Well, if you see your friend Wayne, tell him I'll let him know. I got other things to worry about. Sure, you've got your job, for one thing. How do you manage to hold it, Inspector? Yeah, I don't know how I managed to hold off clipping you. <laughs> I would if I didn't have something on my mind. <laughs> like did you ever hear of Duke Allen? Duke Allen? Who's he? He's a big-time operator from the Middle West who nobody's ever seen. The word is whom, Faraday? Uh, who, whom, who cares? Nobody's ever seen him. But I've got to find out what he looks like before he causes trouble. What trouble is he going to cause? I got an underworld tip. He's coming here to cut in on those gangster Mosley brothers. Well, go to the Mosley brothers and tell them to tip you off when Alan comes to see them. It's just as simple as that. The Mosley brothers are hiding out, Dope. They know I'm looking for them. Only I got an idea this Duke Allen will find them before I do. Anybody could find anything before you knew it was even missing. Uh, so nobody's even seen this Duke Allen, huh? Nobody in this city. He's never been arrested, so there are no files on him. No files on him, huh? That's right. Well, pal, I'm going to find them for you to prove there are no flies on me. You'll kick through with that thousand dollars, Mrs. Brighton. You're going to be an awfully sorry lady. But I don't have a thousand dollars, Mr. Mosley. Well, then get it and get it fast. We'll be around to your store at noon tomorrow. We want you to have it. That's all. My brother will take you to the door. Bob, sure, lady. Oh, Mr. Mosley, can't you give me more time? Lady I'm a poor we'll woman. see you at noon tomorrow, lady. So long. But you've got to give me time. I have to have time. <laughs> One more customer we got. <laughs> yeah. You know, we've done good, even though we are hiding from Faraday and his cops. Right. <laughs> but, uh... I figure we can do a lot better, Bob. Figuring, figuring, all the time figuring. What are you trying to do, Lenny? Figure yourself to death. I'm trying to figure out how we can let Duke Allen muscle in on us and still make a profit. Allen isn't going to muscle in on us, Lenny. You know, we're doing pretty good. Only in town a month, and the cops are looking for us, and so is this Duke Allen. wonder what he's going to show. Well, our information didn't say. I know. Didn't say what he looked like. Only that he was coming to town to cut in. <laughs> Allen's funny that way. Nobody knows what he looks like. Yeah. But uh, I've been asking around. We'll find out soon. You've been asking around, asking around, all the time asking around. Asking gets answers. Alan hasn't shown yet, so we're still in business. Now, Bob. Huh? we got to find out what he looks like and get to him before he gets to us. How are we going to find out what he looks like? Well, I'm going to start figuring on that right now. Figuring, figuring, all the time figuring. Figure is going to be the death of you. If I don't figure a way to find Duke Allen, he's going to be the death of us. Wayne Wax Museum. Percy Wayne speaking. Uh, uh, Mr. Wayne, this is Boston Blackie. Oh, hello, Blackie. I have the figures of you and Inspector Faraday on display already. Are you coming down to see yourself? Uh, not right away. Oh. Uh, look, Wayne, do you have a wax figure of Duke Allen in your museum? Duke Allen? Yes, I do. Is it the Duke Allen, I mean? Well, yes. Uh, no one's supposed to know what he looks like. Well, I do, though. I met him in Kansas City once and even shook hands with him. <laughs> Brave of me, wasn't it? Well, Allen hasn't killed everyone he's met. What? Is the figure of Allen on display? Oh, yes. It's one of my favorites. You ought to come down to see it. It's my best effort. Well, I am not interested in seeing it right now. Oh, dear. I thought I'd have a visitor. I've been open all day, and I haven't had one customer. Well, I'm going to run an ad in the newspapers for you, saying you're displaying a figure of Duke Allen. And believe me, you'll have customers, at least two paying customers, dropping in for a payoff. That ad in the paper said they have dummies of Dillinger and Babyface Nelson at this museum, too. Yeah. Let's look at them first, Lenny. All we're interested in is finding out what Duke Allen looks like. Now, quit wandering around, Bob, and do some serious looking. We haven't much time. Hurrying, hurrying, all the time hurrying. I'm trying to get somewhere fast. Uh, hey, here's Duke Allen. Yeah. Yeah, see? That's what the sign says. I can read. Now, quick, take a picture of the dummy. I don't want to have to spot this guy from memory and don't let anybody see you. Don't worry, I got my camera under my hat. Go ahead then, make it fast. All set to go. That a boy. Yeah, we got Alan's picture. 
Now what? Now we develop the picture, find him, and knock him off before he gets to us. Knock him off, huh? <laughs> a pleasure, Lenny. Yeah, but it's going to be all mine. <laughs> now, come on, let's get out of here, get that picture developed. How long do you think it'll take us to find him? Not long. We'll carry his picture around. Well, Blackie? Wait a minute, Mary. Stay in hiding. They may come back for something. What, Blackie? I didn't see them leave anything. How do you know you were behind this curtain? Oh, well, yes. Hey, except when I peeked. Oh, come on out. Okay. There we are. Those were the Mosley brothers. Faraday showed me the pictures. And now we know that they'll be gunning for Alan. Well, I want to look at this dummy of Duke Allen. I want to see what he looks like, too. He looks slightly waxy. Not much I can tell you. Oh, here's the wax figure of you, Blackie. Why, Sissy? Blackie! What's the matter, Mary? What's the matter? Well, look at the sign in front of the figure of you. It doesn't say Boston Blackie. It says Duke Allen. The Mosleys took your picture. And if they ever see you, they'll shoot to kill. And now back to Boston Blackie. <laughs> Percy Wayne makes an absolutely perfect wax image of Boston Blackie and displays it in his wax museum. Also in the museum are the figures of other famous crime fighters and detectives and scores of famous criminals of the past and present. Duke Allen, Midwest racketeer, is coming to town to take over from the Mosley brothers, local racket bosses. No one knows what Allen looks like. That is, no one but Percy Wayne, who has a wax figure of him in his museum. The Mosley brothers learn this, come to the museum, take a photograph of the figure marked Duke Allen, and then set out to find and kill him. What they don't know, however, is that the figure marked Duke Allen is actually that of Boston Blackie. As we return to our story, the Mosley brothers are in their hideout as the telephone rings. Hello. Hello, is this one of the Mosley brothers? Who wants to know? I do. This is Duke Allen. Uh, Duke Allen? Surprised I found you. Yeah. <laughs> Who is this, Lenny or Bob? Uh, is it Lenny? Hiya, Lenny. Hiya. I'm coming up to see you and Bob. How'd you know where to find us? I got ways of finding out a lot of things. I found out you and Bob are doing so good, I think I ought to cut in. Or maybe take over. Bob and I aren't cutting anybody in. Maybe we might cut you up a little, but not in. That's kind of tough talk. Yeah, I know. I'll soften you and your brother up. I can find you. You can't find me. You don't know what I look like or even where I am. I think we don't know what you look like, huh? That's right. That's wrong. We know where you are, too. So you say. Well, just to prove it to you, just to prove we're a little tougher to deal with than you think, I'll phone you back as soon as my brother comes in. You will, huh? You really think you know where I am? Where you are and what you look like. Only try to cut in on us, Duke, and I'll hate to tell you what you look like. Don't you see why I switched those signs in the museum, Mary, so the Mosleys would come looking for me? It's very simple. You mean you're very simple, Blackie. Oh, man. Now, look, those men are out to kill Duke Allen, and now they're looking for you to kill you. I know they're looking for me, and I made it easy for them to follow me, too. In fact, one of the Mosley brothers was following us when we came into the building just now. Oh, just fine. Any minute I expect a knock on the door. Uh, No, no, I I don't think they'll try to knock me off here. At least I hope not. It'll spoil my plans. Spoil your plans? Oh, brother, what an understatement. It'll spoil you. Mary, this plan of mine will bring the Mosleys out of hiding and may bring Duke Allen out in the open, too. Then Faraday can grab all three. Excuse me a minute. Who are you calling? The police, I hope. No, just downstairs to have a little chat. Yes? Uh, Harry, don't forget. If anyone phones for Duke Allen, give me the call. No one's called for him so far, Blackie. But I'll ring you if anyone does. Thanks. I don't think the Mosley brothers will phone, Blackie. They'll just come up here They'll and... have to phone first, Mary. 
I know I was followed to this building, but they don't know which apartment I'm in. And besides, my theory is they'll invite me to meet them somewhere for a conference. Mm-hmm. And I can guess what kind of a conference, too. Hello, Blackie. Bang, bang. Goodbye, Blackie. <laughs> oh, I think they'll give me a little better break than that. Well, I wish you'd give yourself a break and ask for police protection. What? And be obligated to Faraday for the rest of my life? The rest of your life is going to be rest in peace. If you don't forget this nonsense. It's too late to forget it now. And besides, it isn't nonsense. I want to get the Mosley brothers for Faraday. Oh, the things you do for Faraday. And the way you talk to each other when you meet. Oh, you think you were the worst enemies in the world. I don't get it. <laughs> you know how fond I am of that old guy. Well, oh, maybe this is that call I want. And the one I don't want. Hello? Let me speak to Duke Allen. Speaking. Hello, Duke. Hi. Hey, your voice sounds different. I got a surprise for you. This is Lenny Mosley. Well, Lenny Mosley, you don't Uh-oh. say. I did say I'd call you back, so I'm doing it. You surprised? Yeah, I yeah. am. Didn't think I knew where you were, did you? I guess you're a pretty smart guy. Yeah. I want to see you because I'm taking over, Lenny. All by myself, too. Maybe we can make a deal. I run things all by myself. That can be kind of lonesome, Duke. Now, look. I got a proposition to offer you where maybe we can all be happy and nobody will get hurt. Proposition, huh? Let's hear it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Not over the phone, Duke. Meet us somewhere, huh? You mean the place? We don't want any ears in the wall. That's right. How about the storeroom in the old warehouse on Lions Road? That's easy to find. Okay, what time? Uh, eight tonight. We'll be waiting for you. I know. I'll be there. So long. Well, Mary, that does it. What funeral parlor do I phone? Do you have any preference? I prefer right now not to think about that, Mary. I'm going to call Faraday, and at 8 o'clock tonight, he and I are going to make the warehouse, the house where we grab the Mosley Brothers. The Mosley Brothers are here. You're nuts, Blackie. There's nobody in that warehouse. What do you say that, Faraday? Just because it's dark in there? You don't think they'd keep a light burning in the window for us, do you? I don't think they're in there. Or ever were. I know they are, Faraday. I made a date to meet them here. It's Duke Allen, of course. And so you've dragged me way out here to waste more of my time, of course. Quiet. I'm getting too close to talk. An empty building can't hear anything. An empty head can't understand anything, apparently, either. Uh, okay. Step back. Step back, will you? I'm going to kick open the door. And be ready to duck a few bullets. We're oh, nice targets in this moonlight, you know. Ready? Go ahead. Well, Blackie? Guess we'll have to go in and after them. Yeah, we got a better chance of going in after a million dollars. Ready with your gun, Faraday. These guys might not be hospitable. Okay. Faraday, this floor sounds like your shoes. They may be behind that door there. I can see behind the door. It's nothing but wall. Hmm. There's no one here. That's funny. Ha, ha. I'm hysterical. Genius, aren't you, Blackie? Kind of a semi-pro genius right now. Where do I put this light on? You turn it off. I can see you, and I'd rather not. Faraday, that light bulb was warm when I touched it. Now he's taking the temperature of electric lights. Come on, stupid. Let's get out of this joint. Wait a minute. Huh? The Mosley's kept their date here. I'm sure of it. I wonder what made them leave. Who cares? I wonder what I'm doing here in a warehouse with a bunch of old newspapers and a young idiot. I'm just looking at one of those newspapers. Take a peek at the one on top here. It's from last July. Huh? Our pictures are on the front page in that Jeff Martin case. Now, don't remind me of it. I still say my idea... Are they? Huh? I've got it. The Mosley's were here. But they left when they saw this picture of me in the paper. They knew then that I'd tricked them into thinking that I was Duke Allen, so they scrammed. Hey, that's right. And I know right where the Mosleys went from here, too, to the museum. They still have to get a picture of Duke. Come on, Faraday. If they want to take a picture, grabbing them ought to be a snap. Lenny. Yeah. <laughs> You think they have statues of us in the museum by now? Oh, how should I know, Bob? Well, let's go in and see. I feel neglected. They got everybody else's... All I know is Boston Blackie tricked us. 
We got to get Duke Allen's picture and scram out of that museum as fast as we can. Hurry and hurry and all the time hurry. Oh, come on, let's go in and. Like me to go in with you, boys? Huh? Who are you? Maybe the guy wasn't talking to us, Lenny. Oh yes, I was, Bob. Allow me to introduce myself, boys, in person this time. I'm Duke Allen. Huh? Duke. Surprised? Yeah. Come on, walk down the alley with me so we can talk. Yeah, yeah, sure. What are you doing here, Duke? Gonna look in the museum to see if you can find statues of us? I don't need any wax dummies to tell me what you boys look like. All I needed was a few connections, not suppose. Hey, Lenny, he's got a gun. That's <laughs> got a knife in his neck. Lenny, I'll be fast. Yeah, and it was a pleasure, too. But quick, let's pick him up, dump him in the back of our car before somebody comes along. Okay, that's it. I got his legs. What are we going to do when we get him in the car, Lenny? I don't know yet. I'm just figuring. Figuring, figuring. All the time, figuring. Now, hold him with one hand. Open the car door. Okay. Good. Now, one, two, three, and in. That's it. All right, quick, close that door. Somebody's coming down the street. Okay. Nobody can see him in there. What are we going to do? Leave him there and scram? No, we'll drive him around town for a few hours till the museum closes. Then I'll figure out how to get rid of the body and Boston Blackie, too. Come on, Faraday. No. We'll never catch the Mosley brothers waiting for a flash about them on your teletype. Let's try my plan. We tried it. We waited in the museum for an hour, didn't we? Wait a minute, there's something coming in again. Something, but what? Oh, nothing to do with this case. There never will be anything about the Mosleys or Allen. But, Faraday, if you'll just come yeah, with me... I know me, what I'll... you'll do. Waste more of my time. No, Faraday, this time I'm positive the Mosleys will show up. And we ought to be there when they do for a showdown. <laughs> This museum's sure a spooky place in the dark, Lenny. These figures look like ghosts. Yeah, you're just self-conscious, Bob. The only ghost material in here is that body of dragon. Uh, now bring it down this way. I uh, found the dummy mark Duke Allen, and it's a real one this time. Okay. Be glad to get rid of this. The dead guy's heavy. Well, the wax dummy isn't. A wax dummy's a lot easier to get rid of than a dead body. The body will be found here, though, Lenny. Not for a while. People think it's a pretty lifelike dummy at Duke Allen for a day or two, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> it's a cute trick, I think. Would have been plenty cute trying to bring him in here when the place was open. And it wasn't cute driving a dead body around town waiting for this joint to close. You shouldn't have killed him as soon as you did, Lenny. Well, it was him or us, Bob. I lay him on the floor and I'll get that wax dummy of his out of the way. Okay. Well, come on, come on. Hey. Huh? Look behind us, Lenny. Isn't that something? In what something? The the figures behind us. The, the sign says Inspector Faraday and Boston Blackie. Each one with a gun in his hand. Look real almost. You're yeah, too real. Well, they give me the creeps. I, I'm starting to worry. Worrying, worrying. All the time worrying. That's just... Hey, Lenny. Yeah? Those wax dummies behind us just moved. Oh, you're crazy. It's not crazy, Mosley, and you're not either. You're out! I told you they'd come here tonight, Friday. Yeah, well, it took them long enough to show up. I was standing still so long, I was beginning to think I was a wax dummy. Uh, no cracks. <laughs> no, Friday, no cracks. You couldn't be a wax dummy. No, of course not. Of course not is right. A wax dummy looks lifelike.
Carter. Yeah? I feel a hunk of poetry coming on. Well, let it go right by, will you, Joe? Oh, I can't. I got poetry in my soul, I guess. Oh. Get this, Carter. Here I lie on a rooftop high, waiting till I see a guy. Come out of City Hall across the street, and then I'll plug him nice and neat. <laughs> It smells. How do you want it? With music? Yeah, loud music. Loud enough to drown it out. <laughs> I sure wish his honor and company would trace out of City Hall, though. Getting sore elbows lying up here on this roof. Oh, they'll be out pretty soon. All of them will. That meeting in the mayor's office was supposed to be over at noon. It's a quarter after already. Got your rifle set? And ready. You? My fingers itchier than poison ivy. <laughs> oh, Carter. I feel a hunk of poetry coming on. I think this is the last job we'll do together. Now, shut up, will you? A rooftop is no place for poetry. It's a nice place for a sunbed, though, huh? What? I like to lie in the blazing sun. Oh, okay. Until on one side, I am done. What? And then I flip on my other side and tan the rest of my little hide. Oh, huh? brother, somebody <laughs> should have tanned your hide a long time ago. Your stuff gets worse every time. Well, how do you want it? With a choir? Yeah, a choir. A choir of angels hoisting you into heaven. Oh, God. Now, check the side of that rifle. All right. You've never used one of these telescopic jobs before? Uh, listen, I'll be able to ping this guy with my eyes closed. Hey, Carter. Yes? Here's the mayor. Yeah. Got guys with him, too. Easy. Wait till our man's in the clear. Hey, they're bunched up like a clump of grapes. Wait, wait. What for? A cinch from here. Wait, I said... Hey, they're splitting up at the bottom of the steps. Only one guy near him. Wait. Wait. Now. And now on to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. <laughs> Oh, hello, Inspector Faraday. I'm Williams, 23rd Precinct. Hello, Williams. Had a little shooting here, huh? A big one, Inspector. It's Mayor Rogers. Mayor Rogers? Is he dead? One bullet in the heart, one through the head, Inspector. The mayor. Nobody told me it was the mayor. This is all I need. Hey, move away. Yeah, move away. Get back down. High caliber bullets, too. Keep everybody back. Clear the sidewalk if they don't stay back. Get back. We are going back there. Williams. Williams, any witnesses? Yes, sir. There were several men with him when he got it, but yeah. no one knows where the shots came from. No one even heard him. Yeah, that's not good. How was he standing when he was hit? The men with him all agree he had his back to the street. Uh-huh. He's hit in the back of the head. I can see from the wounds the bullets entered in a downward direction. Williams, those shots came from the roof of that building across the street. Well, no one knows where they came from. I do. Uh, we're going to get to the bottom of this by getting to the top of that building. <laughs> Anyhow, Boston Blackie would say it that way. Probably. Oh, Blackie's really going to burn at this. This is one time I figured something out before he's even shown up at the scene of the crime. Mary, I told you if we came up to the roof of this building, we'd find where those shots were fired from. Here are two exploded rifle shells. Oh, I don't know how you knew it, Blackie. I saw the commotion and everything in front of City Hall at the same time that you but did. But, Mary, did you see anyone running away or hear anyone yelling, stop? No, no, I didn't. Well, that's how I knew the shots came from up here. They certainly couldn't come from any of the offices in this building. They didn't come from the street. And they didn't come from City Hall because no one is going to use a rifle to shoot a man in the back from so short a distance. Well, all right, but I still don't see why you chose this rooftop. There are other buildings in the block. This is the only one with a clear view of the steps and doors into City Hall, obviously. Oh, the man that's the roof up here, oh. man. Okay, Chief. I'll guarantee you'll find proof that those shots were fired from up here. Blackie, it's Inspector Faraday. I heard. Hello, Faraday. Oh, uh, Blackie. Beat it. The short way. Jump off the roof. I'm sorry, Faraday. I do it for you, but I have Mary. Now, use her for ballast. Now, beat it. I don't want you annoying me as usual. Annoying? Well, now, how can you say that? How can I? I'm admiring the view of the city. Of course, I've also figured that this is the place from which Mayor Rogers was shot. So you figured that, too? Of course. Mayor Rogers was shot from up here. Here are two exploded rifle shells, thirty caliber. 
I'm surprised you're here, but congratulations. You're almost as smart as I am. You're smart, huh? Just because you know those shots came from up here. Well, what help is that? Doesn't prove who murdered Rogers, or why. Find out why someone would want to kill the mayor, and you'll have the someone who killed him, Faraday. And if you need any help, call on someone like me. Hello? Hello? Hello, Johnson. Harry Johnson. This is Johnson speaking. Well, this is Martin. Rex Martin. Oh, yeah. Yes, your favorite business rival. Uh, you were with the mayor when he was shot, weren't you? Yes. Well, I just thought I'd, uh, well, call up and tell you things are going to be different from now on. A lot different. Are they? You ought to know they are. Times have changed. I don't think so. You're hard to convince, aren't you, Johnson? Maybe. I've got a little logic some friends of mine are arranging that you're going to find very easy to understand and very hard to argue against. Harry, I wish you'd let me fix you something to eat. You didn't touch your dinner. I'm sorry, Anne. I can't think of eating. I keep seeing Mayor Rogers being shot down not two feet away from me. And that phone call I got from Rex Martin today, I know, I... darling. I, I know you're terribly upset about the mayor, but... But think, darling. It might have been you. I almost wish it had been. Oh, maybe it's, it's the weather that's making you so depressed. It's cleared now, but we practically had a cloudburst until an hour ago, and you know how low you get when it rains. Don't look for excuses for me, darling. I'll be all right if I can... Oh, will you answer the door, dear, please? I'm going out in the backyard a minute. All right. I hope this isn't company, Anne. I just couldn't face anyone tonight. If it's company, I'll be back to see to it that they won't stay long. Thanks. Yes? Are you Harry Johnson? Yes. Well, uh, we got something for you, Johnson. What? A present. How do you want it? With mustard and pick a lily? Mrs. Johnson, where were you when your husband went to this door? Well, I, I, I'd just gone out in the backyard, Inspector Faraday. Out in the yard? Uh, doing what? Well, I went to see if the wash was dry. I see. Uh, did you... St oh, Inspector Faraday. Yes, Sergeant. I just talked to the man from next door. He didn't see anyone around at the time of the shooting, sir. That's fine. Nobody saw anything or anyone. Mrs. Johnson here claims she was out in the backyard. Yes, I was. That's right, she was, Inspector. The man next door says he saw her out there at the time he heard shots. Thanks, Sergeant. Oh. Yes, sir. Well, Mrs. Johnson, that bears out your story. Sorry I had to question you. That's quite all right, Inspector. I, I understand everything. Mm. Well, if you do, you're the only one around here who does. <laughs> There's the city recorder's office at the end of the hall, Mary. Uh -huh. Blackie, I hope you find what you're looking for. I think I will. Mayor Rogers was obviously shot by accident by the same person who later shot Johnson. That's why the bullet hit the mayor in the back of the head. He probably walked over to Johnson just as the gunman fired. But why was anyone gunning for Johnson? Because he was going to get a contract someone else wanted. If you know what you're talking about, and you usually do. I'm sure I know what I'm talking about this time, Mary. Well, here we are. Okay. Oh. This place looks empty. There's a guy in the back of the room there. Uh -huh. Now we're going to find out all about a man named Rex Martin. I know he was Johnson's business rival. Blackie, if Rex Martin was in line for a big contract that you think Mr. Johnson was going to get, <laughs> you're not going to be very happy. Johnson was going to get the contract all right, and Martin may have wanted to stop him. Oh, you, uh, may I see you for a minute? Sure. What can I do for you? I want to find out something about a contract. Sorry, mister, I'm not... Uh, this to... is important. I think it has some bearing on the Johnson murder case. I can't help you, mister. Look, all I want to do is to see the last city contract. That's private city business, mister, and none of yours. Look, son, there's no such thing as private city business. Rex Martin wanted that big contract, but Johnson was getting it, wasn't he? I'm not going to talk, mister. Um, uh, maybe you don't understand. I'm Boston Blackie. Blackie? Well, why didn't you say so? Now, what is it you want to know? Hello? Hello, Carter. This is Joe. 
Oh, yeah, Joe. Did you get the money? Part of it. And, uh, Carter, I feel a hunk of poetry coming on. Never mind the poetry. Come on up here with that dough, will you? Okay, I'll be right up. Uh, nobody's around. What difference does it make if anybody's around? Nobody saw us get the mayor. Nobody saw us kill Johnson. We don't have anything to worry about. You sure? Positive. The cops got the only worries. Oh, boy, I gotta laugh. <laughs> yeah. The cops have the answer to everything right under their noses, but they'll never know it's there. Yeah, that's right. You know something, Joe? What? I feel so good, I could even listen to some of your lousy poetry. Okay, then listen. Yeah? Whenever I think of the racket we're in, I close my eyes and I just gotta grin. Yeah? Maybe we're nuts, but we sure have fun. Killing two birds for the price of one. <laughs> Blackie, can't you find a better place to loaf than in my office? I beat it. Can't you understand the mayor's been murdered? What's the matter with you, Faraday? Why don't you listen to me and pick up Rex Martin? He's the answer to this thing. What am I going to pick him up with? Radar? <laughs> He's out of town. He won't be back till tomorrow. And I don't have any reason to pick him up. What's he got to do with this? You get a look at the last city contract and you'll have a reason. I looked for it at the recorder's office and couldn't find it. Yeah. I'll bet in anything that was going to Harry Johnson. And I know Martin's been trying for years to get a big city job. So when Johnson was due to get the contract, Martin had Johnson killed. Yeah, what about the mayor? Martin kill him too? Uh, Blackie, stop trying to confuse me. Faraday, the mayor was killed by mistake. Look... Ask Mrs. Johnson if her husband wasn't set for a big contract. She doesn't know anything about anything. She was at home when her husband was killed, wasn't she? She was out in the backyard. A neighbor saw her. She went out to see if her wash was dry. She's no help. Neither are you. That's what you think. What? I'm going to see Rex Martin when he gets back to town tomorrow. And then this case will be closed as tight as your mind. And now, back to Boston Blackie. From a rooftop, a gunman named Carter and his partner, Joe, shoot and kill Mayor Bob Rogers as he walks out of City Hall with friends. Later, the same two men murder Harry Johnson, who was with the mayor at the time of the assassination. So far, neither Boston Blackie nor the police have any clue to the identity of the killers or reason why Johnson was killed. The mayor, obviously, was murdered by accident. As we return to our story, Carter and his friend Joe are in their hideout. Come on, Joe, come on. Tell me how much you got for killing Johnson. Carter, I feel a hunk of poetry coming out. Never mind your poetry. How much did you get? I told you, a thousand deposit. I thought we were getting 15 grand. We got one. The rest later. I don't believe it, Joe. Now, wait a minute. Now, look, you're holding out of me. And so help me if you are. Now, now, take it easy, Carter. You can bust bones grabbing a guy like that. And the bones will be in your neck if I ever found out that you... Uh Uh-uh. All right, let me go, stupid, and go answer the door. Take this up later. Anytime you like. Go on the door. Okay, okay. Hello, Mr. Carter. Oh, Mrs. Johnson. Come in. Thank you. Joe, take off your hat. There's a lady present. Yeah, yeah, I know the lady. You like the job we did on your husband, huh? It was quite satisfactory. How about the police, Mrs. Johnson? Have you had much trouble with them? None at all, Mr. Carter. They asked me a few questions, but outside of that, nothing. They can't possibly suspect. Well, I sure hope not, lady. If you get caught, we don't get the rest of our dough. You'll get the rest of your money as soon as my husband's insurance policy pays off. Oh, that's why we only got a thousand so far. When does the company pay, Mrs. Johnson? Well, it shouldn't take more than a few days. By the way, I heard arguing just before I came in. What's the matter? Oh, Carter here thinks I held out some of the advance you gave me. He claims it was only a thousand. I say it was more. It was two. Oh, two, huh? Now, now wait, Carter. Well, what do you know, Joe? Uh, Carter, I... Come here! (laughs) Okay, Cod, it was two grand. I'll I'll give you your half. You can't blame a guy for trying, now, can you? You're not going to be able to try oh, any longer. Carter, Carter, Joe, no fighting. Yeah, no We've fight. done beautifully so far. Everything's perfect. Let's not spoil it. I'd like to spoil that guy's kiss. Oh, no, no don't fight you two. That's a mistake. You've made a slight error already. Killing a man? Yes. We made up for it, didn't we? Yes. Now suppose you make up with Joe. The next mistake may not be so easy to correct. <laughs> How 
much longer do I have to wait to see Mr. Martin, Miss, uh, Miss Beautiful? Thank you, Blackie. And the name is Joanne. And the phone number? My husband doesn't like me to give it out. I'll just write that. Huh? Well, that's different. And may I use this telephone here to make a call while I'm waiting for Mr. Martin? Of course. There's one on the desk there. I'll give you an outside line. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. How long have you worked for Rex Martin? About a year. Lucky Martin. <laughs> Faraday speaking. Hello, Faraday, old pal. This is Blackie. Don't old pal me. Okay, old pal, I won't. Instead, I'll old pal Rex Martin. Rex Martin? Why don't you leave him alone? Faraday, I've told you I know just why Johnson was killed, and Rex Martin is it. Sure. tra la And I'm the queen of the May. Well, look, Queenie. Johnson was killed by someone working for Rex Martin because Martin wanted a city contract that Johnson got, or was going to get. I told you that. Now I'll prove it. Oh, Blackie, Mr. Martin will see you now. Uh, thanks, Joanne. I'll call you back in five minutes, Faraday, yeah. because I'll prove Johnson took a contract away from Martin and sew up your case for you when it won't take longer than that. This way, Blackie. Thank you. Mr. Martin, Mr. Boston Blackie. Come in, Blackie. That'll be all, Joanne. Yes, sir. Sit down, Blackie. No, thanks. I'd rather stand. Martin, uh, are you in the habit of killing all your business rivals? What? What did you say? You heard what I said. <laughs> yes, I did. But I'm afraid you're in the wrong office. Or am I? You're the head of the wrong company, Martin. The company that didn't get a big city contract it wanted. Am I? You know you are. Johnson's company got it, or was about to get it. That's why you had it killed. I checked at City Hall and found out you and Johnson were bidding for the same job. That's right. We were. And Johnson got it. So you sent a gunman or two to give him something else while you were out of town. You base your assumptions on that contract, do you, Blackie? Certainly. With him out of the way, the contract would be yours. I see. Blackie, take a look at this. Hmm? Here's the contract Johnson and I were bidding for. And I got it. Signed, sealed, and delivered. Two days ago. The day before he was killed. Uh, The shop I want is in the next block, Blackie. Yes, Mary, I know. You're really upset about this case, aren't you? The case is upset, too. Something funny about this somewhere. And I don't know what it is. Martin's not the man I want. Maybe your reasoning's been all wrong. Maybe. I know it's been all wrong. Well, here's your shop. Thanks. Pick me up later? Mm Mm-hmm. When? Oh, in about uh, about an hour. I don't take as long to pick out a hat as you think. A hat again? Yes. What's wrong with the bonnet you bought the day Johnson was shot? I didn't buy one that day. It was raining cats and dogs. Remember? Oh, yes, of course. Well, I'll be... Mary, I've got it. You've just solved this case. I have. It wasn't only raining cats and dogs that day. It was raining clues. And I've been all wet for not figuring what happened till now. Coming. Yes? Are you Mrs. Harry Johnson? Yes, I am. I'm Walter Keith from the National Insurance Company. Oh, yes. Come in. Thank you. Well, I've been expecting you. I imagine you have. I, uh, I hope I haven't called too soon after your husband's unfortunate death. Oh, no, it's quite all right. I know these things have to be taken care of right away. Uh, Yes, yes, they do. But, uh, sometimes there are rather long delays. Long delays? What for? Red tape, Mrs. Johnson. I'm afraid it'll be six months before you receive the benefits of your husband's policy. Six months? I won't stand for that. I'm sorry, Mrs. Johnson, but the company wants to investigate a little bit. There's nothing I can do about it. Well, I'll do something about it. Six months, Mrs. Johnson, and there may be a further delay beyond that. I'm sorry, Mrs. Johnson, but that's the case. Oh, no, it's not. I've been told to advise you that it is. Goodbye. Six months. Six months. Well, I'd better call... Oh, what's the matter with this phone? That's funny. It's dead. Operator? 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 Hello? Mary.
Mary, this is Blackie. Oh, hello, Blackie. Well, how did Mrs. Johnson take the news about her insurance? <laughs> the same way she'd take a dose of medicine. She didn't know me, I'm sure of that. Only I hope my plan works. Oh, well, certainly a long shot, Blackie. But it's worth a try. She had to come into the store to use the phone any minute now. Oh, I hope so. I think she'll be here. If she hired someone to kill her husband, she probably has to collect her insurance to make the payoff. So she'll have to report what I told her, that the payoff will be delayed. Mm, maybe yes, maybe no. Well, there's no maybe about her using the phone at her house. I cut the wires before I went in, and she wouldn't dare use a neighbor's phone to call a killer. This is the nearest phone, and I am at... Oh, here she comes now, Mary. In fact, she's going into the booth next to mine. It's the only other one. I'll call you back later. You mean much later, too, I know. Well, I hope you hear what you want to hear. Well, if she's making the call, I think. I think Faraday and I will be making a call ourselves. Carter, I feel a hunk of poetry coming on. Oh, save it, will you, Joe? Keep packing. I'm packing. Gotta get out of here fast. Uh, Carter, I don't think the dame is double-crossing us. Maybe she can't get the insurance though for six months. Well, if she can't, it's because the case is going to be investigated. We're not going to be around when it is. Ah, you Come on, let's go out of here. Uh-oh. See who it is. Okay. But don't open that door too much. You think I'm a dope? <coughs> hey, okay, you open the door all the way. We're coming in. Carter, I think it's Tubbs. Shut up, Blackie. I'm shoving for her. Carter, help me. Oh, no, I'm getting out of here. Not without me, you would. Just stand right where you are. I think we'll have to convince him with a little noise, Party. Okay. Okay. I know you'll take better aim on the next shot. I'm through. We quit. Smart boy. Well, Friday, here are your two killers. Glad to see you. Well, Carter, I think these guys are suffering from a case of mistaken identity. Oh, shut huh? up, Joe. The mistake is all yours, Carter. Yours too, Joe. Mrs. Johnson talked. Oh, yeah? You know you shot and killed Mayor Rogers and Mrs. Johnson's husband. So come on. I'm through with this case. And you're through for good. Rain, rain, go away. Little Mary wants to go out and buy a new hat. Mm, I hate rain. <laughs> you hate it. Imagine what Mrs. Johnson thinks of it. Blackie, how long did it take her before she confessed? Oh, not long. As soon as I told her she couldn't have gone out in the yard to see if the wash was dry because it had just stopped raining. Well, that broke her down. All she wanted to do was have an alibi for the time that her two hired killers shot her husband. And when her neighbor saw her in the yard at the time the shots were fired, she was in the clear. <laughs> she thought. How did you find the two killers, Blackie? You never told me. Well, it was Mrs. Johnson's phone call to Carter that led me to them. When I heard the number she called, Faraday took it from there. From the phone number, Faraday got the address, and oh, then it was an easy... You think that that was a stroke of genius, don't you? Oh, the stroke of genius was the idea to cut the wires to her phone at home. Oh. I had to force her to call Carter from a phone where I could hear her talking. But it really wasn't such a clever stunt. Mm. I wouldn't brag about that. Well, I want to do a little bragging. I gave you the hint about the rain when I didn't buy my hat the day of the murder. <laughs> yes, you did, Mary. You know... One of the characters in this case had a yen for poetry. You know how he'd sum up this case? How? It rained, and so you got no hat. That's true, and is no bosh. Mm, yes. But the rain broke down an alibi. It all came out in the wash. Oh, oh Blackie. <laughs>
can't tell when you go out who you're gonna meet. Hello, Inspector Faraday. Huh? You speaking to me? Well, your name's Faraday, isn't it? Faraday? Yeah, I'm Faraday. Well, my name's Sammy. You know me, Sammy? Yeah, hello, Sammy. You kind of thought you'd be along this way. Well, so I'm along. What do you want? Just to tell you something. I know about a holdup. They're sticking up an armored truck. Who is? When? Where? The north side is where. Tomorrow night is when. The butcher boys is who? The butcher boys, huh? Yeah. Thanks, Sammy. I'll... Oh, that's not all, pal. There's something more important. They're going to take the loot directly to the boss. What? The boss? Yeah. They're going right from the armor truck job to the boss? Yeah, I thought you'd like to know. Like to know. Sammy, I almost like you for this. I've been trying to find out who heads the butcher boys for months. Maybe I can grab him this time. Thanks a lot, Sammy. Okay. So keep on being a good boy. I'll be good to you someday. I hope you remember that. I won't forget it. Oh, you got a good memory for things, huh, Sammy? Uh, uh, huh? A memory for everything but faces. Uh, uh, who, you can remember uh, to tell Faraday about us, though, John. Who are you guys? The, the butcher boys? Two of them. We come from a large family. Come on, Sam, you're going for a large ride. Not to take the... Grab his arm, no. Ted. I already got it. No, 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 please, boys. I didn't tell Faraday a thing. I didn't say a word about a thing. Oh, don't kill me. Please don't kill me. Why, we aren't going to kill you, Sammy. That is not unless the boss says to kill you. Oh, yes, no, 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 Sammy, you, you let's go but... see what the boss wants us to do oh, with you. I... Uh, the spot you put us in has got to be erased. It's got to be erased or you got to be. And now on to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. James, have you sent Henry for the car? Yes, Mr. Van Alistair. Good. He said there would be a slight delay, though. Uh, with the big car, though. In that case, tell him I'll take the convertible instead of the big car today. Right away, Mr. Ben Allister. I'll see who's at the door, James. Yes, sir. Oh, hiya, James. Oh, Good afternoon, on, Mr. Butcher. Hey, come right in. Oh, thanks. Come on, Ted. Drag our friend Sammy with you. Inside. Mr. Van Allister, the Messrs. John and Theodore Butcher and a friend to see you. Thank you, James. That'll be all for now. Very good, sir. Well, John, Ted... Who's this? This is uh, Loudmouth Sammy, boy. Oh, hey. Loudmouth? <laughs> Loudmouth, loose mouth, limp mouth. Doesn't make any difference, boss. No, he no. talks to cops. No, I didn't... Tell him being confidential with Inspector Faraday. And you can guess about uh, what, can't you? Well, it was huh? nothing. Uh, I never guess at anything, John. I'll tell you what it was about, boss. Never but... mind, Ted. I'd rather hear it from our guest. Oh, I didn't tell him anything. I didn't tell John, him... John, advise our guest that I prefer the truth, will you? Huh? Oh, sure, boss. <laughs> You've advised him enough, enough, I think. That's enough. Well, that's I'm enough. listening, Sammy. Uh, now start talking. You'll get a little advice from me, too. Uh, no, 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 no more, please. I I'll tell you what I told Inspector Faraday. Well? It was about the armored truck. It was about holding up the armored truck. Oh, is that all? Yeah, that's all. Well, I swear that's all. I wonder. John. Yeah? Well, take him into the oh, other room. No, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, I know the rest, boss. No, no, no. Come on, Ted, you can help No, 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 wait, okay. wait, 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 wait a minute. I I'll make a deal. I'll tell you something else. The man really is talkative, isn't he, boy? <laughs> he sure <laughs> is. Well, what are you saying? Well, what is it you have to say? Well, look, if I can tell you something you really want to know, will you let me go? Will you? Perhaps. How'd you like to knock off Boston Blackie, huh? <sighs> Take him inside, gentlemen, if that's oh, all no, no, he wait, has wait, wait, to wait. say. You know, if you let Blackie around, he'll get you sooner or later. I know where he'll be, and alone... And I know what he's up to. Make me a deal, huh? Make me a deal. Let me go and I'll tell you everything. Hey, that Blackie's a bad guy, boss. Yeah, yeah. I had one run in with him and I came in second. Yeah, yeah. The squealer here's got something. Yeah. Perhaps. Where is Blackie going to be? Will you let me go then, huh? We'll see. Well, then, where is he? Well, it ain't where he is. It's where he's going to go tomorrow night. Oh. Tell us where that is, Sammy. Because wherever it is... He'll never leave there alive. Homicide, Faraday. Faraday? Guess who? 
Blackie, hang up. Hang yourself. Do something, but don't bother me. Same old Friday. Same old tired talk. Same old tired brain. Yeah. You ought to know that if I call you up, it's about something important. The only thing you could say that would be important to me would be goodbye. <laughs> what are you waiting for? For you to get some sense, which is probably a lifetime engagement or assignment that I've given myself. Did a character named Sammy the Lip get to you? Suppose he did. What do you know about it? I sent him, sweetheart. No. He came to tell me about the butcher boys and their latest caper, and I referred him to you. I told him you were in that business. Oh, you did? That's right. All right, all right. You sent me Sammy. I talked to him. He told me what he knew. I'm going to do something about that armored truck thing. You happy now? I couldn't be happier if you were in your right mind. Oh. We'll grab this butcher gang and their boss together. We'll grab? Mm -hmm. Oh, no. You're keeping your nose out of this. And I mean it this time, Blackie. Will it make you happy if I do? I'll give you a sample. Ha, ha, ha. That's how happy it'll make me. In that case, Priority, I've got news for you. You worry about grabbing the gang after they grab the armored truck. I'm going to take a vacation in the country. Good. You need a rest, and I need one. Very From clever. You. Mm-hmm. That's very clever. I wonder when you heard me say it. Mm-hmm. Priority, old pal, I am going to take it easy. You do the work on the armored car and leave the rest to me. <laughs> All right, all right. Be quiet a minute, and I'll tell you why I've called you all together. Could the Messrs. John and Zeldor Butcher have finished entertaining our guest, Mr. Van Alistair, and they're resting? That's quite all right, James. I'll go over things with them a little later. Boys? Yeah? Yes, sir. The police have been informed of our intention to rob that armored truck on the north side tomorrow night. Who uh, read it, boys? It doesn't matter, guys. But our plans have been definitely upset, Mr. Van Alistair. On the contrary, James, our informer has been of great help to us. I've just learned that 48 new automobiles are being trucked in from the Middle West tomorrow night. We're going to steal those cars, all four dozen of them. That's a man-sized job, boys. This outfit is man-sized, isn't it? Right. So the truck deal is out, huh? That's correct. But in view of the new cars we can appropriate, it doesn't matter too much. Okay, if you say so. Mr. Van Alistair. Yes. What about this blackie person? Have plans been made for him? Very definite plans, James. In fact, if he's alive tomorrow, I'll be very surprised. No, James, I don't think we need worry about Blackie much longer. Well, that's good. Now, uh, let's get back to the new cars. It ain't going to be tough to sell them, boys. But it'll be tough to hide them till we get rid of them, won't it? We'll sell the cars in another part of the country. Drive them there? Right after we lift them? No, drive them to the Franklin Farm. I'll meet you there an hour after the robbery, and then I'll tell you... Come in. Oh, Mr. Van Alistair. Oh, come in, John. How's our talkative guest, Sammy? I don't think he's going to talk anymore. No. No. What a shame. Is he dead? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I hit him too hard. Oh? <laughs> What'll I do with a body? Oh, leave it out in the country someplace. They tell me it's peaceful there. <laughs> comes the ambulance, Inspector Faraday. I don't know why anyone sent for an ambulance, Sergeant. This guy's been dead for hours. Poor Sammy. He sure died the hard way, Inspector. Somebody really worked him over. Yeah, I know. I want to have some of the boys the ambulance. Oh, look who just got out of that car behind the ambulance. Hello, Faraday. Blackie, go away. Get in that ambulance and make like a victim. Do anything you want, but do it away from here. Well, thanks, Faraday. I will, as soon as I find out what the score is. It's nothing to nothing. That's right. You know nothing, and you'll do nothing. Oh, uh, you... So Sammy got it, huh? Well, I figured. He was an underworld character, and they all get it sooner or later. Okay, okay, so he got it sooner. How did you know to come way out here? My brilliant mind, Faraday. I was at headquarters when the report came in and followed the ambulance out here. You know, I think maybe even you could have done that. That's enough out of you. Apparently someone couldn't get anything out of our dead friend here. But you got plenty out of him, didn't you? Enough to know when, where, and how to get to the boss of the butcher mob. You think it's going to be easy? It will be, if you'll stay out of my way. Okay, Faraday, I'll do it. Good. I'll get to the boss myself. Bad. Good or bad, pal, I'll get him. Get me? Hello? Hello, Mary, this is Blackie. Oh, Blackie, you're late. You promised you'd take me to dinner a half hour ago. I'm sorry, Mary, but I'm... I'm going to be later. 
Uh-oh. Little Mary eats alone and likes it. Well, Blackie doesn't eat and doesn't like it. I'm tracking down the butcher mob. Do you have to? Mm-hmm. And it seems to me I had a run-in with one of those lads once. I think it was, uh, Willie or Ted. Uh-uh, no, it wasn't. It was Johnny. Oh, what am I saying? You never met one of the... <laughs> Thanks, Mary. It was Johnny. What did he look like? Do you remember? I have a poor memory for faces. Uh-oh. Uh, I guess if I don't tell you I won't see yours for so long, I'll forget it, too. <laughs> now you're being a good girl. What did he look like? Oh, he was tall, blonde, and had a mustache and an ugly scar on his right cheek. A mustache on his right cheek? Funny place for one. Oh, you know what I mean. <laughs> yes, I know. Well, have a nice dinner. Oh, I'm sure I will. You eat something, too, will you? I sure will, Mary. I'm going to a farm, and if my plans work out, I'm going to make the boss of the butcher mob my meat. <laughs> Yards and I'll make it okay. There. Please let somebody be home in this farmhouse. Fingers are crossed. Wood's been knocked. I've done all I can. Well, well, what have we here? I'm I'm hurt. Please help me. Car just hit me on the highway. I think maybe I'm hurt bad. Jumping catfish. Here, let me help you in the house. Easy now. Ooh, oh, easy. You take it easy, young fella. I'll have you fixed up in no time. Oh, thanks. I reckon you'll be best off lying here on the couch. Yeah. Here we are. Easy now. Oh, thank you, Mr. Franklin's the name. Now I'll get you something to fix you up right and proper. Oh, that's that's nice of you, Mr. Franklin. Ah, no trouble at all to help, Boston Black, eh? Hey, how'd you know my name? And what's with that shotgun in your hand? Oh, shotguns were made to go off, Blanky. Eh? And I don't have to tell you how I knew you. Funny how things work out. A minute ago, I say hello to you. Now I've got to say goodbye. So long, Blanky. Eh? And now, back to Boston Blackie. An underworld character named Sammy tells Inspector Faraday how he can find the boss of the notorious butcher mob. Because he talked, Sammy is killed by the mob. And the mob, unknown to Faraday, changes its plans, arranges to kill Blackie, and steal a load of new cars. When we left Blackie, he had arrived at a farmhouse, presumably having been hit by a car, and unaccountably, the farmers grabbed a shotgun, after which a shot was heard. As we return to our story, the telephone rings in Inspector Faraday's office. Faraday speaking. Inspector Faraday, this is Mary Wesley. Uh, Miss Wesley, if I'm not being pestered by Blackie, I'm bothered by you. Now, leave me alone, will you? Inspector, where's Blackie? Do you know? No, and I don't care. As long as he's out of my way. Oh, Inspector, listen. He wanted me to describe one of the butcher mob for him. He said he wanted to be sure he'd recognize him again if he saw him. But that was six hours ago, and... Well, I'm afraid something's happened to Blackie. Mm, I'm hoping something did. Hey! On account of him, I got a phony tip about an armored car that was supposed to be hijacked. I hope he stays lost. Oh, please. Now, Inspector Faraday, you know you don't mean that. Well, of course I don't. But I'm sore. Blackie wouldn't stay out of this case. Now it's all messed up. Why is it? I had men all set to follow the butcher mob after an armored truck robbery on the north side tonight. But the truck wasn't even stopped. That means Blackie's interfered. Now how do I find the mob leader? Look, Inspector, you'll find the leader of the butcher mob some other time. Please try to find Blackie now. I'll try. But don't worry, Miss Wesley. No matter where he is, he's all right. Unless, sir... Huh? Oh, unless what, Inspector? Unless, like I always said, he'll meet a guy someday who's luckier than he is. Let's just hope today isn't that someday. Yes? Mr. Franklin. Yes? You know who this is. Well, I'm not uh, quite sure. You know, all right. What about Boston Blackie? Did he arrive as I said he would? Sure did. Got here and pretended he'd been hit by a danged automobile and 
Wanted me to fix him up. And I did with a shotgun. Good, good, wonderful. That Sammy was a helpful gentleman after all. He told us he'd told Blackie about our using your big barn and that Blackie would be out to see you. Danged if he wasn't, too. Well, as long as you took care of him, it doesn't matter now. Excellent work, Mr. Franklin. Get rid of the body and be ready for this evening. We'll be using the barn to hold 48 brand new cars. The barn will be here when the cars get here. Good. I'll be at home here waiting for a report. You call me, will you? You know the number. It seems to me maybe I mislaid it somewhere. I don't... Oh, you've got it. Look for it. Goodbye. Hmm. Operator, did you want me, Mr. Franklin? Uh, Miss, this is Boston Blackie, not Mr. Franklin. Uh, a call just came here from the city. Yep, that's right. Call came from Downey, 1561. Uh, that's all I wanted to know. Uh, thanks, Miss. Thank you very much for everything. <laughs> Is that a way to treat a man back from the dead? You act like you wish I hadn't made the return trip. Who's acting? And here I am, all ready to give you the lowdown on the butcher gang, and, if you're a nice boy, the boss. Blackie, what is all this? You disappear. Nobody knows where you are. Well, you worried Miss Wesley to death. She's called this office of mine every ten minutes looking for you. I know. I phoned her from a drugstore on the way here. She's happy with me now. Mm, well, I'm not. What goes on? Get this, Faraday. The time for clowning is over. The butcher boys didn't grab that armored truck because they stole some brand new cars today instead. Where from? Well, I don't know. Oh, fine. But I know where they took them. A huge barn belonging to a farmer named Franklin. Franklin, huh? We'll grab him quick. Uh, it's too late. He's dead. What? It was either him or me when he was fingering his shotgun, and I'm a little selfish that way. I'd rather it were him. I dragged his body to the attic. What are you talking about? Our little squealing Sammy probably told the butcher boys and their boss that he had told me about their using the Franklin farm as a combination hideout and storage warehouse. Why didn't he tell me that? Because I asked him not to. I wanted to handle this myself. If you went up there with a gang of cops, you'd have scared them off. Anyhow, when I got to the Franklin place, I pretended I'd been hit by a car, but Franklin wasn't fooled. Apparently, he was expecting me. Mm, I always knew you were a bad actor in more ways than one. Hey, you should have heard the impersonation I did of Franklin on the telephone. It was good enough to fool the boss. Who is the boss, Blackie? I'll let you know when I introduce him to you. That can wait for a few hours, though. And those few hours are going to see you a very smart cop. Let's see how good an actor you are. Because that's a very strange role. <laughs> good. Very good. Excellent work, John. Okay, boss. Do I move the cars now? That's right. You and the boys drive each of the moving vans out of the barn. It was a cinch running the new cars and the moving vans we had parked in Franklin Barn, Mr. Van Alistair. Good, good. <laughs> now, you want two of the boys to get into each van and drive them all out of town. That's right. Oh, uh, has Mr. Franklin returned yet? That's funny, boss. No, he ain't around. We ain't seen him. Uh, but there was some blood on the floor of the farmhouse. Hmm. Mr. Franklin's following orders. He killed Boston Blackie and is probably out disposing of the body. Those were his orders. You follow yours. That's all, John. Oh, thank you, Mr. Van Alistair. Thank you. Uh, bye. Uh, we'll be moving those vans in uh, ten minutes. Excellent. Goodbye. <laughs> Our van's a lead van, Ted. You know yeah. the route to take it, do I have to tell you again? I got it, John. What's holding up those vans behind us? Now, the last one's backing out of the barn now. We better wait for it to turn around. Tommy's driving, and that guy could get lost in a telephone booth. <laughs> I hear that hick farmer Franklin knocked off Boston Blackie. Is that right? Sure. He's one guy I really wanted out of the way. <laughs> Uh, Tommy's got his van turned around. I guess we can start rolling. Okay, let's go. Roll! 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 Here we go, boy. Here we go. <laughs> I got to laugh, John. It's going to take a guy with x-ray eyes to see we got cars inside these moving vans. <laughs> you ain't kidding, huh? <laughs> Very funny. But, but, fellas, the joke's on you. Who are you? Hey, Blackie. That's right. And 
Miss Gunn and I say that all the vans are following you, but you're following my orders. Stewie, got a heavy enough roadblock across the highway, Inspector Faraday? It'll do the trick, all right, Sergeant. If Blackie did his stuff, stay back in the bushes. Yes, sir. Hmm. The trucks are five minutes overdue. I hope nothing went wrong at the farm. Yeah. Yeah, Blackie was pulling a pretty risky thing there, Inspector. Well, it was his idea. If it didn't work out, I was going to... Inspector. Hmm? I think I hear the vans coming now. Something's coming. Yeah, it's a van's all right. Yeah, the first one's just round to the corner. Ready? Yeah, ready, willing, and able, Inspector. If that roadblock stops the lead van... If it doesn't, Blackie will. I know Blackie's in that first van because the vans wouldn't be routed this way if he weren't. There must be. Inspector, it's not slowing up. It's going to crack that roadblock. Get back! I'm already getting back. That's it. Get us stopped in time, Inspector. Let's go get him. Come on, right. Yeah, they're giving up easy. There's Boston Blackie. Hey, Blackie, you hurt? No, Barry. My driver got a little ambitious when he when he saw the block and tried to crash through it. Yeah. He thought he could get away from me eventually, I guess, but the roadblock and the police gave him ideas. Uh, bad ideas. Well, we got them all, but we don't have the guy we want. The boss of this mob. Oh, I think we'll get him before the night's over, Inspector. I can find him. You can? Where? Well, you see, I know his phone number, and you can check his name and address. Huh? I know the phone number, but believe me, I'm not calling for an appointment first. Come in. A gentleman here to see you, Mr. Van Alistair. Well, show him in, James, and, uh... James? Yes, sir. Where did you get that black eye? The... Uh... Black eyes? Sir. Oh, I uh, ran into You ran into a... this fist, Van Alistair. Who are you? I'll let you know. And, uh, James, uh, that'll be all. Uh, Faraday is waiting for you outside. Very good, sir. Nice place you have here, Van Alistair. I demand to know who you are. Stop it, kid. You're not in a position to demand anything. What? But I'll tell you, I'm a nice guy that way. I'm Boston Blackie. Blackie? But I thought that... That you... I was dead? I know. Everybody thinks I'm dead lately. Glad to disappoint you, Mr. Van Alistair. Very glad. Well, do you want to leave your manor in a manor to which you're accustomed, or would you prefer I carried you out? Where are my boys? Where are they? The butchers in jail, waiting for you. They said to tell you that they're awful lonesome. They told you about me? Mm Mm-hmm. They wouldn't. They wouldn't dare. I don't believe you. You're making all of this up. First, I'm an actor, now I'm a writer. Look, Mr. Van Alistair. My boys. I don't want to waste any more time. My boys are in jail, all of them. Every last one. They didn't tell you about me. They wouldn't dare. You said that before, all right, so they didn't. That make you feel better? The cars. The ones in the vans. We've got them all. It can't be. It mustn't be. I planned too long. I was too careful. You're lying. You know you're lying. Tell me you're lying. Oh, come here, you lazy pants punk. (coughs) Come on, cutie. Come on, let's get moving. No, no. You're responsible for this. You're the one that's wrecked all my plans. I'm going to... Mr. Van Alistair, I'm surprised at you. With your breeding, too. Using the wrong knife. Oh, oh, yeah. uh, Mikey, you need any help? No, thanks, Friday. But this guy on the floor does. Yeah. That's your gang boss, pal. Uh-huh. See to it that he's unemployed for a long, long time. <laughs>
What are we digging, Joe? A sub-basement? Uh, you know what we're digging, Sue. Sure, but how far down are we going? To China? Don't be silly. It's just about deep enough. A few more spadefuls, and I guess it'll fit. Well, I hope it's just a few more. I'm exhausted. Uh, don't be crazy. I've done most of the work. And I know why, too. Look, Joe, isn't this deep enough? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. <sighs> yeah, it's deep enough. But is it wide enough and long enough? It's wide enough. Well, I think it's okay. Let's lift it in. You get that end. All right. Now lift. <coughs> hey, it's yeah. heavy, isn't it? Don't be lazy. Come on, come on, lift. I'm doing my best. Okay. Now lower it. I think it'll fit. Yeah, I think it will, too. Whoa. Oh, he's right. Yeah, it fits, Sue. Just fits. Now what do we do? Cover it up and forget about it? Now, don't be silly. Just covering it up with dirt won't hide it for long. I'm going to pave the entire basement floor tomorrow. Then she'll not only be a couple of feet underground, <laughs> but under half a foot of concrete, too. They're going to do a good job of hiding Sally's body, I'd say. You bet we are. Maybe my wife did show up at the wrong time. But what's left of her will never show up. And now on to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. Hello, Joe. Well, what's the matter? Aren't you glad to see me? World. Well, Billy, don't be ridiculous. Of course I am. Uh, come on in there. I am in, Joe. Where's Sally? Your sister? Yeah. Well, she isn't here, Billy. She's been out of town, you know that. But you and I quit stalling. She came back last night. I know that. And I also know what happened. Now, look, Billy, I... Skip it. I'm not sore because you killed her. She meant nothing to me. But money does. And you're going to get me a chunk of it or I start talking. Now, Billy, you got to listen to do me. Do I? What do you bet? Seems to me that you better listen to me. You killed Sally. But I got it fixed so the cops are going to pick up your friend Sue Adams for it. And for keeping my mouth shut about you, I want a lot of dough. But you know I'm nice. I'm going to tell you how you can get it for me. <laughs> All right, Mary. Have a nice trip, and I'll be a good boy while you're going. Uh oh, there's the doorbell. Well, I'll try to be a good boy. Goodbye. Bye. Coming, coming. Yes. Is is this Boston Blackie's apartment? If it isn't, I'm in the wrong place. Oh, you're Blackie. Uh huh. And apparently you're in trouble. Come in. Thanks. I'm Sue Adams, and I am in trouble. But how did you know? Oh, I'm a genius at telling what people are thinking. And also, you're twisting that handkerchief so hard, it's going to be shredded in a minute. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, don't apologize to me. Say you're sorry to the handkerchief. But uh, what kind of trouble are you in? Blackie, I'm afraid I'm going to be killed. Well, apparently you're letting it scare you to death. Don't do it. That'll save someone a lot of trouble. Please, Blackie, I'm serious. I'm sorry. But so many people imagine that this they This isn't have... imagination. You see... I helped him do it. Helped him do what? Bury his wife. Huh? Uh, what him buried his wife? Joe. Joe Lang. He buried his wife Sally in the basement of his home last night. This morning, he paved the floor of the basement with concrete. And you helped him? I helped him to bury her. Who helped him kill her? Joe said he found her in the basement already dead. But I know he's lying. What makes you think so? Because he said he'd go to the chair if his wife's body were found. He said he'd see that... I had to be buried, too, if I ever told what I knew. So you've come right to me to tell me all about it, huh? That's asking for it, isn't it? No. I think Joe intends to kill me anyway. He invited me to his place in the mountains, and he's never done that before. I know he wants to take me out there to kill me. Well, you're in a spot, young lady. And in this case, the best spot for you is police headquarters. I'll phone it. Come in. Hello, Blanky. Well, think of the inspector and up he pops. Hello, Faraday. Hi. 
Well, uh, what do you want me for this time? Murder, arson, or help? I don't want ever you want you for anything, Blackie. But is this girl Sue Adams? Yes, I, I'm Sue Adams. I got a phone call saying I might find you up here. A phone call from whom? A fellow named Wilson. Forget it, pal. Faraday, this girl wants you uh, for protection. Oh, she does, does she, Blackie? Now, maybe I want her for murder. What do you mean, maybe? I mean, I got a phone call from Billy Wilson, the dead woman's brother. He said this girl killed his sister, Sally Lang. Oh, no. One of my men followed her here, and here I am. Just because you got a phone call, you think you've got a murderer. Faraday, what are you using for a head? All right, so the phone call doesn't mean she killed Mrs. Lang. But it means she knows something about it. Sure she does, and she's told me everything she knows. She helped Joe Lang bury the body. Uh Uh-oh. And it's Joe Lang who murdered his wife. Uh Uh-oh. But before you have a murder case, you've got to find a body, you know. Oh. And that's why you need me, because I know where it is. Put lots of paper in that corner of the room, Billy. We want to fix it so this joint of mine goes up like a hot torch. I know that, Joe. I'll make sure nobody will ever know we set your place on fire. Now, these papers will burn with the rest of the joint. And so will all the excelsior. All right. So much excelsior around, it'll look suspicious, Joe. It'll burn. If it doesn't, so what? Your sister got three barrels of new dishes delivered last week. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. You bought Sally new dishes? She never told me. Uh, she won't tell anyone anything now. Uh, I think we have enough papers around. I should think so. The basement's jammed with papers. We spread them around every room. Joe. Yeah. Joe, I just heard a door slam. So did I. There's a front door, too. Quiet, I'll see who it is. Okay. Well? Billy, we gotta work fast. Okay. It's Boston Blackie. I've seen that guy's picture in the paper so often I'd know him anywhere. Boston Blackie? Oh, somebody must have found out that we... Never mind about him. If we want the insurance from this joint of mine, we'll have to set fire to it, but quick. What about Blackie? He's prowling around. I saw him head toward the back of the house. Come on, light this stuff. Okay, but... What about Black? With the gab. When he gets in one of the back rooms, I'll lock him in. We'll scram and he'll go up and smoke. Joe, that's murder. It's going to be suicide if we don't get out of here ourselves. Look at those flames go. Come on. Where's Blackie? He's where I thought he'd be. In that room over there. And if I'm fast, we can lock him in and... Got it. Hey, you guys. Joe, fire's start to spread out. Yeah. And in a minute, it's going to cook Blackie's goose. Unless you and I get out. <laughs> Okay, men, let's pack up and shovel. There's not much left of the house, Inspector Faraday. I don't care about the house, Chief, but Boston Blackie was in there. There's no one left in there now, Inspector, no one alive. That house went up like a, like, well, it went up awful quick. What was Blackie doing in there? We came down to see a guy named Joe Lang about a body Blackie said he could find. We were both going in, but Blackie said he wanted Lang alone a few minutes. Uh, well, if no one come out of the house after the fire started, no one's coming out now. You sure Blackie stayed in there? Blackie didn't have time to get out. He hadn't been inside more than a minute when I saw a flame shoot out of all the windows. So I beat it down to the corner and turned in the alarm. Blackie might have come out while you were turning in the alarm. If he did, he would have been here when I got back. No, I, I guess he got caught in there. Well, that's tough, Inspector. Yep. Well, we'll be able to check through the rooms pretty soon now, Inspector. Okay. I want to make sure about Blackie. Sure or what, Faraday? That I'm dead or alive? Blackie, you're alive? A little smoky, Inspector, but alive. Why, you... I ought to... So I worried you, Faraday, but I, 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 I just had to wait until I heard you say something nice about me. You never do if you think I'm alive and might hear about it. Yeah, you'll hear about this, Blackie. How'd you get out of that house? Through a window? No, the flames were at the windows before I could get to one. And the only door in the room was locked. Well, how'd you get out? Faraday, have you forgotten? Has a locked door ever stopped me? No, but I sure wish this one had. Faraday, you say the nicest things. I know, Blanky. Did you find Sally Lang's body? And if you did, who killed her? I didn't have a chance to find it, and I don't know who killed her. A big help you are. Oh, don't worry, Faraday. I'll find out. It could be, you know, that Sally's killer just burned his house behind him. Ten of diamonds. Jack of hearts. Uh, nuts. 
Well, Billy, it don't look like you'd ever win a dime off me, cutting cards. Well, I'll bet you five I win this time, Joe. You got it. Go on, you shuffle. Okay. <laughs> I wonder if they found Blackie's body yet. <laughs> oh, the joint's still probably as hot as a griddle. Go on, you cut first. Sure. King of clubs. You bet five you'll win this time, huh? I'll win. Here's my cut. Ace of hearts. Why, you dirt. The five's mine, Joe. Don't be dears. I don't pay off on a crooked cut. You shuffled. There was nothing crooked about it. Ah, uh, that phony cut you made stacked the cards. Now, you're... wait a minute. Just because you're Sally's husband, don't think you can call me a cheat. Okay, you... pal, you started something. <laughs> well, Billy. Okay, okay, that... that's enough. Yeah. Maybe you'll... Maybe you'll get away with this, but you're not going to get away with killing my sister. She's lying under the concrete of that burning house of yours now, and I know who put her there and why. You think you know. You're sure I know. That's why you agreed so easy to burn your house down. You want to marry Sue Adams. That's why you killed Sally. I can always tell what I know. Don't forget about that. I think maybe i better finish what I started a minute ago and bust that You'd small... better just stand right there like a good boy. I got a gun ready to go boom. Pretty smart, aren't you? Smart enough to know now I won't live long with you loose. All right, come on, Joe. I'm taking you on a one-way trip to headquarters. I wonder how heavy these cords were before they were half burnt. Better get out of the way, Sue. I'm going to toss some of these old planks your way. Oh, I'm out of your way. Blackie, what happens to me because I helped Joe bury his wife here? If you can prove that you were forced to help him soon, not much. I've kept you out of Faraday's hands so far, haven't I? Yes. There. Uh, I guess I've cleared a big enough floor space. Are you sure this is where she's buried? Oh, I'm positive, Blackie. It was right by that concrete pillar there. That's the exact spot. All right, we'll know in a minute. Hand me that pick. Okay. The heat of the fire broke the concrete a little, and I'll have to finish the job. Here you are. Thanks. Yeah. This is the place, all right, Sue. The ground below the floor is soft. Blackie, I don't have to look at her, do I? Not now, if you don't want to. There. Yeah, I got enough of the concrete out of the way. Now I'll just spade the dirt out of here. Yeah, this is the place, all right. The dirt is plenty loose. Blackie. Yeah? You believe I was forced to help bury her here, don't you? We'll talk about that later, Miss Adams. Right now, I've got... What's the matter? Oh, Nothing. Nothing at all. I've just hit the bottom of this pit, and there's nobody here. What's going on, Miss Adams? Now, back to Boston Blackie. Joe Lang and his girlfriend, Sue Adams, bury the dead body of Joe's wife in the basement of the Lang home. Fearful of her own life, Sue tells Blackie all about it. Blackie goes to the Lang home to find the dead woman's body, but is temporarily sidetracked when Joe and his brother-in-law, Billy Wilson, burn down the house. Later, however, he goes to the spot where the dead woman is buried, but the body is missing. As we return to our story, Blackie is in the telephone booth calling Inspector Faraday's office. I'm assigned. Faraday speaking. Oh, hello, Faraday. This is Blackie. I've been to the ruins of the Lang house. I know, I know. You found Mrs. Lang's body. Well, I've done better than that. I have her killer right here in my office. You can't prove you have anything, Faraday, because I didn't find a body. What? I found where it had been buried once, but it wasn't there this time. Oh, fine. A big help you are. Well, look, I'll be a little help then. Who's in your office, Joe Lang? Yeah, and Wilson, the dead woman's brother. He brought Lang in. I thought Wilson told you Sue Adams killed Sally Lang. 
Now he says it was Joe Lang, and he only thought Miss Adams might have done it when he called me first. Mm -hmm. Ah, but without a bug. Uh, wait a minute, Farley. Don't say anything, or you might spoil a plan I have. Huh? If Joe Lang killed his wife, I know how I can prove it. We can't prove anything without a bug. I bot. said, wait a minute, will you? You'll have to let Lang go, of course. But before you do, tell him that the body is missing, all right. But we know where it is, and we'll recover it before midnight tonight. Oh, I get it. Sure, if Lang killed his wife, he's essentially tried to hide his wife's body again, because without a body, there's no case against him. And I think the body will prove who committed the crime. Let Lang go, then follow Lang and Wilson, too. You think Wilson did it? Well, he's the one accusing everybody else. Look, you follow Lang, and have somebody else follow Wilson. Uh, where are you going to be all this time? I'm going to practice taking bows. Mm, you don't need them. You need brains. Uh, suppose this doesn't work. It'll work. Lang will be flowered. Wilson will be followed. And if either one of them goes for the body, I'll follow through. Don't let Lang's car get too far ahead of us, Sergeant. I won't, Inspector Faraday. But it's tough driving with no lights. Yeah. Wonder if Wilson is leading Blackie out into the country, too. I don't know. I doubt it, though. I don't think Wilson did it. What's his motive? He didn't gain anything by her death. But Lang did. What? He got rid of her. Oh, so he could marry that Sue Adams, huh? Oh, maybe just because he was sick of her. She weighed almost 200 pounds, I understand, and was as ugly as... Hey, Lang's car just pulled off the road by these woods up there. Yeah, I noticed. Hey, he's getting out, ducking into the woods. Pull up right behind him quick, and we'll help him find a body. Okay. It looks like Blackie was right, huh? Uh, he usually is, but don't tell him I said so. Hey, Lang! Lang! Uh, looking for something, Lang? Don't run for it, butter. I'll have to stop you with a slug. Okay, okay. You think I'm still? I think you're pretty dumb if you didn't know we could follow you out here. Okay, so you followed me out here. What for? You like the country air? You know why we followed you out here. So you'll do exactly what you've done. Lead us to your wife's body. You think it's out here, do you? I know it is. And if you don't lead us to where it's hidden... We'll find it ourselves. Okay. Okay, so I hid her body in the woods here. There it is, Inspector. The body. Good. Why don't you try to hide it, Lang? Why? Because Never I... Never mind, I'll tell you why. Because you know we can't prove a murder without a body. You knew Blackie knew the body was in the basement of your house, so you dug it up and brought it here. Now you wanted to get rid of it again. Well, we've got the body. You know what that means? It means we've also got you. <laughs> Hello, Bernie. Oh, Flacky, get out of my Look, office. Look, you I'm... promised to phone me. Now be quiet. I brought your lady visitor. Come in, Miss Adams. Thank you. My office, and she thanks him. Why should I phone you, Blanky? To let me know how my plan worked. You know how it worked. So go ahead and bow yourself all over the place. You found Mrs. Lang's body? Yeah, Joe Lang let us right to it. He admits he killed her and everything. He's in jail now, Inspector? Yeah, Miss Adams, you're safe now. But you always were. Lang said he had no intention of killing you. One murder was enough. Why did Lang kill a party? He claims he didn't mean to. They had a fight in the basement. He pushed her and she fell. Her head hit a concrete post. That was that. That must have happened long before I came in. He was just starting to bury her when I got there. Miss Adams, she'd been dead for some time before he buried her. Uh, he admits he left the house right after he killed her and didn't come back for a couple of hours. Oh, that's when he realized she was dead. Mm. She hadn't moved, so... Very smart, Blackie. If she hadn't moved for two hours, she was dead. So he knew he killed her. Well, if it was an accident, Inspector Faraday, you can't... He just says it was an accident, Miss Adams. But I don't think it was. The coroner reports she got a pretty heavy rap on the head. You know, I've just had a pleasant thought. What? Lang led you to that body rather easily. What if it isn't his wife's body? But it is his wife... Huh? What did you say? Nothing, Inspector. But has anyone besides Lang identified the body? No, but Wilson's at the morgue identifying it now. And then he's coming here. Well, if when he gets here, he says that isn't his sister's body, you'll get nowhere trying to send Lang to jail. Yeah, so you say. Come in. You sent for me, Inspector Faraday? Uh, yeah, Wilson. Have you seen the body? Yes, I have. Get ready for a surprise, Inspector. Quiet, Blanky. Whose body was it, Wilson? It... It was my sister's, all right. Blanky. Hey, get ready for what did you say, Blanky? All right, so I'm wrong. Looks like I'm the guy on the right this time, doesn't it? Well, it's the first time for everything. Go ahead, Blackie. Just try to make me mad. This is the way I like my cases to end. 
First, I find the body. There's a bump on the back of the head and a gash on the side of the head. Her husband admits pushing her. Then he admits he killed her, buried her, and tried to hide her. Uh, right, Miss Adams? Well, I... I guess so. Right, Blackie? Right, Faraday. <laughs> he not only admits all this, but he dictates a complete confession and signs it. Right, Blackie? Right, Faraday. <laughs> I knew all along he was the one who did it. Uh, Wilson, I should have arrested him when you brought him in here. Yes, sir, Joe Lang murdered his wife and he's going to the chair for it. Right, Blackie? Wrong, Faraday. And then I should... What? Just what I said, wrong. Joe Lang didn't kill his wife. But I know who did. Joe Lang killed his wife. That's who did. No, oh, no. Right here's who did. Billy Wilson. Uh, Blackie, you're out of your mind. And... I know, and get out of your office. I think you're through with me, aren't you, Inspector? Yeah, Wilson, you... Uh, wait right. a minute, Faraday. Wilson, when did you last see your sister? Oh, it was some time ago. She'd been out of town. Uh, I wonder, Wilson, if you didn't see her between the time her husband pushed her and the time he came back home. Huh? What do you mean? I mean, maybe Lang only thinks he killed your sister. He did push her down, and she fell against the post. But it didn't kill her. She was killed later by that second blow on the side of the head. Uh, you're through with me, aren't you, Inspector? Now, uh, wait a minute. Go on, Blackie. Wilson, you found your sister unconscious, revived her, learned what happened. Then you quarreled about something, and you killed her, knowing Joe would come home, find her dead, and think that he had killed her. Faraday, arrest this guy, and you'll arrest Mrs. Lang's killer. Hey, Wilson, where do you think you're going? You said you were through with me, Inspector. Yeah, but I've changed my mind. Too late, Inspector. Blackie, Lang. grab him before I'll you... grab him. Don't worry. You better worry, Blackie. Oh, boy. This guy wants a battle, huh? Come here. <coughs> nice going, Blackie. The bigger they are, the harder they fall, I always say. Yes, Faraday, if it's corny, it's what you always say. Yes. But uh, you know what I say? What? Let's find out why this mystic killed his sister. <laughs> Yeah, Blackie, I'll tell you why Wilson did it. Uh, never mind telling Blackie. This is my office, Lang. <laughs> Besides, we know why he killed her. He wanted money, and she refused to give it to him. So he hit her with a poker. His confession tells us that. Yeah, that was a big mistake. Your wife couldn't have gotten that mark on the side of her head if she died when you pushed her. Well, I'm glad you found that out, but I wasn't talking about Sally's killing. You want to know why we burned down the house, don't you, Blackie? Well, Lang, I think I know. That was for money, too. Yeah, that's right, Blackie. Billy knew I was scared about what happened to Sally. I thought I'd killed her, and when he said I had to burn down my house and give him half the insurance money or else, well, I I figured he knew I'd kill Sally and would go to the cops if I didn't do what he said. Well, Lang, you didn't play this very smart. If you thought you'd killed your wife by accident, you should have called the police. And don't be silly. Even Sue Adams thought I'd kill Sally when she found me with a body. Everybody knows Sally and I didn't get along. Well, you've got a charge against you for withholding evidence from the police, and you're going to jail for arson. Well, so what? That's better than where Billy's going. He's going to the chair for a murder. Oh, uh, one thing I want to know, Blackie. Uh, yeah? At uh, first you thought maybe I killed her, then you thought uh, Billy killed her. Why didn't you ever think Sue did it? Your wife was a 200-pounder, Lang, and Sue Adams isn't much over 100. After you pushed your wife, somebody had to revive her, kill her, and then drag her body over to where it was when you left. Sue Adams just couldn't have done that. No, of course not. We, uh, we answer your question, all right, Lang? Sure, yeah. Good. Uh, you must be very tired, Faraday, after the work we did, only, uh, please don't you be as busy as this again, will you? I don't think I could stand it. <laughs>
Here's his body, Inspector Faraday. Yeah. Lying just the way it was when I saw it from the hilltop over there. If you spotted it from that hilltop, how did you know it was your stepfather, Mr. Austin? I recognized the jacket and boots he's wearing. And I knew he was out here inspecting the farm. Mm -hmm. He left the house early this morning, right after it stopped raining. And, well, this is where he'd be, according to his schedule. Oh, he was on a regular routine inspection, huh? Yes, he inspected the entire estate once every week, uh -huh. on foot. Yeah. Well, he's killed by a blow on the head. One blow that meant instant death. But that's impossible, Inspector Faraday. How could he have been killed out here, in the middle of an open field? I don't know how, yet. Now, look, there are no footprints out here, and none that is but his own. Yes. And there they are, leading right up to here where he was slugged and killed. Unless... Unless what, Inspector? Unless the killer followed him, carefully stepping in Austin's prints, killed him... Then walk backwards, stepping in the same prints. I, I guess that explains it, doesn't it? It might. Let's have another look at those prints, huh? Oh, I'm sure that's how it was done, Inspector. Dad wasn't hit by a car or his body driven out here because there are no tire tracks. And on the other hand... He, uh, he wasn't hit on the head by anyone who followed in his footprints either. His boots are cleated, and the cleat marks are still too clear. Oh, good night, Inspector Faraday. This is crazy. He couldn't have been killed out here, and he wasn't carried out here. These are his own footprints... You're it's... absolutely right, Mr. Austin. He couldn't have been killed out here. It's impossible. But there's just one thing that bothers me. What's that? He was. And now, on to Dick Colmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. <laughs> Nice place your stepfather had here, Austin. Well, home is where your hat is, Inspector Faraday. This place is so big, I could have lost a dozen hats in it. Yeah. <clears throat> you won't ask Alice too many questions, will you? It's only been three hours since I found the body, and she's awfully upset about Dad's death. No, I'll try not to bother her too much. Thank you. Uh, is his daughter an adopted child, too? No, I'm the adopted one. She's really Austin's daughter. His only child, in fact. I see. Uh, don't you people lock doors out here? No need to. No one can get past the entrance to the estate without a permit. And the entire grounds are surrounded by an electric fence. Mm, well, at least Boston Blackie can't get in, then. This way. I imagine Alice is in the living room. Well, as soon as Faraday gets here... I'll oh, tell no. Austin, I have... Blackie, you can't be out here. Oh, tell me that the next time I see me. Hello, Inspector. Uh, don't hello me. Goodbye me. I'd like that better. I'm sorry, I can't leave. I accepted the kind invitation of Miss Austin here to solve the murder of her father. Well, I called him, Inspector, because of the circumstances of Dad's death. I, I thought he might be able to help you. Alice, come here a minute, will you? Oh, nice thought, right, Inspector. Be quiet, Blackie. I'll handle this without any help from you. What you know about this case won't help me anyhow. You'd be surprised what I know, Faraday. I suppose you know how he was killed. No, but I know where he was killed and who found his body. Happy Austin here. You didn't think I even knew who he was, did you? Alice has told me a lot of things. What for? She just has to tell me again. Oh, I don't know why. I thought I might hurry things by collecting information for you while you came out here in your usual turtle fashion. Tu why don't you at least be consistent and crawl into your shell while I solve this case? Why don't you go home? Mikey, you going to tell me what you know? No, nope. and that would take too long, I suppose, but I could tell you what you know without opening my mouth. Blackie, you've got it. To... All right, stop begging. The dead man was fabulously rich. Yeah? His estate is the largest in the city limits. Besides this mansion here, there's a private golf course, an airport, a lake, 400 acres of forest, and 1,000 acres of farming land. Is that all? What else did you want him to own? I mean, is that all you know? Tell me something important. Well, he was killed in the middle of a field on one of his regular inspection tours. And he made his tours on such a strict schedule that everyone in the estate knew exactly that where he'd be at any given time. Which means, of I course... I know like... what it means. It means anybody on the estate could have killed him. Anybody with a motive, Faraday. And don't forget, there's a little item of how he was killed. By a blow on the back of the head. By someone standing a hundred feet away at the edge of the field. Don't tell me the arm of the criminal is longer than the arm of the law. Faraday, yeah. before you find out who killed him, you have to find out how he could have been killed in the middle of an open field. Do you know how? All I know is that he was killed shortly after the rain this morning. That'd be about 8 o'clock. 
Excuse me, Inspector Faraday, but may I leave? I'm expecting Jim Saunders, my fiancé, any minute, and I'd like to meet him. I'm sorry, Miss Austin, but no one can leave the estate. Oh, I won't leave the estate, I promise. Now, you're going to drive down and meet him at the gate, huh? Yes. All right. Thank you. Don't tell Jim about Dad's death, Alice. He might celebrate, and that would look bad. If I told him you said that, he'd make your face look bad. Now, remember, Miss Austin, don't leave the estate. Oh, no, I won't, Inspector. Austin, what was the meaning of that crack about Jim Saunders? <laughs> Nothing, Blackie. Only I wish he'd crack his neck one of these days. Now, that's a nice happy thought. Why the hot hate, Austin? Uh, maybe he just doesn't like the guy, Blackie. Oh, thanks, Faraday. Come here a minute, will you, Inspector? Yeah, what for? For a hunk of hunch. I don't like our friend Happy here. Huh? And I have an idea that before I'm through with him, I'm going to make Happy miserable. Hi there, Jim. Hi. Hello, Alice. Hey, you. You look great. Do I? I don't feel that way. How's the airplane? Did it stay in one piece all the way from Toronto? Well, it flew me here, didn't it? I'd say the trip was all right. Well, you you've flown into something that isn't all right. Dad's been killed. Hey, no kidding. What do you know? It was murder. Oh? Oh, I like it you down. You can help me roll this crate into the hangar, huh? Oh, Jim, you, you don't seem a bit concerned about Dad's death. Well, neither do you, for that matter. I'm plenty sorry to hear it. Here, push on this wing. I'll push on the other. All right. Now, shove this right next to Happy's plane in this hangar. Is that still out of commission? Yes. Jim, the, the landing gear on this side is damaged. Yeah, I know. Still shaky about it, too. I clipped the top of a tree coming in for a landing. Almost cracked up. Let me push, huh? Jim? Yeah? Are you sure it was a tree you hit? Well, yeah, sure it was. Could you find the tree again? Oh, I doubt it. I was going pretty fast at the time. I... Hey, what are you getting at? Nothing, Jim. Only I hope the police don't find out that you and Dad had a terrible fight last week. <laughs> You made the newspapers again this evening, Blackie. Look, Mary, did you invite me up for dinner to look at you at the back page of the paper? But, Blackie, this is really an exciting mystery. Yes. It says here that Mr. Austin was killed by a blow on the back of the head mm -hmm. and died instantly, mm. but that there are no marks in the field to indicate what or who killed him. I know. Faraday and I gave the papers most of their information. Oh. There are no footprints or tire tracks in the field, and Austin wasn't carried to the spot where he died. Then how was he killed? How'd he get into the middle of that field? He walked there. After he was hit? No, death was instantaneous, Mary. That's the problem in this case. And what's the solution? There's always a solution, you know. So they say. But this time, honestly, I I'm stumped. The more I think about this case, the crazier it sounds. If I could just... If you could just what? Mary, that airplane up there. Well, it's, it's always up there at this time. That's the 10 o'clock flight to Washington. Mary, that's the way Austin was killed, by a plane. That's what hit him without leaving any marks in the field. There's a private airport on Austin's estate. I bet that's where the murder plane is right now. See you later, Mary. Hey, Blackie, where are you going? To get Faraday. And then I'm going to have a look at the airplane at Austin's airport. The situation is complicated, but I think the explanation is plain. Austin was killed by one of the planes in this hangar, huh, Blanky? Well, which one? There are two. Well, Faraday will have to look them over before we find out. Uh, this is just a waste of time. I don't believe Austin was killed by a plane at you all. You don't, huh? No, it's crazy. Look. Oh, you are. Look, Austin was found in the middle of a field, wasn't he? Yeah. He wasn't hit by anyone who followed him into the field or a truck or a car that went through the field. And he wasn't carried into the field. We know that, don't we? Yes. Then he was obviously hit and killed just where he was found. And the only thing that could possibly have killed him, where he was found, without leaving tracks, is a plane. Don't you agree? Yet, yeah. No. But let's have a look at these planes. I've been looking while I talk, Faraday, and here's the plane that did it right here. Look at the left side of this landing gear. Yeah. Pretty badly bent. So it is. I was right, Faraday. The killer knew where Austin would be at a certain moment. He went up in this plane, found Austin, cut his motor, glided in silently behind his victim, swooped low, hit him, accelerated his motor, and zoomed away. Austin didn't even know what hit him. You two don't know what hit him either. Because it wasn't that plane. Who are you? Saunders. 
Jim Saunders. That's my plane. Oh, you're the guy Alice Austin went to see, huh? Yeah, yeah she met me here. Yeah, I just flew in from Toronto this afternoon. How'd you get this damaged landing gear? Hit a tree coming in for a landing? You mean hit John Austin coming in for a kill, don't you? Ah, sorry to disappoint you, but I was still in Toronto when that old buzzard was killed. Here's my log to prove I didn't leave the Toronto airport till 10 this morning. I understand the old guy was killed about 8. You understand we can check on the time you left the Toronto airport, don't you? Sure, go ahead, check on it. It's okay with me. And then it better be okay with you to keep away from my plane. Just thought I'd tell you, Alice. You marry Jim Saunders and you don't get any of Dad's estate. Oh, yes, I do, Happy. I get half. Dad's will says you get half unless you marry Jim Saunders. But if you do marry him, I get it all. How do you know? I just know. Too bad you didn't. What do you mean, too bad I didn't? Well, it occurs to me that you and Jim might plan to get married now that Dad isn't around to object. We were going to be married even if Dad did object. <laughs> what were you going to live on? Love? Jim doesn't have a dime. All he owns is a plane. You think he'll marry you when he finds out that you won't get a cent from Dad? Oh, Happy, you're not going to do this to me, are you? You'll ignore Dad's will, won't you, and, and give me half. Oh, no. Not if you marry Jim Saunders. Look, darling, I'm not actually your brother. If you really want to live in style, you could marry me. Marry you? Yes. I wouldn't marry you for... for anything. Not for anything, Alice, darling? No. Not even to save yourself from going to the chair for murder? Now back to Boston Blackie. Wealthy John Austin is found murdered in the middle of a field. He has not been carried there or hit by anything or anyone who went through the field. Jim Saunders, flyer fiancé of Austin's daughter Alice, has fought bitterly with a dead man, and the landing gear of his plane is damaged. Jim, however, claims his plane was in Toronto at the time of Austin's death. And as we return to our story, Inspector Faraday is on the phone in Austin's private hangar talking to the dispatcher at the Toronto airport. Look, uh, can you tell me what time this morning Jim Saunders took off from the Toronto airport? Yes, Inspector Faraday, but I'll have to check on it. Just a minute. Thanks. Hey, Blackie, quit wandering around the hangar, will you? What? If either of the planes in here killed Austin, it was Jim's. I'm just having a look at this other plane in case Jim was in Toronto at the time Austin was killed. You're soon going to find out that I was. For your sake, Jim, I hope so. Hello. Inspector Faraday, still there? Yeah, I'm still here. You got that information I want? Yes, uh, Saunders took off from runway 5 at 10 o'clock this morning. 10 o'clock, huh? Yes, sir. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Well, Jim, you're in the clear. I told you I was, Inspector. Now, will you let me and my plane alone? Yeah, I guess we will. Austin was killed two hours before you left Toronto. Uh, tell me, whose plane is this other one? It has Happy Austin's name on it. By a bit of clever deduction, I'd say it was his. Very funny. Jim, does Happy Austin fly? Sure does, Blackie. He's one of the best amateur pilots around. Then let's suppose for the moment that Tappy is our man. Let's suppose he isn't. This plane hasn't hit anything. There isn't a mark on it. Faraday, something could have been attached to the underside of the fuselage. Something that could be easily detached again. And thrown away, huh? Maybe better than that. After killing Austin, Happy could have flown out over the ocean. That's only a few miles from here. Unhooked whatever it was and dropped it into the water. That's right, Blackie. It's only about 30 minutes flying time from here to the coast, but I... Uh, Thanks, Jim. You're a big help. Jim, could this type of plane hit a man, kill him, and not crack up under the impact? Sure it could. Easy, but I still... I say it again, Jim. You are a big help. Faraday, Happy Austin was an adopted son. He wanted to marry Alice. Happy could have killed his stepfather for the money he'd inherited. Just one thing, Blackie. There's a part missing from the engine of Happy's plane. This ship hasn't flown in months. Oh. Jim, did I say you were a big help? Oh, my, Blackie. What a lovely little shanty the Austins live in. <laughs> yes, I thought you'd like to see it, Mary. And wait till you see the inside of this palatial hut. Oh, it probably looks like the inside of the Metropolitan Museum. <laughs> Only bigger. 
Come on, we can walk right in. Okay. Austin's never seemed to lock the door. I'll take care of you later, Happy. Right now, I'm going to see if I can catch Alice at the stables. Oh, hello there, Jim. Oh, hi, Blackie. Oh, Blackie, introduce me to this. <laughs> Miss Wesley, Mr. Saunders, and reverse that. Uh, Mr. Well, Saunders. How do you do, Miss Wesley? Join me at the stables, Blackie. I'm going horseback riding with Alice. If I can catch her in time. No, thanks. I've still got a murder to solve. But uh, you can tell me something. Does Alice own a plane? Own a plane? Well, she can't even fly. Oh, well, thanks a lot. I take it Happy's inside the house? Yeah. You can take it, meaning Happy, away if you want to. Glad to meet you, Miss Wesley. Oh, thank you. Join us for a ride if you like. We'll be somewhere on the bridle path. Thanks. Maybe we will. Blackie. Why did you ask if Alice could fly? Oh, I thought maybe she had a plane hidden somewhere on the estate. She killed her father. You could hide a battleship on this place. Well, she can't fly. So there goes Alice as a suspect. Well, here we go to talk to Happy. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's you again, Becky. Stop that. You're beginning to sound like Faraday. <laughs> uh, Miss Wesley, Mr. Austin. How, How do you do, do? Mr. Austin? Becky, Jim Min told me that you thought maybe my plane killed Dad. Yes, I did think so until Jim pointed out it hasn't flown in months. Well, I haven't flown it. I know that. I took the motor down, did a complete overhaul job on it, and then had to send for a part I needed. Well, tell me something. Yes? Who else on the estate flies? Any of the servants? No, Alice and I are the only ones. Alice can fly? With the best. And she's a top-notch mechanic, too. And Jim said she couldn't handle a plane. Well, I think I'll find Faraday somewhere around here, and then I think the inspector and I will join Alice and Jim on the bridle path. You're going to ride a horse, Blackie? No, no, I'm not going to ride. But I guarantee I'm not going to keep walking around in circles on this case, either. It's a nice night for riding, isn't it, Jim? Yeah, Alice, it sure is. But isn't the usual expression, it's a nice night for a murder? Did you have to mention that? I'm sorry. Jim. Yeah? Dad's will says I don't get a dime if I marry you. Well, how do you know? Happy told me. Well, how does he know? Well, I guess Dad told him. They were awfully chummy and a lot closer than Dad and I were. He probably talked Dad into giving me no money if I married you. Well, of all the dirty... Come on, boy. Well, Jim, wait. I want to get back in a hurry and have a talk with that brother of yours. Oh, but wait for me, Jim. Wait. I... Ho, ho, boy, ho. Steady now. Steady. Hey, there, Miss Austin, having trouble? No, no. I'm all right, Inspector. This horse is having his moment, so. Hello, Blackie. Hello, Miss Austin. Where'd Jim ride off to? He's gone back to the stable. Miss Austin, we found out you could have killed your father. You can fly a plane, can't you? Yes. I never told you I couldn't. No, but Jim did. He said you couldn't fly, and Happy said his plane couldn't fly. I'm going to find out about that before I fly off the handle. <laughs> Hold the ladder steady, Mary. Yeah, okay. I have to get all the way to the top of it in order to get a good look into this engine. It's an awful rickety ladder, isn't it, Blackie? Well, it's better than nothing. But hold it steady. I will, I will. Alice Austin looked awful unhappy when Inspector Faraday brought her up to the house. Did she really kill her father? Could be, Mary. At least Faraday isn't going to let her out of his sight until I find out whether this plane of Happy's is in shape to fly or not. That engine looks awful clean. It certainly doesn't look as if it had been used. I know it doesn't, but it could have been cleaned up. I want to have a look at this carburetor. If the motor was taken completely apart, there won't be any gasoline in it. Hey, Blackie, what's splashed? Gasoline from the carburetor when I lifted it out. Mary, this motor's been in use and just recently. But how, with a part missing and as clean as it is, even I know... It was cleaned up, Mary, and the part taken out again. Run up to the house and get Faraday. Tell him I found something. Yeah, all right. Uh, tell him that I think I know who killed Austin, too. In fact, I know I know who killed him. Hey, Mary. Yeah? I didn't tell you to turn out the light. Well, I didn't turn them out, Blackie. Just all of a sudden, they went... Mary, what's the matter? Mary! Oops, oh, I forgot about this ladder. Hey! Oh. Wow. Oh. 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 Well, Blackie, the high altitude seems to have cleared your head. What's... What's that 
roaring noise. An engine. An airplane engine. Jim's plane. And you and I are in it. Oh. How'd I get here, Happy? I tied you up and threw you in the plane. And you won't get any help from Miss Wesley, either. She's tied just as tightly as you, only she's still in the hangar on the ground. I didn't have to kill her. She doesn't know it was I who murdered my dad. Oh, by the way, Blackie, did you have a nice fall when I jerked that ladder out from under you? Yes, thanks. I'll drop you on your head sometime, too. <laughs> Happy, why did you kill your stepfather? For money. How? You guessed it, in my plane. I cut the engine, I had the extra part hidden. I put it in the plane and then glided in behind my dad, gunned him, and bingo. That was the end of the old man. You know where we are, Blackie? No, where? Over the ocean. And when we get a little farther out, <laughs> you're going for a dip. Uh-oh. You're going to make fish food out of me, are you? <laughs> I wish the Coast Guard were here. The Coast Guard? Yes, I tell the Coast Guard to shoot down. Uh, what's the number of this plane? 641. Coast Guard, shoot down 641. That's what I'd say. Oh, well, say anything you want, Blackie. They can't hear you. And you can't do anything about it the way you're tied up. But if they could hear me, I'd say, this is Boston Blackie and plane 641 out over the ocean. Shoot us down. <laughs> you're killing me, Blackie. But in a couple of minutes, it's going to be the other way around. <laughs> Boy, that Blackie is really something. He sure is. He's tied up in that other plane, but he managed to switch on the radio and pages. Yeah. We'll keep our radio tuned in on that frequency a little longer, Joe. We might pick up more. Yeah, okay. If the Coast Guard sees us, I hope they shoot us down, Happy. You've only said that 25 times, Blackie. If you don't cut it out, I'll slug you quiet. The number is 641. Be on the lookout for it. Blackie gave us the approximate position. Right. We won't shoot him down right away. Just give him a warning burst if we find him. Okay. Look, Happy, just up above us, there's a Coast Guard plane. Well, what do you know? I know they don't see us, and even if they did, they won't know what's going on. That's what he thinks, huh, Dan? Yeah. Hey, hey, there's the plane right down there under our starboard wing. Yeah, sure enough. Here we come, Blackie. Let's go, Joe. <laughs> What's the matter, Happy? You look worried. Blackie, that Coast Guard plane is diving on Peculiar, us. Peculiar, isn't it? Why? What for? Oh, maybe it just wants to play. Blackie, it's going to crash into us. They're shooting at us. They're shooting at us. But they missed, Happy. Want to make a bet they don't miss the next time? Well, Blackie, if they shoot me down, I'll drop into the ocean. That's what you expect me to do when you drop me in, isn't it? The plane's banking for another run at us, Happy. What'll I do? Well, obviously, the Coast Guard doesn't want you out here, so if I were you, I'd turn and go back to the land. Oh, no, no. That was closer this time, wasn't it? Are you turning back or aren't you? How about it? All right, Blackie. I'll turn back. Well, tell it to the Coast Guard, Happy, or in two seconds, we'll both be telling it to the fish. What time is it, Mary? Blackie, according to my watch, it's 11.30. But according to my curiosity, it's time for questions. Well, I untied you at the hangar where Happy left you. Maybe I can loosen the springs on whatever is puzzling you. What do you want to know? First, why did Jim Saunders say Alice couldn't fly when she could? That's very simple, Mary. He didn't know she could. I suppose she was saving it for a surprise or something. Anything else? Just one more thing. How did you manage to get the Coast Guard on the trail of Jim's plane when Happy had you tied up in it? I kicked over the switch on the radio with my elbow and started talking, hoping somebody would hear me. And Happy didn't see you? Oh, are you lucky. I'm lucky those Coast Guard planes were within a reasonable distance, or Happy would have added me to his list of dead. Oh, I, I know he killed his father, but... You know, Blackie... What? I feel rather sorry for him. Don't feel sorry for him, Mary. Happy Austin is one flyer who doesn't deserve a happy landing. <laughs>
blockade. Huh? Okay, blockhead, move out of the way, will you? Why should I? Well, you're uh, too big to squeeze by, and I want in. What do you want in for? I want to see the boss. And I want to go to the White House and see the president. Who are you? Boston Blackie. Yeah? Yeah. Well, why didn't you say so? Come on. Well, my name's a magic word. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. This way. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Harry? Uh-huh. This guy here is Boston Blackie. He wants to see the boss. Open up. Sure thing. Harry will take you the rest of the way, Blackie. Thanks. Goodbye. Ah, you're certainly giving me a royal welcome, Harry. <coughs> sure thing. You follow me. I'll have to or I'll get lost in here. I didn't bring my compass. You may be a good a deed one to get out. <laughs> Talk tough like that on the outside and you're the one that's going to get lost. Now, look. Yes? Boston Blackie to see you, Mr. Buckley. <coughs> oh, that's fine. Come right in, Blackie. Boss says, come right in. <coughs> I heard him. That'll be all, Harry. Go back to your post. <coughs> sure thing, boss. Oh, Harry, you have a cold? Yeah, but I, I'm doing something about it. Boss. What, coughing? Oh, cough. Well, Blackie, I'm glad to see you. I'm amazed to see you, Buckley. I mean amazed at the ease with which I got in. Country hospitality, Blackie. You forget this is my first venture in the role of a city slicker. And it's your last, too, Buckley. I know the kind of jobs you pulled upstate. And I know you've come here to crack at bigger stuff. You're an awful sucker to have sent for me. And don't antagonize me, Blackie. I'm in much too good a mood for unpleasantness. You're going to be in a mood for the morgue when I get through with you, Buckley. I've got uh, a few... Uh, Blackie, no fists, no guns, no nasty talk. Don't you think it's strange that I sent for you? Don't you have a notion it's because I'm not afraid of you or anything you can do to me? This I gotta hear. All right. You see, I formed a protective agency, Blackie. Mm-hmm. And you're the president. But just interfere in my business. Or if you don't keep Faraday off my neck, your girlfriend, Mary Wesley, will go to jail for the murder of a man named Henry Dale. And now back to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. Mary! Mary, where are you? Hi, Blackie. Sit down. Oh, thanks. Oh, see, so you're still alive, or haven't you tried to see Mr. Buckley yet? I've seen him all right. But somebody else is dead, so he tells me. And he tells me you killed the guy. Blackie, you've been hit on the head again. I've been hit right between the eyes because, according to Buckley, you hit a man named Dale with your car ten days ago. Oh, no. Oh, yes. He says he and his men were following your car on a country road near Watertown. Following my car? But why? Mary, I know you were on vacation up there, but you accidentally picked the Buckley mob's hideout. And they thought you were up there sort of snooping around for me. Did you hit a man with your car? I know, Blackie. Not that I know. Wait a minute. Did Buckley say it was on a foggy night? Yes, a very foggy night, on the road by the river. Oh, Blackie, I did hit something. But I thought it was just another bump on the road. At what time? Oh, no, I don't know. I'd say it was around uh, 10.30. Uh-oh. It was just after 10.30 that Buckley and his boys found the man on the road. And yours was the only car ahead of them. The man wasn't dead yet, and he said he'd just been hit by a car. Where's your car now? Yeah, in the garage. Oh, Blackie, I'm sick. There's a dent in one of the front fenders. I had no idea how it got there. Till now. <sighs> Things are getting pretty bad by the minute, aren't they? Yeah. And I think they're going to get even worse before they get better. So you want me to tell you what made that dent in this fender, hey, Blackie? You guys in the Motor Vehicle Bureau can tell those things, can't you, Wills? Usually. What do you think made it? Oh, I'm not the expert. You are. Ah, uh, putting me to a test, then? Eh? Yeah. All right, let's have a look at it. Well, it's a flat dent. Looks more as if something rather heavy and flat pushed part of the fender in. Heavy and flat like what? Well, like a body or a sack of cement. 
I prefer to think it was a sack of cement. Well, I'll let you know. I'll have a look at it through this glass. You'd please me a lot if you didn't find anything. Mm. Blackie, whose car is this? It, um, it belongs to a friend of mine. Uh, find anything? Not on the fender. Now, let's have a look at the bumper here. It's Mary Wesley's car, isn't it? How'd you know? No, I just... just guessed. Sorry, Blackie, but I'm afraid Miss Wesley's in trouble. Uh-oh. What'd you find? Enough to prove without any question that this car hit someone. And I can tell by the look on your face that whoever it hit is dead. That's right, Sergeant. Well, I'll have to hold this car and send a report to Faraday. It's... Uh, no, wait. What for? Uh, I'll drive it down to Faraday myself. And Wills. Yeah? It's the toughest trip I'm ever going to make. There's the old guy, Harry. Ready and waiting. He better be willing, too. (coughs) Will it depart with a hundred bucks a week? (laughs) Yes, gentlemen. Something I can do for you. Some shirts, maybe. We have a special (coughs) sale on (coughs) pipe. Your name is Adams, right? Ah, yes. Okay, now, it says here in the book that you're down for a hundred bucks a week. That's protection money. Protection money? I don't have to be protected. Who am I to be protected against? Guys like us. Well, I don't... One hundred bucks, Adams. Get it up. Get out of here. Now, look, Adams. You know, we got a pretty good organization. (coughs) Did you ever hear of of Boston Blackie? Uh... Now, he's president of our little company, and Blackie especially wanted you to join up. I don't care who wanted me to do anything. If you two don't leave at once, I'll call the police. Get out or I'll call. Learn him not to make telephone calls when he's got company. I'll break it. Yeah, it ain't... I'll break it. Nice sock, huh? Yeah, it was all right. (laughs) Well, we better work on this guy a little bit while he's out, Chuck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just so he knows that we mean business when we call back here tomorrow. What is it, Blackie? Just because you have nothing to do doesn't mean you have to do it in my office. I've got to talk to you, uh, Faraday, my friend. I don't like the way you said that, my friend. Blackie, you want something? Yes, I want your ear for a minute. It's attached to my head. And if there was anything in my head, I'd toss you out of here now. Inspector, you know you like me. Now, that's news to me. When did I start? The very first minute you saw me and watched me solve your first case for you. Now, look, Faraday, you've got to do me a favor. Oh, I do, huh? Yes, you do, huh? You're going to get a report from the Motor Vehicle Bureau involving Mary's car. I don't want you to do anything about it for 24 hours. Now, what about your girlfriend's car? Never mind about that. Just treat the report the way you do everything else when I'm not around to help you. Don't do anything about it. Blackie, are you out of your mind as usual? No, I'm trying to get something off your mind before it gets into it. Listen, I need 24 hours to explain that car. Well, that's sure a long explanation. Do I get it? Well, I don't know what it is, but if you ask for 24, I'll give you 12. I would have settled for eight. Yeah? Maybe. Homicide, Faraday. Inspector, this is Brown at 23rd Precinct. You told us to let you know when the Buckley gang started to operate in this town. Yeah? They've started. They beat up a storekeeper named Adams a little while ago. Yeah? Tried to hold him up for a hundred a week protection money. Oh, uh, they did, did they? Yes, sir. I'll take care of Buckley. Well, there's only one thing more, Inspector. Yeah? The two thugs that beat up Adams told him Boston Blackie was president of their organization. Blackie, huh? Yes, sir. Okay, thanks. Blackie, what's going on? Where did that guy go? <laughs> Come on, Mary, answer in a hurry, will you? Thank you. Hello? Uh, Mary, this is Blackie. Listen fast. Yeah, okay. You were right about thinking your car hit a man while you were on vacation. Oh, Blackie, no. Oh, Mary, yes. And it doesn't mean necessarily that you were driving at the time, though. Where did you have your car parked while you were away? I, um, I kept it in the town garage when I wasn't using it. Why? Because that's going to make it tougher to prove somebody else drove it if somebody else did. We've got to get up to that town that you were at right away. Okay, well, um, I can leave right now. I was on my way to take some dresses to the cleaners. Are you free? Uh Uh-huh, I just left Faraday's office. He'll be surprised to learn. Huh? Mary, this is a beautiful frame-up somebody's pulling. Oh, Blackie, I don't understand any of it. I don't know. Well, you're lucky that you don't. 
You're going to the cleaners, huh? Well, that sounds like a good idea. I want to go, too. There's a spot on the sleeve of my coat. Well, uh, we'll go there together, then. Two of my dresses have spots, and they have to be cleaned. Okay. Meet you at the cleaners. Okay. It'll be relatively simple to take the spots off your dresses. What I want to do is to take you off the spot. <laughs> Sheriff said the man your car hit lived in a house down this road. You see a house, Mary? Well, not yet, Blackie. Let's go a little farther. We've got to find out something. We have to find the man's family first, Mary. Yeah, I know. I'm upset because the more I think about it, the more I think maybe that... Well, that bump I hit was a man. If it was, you're in real trouble. So am I. Was the road as foggy as it is tonight? Foggier? I couldn't see a thing. Yeah, that's interesting. It is? Why? Oh, here's a house. Huh? Yeah. Maybe this is the one we want. Okay, I hope so. I have an idea. It is, Mary. Apparently, there's a link between the dead man and Buckley's mob. He might have been one of them. One they wanted to get rid of. Yeah, and at the same time, get rid of you through me. That's right. Oh, Blackie, they wouldn't kill one of their own men just to frame someone for murder, would they? They wanted to get rid of him anyhow. Come on, let's go up the house. Okay. I'll get out your side. Yeah, well, careful. The ground's a little muddy. We're up to our necks in something worse than mud, Mary. I can say that again. Phew. It's long enough to find this place. It's after 10 o'clock. Well, let's get out of this mud and into the house. Keep your fingers crossed, Mary. This may still be the wrong house. Yeah, I know. Yeah? Uh, good evening. Are you Martha Dale? Yeah, that's me. Did you have a brother named Henry Dale? Yeah, I did have. Oh, Blackie, we're in luck. Had a brother, I said. But you won't find him here no more. He's up in the cemetery. Yes, we know, and we're very sorry. Uh, he was killed by an automobile about 10 days ago, wasn't he? Yeah, he sure was. Always thought he would be someday, too. Never looked where he was going. What you asking for? We're investigating the accident. We don't think it was an accident. We think your brother was in bad company. Henry? In bad company? That's right. (laughs) Not Henry. He only wandered off the farm to go fishing down by the river. Except to go to work in the garage. He didn't mix with no company at all. Bad or good. Worked in a garage, you say? Which one? Well, there's only one here in town. Allen's. Yeah, that's where I kept my car, Blackie. Anything more you want from me? Uh, no, no, thank you. Okay, then. Guess I'll go back to bed, then. Night. Uh, uh, night. Good night. So the man who was killed worked in the garage where you kept your car. Ah, that's something, Mary. Well, yeah, but, but what? Uh, I'm not sure, but it could mean that they had to kill somebody to frame you and picked on Dale so that he couldn't tell anyone that they used your car for the job. Well, what about the bump I hit, Blackie? Oh, the road we came over was full of bumps. Yeah, that's true. This is a frame-up, all right, Mary, and a very beautiful one for a very big reason. What's that? There isn't any way to prove that somebody else was driving your car the night it hit and killed the garage man. And now, back to Boston Blackie. When Boston Blackie's friend, Mary Wesley, was on vacation, her car hit what she thought was a bump going down a dark and fog-shrouded country road. Later, it is proved that Mary's car hit and killed a man. Witness to the killing is a gangster named Buckley. Or at least, that's Buckley's story. Blackie is sure that Mary's been framed, but has no way of proving it. Buckley's gang, free because Blackie is trying to clear Mary, and thinking that Blackie has influenced Faraday to leave them alone, starts a shakedown racket using Boston Blackie's name. As we return to our story, Blackie is in Inspector Faraday's office. Blackie, I don't care what your reason is for trying to hold me back. I'm not going to stall any longer. Your time's up. So's your number if you interfere now, Faraday. I'll handle myself. But regardless of that car I was supposed to uh, get a report on and didn't, What about you being with the Buckley mob and I'm trying... Oh, Faraday, you know better than that. Correction, please. You don't know anything at all. Yeah, well, I know the Buckley mob is trying to shake down every merchant in this town. If I don't stop them soon, somebody's going to get killed. You won't promise to be that somebody, will you? For me? I promise to have the Buckley mob behind bars inside of 24 hours. That's what I promise, and I mean it. Hmm. Well, in that case, I'll help you. Uh, no thanks. All right, then I won't help you. Do you know where the Buckley mob hides out? No. Well, I do. It's a long Faraday. If you live long enough, maybe you'll find him. Wait a minute. You know where Buckley is? Buckley and all his boys. Do I go with you or don't I? Okay, you can go with me. Okay, then we'll go together. Just the two of us. Why just the two of us? Buckley's smart, Inspector. 
You send a lot of men after him, he'll be gone before your men even get out of their cars. You'd like to send Buckley up the river, wouldn't you? You know I would. Well, let's buckle down to the job of sending Buckley up. <laughs> We've really shown this town how to operate, haven't we, Harry? Oh, sure thing, Mr. Buckley. Blackie's out of the way. He won't let the cops touch us until he gets his girlfriend out of her little, uh, difficulty. <coughs> You'll never be able to do that, Mr. Buckley. Yes, we can shake down anybody in town. <coughs> Say, that cold of yours is bad. Is that medicine helping you cough? Well, yeah, a little, but I, I got to run out and uh, get a new bottle. I'll see you in about an hour, huh? This is a special kind, Mr. Buckley. Takes a while to make up, you know. Well, don't hurry. We've got all the time in the world to do anything we like in this town. <coughs> well, why shouldn't we have? Boston Blackie is making sure the police don't bother us. Hey, Blackie, if you had such a good reason for keeping me away from Buckley, why are you bringing me here now? Never mind my reason, Faraday. I can't let a mob go to work on a few thousand people just to protect one. Protect one? What are you talking about? Never mind. Let's have a look around for Buckley. Blackie, there's been nobody in this house for ten years. Nobody but the Buckley mob, Faraday. They're out now, but maybe they'll be back and we'll be waiting for them. Uh, right here in the middle of the room, I suppose, so they can get good shots at us. No, this looks like a good place to hide right here. Uh, how do you know? I was here before, remember? No. Yeah. Yeah, this is the closet, all right. Yeah? I thought so. Okay, let's duck in here now. No telling how soon they'll show up. Can we cover the whole room from in from in there? I don't know. Go on in and turn around and have a look. Okay, now well, let's see. Now, uh, if I stood about here, you stood over here, we could just... <laughs> hey, Buck, what's going on The idea is to get rid of you, Faraday, and it looks as if I have. Buck, let me out of here. You can't handle the whole Buckley's all alone. The Buckley's don't live here anymore, Faraday. In fact, they never did. This is just an old empty house I looked at for a friend of mine the other day. Oh, you devil trusty you... <laughs> I'll let you out of there, Faraday, in a few hours. Talk to yourself in the meantime. You'll get an idea of how boring only you can be. Hello? Uh, Mary, this is Blackie. Oh, yes, Blackie. Any luck? A little. I got rid of Faraday for the time being. The time being? Yes, the time being. Just long enough to get you out of this jam, if a hunch of mine is right. Oh, I do. Mary, I'm convinced someone else was driving your car when it killed the garage man. Well, I hope I wasn't driving it, but... Well, you said we couldn't prove Listen, it. Listen, Mary, I have a hunch. Yeah? In fact, I'm full of hunches. You said there were spots on a couple of your dresses. What kind of spots were they? Well, I don't know, but they were on the left sleeve. Well, uh, where'd they come from? Well, I, I'm, I'm not sure, Blackie. I am. I was driving your car and got a spot on my sleeve, too. There was something on the side of the driver's seat. That's how your dresses and my coat got spots on them. Mary, I want to look at those dresses. Oh, but they're at the cleaners, Blackie, and I told them to rush them through. They may be cleaned already. Well, let's go down to your cleaners in a hurry, Mary, because if I can find the spots on your dress, I know the address of the man who drove your car the night Dale was killed. <laughs> No, Miss Wesley, the dresses are still here. The truck from the central plant hasn't shown up yet. Well, uh, let's see them, will you please? Uh, better yeah, still, sure. just show me one of them, the green one. Yeah, sure, Blackie. Just a minute. I have it right here. Blackie, what will this prove? Let's say, what do I hope it will prove? Uh, here's that dress, Miss Wesley. You want to look at the green one, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Uh, let's see that spot. Here it is, Blackie, in the back of the left sleeve right it's there. It's going to be hard to take that out, Miss Wesley. Well, Blackie? I'm not sure. But if what I think is right, this spot is going to get Faraday out of a closet and you out of a jam. <coughs> oh, hello. You still out here blocking doorways? Oh, hiya, Blackie. What's the matter? Got a cold? Want in to see the boss again, huh? Yes. You gonna take me to Harry like a nice boy? Sure. Come in. I gotta hold the door open for the president of our company. <coughs> Thanks. Follow me. Oh, I think I know my way all right. 
You better stay out here and guard the front door, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. <coughs> Hello, Harry. Well, if it ain't Blackie. <coughs> you want to see Mr. Buckley, huh? Eh? Uh, yes, I do. <coughs> okay, you follow me in a... Hey, you got an awful bad cough there, Black. You got a cold? Uh, yes, I guess you know how I feel, though, don't you? Oh, yeah, I sure do. <coughs> you know, but I just about got mine licked. Here, I, I, I got something that kills colds pretty quick. You try some. <coughs> Thanks. I, I think I will. I'll take the bottle. I like to smell the stuff. Hey, Blackie, you, you, you swallow it, not inhale it. I'll tell him when he comes in. Hey, wait a minute. You're up to something, Blackie, and I don't like it. Well, let's see how you like this. <laughs> Harry, that cough medicine is going to be bad medicine for you. Harry. Smith. Tommy. Where is everybody? Harry. Joe, somebody... What's going on here? Where are you guys? What's the matter here? Harry. Joe. Somebody, what's the... Hello, Buckley. Huh? Oh, Blackie, hello. Where's everybody? Don't you know? You're the boss here. Yes, but... Say, didn't you see anyone when you came in? Yes, I saw them all. Faraday and I saw all the boys, Buckley. One at a time. Well, where are they? Sleeping, some of them. The ones who wouldn't go quietly. And all of them are in the police wagon outside and waiting patiently for you. You're lying. Go outside and climb into the police wagon yourself and see. You want your friend, Miss Wesley, to go to prison? I told you if you interfered in my affairs and didn't keep Faraday away, I'd send her to jail. Yes, I know you told me that. Now, just to make things even, maybe I ought to tell you that Mary wasn't driving a car when it killed Henry Dale. If she wasn't, I don't know who was. Oh, yes, you do. You were riding with him at the time. Harry just told me. Harry told you? He wouldn't tell you anything like that? I'll admit he didn't want to at first, but I persuaded him. And what's more, I have proof that Harry was driving Mary's car. Some of his special cough medicine spilled on the side of the driver's seat. Why, that's... Wait a minute, stupid. Buckley, wait a minute. You're not going anywhere. Not until I give you an escort. Oh, yes, I so am. in place of an escort, maybe you'd like this. <laughs> Come on in, Faraday. The slaughter's fine. Oh, we have to pick him up and carry him out, too, huh? Sure. If you're weak after staying in a closet for so long, I'll carry him out myself. Uh, don't remind me about that closet, Blackie. If you hadn't let me out three hours ago, I'd have suffocated. I'm sorry, Faraday. But it was because I locked you in that uh, you can lock these guys up. <laughs> I see by the papers, Blackie, where Mr. Buckley confessed that he and Harry used my car to kill that man and frame me. Oh, we had him cold, Mary. The police laboratory test showed that it was Harry's medicine that made the stain on your car upholstery. Probably some of it spilled out of his pocket when he was driving your car to kill the garage fellow. Mm -hmm. Feel important, Mary? Well, uh, it isn't often I get my name in the paper. But I'm, I'm sorry I caused you all that trouble. It was Buckley who caused me what trouble I had, Mary. If he hadn't spotted you up in the country and thought you were spying for me, he wouldn't have tried to frame you. You know, there's one thing I don't understand, Blackie. Hmm? Um, why Inspector Faraday didn't put me under arrest if you took my car to him? Well, it was the strangest thing, Mary. I, I parked your car on a side street on my way to Faraday's and just couldn't remember which street it was until a little while ago. <laughs> my, aren't you clever? <laughs> Oh, Mary, the real reason Faraday didn't know about you is that Sergeant Wells, who inspected your car, is a nice guy. Yes. He gave me time to clear you before reporting to Faraday. That let me find out about Harry's cough medicine. You know something, Mary? Mm, I know a lot of things. What do you have in mind? I only got hot on this case when I found Harry had a cold. <laughs>
You really put a shine on those shoes, fella. That's why they call me Shiny, mister. Shiny Feel. Ah, shiny Feel, huh? Fella, you sound like a character on a comic strip. Shiny Feel and round as a week. That's me. That's it. With all the exercise you get, I'd say you ought to work some of that weight off you. It's the weight behind the cloth that puts the shine on those shoes, mister. When I get through, you'll be able to use your shoes for a looking glass. <laughs> and with a face like mine, I avoid mirrors whenever possible. That's the scar on your cheek. Where'd you get it? I bought it. Another guy had one and I liked it. Okay with you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, all done, mister. All right, nice job, fella. That's the best shoe shine I've ever had. Yeah. How much we owe you, friend? Usual price, mister. Fifty dollars. <laughs> And now, meet Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. Blackie, get out of here. How can you say that, Faraday? How can you tell me to get out of here when you don't even know where you are? Ah, uh-huh. ha. I know where I am, all right. I'm in my office. And I'm up to my ears in a murder case. You're lucky. The case has reached the point where you have no feeling whatsoever. I'll ask you once more. Are you going to get out of here? No. Well, looks like we're at a standstill, Faraday, which is just where you'll be with your murder case without my help. I'll take my chances. In that case, I like the murderer's chances of beating the rap. Yeah. It's a little Joe murder you're working on, huh? So? So he was an underworld character, and like all the rest, a rat. He knew he was on the spot, so he came to see me just before he was killed, and he talked. If a guy comes to see you, what else would he do? Sit there like a dummy? It's possible. You do that rather well. Uh-oh. But look, pal, I didn't come here to match wits with you. If I had, I would have left mine home so we could start even. Uh-huh. I came to tell you the little girl gave me a tip on a counterfeiting mob. Count? Who cares about counterfeiting? I'm interested in the killers of little Joe. You know who they are? No, but they're tied up with this phony money ring. I'll tell you that. Now, I'll tell you something else. I'm going to help you bust that ring. You think? Which is more than I can say to you. Well, I said I'm going to help you, and I am. If you'll just get it through that ten-ply skull of yours that I know what I'm talking about, then get somewhere. I want you to get somewhere right now. Out of here. Now, how many times do I have to tell you that? How many times do I have to tell you that I can crack this case wide open if you'll only listen to me? Okay, okay, I'll listen. Anything to get rid of you. Well, I'm listening. That's the best thing you do. Little Joe was killed because he found out where and how the counterfeiters were passing their money. Where are they doing it? A shoeshine stand run by a guy named Shiny Steel. I watched it being done this morning. I saw a shiny slip of bill to some guy, and I know the password is being used. You know how the money is passed? Yes. If you'll come down there, stand at the corner and watch, I'll show you. So, let's go to the shoe shine place so I can polish off this case. Tom, is your arrangement to take care of little Joe's body? Yeah, Mr. Hanley. Some of the boys took him to the funeral parlor just a little while ago. Good. Did he get the nice funeral? Flowers and all. We'll give him the best. But, uh, who's going to watch the Arnold gang now that he's done? I'll pick a man later. They better be smart, little Joe, not to let the Arnold boys know they're being watched and stay away from people like Boston Blanky. Look, isn't there a better way to get in on Arnold's racket? He's making the best pony stuff I ever saw. That he is. Tell me... What are we going to do about the killing of little Joe? Well, he was one of our boys, so we killed one of Arnold's men, of course. Nice job you don't, Johnny. Always a nice job, mister, when you come to Shiny Field. Well, how much do we owe you, friend? Oh, the usual price. Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars? Okay, there you are. Thank you, mister. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, let's make step right up from your time from Johnny. Oh, Blackie, how'd it go? Sorry, it was great. I gave him fifty dollars and put me a bill right inside of my shoe here. Where? Right here. Look. Here it is. Hmm? And look at the amount of the bill. One hundred dollars. A hundred for a fifty, huh? And that century note looks like a Lee McCoy. That's what these boys claim, Barney. They say that phony money is so good it can't be detected. Except by an expert. Hmm. 
But come on. Let's go into the bank down the street and I'll prove it for me. Oh, it's better be. What do you mean, better be? It has to be. Uh, what were the secret words you used to get him to slip the bill into your shoe? Little Joe gave me the word. When the shine was finished, I was to say, how much do we owe you, friend? I did, and I got the money. Clear $100 bill. Okay, so you got it. Now let us get to the bank. It's right down the block. That bill isn't the only queer thing around here. <laughs> Okay, so you gave the bank teller the hundred dollar bill, Blackie, and he took it inside somewhere. All right, so what? So we'll be back in a minute and take it out of there. And we grab Shiny, the shoe shine man, check back through him, and find little Joe's chair. Just like that, huh? Certainly. A hundred has to be a pony. Nobody's stupid enough to give hundred dollar bills out for fifty dollars. A present company accepted, of course. If teller weren't coming, I'd have an answer for that. All right, sir. What was it you wanted? Five tens and ten fives? Oh, thank you. But, huh? Do you mean you cash that bill? Of course, sir. Didn't you expect me to? I should say not. That bill's counterfeit. No, sir, it's not. It's still perfectly legitimate. Even the best counterfeit job in the world couldn't reproduce a bill like this. <laughs> well, Blackie, it looks like you're wrong. Again. I can't be wrong. This bill must be counterfeit. Oh, I'm sorry, sir, but it's not. I know. I said that before. But not this, isn't it, Blackie? Uh, hear how wrong you are. Uh, so often. Faraday, why would anybody give me a hundred dollar bill for fifty dollars? Maybe the government is having a sale. How do I know? All I know is that it isn't possible. And don't forget that little Joe was killed for being mixed up in this counterfeit ring. Uh-oh, that sounded like a shot. Good money looks like counterfeit to you now. A backfire sounds like a shot. All right, go on home. Hey, there's some excitement down there at the corner, Friday. Come on. Hey, something did happen. That shoe shot stand, too. And you thought that noise was a backfire, didn't you? Somebody's been shot, and I know who. Stop thinking I wouldn't be wasting my time following you around. Let us through. Let us through, please. Come on, Mr. Police. Let me through. All right, just right, just right. Uh-uh. He's trying to get a shoe sign on Friday. Yeah. Somebody really let him have it good, too. Great. Now I have two murders on my hands. Two murders and a crazy guy who keeps babbling about counterfeit money. And I'm going to keep talking about it, Faraday. But there's a difference between you and me. I'm going to do something about it, too. Well, Hanley, I'll sit still trying, Mr. Arnold. And I'm not going to stand for it. I'm going to tempt her, man. But Tiny was a pal of mine. I don't like the guys who kill my pal. I said tempt her, man. Tempt her? I have to. <laughs> Arnold, what's the idea of clipping? Did you come to suggest that you should hold your temper, Matt? You know I don't like violence. But I don't like killing. Be reasonable, Matt. Shiny was killed by the Hanley outfit because we killed little Joe. We should be expected, suggestible, but quite apparent that it had to be done. It didn't have to be Shiny. He was a good guy. And... I know. It had to be one of our organizations. And we should be grateful it was not either of us or any of the others more important to our operation. Well, I don't care what you say. I'm going out, him. Yes, yes. There aren't going to be any more killing. I'm quite sure Hanley is satisfied that the score is even. In fact, I think our opponent is corroborated it. That's right now. Just you calling Hanley? I see no reason why I'm sitting. But look, Mr. Arnold, that bum's trying to cut in on our queer money racket. I know. Perhaps I should make it easy for him to get into a minimum of violence. Oh, Mr. Arnold, you can't do that. Hanley's mob is a bunch of... Hello. Hello. Hanley? Yes? This is Arnold. I am. Your boy took care of Tony this afternoon. And your boy took care of Joe yesterday. So we're even. I just. I have one for what sounds up to me. That if I believe it even. I don't know. Well, perhaps I can persuade you. That's persuade. You want to cut in on my uh, business, don't you? Am I? Well, suppose we form a partnership. Suppose we do. Then what? Then we can make it clear and far more profitable than that. Uh, murder. Oh, Mary, I'm getting more like parody every day. This is a case I, I just can't figure out. Oh, I know. I'd like to get a hundred dollar bill for every fifty I have, Blackie. Hm. Of course, I, I have one one hundred dollar bill. <laughs> <laughs> Now, all kidding aside, Mary, this isn't anything to laugh at. Why should the Arnold Mark give $100 bills to Sissy? Now, I asked you why. Don't ask me. I can listen here. I wonder if I think up here nobody gives away $50 unless... Unless what? Yeah. 
Oh, no, it's too crazy. Just the kind of thing Faraday would think when he wasn't in his right mind either. Maybe you're in your right mind, but on the wrong track. Could be. I wish I'd stayed on the track of that guy I saw get a bill from Tony this morning. Well, what you wanted to lose to the gang Tony was working for, Archie. I know, but with Tony dead, I have no There's no telling how long it'll take me to find out who else is paying those counterfeit bills for him. I thought you found out those bills weren't counterfeit. Oh, did you have to mention that? Yeah. The one piece that's missing from the puzzle. Mary, I lost that guy this morning because... What got... guy? The man I saw get the $100 bill from Franny. Oh. I trailed him to the Wells Hotel. Franny beat into the elevator, and the elevator door closed just before I could get in. Well, you know his hotel. Now all you have to do is go from room to room. Mary, there are 800 rooms in the Wells Hotel. Oh. No. I had one lucky break. He was alone in the elevator, and I saw the indicator stop at nine. My man is probably on the ninth floor. Mm. Well, I know what happens now. You're going to see it. Mm-hmm. He may be the lead that will get me places eventually in this case. But I may have a tough time finding him. I don't even know his name. I don't know why real money is being sold cut rate, and I don't know who's in back of all this. You know something, Blackie? What? It's absolutely amazing what you don't know about this case. <laughs> And now, back to Boston Blackie. <laughs> Little Joe of the Hanley Mob comes to Boston Blackie with information about the Arnold Gang, reputed counterfeiters, and is killed for his trouble. With information supplied by Little Joe, Blackie receives a $100 bill from the counterfeiters for 50 of his own. But much to his surprise, the $100 bill is proved to be genuine. <laughs> Later, one of the counterfeiter gang, Shiny Steel, is murdered to avenge the death of Little Joe, and the two rival gang leaders decide to merge. As we return to our story, Hanley and Arnold are in Arnold's printing line. Here's where I make my stuff, Hanley. You like my shop? Well, the shop's not much to look at, but I sure like to look at the stuff that comes out of it, Arnold. <laughs> Good, isn't it? I can't tell if no real stuff. Let me see that sentry note again, will you? The next. Feels too, doesn't it? Uh, I better turn this press off. Looks like the real thing, Arnold. The real thing. I take this for a legitimate century note any day. But so would any bank. I know. That's what gets me. That's what's going to get us a few hundred thousand dollars, too. A partner? Yeah, I like that. Partner. But I'd sure like to know something. What? I know this money's queer. I see you making it, but how do you make it so good, Arnold? How do you do it? Sorry, Henley. We're partners. You get half the profit. But how I do it, I keep to myself. Ninth floor. The man said ninth floor, Faraday. Ninth floor, sure. But so what, Blackie? Must be 50 or 60 rooms on this floor. Why not? Well, in 50 or 55, we ought to find the guy I'm looking for. Blackie, I think this is just another of your schemes to waste my time. When you try to think, that's a waste of time, Harley. So you say. Drag up the dope that the talk around at the Hanley and the Arnold mobs for working together on this money racket. You did? And congratulations. All right. My problem happened is this. Little Joe was spying on the Arnold boys for his boss, so Arnold had him killed. In return, Hanley killed Shiny Steel, an Arnold man. And then the Hanley and Arnold decided to work together. That's the report I got anyhow. Sounds reasonable enough. And I've got an idea how I'm going to use that information when and as if I find the guy I followed to this hotel. Uh, you haven't told me yet how we find him. What do we do? Yell fire? That's surprisingly close, Faraday. What? But I have a better idea than that. An idea I took the precaution of phoning the fire department about before we got here. I've always wanted to break the glass in one of these little fire boxes. Now, what's your head? No, no, Blackie, don't. Come on, sorry, Faraday. I guess I didn't hear you tell me not to do it. Now, pull down the lever, it says. Hey, what? Well, what do you know, Faraday? I rang the bell. I hope the fire department rings your neck. Look, Faraday, we're having trouble out here in the hall. Quite a lot of people. And I ought to haul you off the jail. To... Well, where's your man? I'm looking for him. Oh, I see him, Faraday. There he is. He just came out of 909. Well, we've got to tell these people there's no fire before we have a panic. It's all right, everybody. It was just a fire drill. Routine test. Go back to your room. Go back. There's no fire. All right, let's go talk to your man, Blackie. No, Faraday. You go and I'll talk to him. 
I won't get anything out of him unless you get out of here. Now look, tough guy. You've had a dozen scars to match the the one on your chin. You're going to get more. I'm going to keep flipping you. Don't mind hitting me again. I I had enough, Lucky. Good. So have I. Now what's your name? Davis, Johnny. Okay, David. Now we're getting somewhere. And besides, exhausted. You bought a hundred dollar bill from Shiny Steel this morning, didn't you? You paid fifty dollars for it. What makes you think so? I saw you do it. Why do you think I went to all this trouble to find you? You bought that bill, didn't you? Well, if you say I did, I don't want to argue with you. I don't like the logic you use. Okay, I bought it. Let's see it. I don't have it now. I go to a bank. You got a small bill for it? Yeah. You know that's counterfeit money, David. If it was, the bank didn't know it. I know. Counterfeit money's so good, not even experts can spot it. This one doesn't sound possible, does it? No. Never would have touched it if I thought it wouldn't pass for the real thing. Johnny guaranteed it would when I was told to contact him. You'd like a few thousand dollars of it, wouldn't you? Who wouldn't? Well, I have an idea you're going to get a chance to buy all you want. Did Johnny ever say you could buy a lot of it? Yeah, he did. He said the gang would contact me when we were ready to sell I gave Johnny my private phone number. I thought so. Well, you're going to sit right here till they do. So, uh, that's what it been, huh? We may have a long wait. Okay. Of course, David, when the gang calls, I'm going to answer. Why? Because after I answer that phone, the guys I'm looking for are going to answer to the law. <laughs> Homicide, Faraday. Faraday, this is Mary Wesley. Where's Blackie? Not in my office, Miss Wesley, I'm glad to say. Well, where is it? It's been two hours since he promised to call me. It's been three hours since I left him. Oh. Inspector, I... I know, I know. You're worried. But I'm worried, too. I have two murders unsolved. And there's a gang of counterfeiters in town so good that even experts say the money is real. Oh, but Inspector Faraday, that can't be. Mm, that can't be, Miss Wesley, but it is. And I can't be stopped either, but I am. <laughs> Well, Henry, I think it's time we call David at the hotel. I think he's about ready to buy. Now, this is where we make the first killing, is it, Arnold? <laughs> How much are we going to let him buy? Oh, I think we've probably convinced him $25,000 worth, which we split 50-50. Eh? Partner? <laughs> hey, partner? 50-50. <laughs> the easiest money we ever made, too. Made's a good word for it. Uh, yes. Hello? David? Yes, this is David. David, I understand you were one of the tiny seals. Best customers. Yes, it was. Sorry to hear he was killed. Yes, so am I. Uh, how did you like Chinese work? Best shoe shine in town. Glad to hear it. Uh, but how about his other work? The best buy in town. Glad to hear that, too. You didn't have any trouble, did you? No, I didn't. The price was right. I'll explain. Good. How would you like a lot of Chinese work? Say, $25,000 worth. I'd like that very much. What's the price? Right. Well, you ought to know. The usual price. One half in real money. One half, huh? Well, I don't think we'll be able to do business then. No? Why not? Well, I, uh, had a better offer. A rival of yours. Rival, Matt? A better offer? Right. Better offer from someone else. Said he was with you temporarily, but that wouldn't last long. So long. Wait a minute, David. Uh. Henry. What's the matter? You know what's the matter. You contacted David, didn't you? Oh, no. Look, I took you in as a partner, not as a double partner. I told you about David. You made him a proposition. I did. Oh, yes, you did. You made him a better offer. You're crazy, Arnold. I never even heard of him until just now. I'm going to put that son away. Sure. After I put a plug in you. Oh, oh. Oh. Blackie, when are you going to let me out of here? When we get results from that trip of mine about Hanley making you a better offer, David. How is that guy going to help? You'll find out, I hope. I'll get that. Well? David? Yes, yeah, this is David. About that offer you got from someone else. That better offer. 
Yeah? Well, you can forget about it, David, because the guy who made it is dead. How do you know? I just killed him. Oh. Now I suggest you get down here and do business with me. I guess I have no choice now, do I? Only one, David. And you know what it is. Yes, I know. Well, where do I go? 2020 Lawrence Road. Okay, I'll be down right away. Now, Davis, look as if my plan worked just the way I thought it would. And can I get out of here? Yes, you're going to get out of here, Davis. With me right behind you. And you're going down to that address and buy that counterfeit money. Now, what if I don't want it? I think you'll want to, Davis. I've got a lot more of my special logic in case you start getting stubborn again. <laughs> Come in. Hello. David? Yeah. Well, I see you've decided to do business. My name is Arnold. Let's close the door. Sure. Sit down. I'll stand if you don't mind. Mm-hmm. Well, the customer is always right. Have the money with you? Yeah. And you're going to do business with me and not my late partner. Uh-huh. Listen, it was possible to kill Henry, so I'm but, going to cut you with the... Uh, will you listen to me? This is crap. What? Crap, I'm not alone. Boss, he's like he's just outside that door waiting for you to make the deal with me. Why, you... I couldn't help it, Arnold. I can hit you, haven't I? Yes, but... Hey. Black is just outside that door, you see? I have a gun. Well, I have a gun, too. I'll just go over and open this door and get Black in the face of God. Watch this. All right, Blackie, I'm back. Again, Arnold. Don't turn around until I tell you to. He's in back of the Arnold. Huh? What? Nice double crossing, David. Uh, but I expected it and came around the back way. Drop that gun before I drop you. Maybe I'll drop it. Don't pick up that gun, Arnold. Faraday and his men will do it for you. When they come to pick you up. Blackie, I'm glad you're back. Oh, so am I, Mary. Only if I hadn't anticipated a double cross from a third Mr. Davis, I wouldn't be back. I'd be flat on my back. Don't you think I'm entitled to an explanation of what happened? How those fellows were able to make such wonderful counterfeit bills? Oh, Mary, the counterfeit bills they were making were terrible. But they passed at the bank. No, Mary. Here's what happened. In order to set up Davis and a couple of other suckers for a big bill, a fellow named Arnold passed out a number of good hundred-dollar bills using Chinese steel, the boot black, as a silver twin. He passed out good money? Yeah, half price. Then when Davis and the others found that even a bank would cash the bills, they'd be prepared to buy the counterfeit money in big amounts. Ah, very good. No question about that. As soon as I realized that's what the plan had to be, and after Friday tipped me off that the Arnold and Hanley interests were merged, I got the idea of playing one against the other, and I did. With the result that Arnold killed Hanley. You know, you're very clever sometimes, Blackie. What do you mean, sometimes? Oh, most of the time, then. <laughs> that's better. Put your arm around me, will you? Yes. Now, that's something that's really better.
see anything through this fog tonight, Mr. Jensen? Not a thing, Captain Ralph. We're still found in. That's him on halfway through the window of the wheelhouse. Well, we'll see the Rocky Island Lighthouse in a minute or two. Find our way into the channel. Ah, yeah, but we'll find nothing but reefs without the light, Captain. Reefs in deep water just in front of them. Even with the light, it's going to take a true course to get us in without running on ground. The channel's directly north of the Rocky Island Light, Mr. Jensen. We'll enter the channel with the light on our port side. There she is now, Mr. Jensen. Hi. What a blessed sight. We've been off our course. I'll adjust that. Keep her steady, Mr. Jensen. Hey, sir. No problem now. We'll have our cargo safe in an hour. Aye. And it'll be a long time before we carry so much of value in our hold again. Then I'm not double at all now, sir. The lighthouse is practically telling us we're safe and sound now. I think I'll go below. We've run on the reef. We're going down. Sound the alarm. All right, sir. All hands on deck. 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 And now on to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friends. Hi, Mr. Kingston. I know it was tough for you to lose that ship last night. But you'll have to admit this is the first ship of mine you've ever lost. That's true, Captain Ross. But so far this year I've lost four ships. And all in nearly the same spot. And all the same way. And all carrying valuable cargo. How could you possibly run on the reefs to the south of the Rocky Island Lighthouse when you were passing the north of it at the time? I don't know, Mr. Kingston. Unless we drifted south before we sank. When we came ashore after we abandoned ship, we steered straight for the beach and landed south of the light. Impossible. That's the same story I heard from the captain of every ship I've lost. I don't believe one of you. Were you north of the light at the time of the crash, or weren't you? Aye. We seemed to be north of the light when we crashed. North of it when we sank. But the spot where we went down is south of the light. I checked on it this morning. I saw a part of the crushed hull on the reef. Then you steered a course into the channel south of the Rocky Island Light. No, Mr. Kingston. Absolutely not. I'd stake my reputation we were north of the light. Oh, it's impossible. Come in. Excuse me, Mr. Kingston. Yes, Miss Underwood. Uh, Mr. Lawrence from Deepwater Salvage Company is on the phone. Yes, yes, I know what he wants. Tell Lawrence he can have the job. He's always done a good one for me, but don't tell him I said that. No, Mr. Kingston, I won't tell him. Do you see what this crash is costing me already, Captain Ross? I have to give a salvage company 60% of whatever cargo can be saved. And the ship, of course, is a total loss. I'd rather have the ship than the insurance. And I think I'd better have ship captains that can tell north from south. Mr. Kingston, maybe the Rocky Island lighthouse was out. If it was, what light did you see? The ghost light, Mr. Kingston. Ghost light? On the cliff above the reefs. There used to be a lighthouse there. The place where we ran on the reefs is just a little to the north of where the old lighthouse was. Before it was washed into the sea, the lighthouse keeper with it. The lighthouse was lost, and so was he. Of all the ridiculous things I ever heard, that's... I, that, that, it that... may sound foolish, Mr. Kingston, but it's the only possible thing that can explain how we would crash south of the Rocky Island lighthouse when we were north of it all the time. The ghost light, Mr. Kingston... And members of my crew are not the first it has taken to the bottom of the sea. You lost some of your crew, Captain Ross? Yes. You didn't tell me how many. Three. They were caught below deck in the crash. Captain Ross, I can tolerate misjudgment. I can almost tolerate stories of ghost life. But when some of my employees are killed... They were killed through no fault of mine or of my pilot, Mr. Kingston. We were north of the Rocky Island Lighthouse when we crashed. All right. You were north of it. But something's crazy somewhere and three men are dead. I don't know why, but this sounds like murder to me, and I'm calling my friend Boston Blackie. You believe the light here on Rocky Island wasn't working last night, eh, Blackie? I don't believe anything yet, Charlie. Not that we investigate. I guess we can tie up to this lighthouse landing, can we? Yeah, I'll handle the landing, Blackie. I'll tie the launch up with a half hitch. <laughs> You might also use a rope, Mary. <laughs> if Faraday were here, he wouldn't have an answer for that either. I'll tie the boat, Mary. You can get up on the landing. Oh, thanks, Charlie. Oh, what a beautiful... 
beautiful lighthouse. I suppose you'd like to live in it. Oh, how would I? But I put different curtains in the windows. And a lace shade and tassel on the light, I suppose. Well, I don't know about the tassel. Oh, look, there's the lighthouse keeper's daughter. There's uh, always one, isn't there? <laughs> if you mean the woman in the doorway there, the lighthouse keeper must be 80. This woman's an easy 60. If there is such a thing as an easy 60... No sightseers allowed out here. This is government property. The only sight we want to see is the lighthouse keeper. And we have government permission. Here's our pass. What do you want to see him for? We just want to ask him a few questions about an accident on the reefs near here last night. Oh, the ship that sank down yonder? That's right. Tell your husband we'd like to see him, will you? What makes you think I'm his wife? I didn't say so. Just imagine you were. Well, I am, but I don't like things taken for granted. Well, may we see him, please? He isn't here. He's gone to the mainland for supplies. Oh, I see. Anyone else out here? No, only me. We thought we saw somebody up in the tower as we came out here in the launch just now. Nobody's up there. We'd like to look, if you don't mind. Well, I don't. Okay, go ahead. Stairs are right there. It's going to be some climb. You want to stay here, Charlie? No, I'll go up with you. Oh, I think I'll stay here, though. They say steps are good for the figure, Mary. Oh, what's wrong with my figure? <laughs> if Faraday were here, he couldn't answer that either. <laughs> See you in a little while. Come on, Charlie. It's a long, slow climb, but I'll bet the fuse good when we get up there. You'll have to excuse me, miss, but I have chores to do, whether there's company here or not. Oh, that's perfectly all right. I'll just stand here in the door and admire the view. Yeah, when you've looked at it as long as I have, there's nothing you admire about it. Always the same. Always the same. Frank, it's Lena. There's some men coming up to see you. Why did you let them come up? Well, I tried to tell them you weren't up there, but they saw you, and I, and I couldn't stop them. They have a pass. They want to talk to you. What about? Do you know? It's about that ship that sank on the Devil's Reef last night. I was afraid of that. Thanks. Thanks for telling me. <laughs> Just how high is this lighthouse, anyway? I don't know, Blackie. I lost count of the steps two landings ago. Well, here's another landing. The next to the last one, I hope. Oh, well, that's right. Hey, just the words right out of my mouth. It's a good thing you did. I don't have breath enough to say them. I know what you mean. Well, we've got to be able to talk to the lighthouse keeper when we get up here. And I think he is there, despite what his wife said. What's his name again? The Port Authority people said it was Harlow. Frank Harlow. Oh, yes, Harlow. Hey, here's a little window. Ooh. Hey, take a look out of here. Nice view. Yes, except for that ship out there in front of the reef. Is that where your ship went down last night? Yes, that's the ship from the Deepwater Salvage Company going to work on it already. They don't lose any time, do they? Well, it's better not to, Blackie. Some cargo can't take too much salt water. That's right. Well, I guess I wasn't thinking... That... Good night. What's that? Did you see something drop past the window? Yes, and I hope it's not what I think it is. Did you see the ground from up here? Well, I have to lean out the window a little more. Whatever. Uh oh. What is it, Blackie? You mean, what was it, Charlie? It was a man. Right now, it's just a body wrecked on the rock. Hollow, come away from the rocks. Blackie and Mr. King will be down here in just a minute. And, and, and oh, he's dead. He's dead. Yes, well, I know, Mrs. Hollow. He's dead. There's nothing you can do for him now. I'll come on inside with Mary. you. Sorry. Uh, uh, I'm here, Blackie. Terrible thing that just happened. I can't tell you how sorry we are about this unfortunate accident, Mrs. Harlow. It wasn't an accident. It wasn't. Well, I don't see how it could be anything else, Mrs. Harlow. We hadn't reached the top of the tower when he fell, but... He was alone up there, wasn't he? Yes, I lied to you before. He was up there alone. But this isn't an accident. This is murder. They killed him. They killed him. Who was they, Mrs. Hall? I can't tell you. I don't dare. But they killed him. They did it. They did it. He's hysterical from the shock, like He's hysterical, all right. There's nobody up in the tower now. But there's a reason that man fell. And that's the reason I'm going to send for Inspector Faraday. The police might be able to throw a little light on why this man fell from this lighthouse. <laughs> I'm sorry it took me so long to get here, Blackie, but I can't rush away from headquarters on every accident case. Any time you rush, it's an accident, Faraday. Mm, amusing. But listen, this is the light tower, yes? Yeah? 
Mrs. Harlow says her husband didn't fall from up here by accident. But there was nobody else here. Now, who pushed them then? You or Charlie Kingston? I never push people out of lighthouses. But in your case, I'll be glad to make an exception. No. We weren't up here yet, Faraday. We were still one landing below. Now, here's the window we went out of. Look, this is strictly an accident case, Blanky. Or a suicide if he was alone. He was alone, all right. Only Hollow and his wife worked at lighthouse. They're the only two people on the island. Hey, look, I didn't see any wife when I landed. Only Miss Wednesday downstairs. Where's Mrs. Harlow now? Charlie took her ashore and left her with some of Mr. Harlow's relatives in the city. You can talk to her later. Let's see what evidence of murder there might be around here. There's none, and you know it. This is just another of your little schemes to waste my time. Look, there's a scuff mark on the window ledge where he climbed out. I see it. And look here. Here's the reason he fell. He was hanging out the window here by his hands when a piece of the ledge broke away. Look, see, it's all rotted. Yeah. Ah, it breaks when I touch it. <laughs> A guy falls to death because he was hanging out a window and the window gave way. And the great Boston Blackie calls it murder. I didn't call it murder until Mrs. Harlow insisted it was. She's out of her mind. And Harlow must be out of his to hang out a window way up here. What was he doing that for? He's probably trying to hide from Charlie Kingston and me. Like, I want to hide from you too, but I don't hang out of windows a hundred feet in the air. What did he want to hide for? Probably to keep from answering our questions about why Charlie Kingston ship crashed on the reef down there last night. Down where? Over there. There, to your right. Where the salvage ship is now. Huh? That's a ship from the Deepwater Salvage Company that Charlie hired to save some of his cargo. Three men were drowned when Charlie's ship went down now, last night, and I think... What's the doing way down there? That, that south of here, and the channel's north of it. Couldn't they see this light? I saw a light all right, Barney, but it was down that way, and this one was out. Or at least that's what the captain's story was. And that's what we came to check into. It's the only thing that would explain why... I'll get it. That's well, probably Sergeant Matthews calling from below. I told him to let me know if we've got any reports on that police line. Okay. Hello. Hello, Inspector Faraday. This is Mary Wesley. Yes, I know it, Miss Wesley. But, Inspector, Sergeant Matthews just yelled up to the boat that there's been a shooting in town. That's fine. And I'm out here because a ship sinks last night and a man falls out of a window today. Who's been shot? Uh, a man named Lawrence. And, you know, it's the funniest thing. What's so funny about it? Well, um... There's a deep water salvage company boat out where Charlie's ship sank last night. So? And the man who's just been shot is head of that company. Now back to Boston Blackie. <laughs> Though it was steering a fog-bound course into the safety of the channel north of Rocky Island Lighthouse, one of wealthy Charlie Kingston's cargo ships crashes and sinks against the reefs south of the light. This is the fourth of Kingston's ships to be lost in this manner. Because he is Kingston's friend, Blackie goes to the lighthouse to investigate. But before he can talk to the keeper of the light, the keeper falls to his death from the tower. It's obviously an accident. But the dead man's wife says it's murder. Later, a man named Lawrence headed the company salvaging Kingston ship is shot. And as we return to our story, Blackie and Inspector Faraday are with the wounded man at his home. Who shot you, Lawrence? I told you before, Inspector Faraday. It was an accident. I shot myself. We know it was your gun that shot you, Lawrence, but tell us who pulled the trigger. I did, Blackie, I did. You'd have to be a contortionist to shoot yourself the way you've been shot. Well, then I'm a contortionist. I tell you, I shot myself. I can tell he's not going to change his story, Party. Come on, let's get out of here. Try some other time. Okay. Lawrence, if you're shielding someone, I'll find out who it is. I'm not shielding anyone. Maybe he's telling the truth, Faraday, and you'll find out about that, too. You'd believe anybody. As long as I said I didn't believe him, wouldn't you? Oh, Hey, Tommy. Tommy. Hey, Mr. Lance. Hey, uh, they've gone. Oh, uh, how'd you keep old Mrs. Harlow so quiet? They showed him a gun. It acted just like a muzzle. <laughs> Bring her in, huh? Yeah. Come on, you. Mr. Lance wants to see you. Sure, I'll see him. I'm not afraid. Go ahead and kill me. Kill me just the way you killed my husband. We didn't kill your husband, Mrs. Harlow. He killed himself. Accidentally, of course. But the fool shouldn't have tried to hide by hanging out the lighthouse window. But you made him do it. The 
If he hadn't let you talk him into turning out the light in the lighthouse so those ships could be wrecked, he wouldn't have been afraid to talk to Boston Blackie. Well, when are you going to kill me? What makes you think I am? Because I tried to kill you. And I'd shoot you again if you left your gun around and if I had the chance. You're not going to get the chance. You're going to stay tied up and stay here, too. Until we decide what to do with you. Put her back in the other room, Tommy. Come, man. Get back in there, yo. Don't try to yell for help. Because the boys in there got orders to strangle if you do. Don't worry, I won't. What do you think we ought to do with him, Frank? I don't know yet, Tommy. We have more important things to do first. There's another ship coming in tonight. Pretty good load, huh? Too good a load to let it get away from us. And I got a weather report. It's going to be plenty foggy out there tonight, too. Well, let's get the ship, huh? You can get the salvage job on it, can't you? Well, this is another one of Kingston's ships. I don't know why I shouldn't get it. Kingston seems to like my work. Okay, let's get it. You know what time it's coming in and everything? Everything, Tommy. I'll tell you what. We'll put our light a little further south this time. So we don't sink this baby right on top of the job we're working on. Okay. I say, uh, you well enough to go with me, huh? Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> I wasn't shot as badly as I told the police. Okay, if you say so. Hey, but wait, there's a complication on the job tonight. The new man at the lighthouse, you mean? Yeah. What we do, buy the guy up the way we did Harlow? No, huh? no, there isn't time. Now, I'll tell you what. Have a couple of the boys cut the power and phone line to the lighthouse on the mainland before we go down shore to our portable light. Hey, that sounds like a swell idea. Well, Mr. Lawrence, looks like we're getting richer by the minute, huh? Yes, Tommy. Guys like Kingston owns them, but our ships are coming in. Uh, heavy fog tonight, Captain. Yes, but we should be sighting the Rocky Island Lighthouse pretty soon. And it'll guide us into the channel. Oh, the moon's too thick for that light, sir. It'd have to be solid to hide the Rock Island beam, Mr. Jenkins. Hey, sir, would it bet? I sure wish we'd sight it. We're still a little too far out. Another ten minutes and we'll see it, though. I'd hate to try to find the channel without it, Captain Wills. I don't want to end my days on Devil's Reef. I uh, know Mr. Kingston wouldn't want to lose another cargo on Devil's Reefs. And neither would I, but... I certainly have a strange feeling that we're going to have trouble with those reefs. Blackie, we're going to spend all night out there at the lighthouse. We're going to get out there and stay out there until Charlie's ship comes through. At least that long, Mary. Well, I certainly appreciate your interest in my ship, Blackie. Oh, well, I just want to make sure you don't lose two ships in two nights, Charlie. And yeah, you want to make sure I lose sleep, don't you? You're always asleep, Faraday. If you weren't, you'd know why we have to go out to this lighthouse and what caused Charlie's ship to go on the reefs last night. Even I know what caused that, Blackie. Another light down shore from the lighthouse. Sure, Mary. Who's ever wrecking these ships sets up a portable light which guides the ships onto the reefs. And those same people that bribed the lighthouse keeper to turn out the light at Rocky Point. Right, Charlie. That's simple. And, uh, I know what's doing it, I think. Everyone sees it, Faraday. Everyone but you. I see it. And I see the Rocky Point Lighthouse, too. It's on tonight. And we're going to see that it stays on. It's Blackie. It's Blackie, the light went out. Right. Gee, is it? So the lighthouse, every light in the place is out. Blackie, my ship's out there in the fog and due to make a run for the channel any minute now. The light will go back on in a minute. Oh, no, it won't, Faraday. It was only the beam that went out. It was every light in the tower. That means the power to Rocky Island has been shut off from the mainland. Well, then we'll have to go back to the mainland and turn it on again. It won't be that easy, Mary. My guess is the lines have been cut. Charlie, someone's after a ship of yours again tonight. Well, maybe with no light at all, my ship won't try for the channel. With no light, they wouldn't try, but look down the coast there. Look down there, a couple of miles. Oh, no, it's not a light. It's not a firefly. That light down there is just south of Devil's Reef, Blackie. My ship will be guided right into the rocks, just like the others. We've got to do something. We will. I suppose you know exactly what to do, don't you, Blackie? Yes, Barney, I do. We're going to land at Rocky Island. You and I are going to start a fire that will wind up this case in a blaze of glory. Hey, Mr. Lawrence. Yeah? The light of Rocky Island just went out. Good. Every light in the place, Tommy? Yeah. Look up there. You can't see a thing. <laughs> the boys got the power lines at the mainland just as they were supposed to, didn't they? Yeah. What time is it? Time for that ship to be making by the channel. Okay. Let's turn on our light and give it something to steer by. Sure thing. 
Eh, it's some light we got, huh? Yeah. You'd never guess from out at sea that it was just a searchlight on the back of a truck. It's just like a lighthouse, huh? I don't care what it looks like as long as it leads that ship of Kingston on into the reefs out there. <laughs> Oh, yes, Mr. Jenkins, I see it, too. Uh, we're off our course, sir. Much too far north to make the channel. Oh, that's short. I was sure we were heading straight into it. Better get back on course right away, Mr. Jenkins. We're close to shore. All right, sir. Out, very out. If I didn't know better, I'd say that light is several miles south of where it should be. <laughs> uh, and you can't move a lighthouse, Captain Wills. Much easier to change the course of the ship. Aye, and I... Mr. Jenkins, huh? look there just north of us. Uh. On fire, sure, Jeff Wills. Yes, sir, a house on fire. It's a pretty big blaze. Of... Mr. Jenkins, huh? what do you see in the light of that fire? Or am I just imagining it? Why, sir, it's a lighthouse. Yes, I can see the whole town in the light of that fire. It's the Rocky Island Lighthouse, Mr. Jenkins. Yes. And we're south of it. And we ought to be north of it. Reverse engines, Mr. Jenkins. Right. We've still got time to keep off Devil's Reef. <laughs> They see that fire on Rocky Island from Charlie's ship. And if they don't, they'll see the bottom of the ocean at Devil's Reef. It sure works hard breaking up the stuff we set on fire. Oh, the exercise will do you good. Let's hope it works and they see the fire running that ship. Uh, then what? Hey, I see that phony light you were talking about, Frankie. It's out there on the point. The point is now how to get it out. And will the guys who are operating it stick till we get there? <laughs> Tonight, we ought to be hearing that ship smack up on the reefs pretty soon, huh? They can't miss this light of ours. Yeah, I thought we'd hear the ship already, Tommy. Must be late. Hope nothing's gone wrong. Hey, huh? look at the shoreline there, Mr. Lash. There's a big fire. Yeah, so there is. You wonder what's on fire? I don't know, but what's the difference? Hey, it's near where the Rocky Island Lighthouse is, Miss Lash. In fact, it's on Rocky Island. Yeah, say, I think you're right. Hey, you think the ship will see, huh? Be able to see something the lighthouse? No, I don't think so. They're looking for a light on that ship, not a bonfire. So let's keep this searchlight blazing good and bright. Pretty soon. Hey, it's a light! The light's been shut out! Run, Tommy, while it's good and dark. Somebody yeah. tells we're here. Somebody sure does, Lawrence. Is it Lawrence? It's black. Never yeah. mind who it is. Let's get out of here. Oh, hurry up. I'll take you first, Mike. You will. Huh? I will. Huh? One down, Blackie. I want to go. And he's going to get out of here. Oh, no, Lawrence. Yeah. You're just going. Oh. How many down now, Blackie? Two down, Faraday. And that's all there is. There isn't any more. <laughs> It's a pleasure to be driving a car tonight and not having to worry about lighthouses and reefs and phony lights. Right, Patty? I suppose so. I know what you mean, Blackie. By the way, congratulations on knocking off our friend, Mr. Lawrence. I understand you and the inspector here really had the goods on him, and he confessed. Well, there wasn't anything else he could do after we caught him and his stooge manipulating that portable light. He did tell us, though, that he had that Mrs. Hollow tied up in his apartment. Faraday, little rescue work, and got her out of there. Which means that everything is nice and smooth for a change. Oh, how can anything be smooth or nice with Blackie around? Faraday, isn't your brain back from its vacation yet? My mind's working. So don't you worry about me. Somebody better. And believe me, you're plenty to worry oh, about. Now, 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 look, both of you, this will have to stop. We're supposed to be having a pleasant evening. And what's Faraday doing here? Well, I knew you two were going to dinner. I asked myself along. Well, why didn't you decline the invitation when you asked yourself? Mary and I would have appreciated that. Oh, now, Inspector Faraday, Blackie's only kidding. It'll be a pleasure to have you for dinner. Have him for dinner? Hey, we could have him at that. Half baked. Half baked Faraday. And I can't understand that at all. No, uh, you can't. No, considering all the times I've roasted you. Oh,
first one. Well, well, it looks like you're getting lucky, see, if that's a strike for you. Yes, I'm going to add another to that and beat you by 40 points, Oliver. But you 40 think. points. Wait and see. Now, wait. And before you throw your next ball, I'd like you to know that if this wasn't a bowling league, I wouldn't be seen in the same alley with you. <laughs> you're still sore about that order I took away, aren't you? Yeah. I'll be quiet while I throw this one down the alley. Here we go. Uh-huh. Well... All of them went down. That's my second strike in a row. Yes, I know. And where are you going? Over to the girl next to Mrs. Smith. Well, move over, please, Mrs. Smith. Tired? Yes, I am. Maybe you can have a nice long rest here for permanent one. Oliver, how you talk? You think I'm kidding, huh? If Mrs. Smith wasn't here, I'd tell you exactly what I think. Don't let me stop you, Mr. Oliver. Oliver is four because I got a double strike. That's not what I'm angry about, C.F., and you know it. And I'm going to do something about it. Oh, oh, what's that? A threat? That's a promise, C.F., and I hope you've made out your will. I won't forget that you swindled me out of the biggest contract I was ever offered. And in 24 hours, you're going to be dead. And now, on to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friends. Mr. Smith will be home for dinner tomorrow night, Martha, so I think we ought to have a roast. Yes, Mrs. Smith. I'll go phone the butcher right now. You never know these days. If you... Oh, shall I answer that, ma'am? Please, Martha. Yes, ma'am. Is Mr. Smith in the living room? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, getting ready to go out. Oh, in that case, Martha, if that phone call is for me, I'm not in. I understand. Ma'am. Good. Henry! Hello. Henry, where are you? In here, dear. Have you seen my blue top coat? Now, let me see. If I were a blue top coat, where would I be? Hmm. In the closet. That's it. I'd be in the closet. Now, let's see how good a blue top coat I am. Here they are. <laughs> What would I ever do without you? Well, for one thing, tonight you'd be awfully chilly without this coat. Here, I'll help down with it. All right. Thank you. Anything you want before I go, Evelyn? No, dear. All I ask is that you win and come home early. Honey, a winner always comes home early. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what did you think of C.F. Baker when you met him at the bowling alley last night? Mm, he's all right, I guess. I didn't pay too much attention. Oh. Pretty good bowler, though. He beat that Mr. Oliver pretty badly. <laughs> Oliver and C.F. have been rivals and everything since I've known them. Mr. Oliver sounded pretty serious when he threatened your friend Baker, dear. Oh, he didn't mean it. Oh, no? No. You wouldn't say that if you saw his face. Come on, I'll walk you to the door. All right. What do you think a man could have? Handsomest man a gal could escort. <laughs> Let's cut it out or nobody will believe we've been married ten years. Mm. Good night, dear. Mm. Good night. Don't be too late. Now, wait up for... Oh, Henry. Oh, what's the matter? Henry, that's not our car in front of the door. No, no, it's C.S., honey. We swapped cars at noon. He had to make a trip out to the country with a load of stuff, and his car was too small. Honey, I don't like the idea of your driving C.S.'s car. Well, why not? It'll get me to his house, and I'll drive ours back home. Forget it, dear. You're the wearingest wife I ever had. I'm the only wife you ever had. I'm still not wrong, am I? <laughs> so long, Ev. I'll be back as early as I can. That's only half of your promise. All right, I promise to win, too. That's my fellow who said that. So long, sweetheart. Bye. See you, Sit down, Mrs. Smith, and answer a few simple questions, if you can. I don't know anything, except that Henry's dead and sick of us. I know it's difficult for you to talk about it, Mrs. Smith, but I need your help. I want to know the reason for the explosion in your husband's car. Oh, but it wasn't Henry's car. It belonged to C.F. Baker. C.F. Baker, huh? A friend of Henry. I see. Well, Mrs. Smith, I... Inspector Faraday... Oh, get out of here, Matthews. Can't you see I'm busy? Yes, Inspector Then get out of here. I'm working on the sweat chilling. Why did Mrs. Smith... Your husband was killed by a bomb wired to the ignition of Baker's car. Hey, Inspector now, if I could... Faraday... Will you get that... out of here, Matthews? I'm busy. Yes, sir, but about that bomb, sir, we've discovered the make of it. Huh? What have you been trying to do? Keep it a secret? No, sir. I've been trying to tell you. Well, next time, try louder. Oh, no, Inspector. Who made the bomb? The Oliver Munitions Company. Inspector, that's the company owned by the man who threatened to kill Mr. Baker. Then Oliver's the man we want. He kills your husband. 
He hated them for some reason. Oh, and... Inspector, he didn't even know my husband. And I didn't meet Mr. Oliver myself until last night. Oh, fine. A guy doesn't kill a man he doesn't know, does he, Inspector? No, he doesn't. But, Inspector, Mr. Oliver threatened to kill Mr. Baker. And Henry was using Mr. Baker's car. That's right. You told me that. Well, this is an open and shut case, then. I'll go to see Oliver. Grab him. This case will be over before Boston Blackie even knows it started. <laughs> Sorry, Inspector Faraday, but Mr. Oliver has someone in his office at the moment. Yeah. You'll have to wait. Okay, miss. How long do you think you've been? Well, I don't know, sir, but I'm sure it won't be too long. Uh, won't you have a seat? No, thanks. Don't stand. Uh, there are magazines on the table over there. No, thanks. I read them all four months ago. <laughs> <laughs> Oliver uh, always keep you when he works after hours? Oh, when it's important. And this is important. He's been with this man and woman for over an hour already. Oh, he has two people with him, does he? Hmm. It'd be just my luck that they were Boston Blackie and Mary Wesley. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, that's exactly who's in there. Yeah, that's what I... Blackie? Oh, no. Oh, yes. Well, I'm not waiting out here while Blackie's in there. Oh, Mr. Faraday, you can't go in there. Mr. Oliver's in conference. Yeah, well, I'm in conference with him. Why, hello, Faraday, old pal. Don't old pal me, Blackie. What I want to know is what... What you always want to know, what am I doing here? And uh, you want to know what I'm doing here, too, don't you? I know what you're doing here, Miss Wesley. Watching Blackie interfere in another of my cases. Oh, she doesn't watch, Inspector. She applauds when I solve them for you. Oh, Oh, by the way, this is Bill Oliver, the man you came here to accuse of murdering Henry Smith. Hello, Inspector. I've been expecting you. I know why, too. You killed Smith. Meaning to kill C.F. Baker, the man you threatened at the bowling alley last night. I know all about you, Oliver. You're coming to headquarters with me. Very well, if you say so, Inspector. You're not going anywhere, Oliver. Not if you've been telling me the truth. Well, Blackie, it sounded like the truth to me. Quiet, Miss Wesley. Oh. All right, Blackie, what's he been telling you? Everything he called me here to tell me. Yeah? That he foolishly threatened to kill C.F. Baker. And he knows it looks bad for him because a bomb was put in Baker's car, which Baker had loaned to Henry Smith. Especially bad since Mr. Oliver is a munitions man. I said quiet, Miss Wesley. Well, I, I said that quiet. Quiet! Please. And uh, I suppose, Inspector, you're going to tell me it was one of my bombs that killed Henry Smith. I will tell you that. We checked it and it was. Well, Oliver doesn't make all his bombs just for himself, Faraday, you know. Huh? They can be bought. And if brains could be bought, you'd have enough to know that Oliver wouldn't have threatened Baker in public if he intended to kill him. And he certainly wouldn't kill him with one... Look, if you don't... All right, Inspector, I'll be quiet. Yeah, you better. Excuse me. Yes? Mr. Oliver, Paul Williams is out here to see you. He says it's important. Have him wait for me in the consultation room, Louise. I'll see him in a minute, if I can. Yes, sir. Uh, well, uh, where were we? Uh, Faraday was about to drag you down to headquarters, but I think I'll be able to change his mind about that. No, I'm not taking you to headquarters, Oliver. But don't leave town. I may want to see you later. You know where to reach me if you do. Is this all for now? I think it is, Oliver. But if I find out that you've been lying to me, that's all for you. <laughs> That's okay, Mr. Oliver. You heard about the bomb in C.F.'s car, I guess. Yes, in fact, the police were just here to see me. Uh, but I had Boston Blackie on my side before the cops got to me. Yeah, well, uh... I said I'd give you a thousand for killing Baker and gave you five hundred in advance. So here's the rest of what I owe you. Oh. Thanks, Mr. Oliver, but uh, the bomb killed the wrong guy. I know that. The bomb idea wasn't very smart, Paul, but I promised you a thousand for the job and I keep my promises. Well, I'm sure glad you do. What about Baker? You still want him killed? Yes, I want him killed. But later, after Boston Blackie's made a chump out of himself, making an innocent man out of me. Mrs. Smith, was there anyone else here in your home besides you when that bomb killed your husband? Only my maid, Blackie, and she was answering the phone at the time. Who was calling? No one. It was the wrong number. I see. Now, Mrs. Smith... You heard Oliver threaten Baker's life? Yes, I did. But we all laughed about it. Who's we? Well, Mr. Baker and all the other bowling team members who were there. I don't know any of them well. I don't even know all their names. Well, how did you happen to be at the bowling match? I went for my husband. He and Mr. Baker were rather good friends. And Henry asked me to go as a sort of rooting section. Your husband and Baker were good friends. Now, what did Baker's initial CF stand for? Uh, I haven't any idea. I knew Mr. Baker only slightly. Uh Uh-huh. Well, uh, Miss Smith... How well did you know your husband? Why, I... Well, I mean, uh, do you know any reason at all why someone would want to kill him? Henry had no enemies, Blackie, and all his friends were good ones. No one I know would want to kill him. You think your husband was killed by mistake, then, don't you? Yes. 
I think Mr. Oliver was trying to kill Mr. Baker. Henry made the mistake of taking C.S. car. I'm beginning to think that's the answer to this, too. Well, thanks, Mr. Smith. I'll be seeing you later. And if you hear anything new or remember anything, let me know, will you? Yes, Blackie. Goodbye. Goodbye. Mr. C.S. Baker, please. Speaking. Oh, darling, this is Evelyn. Hello, sweetheart. How are you feeling? Fine. And you? Wonderful. Oh, I'm so glad. Oh, darling, it's all worked out so much better than we ever dreamed it would, hasn't it? Yes. What a wonderful accident that explosion was. You can say that again. Oh, I'm so happy about it. Yes, and so rich, too. Wasn't your husband worth a hundred thousand? Dead. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you won't stop loving me because I'm rich, will you? Darling, we'll have to wait a while. Can't be married just yet. Why not? Wouldn't look right. Henry was killed accidentally by that bomb in my car. Let's not give the police anything to think about. I guess you're right. But we won't have to wait too long, will we? You better be a weeping widow, a respectable length of time. A weeping widow, did you say? Mm-hmm. All right, darling. But don't forget that when the accident is forgotten, I want to be your laughing bride. <laughs> Now, back to Boston Blackie. Munitions maker Bill Oliver threatens to kill a man named C.F. Baker. The following night, Henry Smith, in a car borrowed from Baker, is killed when a bomb destroys the automobile. Later, Oliver pays his henchman, Paul Williams, a thousand dollars for doing the job. The dead man's wife tells Blackie she knows the intended victim, Baker, only slightly. But we later learn that Baker and Mrs. Smith intend to be married. Blackie and Inspector Faraday do not know this, however. As we return to our story, Baker is in the bowling alley where the original threat on his life was made. Doing some practicing, right, Mr. Baker? Oh, yes, Joe. Only it's not doing me any good. I blew off my game. Well, keep at it, Mr. Baker. That's the way to get better. Well, I'll try. Good. Not bad, Mr. Baker, not bad. Huh? Oh, who are you? My name's Williams, C.F. Paul Williams. I gotta talk to you. You see, I'm practically unemployed at the moment. What's the meaning of this? Well, you see, when I work, I'm hired to work over certain guys by certain other guys that don't like them, understand? No, not at all. Look, C.F., let me give it easy. Suppose a guy wanted you out of the way. You could hire me to do the job. And I'd take the job, unless... Unless what? Unless the guy who was supposed to be knocked off paid me more, like you're gonna do. In other words, Oliver sent you to kill me, huh? I didn't say that. All I said was I was for hire. I could be for hire by somebody who wants you knocked off. Or I could be hired by you, as a kind of life insurance. Sit down, will you, Faraday? It's better enough you're running around in circles on this case. Stop wearing out the rug in your office. I'd like to wear you out, Blackie. Sorry, replacement parts for Blackie are very hard to get. Now, sit down, will you? You're making me nervous. I think better when I walk around. You what, better? I... Inspector, you don't even walk straight, much less think straight. Now, listen to me a minute, will you? Okay. Which only goes to prove how silly I'm getting. This case has you puzzled because a fellow named Smith was killed and your prize suspect, Oliver, the munitions maker, didn't even know him, right? That doesn't puzzle me. So Smith was killed by mistake, that's all. It's your theory that, that uh, Oliver threatened C.F. Baker, planted a bomb in Baker's car, but Smith was using the car and he got it. What's wrong with that? Nothing except for the fact that you thought of it. Uh-huh. Well, why don't you arrest Oliver if you're so sure? What proof have I got? You're going to let a little thing like that stop? Oh, Blackie, please. Please beat it so I can figure this out for myself. Don't make me throw you out. Uh, kid, this office is public property. Mm-hmm. And I'm a member of the public. Yeah? And you're a public servant. So? So, go get me a glass of water. Oh, Blackie, I... I'm sorry, Inspector. I was only kidding. Very amusing. You're the best cop on the force, but I really do have to rip you once in a while, just to keep in practice. <laughs> now, well, uh, I... <laughs> let me tell you what I think about the case, will you? Oh, go ahead. I think that somebody might have wanted Smith dead. Now, what we have to do is to find out who that somebody is. And how's that done, genius? I'll let you know sometime this evening right now. I've got to go get Mary and take her out to dinner. After that, I'll try to blast out the guy who exploded the bomb in that car.
You sure he said his name was Baker, Mary? Mm-hmm. C.S. Baker, Blackie. He called and said his life was threatened and for you to come right over. Well, I told him you were out and you'd be over as soon as you could. You know, I know that name. Who is he, Blackie? Uh, he's the fellow that Oliver, the munitions man, threatened. That's all I know about him. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember. Well, what do the initials stand for? Who knows? Everybody refers to him just as C.S. Anyhow, this is his building, and we're in for a couple of hectic moments, if I'm not mistaken. You'd better wait out here. No, what a chance. Well, all right. But if there's trouble, keep back. Come on. Okay. <clears throat> hey, you think the man who threatened CF might be there now? I don't know. But if Baker sounded as urgent as you say, it's possible. Maybe the killer got there before us. Now, that's a nice pleasant spot. Well, it's more pleasant than if he were there when we got in. You got something there. Yeah. Let's see now. Apartment one A. One A. That ought to be right off the door here. Mm-hmm. I'll have my gun handy just in case. This um, hall can be emptied in three seconds flat by me if there's a killer in that apartment. We'll find out right now. If you hear a strange noise, Blackie, don't pay any attention to it. My knee is knocking. Quiet knockies. <laughs> yes? Uh, hello. Uh, I'm Boston Blackie. This is Mary Wesley. You're CF Baker? Yes, I am. What can I do for you? What can you do for me? Well, you called me, didn't you? And said you wanted help? You spoke to Miss Wesley here. Yeah, you told me your life had been threatened. Well, there must be something wrong, Blackie. I never called anybody about that. As a matter of fact, the only time my life was threatened was yesterday. And I think the police know that a man named Oliver threatened me. You didn't phone me? No. I'm sorry. Good night. Well, uh, come on, Blackie. Oh, I'm sure somebody has a strange sense of humor. No doubt. If I ever get the guy, I'll... <laughs> Good work, C.F. You got rid of Blackie very nicely. He's very smart. Because if you hadn't, I'd have killed you right here. You never should have called Blackie, you know. Now, look, Williams. We're supposed to be making a business deal, so stop talking about killing. Why? Killing is my business. You know, Oliver paid me a thousand dollars to put that bomb in your car. The one that killed Smith, and you did it. Now, look, Williams, I tell you that... Well, it was pretty. Like, I told you that I was in Yes, no... I know what you told me, but it sounded phony, and I came back to find out a few things. And I heard enough from this character here... Right, that's his... right with my business, huh, Blackie? Well, pushing guys around is my sideline. I'm going to give you a free sample. If that's the best you've got, I'm not buying. Try this. Try this. Wait, 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 wait a minute. minute. Wait, wait, my, my, my table, my lamp. Stop it now, will you? Stop it, please. Okay, CF. Right after I stop him. That does it. Now I'll cut him down to Faraday and get him to sing the same song to the police that he did to you. So I'll ever hire him to gimmick up your car with a bomb, huh? And I loaned my car to Smith, and that's the story, Blackie. Yes, I know. Oh, well. That's the first time for everything. So it looks like for once, Faraday was right. Yeah, Blackie. Thanks for dumping that sock Paul Williams in my lap. That cracks this case wide open. As soon as he admits rigging that bomb, I'll have Oliver down here, too. I heard him tell C.F. Baker he was hired by Oliver to put the bomb in Baker's car. He admits he said that, Blackie, mm-hmm. but uh, he said he didn't do it. He says he was paid to do it, but uh, didn't. Oh. Oh, he's lying, of course. I'll get it out of him. Don't worry. What if he's telling the truth? Must you always think of unpleasant things? No. He did it all right. We got the motive. Oliver wanted Baker dead, and we know the connection between Williams and Oliver. Well, in that case, Mary's on a wasted errand. What's Miss Wesley doing? She's pretending to be a household servant at the moment, Inspector. A household? Because I still think this case needs a lot of cleaning up. You don't say. Mm, yes. My, my, such going on. <laughs> oh, it sure was nice talking to you, Martha. Well, same here. I guess I'm going to like my new job working for those people down the block. Well, anything you want to know, dearie, you ask me. You come to meet me. <laughs> Thank you, I will. I don't know how long I'll stay with these people. Oh, mm, parties every night. Oh, such goings on. Well, one good thing about the Smiths, never no parties. Uh-huh. Of course, Mr. Smith had a boyfriend on the side that her husband, oh, may he rest in peace, never knew about. Uh, a boyfriend? And how? Did you ever see him? Oh, no. He used to call during the day, though, when he knew Mr. Smith wouldn't be home. How he just answer the phone. Oh, what kind of a voice did he have? He was a cunning one, dearie. Used to disguise it all the time. <laughs> and was he disappointed when I used to know it was him every time, though? Well, Boston Blackie would be disappointed that you don't know who he is. Now, look, see ya. Yes? I'm kind of glad Boston Blackie brought me over here to your apartment. I want to apologize for threatening you at the bowling alley the other night. It's a little late, isn't it, Oliver? Well, all right. Now, look, if you want to... Stop it, both of you. Come on. Shut up. Uh... 
I didn't get you together to start a battle. Now, both of you lie out there on the floor. What? What are you talking about? You crazy blackie. I don't want to fool around, kids. You'd better lie on the floor the easy way without help from my fists. Well, uh, CF. Hmm. I don't know what this is about, but I'm lying on the floor. There you are. Okay, that's good enough for me. That's being smart, boys. In exactly 30 seconds, my girlfriend is bringing me a visitor here. And I wanted to walk in and see you both on the floor. Something tells me this is a gag. Better tell us something it doesn't know what it's talking about. Now, keep quiet. I'm putting out all these lights except the lamp. So all that can be seen from the door is your bodies. What are you looking for, Blackie? A motive for murder, C.F. The solution of the mystery of why a man was killed. Go right in, please, Mrs. Smith. All right, but I... Tell me! Tell me what's happened! Nothing, Mr. Smith. Nothing at all. Except you've just told me why your husband was killed and who killed him. Now, Faraday, let's not make jokes, and I'll tell you why I knew that C.F. Baker killed Smith. He's telling me not to make jokes. Blackie, I never make jokes. Yeah, I know, but the strain of your trying is very disconcerting. Uh Uh-huh. Now, listen. From the beginning, I didn't believe that Smith was killed by mistake. Somebody wanted him dead. Somebody got what he wanted, too. Right. It's true that Oliver paid Paul Williams to kill C.F. Baker, but Williams was a phony and never did the job. Then when Smith was killed to make his car, he collected his fee, claiming that he had put the bomb in the car, and he wasn't responsible for the fact that Baker wasn't in it. Now, get to the point. Why did Mr. Smith have to die? Mary found out for me that Mrs. Smith had a mysterious boyfriend. Oh. I imagined her boyfriend wanted the husband out of the way. But who was this boyfriend? I didn't know, but I thought it might be either Baker or Oliver. So you set up that little scene in Baker's apartment. That's right. I knew that Mrs. Smith would go to whichever one of the men lying on the floor was her secret friend. That's not a new device at all. But without moving from the door, she gave herself away. How? She yelled, Charlie, Charlie, what's happened? Who knew C.F. Baker's first name was Charlie? Nobody that we knew. Hey, only somebody that was very close to him would know that. So that's how you knew Baker was a boyfriend, huh? You've got your confession. And as a matter of fact, he was very cute. When Oliver threatened him, he saw a way of killing Henry Smith and making it look like Oliver had tried to kill him. Well, how do you like that? I don't like it at all. The only thing I like is that Mrs. Smith called C.F. Baker by his first name, which gave me the initial clue. <laughs>
open her up as soon as we're out of the yard, Bill. No full throttle till we're over the crossing, Mike. But that's outside of the yard. Well, I- I'd better make sure the pressure's up, huh? Pressure's okay. We're pulling only four cars. No passengers, just three. Got the time? Yeah, it's uh, 11.51. And we pulled out right on time. Old 86 has never been late, Bill. Never late pulling out, never late pulling in. Yeah, but things might be different this time, huh? Never any different on the old 86. Uh, uh. <laughs> We're making the crossing, Bill. And out of the yard. Still think this trip's going to be different? Different. This is going to be the strangest trip old number 86 ever made. And now on to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friends. Hello, Joe. Oh, hi, Sam. Stopped at your house and brought to your dinner. Thanks. Saved my wife a trip. Uh, what did she make up for me tonight? I don't know. I didn't look in the pail. Ah, uh, pale, pale. <laughs> Here I am, 40 years old and still eating dinner at 4 in the morning. Yeah. And out of a pail at that. Bet nobody in the city does that. Well, maybe the railroad will move you down the line someday. <laughs> maybe even to the Metropolitan Terminal. Oh, no, no such luck for me, Sam. I'm going to sit in this signal station for the rest of my days. <laughs> Well, I guess you ought to be glad I'm at least in the main line, even though there must be some trouble tonight. Trouble, Joe? Yeah. Where? Down the line somewhere. Uh-huh. Old 86 is plenty late. Think I better call down the line and see what's the matter. A wreck, maybe, huh? I don't know. I'd have had a call if I'd been a wreck. Hello? Oh, uh, hello. This is the signal tower at Jasper. Yeah? What's the matter down there? 86 is late. Is it stuck down there in your town? No, it's not. As a matter of fact, I was just about to phone you. I thought maybe I fell asleep and didn't see it pass. Huh? What do you mean? Well, 86 left the Metropolitan Terminal on time, all right, but it never passed here. What? Unless I, I, I was asleep when it went by. You weren't asleep. Never got here. Good night. That's not possible. Sure it is. 86 ain't past your signal station. It stopped down the line from you. No, it's not, because 19 came through here on time, and it's supposed to be a half hour behind 86. Well, that 86 pulled in on the side. No, there's no open siding from here back to the terminal, and it hasn't been switched onto a spur, I check. Holy mackerel. Left the terminal. Couldn't have been switched off, and it never reached you? Yeah. You know what that means? Lane's old 86 has just plain disappeared. <laughs> The man on the phone said to come to the freight yard terminal, Sergeant Mills. Yeah, I guess this is it. Well, there's somebody down there on the platform now. Hey, you You in fixed Faraday? Yeah, I am. I'm Jim Thomas, railroad cop. It's me that phoned you to get down here. Uh, This way, Inspector. I'll show you what we found. Okay. Stick here, Sergeant Mills. Yes, sir. Now, what seems to be the trouble down here, Thomas? It's murder, Inspector Faraday. The first murder in these yards since I've been a cop in the line. How do you know it's murder? Well, you look at the tool set here, and you'll know it's murder. Here we are. Uh, this is Mr. Faraday of the Homicide Squad, boys. Uh, stand back. Let him have a look at the body. The body, Thomas. I see four men on the floor here. Three of them are pretty much alive, Inspector. Just unconscious the way we found them. When we've taken the ropes and gags off them. But this fellow here is dead. You found these four men in here? Gags bound and unconscious? Yes, sir. Not unconscious by blows in the head. Only the blow was too hard for this poor fellow. It killed him. You know who the dead man is? I know all of them are, Inspector. Crew bowl number 86 that pulled out of here ten hours ago. Then what are they doing here? One of the men came through a few minutes ago. Long enough to tell it. Him and the crew were jumped and knocked out just before train time. And the train stolen from them. The train stolen from them? Now, wait a minute. You wait, wait, Inspector. You haven't heard it all. The train was not only stolen, but it hasn't been hurt from since. What? That's right, Inspector. Should have arrived by now, but it's nowhere to be found. Doc Thomas, murder is tough enough all by itself. Are you trying to tell me a train has disappeared? Yes. It left here. We drew the fastest signal station down the line two hours later. and never got there. And it was switched off on a siding or something. No, it definitely was not. We checked every inch of track. A train disappeared? Yeah. A train can't disappear. That's impossible. But if it has disappeared... Well, I don't think even Boston Blackie can figure out how. Hello. Good morning, Blackie. This is Mary. Oh, Mary, how are you? Excited. Did you read the morning paper? <laughs> yes, one of the comic strips grew them up. Oh, Blackie, how could you ever get to the funnies with that fun page story about the railroad train that disappeared? Oh, that? Yes. Hmm. 
Well, made an interesting reading, didn't it? Interesting? Blackie, what's the matter with you? A railroad train has disappeared. An engine and four cars. And that's practically impossible. It is impossible, Mary. You well, just I can't know. hide a thing the size of a train. Besides, I'd like to know why anyone would want to steal a train. And how could it disappear? Search me. Well, that wouldn't help us any, I'm sure. Oh. <laughs> but, uh, uh-oh. There's the doorbell, Mary. I'll call you back. All right, bye. Bye-bye. Come in. Boston Blackie? Yes. Blackie, I'm Harold Wilkins, district manager of the railroad. Of uh, the railroad with disappearing trains, Mr. Wilkins? Yes, unfortunately. And I've come to you for help. <laughs> Mr. Wilkins, you don't really think that I believe anything as big and bulky as a four-car train can be missing, do you? I can't believe it myself, Blackie, but the fact remains the train is missing. <laughs> the fact remains that the train is no longer, it uh, no longer remains, huh? Well, Blackie, this is nothing to joke about. I'll admit the situation is impossible, incredible, fantastic. But since that train left the freight terminal at 11.50 last night... For the crew of thieves. It hasn't been seen. Oh, it wasn't being operated by its regular crew, huh? I didn't know that. Well, the crew was hijacked and tied up. One of the crewmen was murdered, and we called the police. But the train is missing, actually missing. You mean lost, don't you? Wrongly rooted. No. Well, it should be found any moment now, on a siding or off on a spur line somewhere. Oh, Blackie, we've searched every siding from here to the end of the run. We've searched every spur, but number 86 just can't be found. In fact, we've never seen to pass the signal tower a hundred miles up the line from the terminal. Then it disappeared within that hundred miles. No doubt about that. Mr. Wilkins, I'll tell you something. Yes? I can't see why anyone would try to steal a train. Well, I'll tell you something, Blackie. That train was stolen because in a safe in the fourth car is a million dollars worth of uncut diamonds. To the train we made disappear. And you, Mr. Reed, for your help. Yes. My deep appreciation. Uh, thank you. You're too kind. Uh, can I cut you some more meat? Uh, no, thank you, Mr. Zachary, but I'll have a glass of water, if I may. Oh, uh, Mike. Yeah? Uh, give Mr. Reed a glass of water. Oh, sure, Mr. Zachary. Hey, you are, Mr. Reed. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Reed, because of your help in getting us information about the diamonds on that train, I expect the terminated deal has been pending for some time. Uh, Mr. Zachary, the papers today were full of stories about that train. <laughs> the railroad made a headline, didn't it? Yes, it did. <laughs> uh, people want to know how a train can disappear. Intriguing, isn't it? <laughs> Bill and Mike here are responsible. Yeah. They ran the train out of the yards right on schedule. They did the part very well, even to tying up those four regular crewmen. And you, Mr. Reed, did your part, too. Oh, you showed me what to do, Mr. Zachary. All I did was follow orders. You most certainly did, and well, too. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Zachary. How much did you make as chief of the shipping bureau of the railroad? Uh, my salary was uh, uh, 3800 a year. And we promised you more than twice that for your help. Yes, you did. And your help was valuable, necessary. Without you, I doubt whether we could have gotten away with the train and the dime. Oh, you're satisfied with what I've done, then? Permanently. This dinner was a sort of victory celebration, in fact. <laughs> Did you enjoy it, Mr. Reed? Oh, yes. Best dinner I ever ate. Good, good. Considering it's the last dinner you'll ever eat. Huh? What do you mean? I mean that every mouthful of food you ate tonight has been poisoned. But a particularly deadly poison. My boys and I are accepting your resignation from this corporation, Mr. Reed. From this corporation and this world. You say, Inspector Faraday, that the bunny you found this morning was Henry Reed. Yes, Mr. Wilkins. And papers in his pockets identify him as head of your shipping department. First, Jerry Large, the regular engineer of train 86, and now Reed. Yep. How was Reed killed? He was poisoned. We found his body in an alley in a cheap part of town. Suicide, maybe, but maybe not. Hmm. Reed was the only member of the shipping department who knew those diamonds were going out on number 86. He knew there were diamonds on the missing train, huh? Well, that brings us back to that again. Finding a killer isn't tough enough. Now I have to find a missing train. In my unprofessional opinion, Inspector, the deaths of Jerry Large and Henry Reed are directly linked to the missing train. Yeah. And the link is missing, too. Missing train, missing link. Uh, all I got to hope for is that Boston Blackie is missing on this case, too. There doesn't seem to be any... Uh, excuse me. Come in. Good morning, Wilkins. I just... Blackie, oh no. Friday, oh yes. Yeah, me too. Yeah, you I can take, Miss Wesley. But Blackie, you can take a powder. This case is crazy enough already without having you mixed up in it. Everybody's mixed up in the case, Friday, and so is everything. Mr. Wilkins asked me to help. That's right, Inspector. That's right. 
That's the wrongest thing you ever did. Now, Blanky, you listen to me. I know what you're going to say. Stay out of this case. Yes. But I can't, Inspector. You know how an unsolved murder and tweet They may... won't be unsolved long if you keep away. I'll handle it. No, I don't sound bad at all. But what experience have you had in disappearing trains? Who could have experience in that? I could. I lost a set of electric trains when I was a kid. Uh-huh. Wilkins, um, have you double-checked every siding and spur line? Every siding, every spur, every yard, every terminal and station that connects with the main track. We even sent planes to look for it, Mikey. No trains? No trains. And a train can't be disguised. That train has just vanished off the face of the earth. Will you people stop talking about a missing train? I've got two deaths to solve. Two deaths, Barney? Yes, yes. My mother man from the railroad was found dead this morning. And it might be murder. He was poisoned. Oh, fine, fine. Any idea who did it? Any idea who did it. We got lots of suspects. 130 million of them. Anybody could have killed them. All I'm sure of is that his death is tied up with that missing train. There may three things missing. A murderer, a train, and a solution to all this. Well, that's what I'm going to work on. And I'm going to find it, too. Unless I miss my guess. Now, back to Boston Blackie. A four-car train leaves the terminal on schedule and is never seen again. Its crew, however, is found in the terminal, bound, gagged, and unconscious, the engineer dead. The train, carrying a million dollars worth of uncut diamonds, was obviously stolen. And so clever were the thieves that a two-day search of every spur and siding along the scheduled route of the train proves fruitless. As we return to our story, Boston Blackie and his friend Mary are in an airplane, high over the track from which the train disappeared. Well, Blackie, our pilot's taken us all the way up the tracks and almost back again, and we haven't found a missing train. Now what do we do? I'll have our pilot fly us up and down these tracks for a week, if I have to, Mary. Oh. That train is down there somewhere, and we should be able to spot it from up here. But, Blackie, we know it isn't on a siding or on a, a whatchamacallit. Fur line. Fur line. We've seen them all. I know, Mary, but... Hey, what's that down there? Huh? Well, just more tracks and yeah. empty. But look, Mary... Uh, it isn't connected to the main line. Well, maybe that's why there's not a train on it. Trains can't fly, you know. I noticed that track on the way up. I didn't. Seems to run way back into the mountains over there. I wonder now. Oh, Blackie, there's a gap of at least 100 yards between the main line and the track going into the mountains. And the gap is full of little trees. I see all that, Mary, but I have an idea just the same. I want to find out who owns that property down there, and I know who can tell me, too. Who? John J. Jones. John J. Jones? Blackie, that's you. That's right. And right now, I'm a guy with two names and a one track mind. Mr. Zachary. Yeah? I'm Mr. Jones to see you. Mr. John J. Jones. Jones, Mike? I don't know any Jones. Well, he says he wants to buy something from you if it's for sale. Oh, all right, Mike. Come in. Sure. Uh, Mr. Jones, Mr. Zachary will see you now. Thank you. Come in, sir. Come in. You Mr. Zachary? Yes, I am. Uh, that'll be all, Mike. Yes. Have a chair? Thanks. What can I do for you, sir? Well, I am looking for some property, Mr. Zachary. And Mr. Jones, I'm not a real estate agent. I'm a diamond merchant. Oh, I know that. But I understand that you own some property, some old lumber land about 50 miles from here. Well, yes, I do. How did you know it was mine? I checked at the courthouse. You see, I want to build a camp, Mr. Zachary, and I like the looks of your land. Really? I don't need it all, but I will buy it all if the price is right. As a matter of fact, I own more than 4,000 acres up in those mountains, Mr. Jones. But not an acre of it is for sale. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Uh, may I use your phone? Oh, sure, sure. Go right ahead. Thanks. Are you sure you won't part with, uh, oh, let's say, just a few hundred acres, Mr. Zachary? I'm sorry, but I'm saving that land my old age. I want to build a home up there when I've made my million. Well, that's the way you feel about it. Yeah, that's the way it is. Homicide, Faraday speaking. Hello, Mary? Mary? This is John. Mary? Now, I'm Mary. Hey, what's the idea? Look, of... Mary, I followed up that lead I had on... Uh... Blackie, it's you. Uh, you got the answer to something, huh? Yes, I have. Yeah, well, I found out a few... Yes? Hello? Hello? Funny, the line went dead, Mr. Zachary. Oh, that often happens. I've had a man from the telephone company up here several times to fix it. Well, I'll make a call from some other phone. That's it, better. Hope you're not too disappointed about the... Oh, say, maybe that's my call coming back. I see. Hello? Mr. Zachary, this is Mike. Yes? 
I listened in when that guy made that call, Mr. Zachary. He ain't John J. Jones. He's Austin Blackie, and he was talking to a cop. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, Mr. Jones. Why don't you think I ought to call you Boston Blackie? Uh-oh. I didn't... Don't let you look on Blackie. You'd be just a little too late. So I see. Well, it's your move. And my first move, Blackie, will be to see to it that you've made your last. Wesley, this is Fire Oh, hello, Inspector. Miss Wesley, is Blackie there? Oh, no, he isn't. Well, where is he? Where'd you leave him? Well, at the airport several hours ago. He saw some kind of tracks in the mountains off the main line and got an idea. Oh, he saw those tracks? Yeah. So did I, from a police plane a while ago. I got the same idea. Well, he's doing something about it, whatever it is. He's getting himself killed about it. He's tackled that gang alone. What gang? The guys who own the property in that abandoned spur line. Well, who owns it? Uh, a guy named Zachary, a diamond merchant. And I'll bet my badge he and his men stole that train and ran it off on that siding. How? I don't know how they did. I know there are no connecting tracks from the main line to that siding, but I still think that's where we'll find that train. Oh, that's what Blackie said, too. You really think he's in trouble? Think it. I know it. I'm going right out there. You want to come with me? Please. I'll pick you up in five minutes. Oh, Inspector, I hope we find Blackie. I've got an addition to that hope. What? I hope we find Blackie alive. <laughs> So that's the great Boston Black. <laughs> Doesn't look like much of here, does he, Bill? <laughs> I've seen roast beef that were tied up and looked bad. <laughs> right, Mike? <laughs> sure. What I want to know is why we don't get rid of him right now. I've got to find out how he found out about us. Yeah. Blackie, don't you feel like talking? Sure, but I talk much better when my hands are untied. Look at him trying to get out of those ropes. Might as well save your strength, Blackie. When I tie a guy, he stays tied. You should have meant just as the peace. Now, look. Quite a sense of humor, our friend has. But I'm losing mine. Blackie, listen. You found out I own the property near the railroad, and you came to see me. There's a lot of property near the railroad. Why did you pick on mine? Let's say I guess the way you made that train disappear. Let's not. Let's admit you know. And I want to know how. Take these ropes off, and I'll tell you. I make speeches better when I can use gestures. They're really very helpful. And... <laughs> I owe you one for that, Mike. Where you're going, you'll have to wait a long time for me to show up so you can pay me back. This guy ain't going to talk, Mr. Zachary. Let's take care of him right now. It ain't a bad idea, Mr. Zachary. It is as far as I'm concerned. To the best of my knowledge, your opinion wasn't solicited, Blackie. It should have been. I'm an interested party in this deal. I should say you are. In fact, the party's on you. We wasted no time, boys. Take him. He's all yours. <laughs> Time to get around in back of Zachary's place. We're going from the front here. Now stick close to me, Miss Wesley. I'm practically glued to you, Inspector Faraday. I'll stay that way. Here we go. Okay. It's awful empty and quiet in there, Inspector. And it won't be when we find Zachary and his mob. Well, when we do, you won't have to tell me to duck. Uh, look, Miss Wesley. Maybe you better wait outside. Oh, not a chance. Aren't you scared? I'm practically fainting. If anything's happened to Blackie, I don't want to be told about it by anybody. Hey, look, Inspector. Yeah. On the floor. Is that... Blackie? Yeah. No, it's one of the gang. Somebody slipped him a clip on the chin. He's out cold. Mm, Blackie's been here. Maybe. But that's only one of the gang. There must have been a couple of them to pull a job like the vanishing train. Yeah. Maybe Blackie got one of them. The chances are... Hey, don't that... say it. We must go into the other room. I think I stepped on a body. Wait till I throw my flashlight on it. Uh-oh. It's another one. Oh, thank goodness it's not Blackie. What happened to that one, Inspector? From here, it looks like he ran chin first into a fist. Mm, well, Blackie's been here all right. No question about that. I hope he's not here now. Because if he is, with all this quiet... Inspector. What body did you trip over now? No, I just didn't want you to finish what you were going to say. This door's locked. If Blackie's anywhere, he should be in here. Step back this way, please. Okay. Ah. All I'm hoping is that Blackie's held the rest of that gang off until now. Only it's a pretty ridiculous hope. Well, let's hope it anyway. Here. Use this and iron. I picked it up off the floor. Okay. 
This ought to break that door down. There. I'll put my hand through all turn the lock. There. Come on. I'm afraid of what we're going to find, Inspector. Uh, we'll, we'll see in a second. Let me... Hello, Faraday. Blackie. Blackie. I called your office and made sure that you were on your way up here, so to kill time, I've been playing solitaire. What do you mean by being all right? I'm sorry to disappoint you. Uh, take a look at my friend here. He's the man you want. His name is Zachary. Yeah? He made the mistake of thinking he could tie me up. I got out of his rope and went to work on it. I know him. He's the guy that owns that property near the railroad, huh? He's the guy who's responsible for the disappearing train and two murders. Um, what hit him, Blackie? The train? <laughs> I did. And also those two characters you might have seen in the other room. Yeah, we saw them. I hope you don't mind by not unlocking the door for you two. I was hoping Faraday would use his head. To knock down the door? Sure. What do you care for an old door? No. <laughs> well, get these guys out of here, and I'll show you just how a train disappeared. And if you're a good boy, I'll even tell you why. <laughs> All right, Blackie, we did find a missing train up in that spur line tunnel on Zachary's property. Well, I knew it was there. The only place it could have been. All right, all right. But that train didn't fly from the main line here through these trees to where the spur line starts. No, it didn't, Faraday. You and Mary are both right. The train didn't fly through these trees. It didn't crawl between them either, Blackie, because there isn't room enough between them for a train to go through. These trees weren't here the night the missing train left the main line, Mary. What? Watch how easily they come out of the ground. Hey, do they all pull out of the ground that easy? All of them, Faraday. In a couple of hours' time, all of these trees from here to the spur line could have been pulled out and the way cleared the track. Well, that's fine, Blackie, but wouldn't it take hours to put a switch onto the main line? Only a few minutes, Mary. An emergency switch, the kind used to run trains around a wreck or a washout, can be placed on top of the regular tracks in ten minutes by a good crew. And Zachary had a good crew. Yeah, that's right. In his confession, Zachary said he had only former railroad men working for him. <laughs> what an odd coincidence. It isn't a coincidence at all. Zachary had been planning a big diamond robbery for years. And this was his way of doing it. Oh, I see it all now. First, they were tipped off about the diamonds by that man, uh, Reed, they killed. Mm -hmm. And then they cleared out the trees and put a switch on top of the main line track and ran connecting tracks back to the old spur line. And then did everything in reverse. They took up the track and the switch, replanted the trees, after the stolen train was run down the spur and into the mountain tunnel. That's all very simple once you know how it was done, isn't it? Oh, very simple. Except for one thing. Yes. Mr. Zachary stole the train to get the diamond. That's right. But all I know is that a guy who thinks he can steal a train is off his trolley. Oh, black. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah? Are you Jimmy Wells? Yeah. Well, it took me a long time, but I finally did it. Did what? Found you. I'm Boston Blackie. So what? So, for the first time in the last few days, you're safe. Unless I have the wrong Jimmy Wells. Is your wife's name Dorothy? Yeah. Do you live at 2100 Leslie Boulevard? Uh Uh-huh. And you're a salesman? That's right. Then you're the Jimmy Wells I want. I don't know what for. For protection, Wells. Your protection. What? I got a tip from unhealthy sources that you're going to be killed. Oh, then they're serious about it, huh? They mean business, Wells. With a business end of a gun. But you don't have to worry now. I'll take care of you and them, too. You will, huh? Yes. Get lost, Blackie. You don't seem to understand. They're going to kill you. You don't seem to understand. That's exactly what I want. And now back to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. Look, Wells, I didn't spend 48 hours looking for you just to hear you say that you... You want to be killed. Well, you heard me say it, Blackie. I've heard other bad jokes, too. Oh, this isn't a joke. What is it? New brand of humor? I'm dead serious, Blackie. Dead serious, huh? Well, if you are, you're going to be dead, period. That's exactly what I want to be. I'd like to ask you why, but I'm not going to. I'm afraid of the answer. Look, let's stop this kidding before I begin to think that I'm crazy, too. You are crazy if you think I'm going to let you protect me. Well, if that's the way you feel about it, I'm crazy if I try. So long, Wells. It was weird knowing you. Goodbye, Blackie. I'll be... Uh... I know exactly what you'll be if I don't help you, Well, Dead. But I don't think you really believe that. Oh, yes, I do. I know it's going to kill me, too. Who? <laughs> you don't think I'm stupid enough to tell you, do you? You stop them. That does it, Wells. It does what? That convinces me you're really serious about wanting to be killed. I was wondering how long it would take you to realize that. Well, I know it now. But what you don't know is you're going to get protection whether you like it or not. Oh. <laughs> I'm afraid I had to knock you out so your killers, when they come calling, wouldn't find you in. Come in. Hello, Faraday. I... Oh, hello, Sergeant Wilson. Where's the inspector? Home, Blackie. At least I think he is. Let me go. Oh, come on in, yeah. you. Who's your groggy-looking friend? Well, look, will you let His me His name is Jimmy Wells, and I want you to keep him under lock and key. What's he done, Blackie? Nothing, except he wants to make like a victim. Huh? Let me out of here. I want him to kill me, you understand? Why don't you let me alone? You've got no right to hold me here. Well, now, what do you know about that? I don't know anything about it, Sergeant, except he's been marked for execution by the underworld, and he's as happy about it as if he were in his right mind. He's really been put on the spot, eh? For a rub out, Sergeant. You better give him a nice, safe cell until I can get in touch with Faraday and find out what to do next. Well, I don't know, Blackie. Maybe I can... Uh, hold him in the next room. I'll answer that. Maybe Faraday. Okay, come on, Wells. You can't. Hold me. I'm on and shut up with you. Oh, shut up. Goodbye, Sergeant. Hello. Hello? Oh, hello, Faraday, old pal. This is Blackie. Now, this is all I need. Goodbye. Oh, don't say goodbye, Faraday. You can take more of me than this. What's the matter? Hmm? Why aren't you at your office today? Now, why are you in my office? It's none of your business why I'm not there. Where's Wilson? He's in the next room. Look, I picked up a guy named Jimmy Wells who's trying to get himself knocked off by an underworld mob. How do you know? I got a tip through my usual, unusual sources. This guy, Wells, doesn't want help, but we'd better give him protection before they give him the works. Now, what do you want me to do about it? Just want you to know that I want him locked up. No, you can't put that guy behind bars unless he asks for it. But hold him for a few minutes. I'll see what can be done. Okay. I was afraid when you weren't here that you might be sick. I am sick. Of you. Goodbye. (laughs) Goodbye. (laughs) Hey, Wilson, come on in here. Blakey, I... Hi, I just talked to... Hey, Wilson, where'd you get that swollen eye? That guy Wells gave it to me, Blakey. I got a black eye and he got away. Dorothy Wells? Yes, I am. I'm Walter Branch. May I come in? Why? 
I... Let's make up a mind for her, huh, Mr. Branch? I'm sure we're welcome, Tommy. We'll take up only a few minutes of your time, Mrs. Wells. Close the door, Tommy. Sure, Mr. Branch. Is your husband at home, Mrs. Wells? No, he's not. Do you know where he is? No, I don't. You're sure he isn't in hiding somewhere in this house? No. I don't know where he is. And even if I did, I wouldn't tell you. I know why you want to see him. You want to kill him. Oh, now, how can you say a thing like that, Mrs. Wells? Because you do want to kill him. That's what you're looking for him. You and this this gunman of yours. I go everywhere Mr. Branch goes, Mrs. Wells. And all Tommy and I want to do is talk to your husband. Are you sure we don't know where we can, uh, get in touch with him? I hope you never find him. Because I know what you'll do to him. Well, you do us an injustice, Mrs. Wells. All we want to do is talk, uh, business with your husband. But uh, since he isn't he here... He isn't here. Now, will you leave, both of you? I guess the lady doesn't want us here, Mr. Branch. Obviously not, Tommy. Mrs. Wells, when you see your husband... Tell him we're sorry he wasn't at home when we came to call. For if he'd been here, it would have saved a lot of trouble for everyone concerned. Uh, you keep an eye on that side of the street, Mary, and I'll do my best to watch this side. Well, don't you think you better watch where you're driving, Blackie? This isn't a country road. I'm watching, but if we do run into somebody, I hope it's Wells. We've been looking for him for three hours. Suppose this is the neighborhood where he hangs out. This can go on forever. It's only going to seem that long. Well, maybe we'd better give up. And sign Mr. Wells' death warrant? Oh, that doesn't sound like you. Well... Wells has a wife who might give us some information. That sounds like a shortcut to finding him. Or better still, maybe she knows who's trying to kill him. Well, that sounds like a much better way to keep Mr. Wells from being killed. Never mind finding him. Find his would-be killer. That brilliant piece of strategy has just occurred to me, too, Mary. Uh Uh-oh. just occurred to me I'm supposed to meet the superintendent of my building at my apartment. It's about redecorating. Well, I'll drop you off at your building and then go to see Mrs. Wells. Okay. Well, I hope she can tell you something. You know what she might tell me, Mary? What? That her husband is already dead. Yes, Blackie, I'm Dorothy Wells, Jim's wife. But I haven't seen him or heard from him since yesterday. Well, I saw him, Mrs. Wells. You did? But maybe I've seen him the last time. I know what you mean. He's going to be killed, isn't he? what I hear, and from people who usually know what they're talking about. Tell me something, Mrs. Wells. Why does your husband want to die? I don't know. Does he carry a large insurance policy? No, a very small one. As far as I know. I see. Then if he dies, he doesn't make you a rich woman, huh? No. Only an unhappy one, Blackie. Jim and I have had a wonderful life together. Even during all the months he's been gambling. Gambling and losing? Yes, and heavily. Losing and not paying? He hasn't been able to. We're not poor, but we're not rich, and Jim has lost thousands. I think you're telling me something that I want to know. Do you know whom he owes this money to? Yes, a man named Walter Branch. He's been here looking for Jim. And Blackie, I'd heard Jim talking on the phone to Mr. Branch a couple of nights ago and threatening to go to the police about something if he had to pay his debts. Uh Uh-huh. I think it was about marked cards or crooked gambling of some kind. Or something like that. Mrs. Wells, Walter Branch is looking for your husband, and I'm going out on a limb because I'm going to look for Branch. Faraday, your ears aren't ringing. That's your phone. I know it, Blackie. Yes? Inspector? Yes? We checked the files on Walter Branch. Huh? We broke up his last gambling joint on Lawrence Place six months ago. But there's a rumor he's opened up again in the house at 23 Maple Road. Thanks, Wilson. Thanks a lot. Yes, sir. Blackie, we have a tip. Branch is running a gambling joint at 23 Maple Road. Your department's really clicking, huh? Well, let's go see him. This isn't homicide, Blackie. It's out of my field. And it's going to be homicide if Branch gets to Wells before we get to Branch. What would you rather do? Solve a murder or prevent one? You know the answer to that. Come on, I'm ready. Wait, I'm not. 
think I'd better phone Mary and tell her that I might be a little late for our date tonight. For the first time, huh? <laughs> when was the last time you met Miss Wesley when you said you would? I don't know. My memory doesn't go back that far. Yeah, if you thought it'd make trouble for me, you'd be late to your own funeral. <laughs> of course, Faraday. I'd be the late Boston Blackie. Ha, <laughs> ha. You know, the more time you waste on that phone, the more time Branch has to get to Wells. Unless this is all a gag of yours. It's not a gag, Faraday. Except that Branch wants to gag Wells permanently. Mary doesn't answer. And maybe she's like me. She doesn't like to talk to you. Oh, there's no one like you, Faraday. You're the eighth wonder of the world. Uh, and speaking of wonders, I wonder where Mary is. She's certainly not at home. Come in. Oh, a message for you, Inspector Faraday. Oh, thanks, Wilson. Well, no use letting this phone ring anymore. What is this, Wilson? Where'd you get it? A man brought it to the desk a minute ago. Said some guy gave it to him and told him to deliver it to you. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. Looks like a letter, Faraday. Getting fan mail? Yeah, ever since I started the Down with Boston Blackie Club. <laughs> hey, look who signed this note, Jim Wells. I can't read the note the way you're holding it. What's it say, Inspector Faraday? What's it say, Sergeant? Look, it says, Inspector Faraday, leave me alone. Don't try to protect me. Because I have Mary Wesley in a hideout. And if the police or Boston Blackie come near me, she'll be killed. What? Then maybe I'll die in the electric chair. But at least I'll be able to die. Now, back to Boston Blackie. Jim Wells has been put on the spot by gamblers who apparently have reason to kill him. Boston Blackie and the police offer to protect the doomed man, but he refuses help and escapes. While Blackie is searching for his would-be killers, Wells abducts Blackie's friend, Mary Wesley, and threatens to kill her and go to the chair for murder if any attempt is made to rescue her. As we return to our story, Wells walks into a room where Mary is gagged and tied to a chair. Well, Miss Wesley, if I take that gag off your mouth, will you promise me not to scream? <laughs> all right, all right. I'll see if you can be trusted. <laughs> yeah. At least that must be more comfortable, huh? Yes. Yes, it is. Who are you? Well... Is my name Jim Wells? You're the man, Blackie, and I've been looking for. Uh huh. But you didn't find me because I was waiting for you at your apartment. But why? And why kidnap me and tie me up? As protection, Miss Wesley. Protection against protection. Well, you won't have much protection against anything when Blackie finds me. Oh, here. I don't think he wants to find you, Miss Wesley, because if he does, he'll find you dead. Dead? Very. You see, I want to die, and I don't want Blackie or the police to interfere. Oh, oh I'm not crazy, Miss Wesley. You see, I have a reason for wanting to die. And uh, I'll murder you to do it if I have to. Your only hope is that I don't have to. Are you comfortable? Oh, very comfortable. These ropes aren't cutting into my wrist more than an inch or two. If your friend Blackie shows up, something else will be cutting your throat. Couldn't you think of some more unpleasant way to kill me? I've already thought of it, Miss Wesley. Cutting your throat was merely an expression. Hmm. Didn't you wonder what I'd been fixing up with the door there? No, I've been too busy wondering about you. Well, let me tell you what I've done. I've tied a rifle to the table there. And I ran a string from the trigger to the door. Oh. Ah, you begin to see, do you? The string is tied to the doorknob, and the door opens out. When the door is open, the string will be pulled tight, <laughs> and the gun will fire. Fine. But you don't think I'm going to sit right here in this spot? Oh, now? I forgot to tell you, Miss Wesley, oh. the chair you're sitting in is fastened to the floor. You think of everything, don't you? You're so clever, Mr. Wells. Well, if I hear voices outside... I also oh. forgot to tell you that I'm putting a oh. gag back over your mouth. There. Good and tight. Goodbye, Miss Wesley. I'm going out the back way. And uh, if I don't die at the hands of the killers pretty soon... You'll die at the hands of Boston Blackie when he opens that door. You'd better 
better step aside, Faraday. I want to get this visit to Branch over with so I can go find Mary. Branch and his men probably know a cop when they see one. You think they don't know you too, Blanky? Well, they might let me in if they think I'm alone. I hope that note you got threatening Mary was a gag. Believe me, I hope that. Uh Uh-oh. Someone's coming. Duck to one side. I'll stay on this side so I can give you a hand if we have to shove our way in. Yeah? I'd like to see Walter Branch. Who are you? Just a guy from out of town looking for some action. And you won't find it here. The boys said I would. What boys? Just the boys. Let me in. Just a minute. Come on in. But no funny stuff, because I got a gun on you. No, no funny stuff. But I'm bringing a funny friend. Come on in, Faraday. <laughs> no, you don't. Well, you bet. <clears throat> We're in, Faraday. And he's out. Yeah, but what are we in for? This guy's not alone. And he's not out anymore, either. He's coming, uh, too. He's taking us to Branch, huh? If he doesn't, I'll use a little more persuasion. Get up. You went fast. What's with you? What do you want? We want to see Branch. What for? We'll tell that to him. Come on. Take us in to see him. Okay. This way. And this better be the right way, too. These guys are as meek as babies when you take their guns away from them, Blinky, huh? This is the boss's office right here. It better be. Come in. A couple of guys to see you, Mr. Branch. To see me? Well, come in, gentlemen. Come in. Thanks. Okay. Guns? What's the meaning of guns? We had to use pistols instead of passes, Branch. This is Inspector Faraday, and I'm Boston Blackie. Hello, Inspector Faraday. Hello. Oh, uh, sit down. Tommy, that'll be all. Sure, Mr. Branch. You may put your guns away, gentlemen. I'm not armed. But your assistants are. We'll play safe. As you wish. Uh, to what do I owe the doubtful honor of this visit? You ought to know why we're here. It's about Jim Wells. Oh, well. Now, don't say you've never heard of him. Oh, no, I know the man well, very well. Mm, so well, you want to kill him, don't you? I have every reason in the world to want him dead, Inspector Faraday, but I don't believe in murder. The uh, consequences to the killer are equally fatal. I have no intention whatsoever of having Wells eliminated. Though, believe me, I'd be quite elated if he'd drop dead. <laughs> Blackie's apartment? Yes, and this is Blackie. Hello, Blackie. This is Jim Wells. Wells, where's Mary? Don't get inside it, Blackie. She's all right. In fact, I phoned to tell you where she is so you can go get her. Where is she? She's waiting for you in the living room of a house on Cherry Street, number 10 Cherry Street. Number 10 Cherry Street, huh? Yeah. Why are you telling me this? Well, she's a friend of yours. You probably was worried about her. I sure am. And if anything's happened to her, Wells, you really better go out and get yourself killed. Well, if the boys were right about it, Mr. Branch, Wells is in this house here. This is number 10 Cherry Street. Let's go up and have a look, Tommy. Sure. I'll get out on your side. Okay. Your gun ready? Always ready, Mr. Branch. Anyhow, Wells doesn't carry a rod. Well, have yours handy just the same. We don't want to take any chances. Okay. Hey. Looks like there's a note tacked up on the front door. It is a note. I guess Wells knows he was spotted here and it's scrammed, huh? The note isn't signed, Tommy, but look what it says. Well, I'll be it. It says, don't open this door, Blackie, or you'll kill Mary Wesley. Now, how about that? (laughs) I hope I (laughs) fist. Hey, Mr. Branch, aren't you going to leave that note there for Blackie? Why should I? Well, Mr. Branch, if Blackie comes here and opens his door, he'll kill it. That's exactly what I want him to do, Tommy. And that's what he'll do. Exactly. Wait a minute, who's there? Me, Tommy, Jimmy Wells. Okay, open. 
Hello, Tommy. Hi, Well, Come on in. Thanks. Well, everything all set? What do you mean, all set, Well, You mean about me killing you on orders from Mr. Branch? <laughs> oh, brother, what a setup. <laughs> Everybody in town has an idea I want to die. <laughs> you got instructions to kill me, and you're going to be paid to kill me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what nobody knows is that it's somebody else's body you're going to show Branch while uh, I fade out of town. <laughs> Uh, it sounds good to you, huh? Only way I know how to beat that branch guy. He'd get me no matter what protection I had or how long he had to wait or where I ran away to. Lucky I found out you was working for him and that you'd listen to reason. And, uh, dough. Sure. Lucky for you. Well, we better make this good, huh? Yeah, Boston Blackie was on my trail, but I fixed a gimmick with the door and his girl so he'll be hours trying to get her out without killing her. That'll keep him away until we're finished. I guess it will. You, uh, ready to go, Wells? Yeah, sure. Any... T- Hey, Tommy, that gun. Put it down. You, you and I are pals. You, you were going to be paid not to kill me. I was supposed to you give you... You said you was ready to go, didn't you? Oh. Uh. Hi, Mr. Branch. Well, there he is. Yes, so I see. I'm delighted you came to me with Will's story about wanting to bribe you, Tommy. I'm delighted that Boston Blackie is about to open a door that will kill his girlfriend. And I'm delighted with your loyalty. Here's 10 Cherry Street, Faraday. Unless Wells was lying, there he's in there. Come on. Okay. Hey, take it easy, Blackie. If Wells is on the level, he may be in that house waiting to take a shot at us. I don't think he's anywhere around, Faraday, because we have somebody to grab him on now. Let's try the front door. I have a hunch Miss Wesley isn't even here. This is just a gag of Wells to keep us away from him so he can get himself killed. You might be right, Inspector. But if Mary is here, he's accomplished the same purpose. We're going to go in there and search the house for her. I know what happens now. I have to turn my back while you genius your way through a locked door. How'd you guess? Turn around. How do you do it, Blake? Well, with locks like this, I first find a kind of a key that might open the lock. Yeah, and then? And then what I do is so tricky I can't understand it myself. Oh, well, fine. But I can't unlock this door, Faraday. Why not? If you're such a genius. Because a guy doesn't have to be a genius to unlock a door that isn't locked. Oh, very funny. Come on, let's go in. But wait a minute, Faraday. If Mary's just beyond this door and it isn't locked... It's because somebody wants us to open it. Well, for just once, let's do what somebody wants. Oh, no, Faraday. Something tells me we'd better not. Let's work on this window here and get in that way. The shade's down so we can't see inside, but I've got a little piece of steel that'll get us inside. Stand back while I do a little prying. That's you, always prying. Blackie, look, Mary's tied to that chair. Faraday, that isn't always tied. Look at that gun and the string running to the front door. Come on in this window with me. Hold everything, Mary. The Marines have arrived. I'll take care of the string. Sit still, Mary. I'll get this gag off your mouth. There we are. Oh, Blackie. Glad you didn't open the front door. So am I, Mary. Now all I've got to do is close this case. Boston Blackie, let me in, Tommy. Oh, sure, sure, Blackie, just a minute. Come on in. Thanks. You seem almost glad to see me. Why not? I got nothing against you, neither is the boss. You want to see him? Not just now, Tommy. I think you're the man that I want to see. What for? The police just found Jim Wells' body, and he didn't drop dead. Not too bad. Who killed him, Tommy? I don't know why you ask me. But I did ask you, and I expect an answer. I expect you do. Answer me, or you'll get something you don't expect. Such as what? Such as this. <coughs> you want some more? Oh, but you do. Oh, yeah. Punk. Oh. Well, I knocked you out, Tommy. Again. Now, maybe, when you wake up, you'll feel like telling me who knocked Wells off. <laughs> Yeah, 
yeah, Inspector Faraday. I killed Wells. I had to when Mr. Branch walked in a room. What do you mean you had to, Tommy? I think he means he was hired to do the job, and Branch is the one who hired him. It's a good thing we grabbed Branch, too. That's right, Blackie. But Wells made a deal with me. He gave me a lot of dough, and we were going to fix it so it looked like he got knocked off. Well, that explains why Wells was so unconcerned about being killed and why he didn't want protection. He was going to disappear with everybody thinking he was dead. Yeah, but it doesn't explain why he put Miss Wesley in a spot where she might have been killed. I can set you straight on that, Inspector Faraday. Wells left a note on the door warning Blackie not to open it. But Mr. Branch took the note and tore it up. He wanted Blackie to open that door and kill Mary Wesley. He did, did he? Well, after the way you talk, Faraday is about to open a door for him. A little green door. In the death house at State Prison. <laughs> I don't care for nothing. Okay with me, you don't either, eh? I have more for myself. Now, what'd you come to see me about, Mr. Williams? I'd like to do business with you. You know what business I'm in? Well, I'm pretty sure. No, I don't be too sure. If you know what I mean. I know your reputation, Mr. Lynch, and I've made thorough inquiries to make sure that you were the man I want. Man inquiries, huh? Yeah. You must want me off of bad. It's dangerous to ask questions around here. Especially about me. I do want something. And bad. Now, a very smart thing to say, Mr. Williams. The more you want it, the higher the price. Well, I'll pay anything within reason. And I've been known to be reasonable, but I always get what I want. If you know what I mean. Now, what can I do for you? I have an Aunt Sarah, a very rich old woman, and she's about to die. Uh-huh. If she dies the way I think she's going to die, I want you to say that I was with you at the time of her death. Well, it'll cost you a thousand dollars. No, no, that's all right. Okay, when your aunt kicks off... I'll say you were right here with me when you broke the bed. Personally, I don't care where you'll actually be, but why do you want the alibi, Mr. Williams? <laughs> why do you think? Me? Yeah. I think if I don't alibi for you, you'll go to the chair for murder. <laughs> And now on to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friends. Hello? Hello, is uh, Miss Mary Wesley there? You're speaking. Uh, Miss Wesley... This is Sarah Williams. Who? Sarah Williams. Oh? You don't know me, and I only know of you, but I need your help. My help? Well, in a way, I, I really want Boston Blackie, but I haven't been able to reach him at his apartment, and I, I thought you might know where he is. Well, as a matter of fact, he's on his way over here. Oh, wonderful. I have to see him right away. It's urgent, Miss Wesley. My life's in danger, and only Boston Blackie can help me. Well, what you ought to do is call the police. Oh, no, no, I... I, I can't. There are too many things I don't dare tell them. Please, Miss Wesley, tell Boston Blackie to come here right away. The, the address is 18 Elm Street. 18 Elm Street. All right, yes. I'll tell him. Uh, thank you. Uh, how soon will he be here? Well, I'll meet him down in the lobby and we'll come right out. We'll be there in half an hour at the latest. Oh, make it sooner if you can. But we'll try. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye and hurry. Oh, thank heaven. Mary, but obviously not fast enough. Well, it wouldn't have made any difference, Blackie. From the look of things, she was shot just after she hung up the phone. And the killer dropped the gun in her hand afterward. Uh-huh. Well, we might as well keep on looking around for clues until Faraday gets here. And that should be any minute now. Yeah. When I phoned, he said he was leaving right away. Someone wanted to make Mrs. Williams' death look like suicide, Blackie. And did a pretty good job of it, too. Mrs. Williams was shot from close range. That means she was killed by someone she knew and probably trusted. Well, she said on the phone that she was afraid, but she didn't say whom she was afraid of. Too bad she didn't. Yeah. Well, as I see it. 
The killer could have come up behind her and shot her just as she hung up the telephone Hi, after... Hi, Sarah. Tra- Uh-oh. Hi, Sarah. Sounds as if we have company. Hi, Sarah. I wonder if you could do me... Hello? Oh, who are you? Um, I'm uh, Mary Wesley, and this is Boston Blackie. How do you do? How do you do? Sue Williams, and Sarah's niece. I... Oh, what's happened, Aunt Sarah? And Jerry, what... She's dead, Miss Williams. Dead? Yes, and murdered. What? And Sarah... I might have known. I knew he'd do it. I'm telling you he'd do it, too. Uh, who's this he you both knew so much about? Robert, my cousin. He knew she was sick and dying, but he couldn't wait a few more months. He had to kill her. You say Robert killed her? Why? To get her money. Aunt Sarah was rich, and my cousin and I were her only heirs. He killed her. I knew he did. Well, we don't yet, but I... Blackie, it's uh, Inspector Faraday. As if I couldn't tell. Hello, Inspector. You're just in time to hear me tell you who killed Mrs. Williams and why. Yeah, maybe I ought to go out and come in again in five minutes. You'll have the guy all ready to be locked up. I'll make it six minutes. I hate to rush. I'll rush you. I'll rush you right out of here if you interfere with me in this case. Who's this girl? Uh, me, Inspector? Me, Inspector. No, not you, Miss Wesley. This girl here. Who are you? I'm Sue Williams. The dead woman's niece. She says her cousin Robert killed her aunt. I've been collecting information for you, Inspector. Yeah, you'd be more at home collecting rubbish. Oh, Inspector. Uh, Miss Williams, what makes you think your cousin killed your aunt? Because he hated her and she hated him. And he was afraid she was going to change her will and cut him off before she died. It seems, Inspector, that Mrs. Williams was scheduled to die from an illness within a few months and that Cousin Robert couldn't wait. Yeah, well, I couldn't wait either to get Cousin Robert under arrest. Give me a description of Miss Williams. I'll have this case closed in an hour. <laughs> Darling, come in. Are you all right, Sue? I, I mean, I just heard about your Aunt Sarah over the radio. Have they caught Robert yet? No, but they will any minute now. There's an alarm out for him. I hope they get to him before he gets to you. Said on the radio, you practically accused him of killing your aunt. I told the truth, Frank. Aunt Sarah always was afraid of him. Well, you'd better come over to my place and stay with my family until we're sure Robert's in jail. No, no. If he killed Aunt Sarah, he'll kill you, too. I'm not afraid of him, Frank. I'll stay right here. Darling, you know this will hold up our wedding for a while. I don't think it'd be smart for us to marry so soon after... You fall heir to so much money? Well, it wouldn't look like this. Oh, what do we care? It's Robert. The police are after him. Uh-oh. Expecting anyone? No. It's probably the police, though. I won't say anything about our getting married. Well, no, not right now. Hello, Sue. Robert! Sue, the cops all over town are looking for me. Yes, I know. You've got to tell them I didn't kill Aunt Sarah. You've got to... Oh, hello, Frank. I guess I make a little change in your plans, eh, Robert? Uh, what do you mean? Frank and I both know who killed Aunt Sarah. In fact, I told the police you were the one who killed her. Sue, that's what I came to see you about. You know that's not true. I didn't kill her. I was with Bill Wentz when Aunt Sarah was killed. Ask him. Go on down to his place and ask him. I don't know him, Robert. And I'm not interested in finding out anything about where you say you were. You better beat it, Robert. We'll turn you into the police. Frank, you have to believe me. I was with Bill Wentz in his house on Barton Road. Call him up or go on down to see him. He'll tell you I was there. Why don't you tell that to the police? Well, they may not give me a chance to talk. I'm afraid to get myself up. Robert, you better leave. And that means now. You're against me, both of you. Everyone's against me. We don't like murderers, Robert. We're giving you a break, letting you get out. Now, Scram. All right, I'll beat it. But I'll get even with you for this. I'll get even with both of you. Get out of here before I kill you. Never mind. Don't Don't rush stuff, Frank. You two won't hide me. I'll keep away from the police some other way. But after the heat's off, you two better keep away from me. Oh, you won't have a walnut, Miss Williams? Miss Elaine? No, thank you, Mr. Lynch. All Frank and I want to know is... Was my cousin Robert with you at 7.30 tonight? Robert? Robert yes. Williams. Tall, good-looking fellow. His Aunt Sarah was murdered between 7.30 and 8 this evening. He says he was with you during that time. He so was. That's a lie. I don't tell lies, if you know what I mean. How much did Robert pay you to have you say he was with you tonight? That's my business, not yours, Mr. Lane. If you know what I mean. Frank, this man is lying. I know he is. I know he is, too. But maybe this will crack him the way he cracked those walnuts. No, Frank, don't hit him again. He might have... I don't take that from anybody very often, Mr. Lane, if you know what Come I on, mean. Come let's get out of here. Okay. Maybe there's another way to get the truth out of this guy. It took me three hours of searching to find you, Williams, but now you're on your way to where you belong, police headquarters. Blackie, you didn't find me. Yeah. I was waiting in front of your apartment house just so you could spot me. I thought you'd believe me. You'll give me a chance to prove I was with Bill Lynch when my Aunt Sarah was killed. You'll have plenty of chance to prove it in Saturday's office. Come on, out this way. All right. You're so innocent, Williams. Why have you been hiding from the police? Because I don't know what the police will do. I'm going to have some time to think before I gave myself up. With an alibi like yours, why do you have to think? We'll go in Saturday's private door right here. 
Hello, Friday. Look what I have. Oh, Blackie, get out of here. I don't want it. And that guy with you looks like Williams. Well, I don't know what reason there could be for that, except that he is Williams. Robert Williams. Where'd you find him? In front of my building. That's right. After I searched 50 hiding places. I'm familiar with most of the hiding places in this time, you know. Uh, someday maybe you'll visit them all and get lost in them, so you won't bother me. I know bother, really. Yeah, you're no bargain either. Stop revving me. After all, I brought in Williams. Even though he has an alibi, he says... I didn't kill my Aunt Sarah, Inspector Faraday. That's what they all say. Your aunt was killed between 7.30 and 8 o'clock this evening. We know that because she talked on the phone with Miss Wesley at 7.30, and at 8, Miss Wesley and Blanky here found her body. Where were you at that time? With Bill Lynch in his home. Yes? Yeah? I was there from 7 till a little after 9. You were with Bill Lynch, were you? Yeah, and you can go and ask him if you want him. He lives on Barton Road. He has a phone if you'd rather call him. Is Bill Lynch the only one you were with at that time? Yes. He's your aunt, huh? Yes. All I have to do is ask Bill Lynch, and he'll prove to me he didn't kill your aunt. That's right. Well, instead of talking about it, Friday, why don't you call up Lynch, or let's go out and see him? Well, Matt, we'll go out to see him. Just like that. Sure, why not? Because where he is, there's no phone. It'll take a long time to find out his current address. Bill Lynch was murdered an hour ago. And now, back to Boston Blackie. Robert Williams, fearing that he will be charged with murder if his Aunt Sarah is killed, pays Bill Lynch $1,000 to tell police that he and Williams were together if and when Aunt Sarah is killed. Aunt Sarah is killed. And another cousin, Sue Williams, accuses Robert of the crime. Robert, picked up by Blackie several hours later, insists he was with Lynch. When Blackie suggests that they ask Lynch about it, Faraday informs him that Lynch has been killed. As we return to our story, Blackie is talking to Robert in his cell. Blackie, I sent for you because you're my only hope now that Bill Lynch is dead. You need more than me for hope, William. If Lynch was the only person who could prove where you were when your aunt was killed, you're out of luck and in the jam. But you can help me. You've helped others. I help people who deserve help, William. I didn't kill Aunt Sarah. Now, believe me. In fact, I'll tell you something. Well, it's about time. Is this going to be the truth? Yes, it is. I paid Bill Lynch a thousand dollars to say I was with him when Aunt Sarah was killed. How did you know when she'd be killed? I didn't know. I had no idea. The arrangement was for Bill to be ready to establish an alibi for me no matter when Aunt Sarah died. Why did you need an alibi? Because Aunt Sarah hated me. It would have been difficult for her to cut me out of her will because of the terms under which she got the money from her husband. But she could send me to prison for murder no matter who killed her or when. You know what you're saying, don't you? You're saying your Aunt Sarah knew she might be murdered and wanted you framed for that murder. That's right. That's why she tried to reach you through Miss Westbury. She always said she'd find some way to keep me from getting her money when she died. Mm-hmm. Look, Aunt Sarah was dying, Blackie. She had only a few months to live, maybe only a few weeks. I knew that, so why should I kill her? All right. Let's suppose you didn't kill her. Let's just suppose. Uh, who might have killed her? Miss mm, Sue. She knew Aunt Sarah had told people she was afraid that I'd kill her. You might have done it knowing I'd be blamed. Well, that makes some sense. She wouldn't waste any time accusing you of killing your aunt. But you can't prove you were with Bill Lynch at the time of your aunt's death. By the way, do you have any idea who might have killed Lynch? No, not this late. Then I got news for you. I'm going to find out, so that'll be wonderful. I hope you do. Do you think it'll be wonderful if I do? I sure. I wonder if you do. <laughs> Yes, Blackie. I was Sarah Williams' doctor. I have been for 20 years. Then you're just the man I want to see, Dr. James. Oh, this is Miss Wesley. How do you do? How do you do, Dr. James? Dr. James, Mrs. Williams died of a bullet in the head. But was she really dying of an incurable illness? Yes, Blackie. At the outside, she had three or four months to live. She might not have lasted another week. Uh, who knew that, Doctor? Did her nephew, Robert? Oh, yes. I told Robert about it before I told Mrs. Williams. Uh-huh. So, Robert would have been a fool to kill her, don't you think? I'd say so. Well, uh, what about Mrs. Williams' only other relative, Sue? Oh, I don't think either one of them killed her. <laughs> but then, I'm a doctor, not a detective. <laughs> well, I'm not a detective either, Dr. James. Just a fellow who likes to see the right guy get what's coming to him for going wrong. Well, thanks a lot. You may hear from me again, Doctor. Come on, Mary. Uh, goodbye, Blackie. Miss Wesley. Oh, goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye. Well, Blackie, that accomplished a lot of nothing, didn't it? It accomplished more than you think, Mary. It opens up three possibilities. One, that Robert's aunt killed herself. Killed herself? Well, why would you do that? Not leave a note saying so. Because you hated Robert and wanted him to go to the chair for murder. That could account for a calling you. 
She had nothing to lose. She was dying anyway. Yeah, that's right. Well, what are the other possibilities? That um, Sue and the boyfriend killed her there, or that Robert did? Yes. Well, then are there any about who killed Bill Lynch? How many people don't think, how was he killed? It wasn't mentioned in any of the papers. Yeah, Faraday decided to withhold that from the papers. He thinks it might turn out to be helpful, and he may be right. Well, who do you think killed Bill Lynch? It wasn't Robert, apparently. Lynch is his alibi. If Lynch were alive right now, Williams wouldn't be in jail. I wonder if I'm thinking the same thing you are. That whoever wanted Robert to go to the chair killed Bill Lynch, huh? Uh-huh. And you're thinking that someone else is... As the one person who benefits by having Robert out of the way. Who will it? Makes sense, Mary. A lot of sense. I'll drop you off to your apartment and see you later. Right now, I'm going to see Faraday about Sue. <laughs> I thought I'd better come down and see you, Inspector Barney. I... Just a minute, Lane. Come in. Hello, Barney. What do you want, Blanky? Same thing you want, the killer of Van Sarah and Bill Lynch. Uh, who's this guy? He's somebody I invited into my office, which is more than I can say to you. Barney, your memory's so bad. I heard you say come in so clearly when I knocked on that door. I didn't know it was you, Dope. You don't know something, and I'm a dope. Well, maybe you're all right. Uh, Blanky, are you going to get out of here? No. That's what I thought. Well, in that case, sit down and be quiet. Thanks, Tell me, is this guy mixed up in the Williams case? No, you're the only one mixed up in it. This is Frank Lane. He oh. and Sue Williams are engaged to be married. He's been telling me about Robert. Uh, Lane, this is Boston Blackie. How do you do? How are you, Lane? Uh, Lane, uh, if you're saying Robert killed his aunt, maybe you don't know what you're talking about. I know he had every reason to it. His aunt made his life miserable. Look, uh, we'll go into that later. You know, it's possible that Aunt Sarah killed herself. What? Uh, she was dying Friday and knew it. And here's something that's even more interesting. Who do you think killed Phil Lynch? Uh, let me see. Uh, the, the ghost of Aunt Sarah, I suppose. No, Sue Williams. What? Sue Williams? And why? To ruin Robert's alibi and send him to the chair. Sue didn't kill anyone. She gets all the money if Robert goes to the chair. And she knew about Bill Lynch, didn't she? Yes, she did. Robert told her. Then she could have killed Lynch or you could. I could. Who knows where Sue was when Lynch was killed? I don't know when Lynch was killed. Sometime last night. Can you account for Sue's whereabouts last night? Well, see, I... I was at her house about 9 o'clock when Robert dropped in. After Robert left, I took Sue to the movie. Went for something to eat. Then I took her home about 1 o'clock. Then you know where Sue was from 9 until about 1. That's right. I was with her. Saturday? When was Lynch killed? At 10 o'clock last night. Well, is there any other crazy idea you want to talk about before I throw you out of here? Exactly what to say when you phone Frank Lane, don't you, Mary? Uh, uh, yes, yes, Frank, I think so. Oh, I have to pick work. I'm on the right track at will. See, Williams isn't home, so she's probably at Lane's house. Friday ought to be there, too. Yeah. He doesn't make too much of my theory, but he's too smart a cop to let any possibility go by without looking into it. Oh, Hello? Hello. Is this Frank Lane? Yes. I want to give you a little tip, mister. Tip about what? Can you talk? Sure. Who is this? Don't matter, man, who this is. Look, either tell me who you are or I'll hang up. I don't like guessing games, and I'm busy. I've got no time for nonsense. What do you want? Who are you? I'm going to tell you my name. And I'll tell you who I am. I'm Bill Lynch's girl. So what? So I lost my boyfriend, and I don't like it. Well, I, I'm sorry about that, but I, I don't know why you're talking to me about it. I'm telling you about it because I know who it was that murdered Bill. And you know her, too. Her? Huh? What do you mean? You know what I mean. And who I mean. I saw her coming out of Bill's house just before he was found dead. It was your little girlfriend, Susie. Yeah? Take care of me with some dough, Lane. Or the cops will hear about it. Are you crazy? I'm telling you what I saw. And you must be seeing things. Goodbye. Hey, Sue. Sue. I didn't hear from in the library. I just had the most interesting telephone conversation. Frank, who was it? A girl who said she was Bill Lynch's sweetheart. Huh? Oh? And that's what she told me. Oh. But she saw you come out of Bill Lynch's house last night just before he was found murdered. She couldn't have. I wonder just whose bright idea that was. I don't know. What did you say to her? What could I say? Nothing. You were with me when Lynch was killed, and I know it. I think I know what the scheme is. Someone thinks you killed Lynch to destroy Robert's alibi and that you asked me to alibi for you. You know I just wish you fight. Yeah, he knows you're with him. And I know it, too. Who said to Faraday? That's me. Only I'm not very proud of myself for being here. That was Blackie's girlfriend on the telephone just now, trying to trick you two. 
And I was supposed to wait here in time to hear one of you, or both of you implicate yourselves. That was a pretty low trick. Not if either of you was a killer, Lane. There's no trick that blows that turns up a murderer. Don't forget that. What does that mean? It means that if either of you knows anything about the murder of your Aunt Lynch, I'm going to find it out if it takes years, and all the tricks in the book. Inspector. What? I've got a confession. Who? I, I, I've got a confession to make. You didn't kill your aunt, did you? No. Neither did you, Frank. And neither did my cousin Robert. Keep talking. It, it was a terrible thing to do, but I did it. I let Robert be suspected in the death of my aunt, even though I knew she committed suicide. I wanted Robert to be accused of killing her, but he didn't kill her. How do you know? Because I saw her kill herself. I just opened the door to her room when I saw her do it. In front of you? Her back was to the door, Frank. She didn't see me. And I didn't tell the police because I wanted them to find Robert and blame him. Frank and I did go to see him. But he was alive when we... When we left it. Oh, Frank, I don't know what... Well, Blackie's phone called it some good, anyhow. At least it told me how your Sarah died. Now to find out who killed Lynch. Blackie, this is one time you're welcome in my office. Because this time I can laugh right in your face. I know all about it, Friday. You told me over the phone. Who didn't kill Bill Lynch and nobody killed Sarah Williams. She killed herself. I mentioned that possibility to you, remember? Well, and I'm still going to get the last laugh here anyway. Have you sent for Williams? Yeah, only because you asked for it. And it's the last thing you're going to ask for in this case that I'm going to do. Thank you. Very much. Uh, don't take any bows on your trick phone call. Might have found out sooner or later that Mrs. Williams was a suicide. Maybe. The real proof was what Sue Williams saw, you know. Come on. Come in, Williams. Oh, you sent for me, Inspector? Yeah. Williams, you're in luck, huh? Your cousin Sue has just admitted that Aunt Sarah knew she wasn't going to live much longer and killed herself. What? And that Sue kept quiet because she wanted you to be accused of murder. Well, that's a fine thing she did. <laughs> well, everybody happy? Can I go? No, 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 no. I'm still not happy. I don't know who killed Bill Lynch. I do, Fanny. You do? Who? Oh, the same guy who didn't kill his Aunt Sarah. Williams here. You crazy Blackie. Would I kill my own alibi? Yes, I think you would. Now, Blackie, you're out of your mind. Lynch was the only hope Williams had for proving he wasn't a murderer. That's right, Fanny. But Lynch thought Williams had really killed his aunt. And saw a way to make more money from the deal. Maybe blackmail our friend here for the rest of his life. Uh, Lynch, Lynch was the kind who tried that, all right. Williams, uh, you weren't really with Lynch when your aunt was killed, were you? As a matter of fact, I was. I don't think you were. I think you went to see Lynch later and he tried to hold you up for some more money. You fought and killed him. I didn't kill him. I couldn't afford to, no matter what it cost me. He was my alibi. The only proof I had that I didn't kill my aunt. And a man doesn't kill his alibi, huh? You think he does. I'd have gone to the chair if you hadn't found out Aunt Sarah killed herself. Now, isn't that true? Maybe. But I've done a little research on you, William. I know you're a crack shot. The top marksman on your college rifle team. Lynch called you saying he wanted more money or else. His testimony that you tried to bribe him would be very dangerous to you. You went down there, opened the door, and before he could say anything, shot him down. Well, that's fine. Lynch did phone and say that he thought you'd killed your aunt, didn't he? Yes. He did say he wanted more money, didn't he? Yes. You did go down there, stand in the doorway, and shoot him, didn't you? No, I didn't. You know I didn't, because Lynch wasn't shot. He was stabbed in the back. He was what? Nothing. I Friday. Didn't. Who knew how Lynch was killed? Nobody. I kept that information out of the papers. Just hoping for something like this, Frankie. Lynch was stabbed to death by a knife in the back. Hey, Williams, make a break. The only thing here. <laughs> well, Friday. We're partners in this case. You kept something out of the papers, and I got everything out of Williams.
name, Mr. Peterson? Joe. Joe Crane. Oh, just a minute. Come in, quick. It's okay, Mr. Peterson. There's nobody on the street. Nobody saw me. You sure no one saw you? Ah, yeah, I'm sure. I hope you're right. You're right on time. It's exactly five o'clock. Well, you hired me for five in the afternoon, so here I am at five sharp. Want to get started right away? Yes, the sooner we get it over, the better. There's the rope and something to gag me with. You can tie me to this chair here. Okay. You just sit down and take it easy, Mr. Peterson. Yeah. It'll all be over before you... You know it. All right. Uh, Tommy couldn't tight, Joe. I want this to look like the real thing. Uh-huh. All right, I'm doing just that. Uh-huh. Ropes feel tight, don't they? Oh, so they do. Well, don't worry, then, Mr. Peterson. This job will look McCoy enough to fool the smartest cops in town. Uh-huh. 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 But you're tied in that chair so tight, you're practically part of it. <laughs> All right, which room's your wife in? That one right there. Now put the gag on me and kill her in a hurry, will you? You leave everything to me, Mr. Peterson. Uh-huh. Gag on good and tight? Uh-huh. Oh, I guess it's on good enough. That's the door to your wife's room right there, huh? Uh-huh. Okay. Hey, Mrs. Peterson. Yes? Come on out here. Who is it? It's me, Joe. Joe Crane. Oh, what do you want? What the... What have you done to Arnold? Nothing he didn't want me to do. What are you talking about? Just this. He hired me to come in and tie him up and gag him. What on earth for? So that then I could kill you. He'd have an alibi. Oh, no. No, huh? Well, that's what you think. His husband of yours is no good. I'm beginning to believe that. Well, in that case, stick around and, uh... Watch me kill him. You might have some fun. You're not going to kill him. You better not make any bets on things you say. I never saw a woman so wrong in my life. Don't kill him. Please don't kill him. (laughs) How do you like that? A guy hires me to kill his wife. She begs me not to knock him off. I don't want you to bother. Huh? Leave him to me. I'll take care of him myself. And now meet Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. Blackie, I've come to see you because I'm in terrible... I know what you're in, Mr. Smith. Terrible trouble. But uh, take my advice instead of my help and go to the police, will you? Do the police lend money to strangers? No, neither do I. Is that what you want from me, money? Money or help? Of the two, I prefer giving you help. But if it's money you want, why don't you go to a bank? I can't. Why not? Well, it's like this. Yeah? I owe Arnold Peterson $50,000. Now, if I could go to a bank and get a loan for my business, I'd be able to pay Peterson back within six or eight months. Uh Uh-huh. But Peterson wants his money right now. Why? Well, because he knows I can't pay him right now. And if I go to a bank for the money, he'll block the loan. That doesn't make any sense, Mr. Smith. Peterson wants his 50000 He ought to let you borrow it. Well, if all he wanted was his 50000 he'd wait a few months for it. What he really wants is to ruin me and put me out of business. That's why he's demanding immediate payment of the money I owe him. That's why he'll block any loan I try to get from a bank or a finance company. Well, what do you want me to do about it? Well, either lend me the money or try to persuade Peterson to give me time. Oh, Blackie Peterson's made my life miserable ever since we had a run-in in our early days. I still don't see what I can do. I haven't the kind of money you Will need, you and I... see Peterson and talk to him and try to reason with him? Well, I'm busy on another matter right now, but, uh, can I call him later? What's his phone number? Uh, Eastern 99898. Wait a minute, I'll write that down. Eastern 99898. Eight, eight. All right. I'll call him in an hour or so and then get in touch with you by phone and let you know what happened. Will you be home? Yes, and I have a phone and I'll be waiting for your call. Bye. All right, Smith. Goodbye and be a good boy. Homicide, Faraday speaking. Inspector Faraday? Yes, Inspector Faraday. Inspector, this is a friend. Well, what do you want, Friend? Nothing at all. I just want to give you a little tip. Go ahead, I'm listening. Good idea, Inspector. This is a friendly little tip. Yeah, I know, from a friend. You said that. Now, what's on your mind? Listen. 
Killer Joe Crane's in town, Inspector. Just got in. You know what that means, don't you? Yeah, I know exactly what that means. When Joe Crane comes to town, a murder comes right after. Anybody yet? Well, Arnold Peterson, if you want something to see. <laughs> you don't mind a visit from your old friend Bill Smith, do you, Arnold? <laughs> I can't understand what you're saying. Not a word behind that gag. Hey, wait a minute, I'll take it off. <laughs> What happened here, Arnold? This house is a mess, and where's your, where's your wife? Oh. There. You feel good with the gag off? Hey. Thanks a lot, Bill. You want to know where my wife is? Yes. That double-crosser female ran off and left me. Well, and tied you up first? No. She had help in that department. Untie me, will you, Bill? Why, sure. I'm sure glad you came along. Might have sat in this chair till I starved to death. Well, that would be an unpleasant way to die, wouldn't it? Is there a way that's pleasant? <laughs> Untie me, will you? I, uh... I'm not sure I will, Arnold. I just got an idea. Hey, what are you talking about? Not what I came here to talk about. The money I owe you, I didn't expect to find you tied to a chair, the house in a mess, and Sally gone. Look, will you untie these ropes? And... No, Arnold, I won't. I've just had a wonderful idea. Know what this is, Arnold? Put that gun away, you fool. I will after I've used it on you. No, Bill. Don't, don't be an idiot. Nobody ever gets away with murder. But I'm not a nobody, Arnold, and I've just had an idea. But then I'm you going get... to get away with a perfect alibi. No. And I'm going to get that alibi from Boston Blackie. <laughs> You uh, might hurry, you know, Blackie. It isn't everybody I'd come to pick up and then wait for. <laughs> it's just 7.30 now. I'm not late. Be with you in just a minute, Mary. Then off to dinner we go. Fair enough? Mm -hmm. Fair enough. I think... Oh, all I know is that that isn't the dinner bell. Get the phone. It won't be a second. Uh -huh. Hello. Blackie? Yeah? This is Bill Smith. Hi, Bill. Say, I've been meaning to call you. I tried to reach your friend Arnold Peterson, but no one answers the phone at his place. Well, that's what I wanted to find out. I thought perhaps you'd gotten to him and had something encouraging to tell me that... Oh, just, just a minute. I'll be right there. What's uh, Blackie, I, there's somebody at the door. Would you call me back in a minute or so? Well, sure. What's your number? Uh, Oakville 41561. I live in the suburbs, huh? Okay, Smith. Go answer your door. I'll call you right back. <laughs> One more second now, Mary. Just want to call Bill Smith back, and then we'll go. Uh-huh. Operator? Operator, I want Oakville 41561, please. Oakville 41561. Just a minute, please. Hmm. Hello? Uh, this is Blackie, Bill. Yeah? Now, what was it you wanted to say to me? Oh, oh, about Peterson. I just wanted to be sure you called the right number. Well, I called the number you gave me, Eastern 99898. I dialed it myself. That's the right number, all right. I can't understand why it doesn't answer. Neither can I. But I'll catch up with him later. Take it easy, Bill. When I promise to do a guy a favor, I do him a favor. Well, you don't know what a favor you've done me already. <laughs> You guys get those fingerprints down at headquarters for checking. Ah, uh, here's a picture of Peterson's wife, Inspector Faraday. Yes, yes. And I found some papers in the desk that show her name before she married him was Crane. Crane, huh, Matthews? Yeah. Well, that's a coincidence, isn't it? I get a tip that Killer Joe Crane has come to town, and the husband of a Crane is found dead. Did you send out an alarm to pick up Crane and Peterson's wife? She's obviously on the run. We'll have men watching every railroad station, bus, and air terminal. That's fine. Oh, by the way, Sergeant Williams talked to the woman next door. I think we know the time of death. Good. She says she heard what sounded like three shots at 7.30. And Peterson was shot three times. And the noise came from here? Yep. Well, that fits with the coroner's preliminary report on the time of death. 
He was killed at 7.30, all right. Now, let's see. Hello, Faraday. Guess who? I know who, and without turning around. Now, get out of here, Blackie. Oh, Faraday, you don't mean that, do you? Who makes jokes for you when I'm not around? Nobody. And you better make tracks right now. I wouldn't leave for anything, Faraday. I heard on my car radio you needed my help, so I came right over. Uh, uh, I could tell you the name of your killer, Faraday, Bill Smith. The guy with a motive to kill Peterson wasn't 30 miles away from here when Peterson was shot. How do you know when Peterson was shot? I heard Matthews here say the time was 7.30. And the man I have in mind was 30 miles away from here at 7.30, I know, because I called his house and talked to him on the phone. Who do you think did it, Farney? I don't know. But killer Joe Crane is in town, and Peterson's wife's name used to be Crane. Really? Maybe so, but I have a hunch that uh, Crane is not the bird who did this job. We've timed this just right, Sally. Yeah. This cab will get us to the station only a couple of minutes before train time. The station will be full of cops, won't it, Joe? I may be, but we won't be there long enough for them to spot us. Sally, you did a nice job. You didn't do such a bad job yourself, Joe. <laughs> no. I guess we couldn't have done better. Uh... Now, look. As soon as the cab drives up in front of the station, I'll pay the guy. We'll separate. Uh-huh. That should be about three minutes before train time. All right. You go right in, head for the gates. I'll wait outside until you're out of sight. Because it could be the cops know I'm with you and be looking for a man and a woman together. Oh, we're coming to the station. I'm nervous, Joe. I know, Faye. Now, look, you carry a small uh, bag here. Yeah, I'll bring the big one. You're going to get on the train, aren't you? Oh, sure. I'll meet you in the club car just after the train pulls out. Here, yeah, driver. It's all right. Keep it, chair. Yeah, thanks, Mac. Hurry up, Joe. It's all right, Sally. Yeah. Still plenty of time. Train leaves on track six. That's the gate just beyond the information board. Yeah, I see. I remember. Just walk through the station straight to the gate. I won't duck out on you. I'll be in the club car just as I said. All right, Joe. Good luck. Yeah, same to you, honey. Oh. All right, I'll beat it. See you on the train. We can celebrate. Be careful, Joe. Don't worry. I'll be okay. Just a minute, lady. Oh, say, what's the idea? Let go Police of my... Police department, lady. But You're Mrs. Peters tonight, aren't you? Yes, but Joe... Joe, look out, it's the police. Oh, so he's with you, huh? Stop that man. Stop that man. Let's go. 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 let us Boston Blackie knows that Smith has a motive to kill the dead man, but he also knows that he made a phone call to Smith at his home, 30 miles from the scene of the crime, at almost the time of the murder. Mrs. Peterson is arrested, and as we return to our story, Blackie is searching for Joe Crane, believed to be the wife's accomplice. Hey, Tiny! Can a guy get something to eat in this time of yours? Well, well. Every damn Boston Blackie. Every damn guy with a lowdown on every bad guy in the world. The lowdown on you is you've been a pretty good boy since I cleared you that murder rap two years ago. Oh, you was a good guy to help me beat that, Blackie. But I was innocent. And you always help guys who are being framed. I sure try, Tiny. Well, you done it. And I kept a promise, Blackie. I've been a good guy ever since. What you doing on the waterfront? Looking for trouble? No, I'm looking for Joe Crane. <laughs> looking for Crane and trouble is the same thing, Blackie. But uh, you're going to tell me where I can find him, aren't you? You know, is it sort of a favor for me, for the favor I did for you? Oh. Uh, sure, uh, sure, Blackie, sure. Uh, you're a good guy and I'll help you out. Uh, Joe's got a room at the Front Street Hotel, number 10. Front Street Hotel, room number 10. Yeah. Well, thanks, Tiny, and here's a 10 for you. 
So long. Oh, thanks, Blackie. You're a good guy. Before you're too sure of that, you better find out if that tent is good. <laughs> Always making jokes, eh, Blackie? Hey, uh, Pete. Pete. Oh, yeah, Tiny. Uh, stop with that piano. Come here. Yeah. What do you want, Tiny? You see that good-looking guy who was just in there? Yeah, it was Boston Blackie, wasn't it? Who's he looking for? Joe Crane. Huh? I told him Crane was at the Front Street Hotel. Uh-huh. Crane ain't there, of course. But you run up to Wilson's rooming house and tell Crane that he better duck, because Blackie's looking for him. Okay. And Pete? Yeah? Here's ten bucks for yourself. Oh, yeah. I can't take no money from a guy and then double-cross him. <laughs> I promised Blackie I'd be honest. <laughs> Me, Joe. Pete. The piano player from down at Tiny's place. What do you want? Open up and I'll tell you. Okay. Come on in. What's up? Boston Black is looking for you, Joe. Time to give him a bump steer, but you better get another hideout just the same. The next place he goes is with me. Blackie! Quick, Pete, close the door. Wait, wait. You're too late. I'm already in. And thanks for leading me here, Pete. I didn't think Tiny was telling me the truth. Hate your dumb piano player, you. Ah, we can take care of this guy, Joe. He's too quick for a piano player. Pete, my feet! I'm not blacking out now. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm glad I follow my hunches, Joe. When I saw this guy come out of Tiny's place in such a hurry, I figured I'd follow my hunch and him. And I did, and he led me to you. So what? So take a look at him down there on the floor. You want to go down with him, Joe? No. Then you're going down with me, down to police headquarters. Are you kidding? You killed him. What do you mean? I killed yes, him. I you did. Quiet, 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 quiet. you too well. quiet. I, I forgot to tell you, Crane. Inspector Faraday likes quiet in his office. And you be quiet, too, Blanky. Inspector, is that the way to talk to me after I brought Joe Crane in for you? I, I found Mrs. Peterson here myself. I could have found Joe, too. All right, let's not argue about who found whom and where. Let's find out who killed Peterson. I think they both did. I tell you, I didn't kill Arnold. He was alive when I left the house. And I didn't kill him. He was alive when I left. And I left before Sally did. Oh, it's... Sally is a crane. Yeah. Since when does murder breed familiarity? Sally here's my ex-wife. That's one of the reasons Peter know about me. But what he didn't know was I couldn't kill a dame, even if she is my ex-wife. That's some logic. Well, what's wrong? I never killed a dame, and I'll... Well, I'm never going to. And I didn't kill Arnold. But maybe she did, though. After I left, she shot him. Oh, no. You killed him after I left. You came down to my place afterwards and said you wanted to go to Chicago. Oh, sure, you. I did. But Blackie, she even told me before I left the house that she was going to take care of him herself. What do you mean by that, Mrs. Peterson? I meant I was going to leave my husband. Well, you left him all right. You left him dead. He was alive when I left the house. I didn't kill him. Joe did. You did. You, you did. Quiet, quiet. Not going to go through all that again. I'm arresting you both on suspicion of murder. Blackie. Yes? What about your friend, Bill Smith? From what you told me, he had every reason to kill Peterson. Sure he did. But Peterson was killed at 7.30. And I called Smith's house in the suburbs and talked to him at 7.30. If Smith is our killer, he's got the greatest alibi I ever heard. Me. I'm not going to leave my apartment, Mary, until I get an answer to this thing. Oh? Just how long do you think you can stand it up here, Blackie? One or two years? <laughs> the case does look just about that tough. Well, I don't know why. And I'm sure neither Joe Crane nor Mrs. Peterson killed Peterson. But if they didn't, I don't know who did, unless it was Smith. And he couldn't have done it. No, oh, I'm sure I don't know anything. And I'm not going to try to figure it out either. My hair will be gray soon enough as it is. Oh, uh, come in. Oh. Hello, Blackie. Oh, Smith, good morning. Come on in. Thank you. Blackie, I just thought... Oh, I didn't know you had company or I had a phone. Oh, uh, this is Mary Wesley, Miss Wesley, Mr. Smith. Dear Miss Wesley. Dear Mr. Smith. Blackie, I just dropped in for a minute. I thought you'd be glad to know I got a bank loan today. Oh, I'm glad to hear it, Smith. I suppose your troubles are over? Yes, they are, with Peterson out of the way. You know, uh, 
I'd consider you a number one prospect if I hadn't called you at your house at almost the same time Peterson was killed. Really? Yeah. Well, I guess I had every reason in the world to kill Peterson, but I'm glad you know I didn't. I'm positive you didn't. Unless you could go the 30 miles from your house to Peterson's in a matter of two or three minutes. Yes, well, humans aren't equipped with jet propulsion just yet, Blackie. <laughs> well, I won't impose any longer. Goodbye, Blackie, and glad to have met you, Miss Wesley. Oh, thank you. See you again sometime, Blackie. Could be. Goodbye. Blackie, there's something about that man I don't like. Something about this case I don't like. Now, of course, the fact you can't solve it. Mary... Smith is a perfect suspect. Oh? Now, oh, I'd like to figure out how he could be at home at 7.30 and still kill Peterson 30 miles away at that time. He was home. I know. I phoned him. Hmm. I was here, remember? Oh, yes. Hmm. Say. Blackie, I don't like the look on your face. And somebody's not going to like the idea that just popped into my mind. Mary, go to your apartment, then in an hour, dial the operator and ask her to ring my number. Oh, all right, but what for? Never mind. Call me crazy if you want to. But I'm going to break this case wide open when you call me on the phone. I know I saw you at my apartment just a little while ago, Smith, but... In the last hour, I've been doing a little thinking about you. Well, I hope it's complimentary, Blackie. It's complicated, Smith. Now, in spite of the fact that I called you here at your house at exactly the same moment Peterson was killed 30 miles from here, I think you killed him. Oh, Blackie, please. Now, listen, I don't many... Uh... Oh, uh, excuse me. Hello. Hello, Bl Blackie? Oh, no, no. Just a minute. Blackie, it's for you. Oh, thanks. I've been expecting this call. Don't go away, Smith. I'm not through with you. I'm not going anywhere. Just over here to give you a little privacy. Okay. Hello, Mary. Oh, hello, Blackie. Well, I'm in my apartment, and it's been an hour, so I did what you told me to do. You dialed the operator and asked her to ring my number? Mm-hmm. Plaza 10710. So what have you proved? Palenti, Mary. Do you have any idea where I am? <laughs> in your apartment, of course. The operator rang your number. I'm in Bill Smith's house, Mary, out in the suburbs. What? But if I didn't tell you so, you'd believe that I was in my apartment, wouldn't you? Well, yeah, I certainly would. I'll talk to you later. Call Faraday and tell him I'm bringing in Peterson's killer. Okay, Smith, let's go. Go, Blackie Worm. To headquarters. What? I'm turning you over to Faraday for the murder of Arnold Peterson. Oh, now, Blackie, let's not start. Blackie. I know you killed him, Smith. And I know why I thought... You were here at the time Peterson was murdered. But I was here. You talked to me over the phone, didn't mm -hmm. you? Mm-hmm. That's right. But you were in Peterson's house when I talked to you. I know how you worked it, too. You do? First you phoned me, then pretended someone was at the door and asked me to call you back in a few minutes. Well, that's interesting, if true. It is true, all of it. Before I called you back, you phoned the operator and asked her to switch all calls for your Oakville number to Peterson's number. And... And that's exactly what was done when I called back. Then, as soon as you'd established that you were at home, you hung up and shot Peterson. You don't know that that could even be done. I know it can be done because I just did it. Oh? That was Mary Wesley on the phone just then. I talked to the telephone company before I got here. And when she asked the operator for my number, she got me here at your house. Well, I... Hey, Smith, that... I told you not to go away. I'm not going where you want oh, me no. to go. Oh, no. You are... <laughs> Ah, that's the way I like murderers. Down and out. Blackie, before I go, I want to thank you for helping me. Oh, I wasn't necessarily helping you, Mrs. Peterson. I was just trying to find out who killed your husband. Incidentally, I'm waiting in Faraday's office to read a copy of Smith's confession. Don't you want to wait here with me? Well, yes. Well, the sooner I get out of here, the better. My ex-husband, Joe, you know, has been sent back to Kansas. Well, that's because he's wanted out there for the same kind of thing that we thought he was wanted for here. Well, I'm glad he didn't kill Arnold. I'm glad you could prove who did, even though Arnold always threatened to kill me. Did Mr. Smith really kill my husband? Yes, he made a complete confession, Mrs. Peterson. And the telephone company verified my theory that he had them switch all phone calls from his Oakville number to your number. 
That's how I could phone his number and think I was talking to him at home when actually he was at your house. Probably standing over Arnold's body. No, no, he didn't kill your husband until a minute or two after I phoned him. He knew I was going to phone him back because he'd asked me to. And he waited for my call knowing that I'd give him the perfect alibi. Well, it wasn't so perfect, Blackie. He was caught just the same. They're all caught, Mrs. Peterson. And a murderer always gets paid off, you know. Not in currency, of course. Just in current. Yes, come in, sir. Are you from the detective agency? Yes, sir. Evans is the name. Jack Evans at your service, sir. I hope you're a good man, Evans. No complaints so far, Mr. Wilson. I'm sure there won't be any. You're not afraid of airplanes, are you? Well, I've been up a few times without disastrous results. (laughs) Well, I think this trip will be as uneventful as an excursion. I've chartered a good plane and hired an excellent pilot. Where are we going, sir? East. Where? But I've chartered the plane for the return trip, too, so you won't be kept away from home too long. My wife's used to having me away for long stretches, Mr. Wilson. When do we leave? In two hours. You have a gun with you, of course. Oh, yes. I wouldn't make a going on a job without it. By the way, why all the precaution of taking me as a bodyguard with you, Mr. Wilson? Because of this, Mr. Evans. This diamond in my hand. Awfully small diamond, isn't it? Small, Mr. Evans. Yes. But it's worth a million dollars. <laughs> And now on to Dick Colmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. Tower to flight 59. Proceed on runway 6. Proceed on runway 6. Tower to flight 59. Yeah. There's some crazy pilot coming in on runway six unannounced. Uh, I see him. Private cabin plane. Good night. Yeah. It looks like it's going to crack up, too. Yeah. Tower to flight 59. Hold it. Flight 59. Hold it. Try to talk that Tower crazy pilot the... on a landing, Sam. Yeah. Tower and to turn flight on the 59. crash landing signal. I'm going to have to. Here goes. Tower to flight 59. I'm going out and help pick up the Tower pieces. You crazy fool, you! Whoever taught you to land a plane? You! You made it, you sap, but I don't know how. Hey, what's the matter with you in there? You could have crashed into that transport if we hadn't seen you from the control tower. Hey, pilot, what's the matter with you? Hey, you! Huh? Oh, I... I got it down okay, huh? You got it down, but not okay with us. I'm sorry, mister. I sort of blacked out, I guess. Well, you nearly checked out and took your two passengers with you. Hey, what's the matter with them? Nothing. They're all right. Hey, are they tied up? They sure are. I'm going in the plane to see. My diamond. My diamond. What's this guy moaning about? I don't know. My it's something about his diamond. diamond. Uh, he's the guy who chartered this plane. Hey, Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson. He's coming, too. Hey, get those ropes off him while I untie this other guy. Yeah, sure. What's been going on in this plane, anyhow? Well, I don't know. Told you I must have passed out. I don't know how long, either. Can't remember a thing. Hey, there's a gun on this guy here. Yeah, I know. He's a private detective or something. You mean he was a private detective or something? He's not anything now. Except dead. I've heard a lot of strange talk in this office of mine, Mr. Wilson, but this is the strangest yet. 
Give yourself charge of the plane? Yes, Inspector Faraday, and this is the pilot I hired, Bob Johnson. Don't ask me what happened, Inspector Faraday. I've been trying to figure it out myself, and I just don't know. This is the craziest thing I ever heard. Three men are in a plane, 10,000 feet in the air. Two of them are knocked out and tied. One of them dies, and nobody knows what happened. Well, I know what happened. One of you was a murderer. And someone is a thief, Inspector Faraday. My diamond is missing. My million-dollar diamond. Mr. Blaine was going to pay a million dollars. I'm not interested in your diamond, Wilson. Or any Mr. Blaine. I'm interested in who killed Jack Evans. And it was probably either you or both. Now, wait a minute. Maybe there was somebody else on that plane. Well, I'd like to say there was, Inspector, but there's no room for a fourth in that plane of mine. There was nobody else in the plane. Can't we investigate the murder a little later and first try to find my diamond? We'll find the diamond. Don't worry. But how? Where? The pilot doesn't have it. I don't have it. It wasn't anywhere on Jack Evans' body, and it's not hidden anywhere in the plane. Oh, it's one of those things again. Not only does a guy get murdered in midair by the little man who wasn't there, but a million-dollar diamond disappears in midair, too. This is one of those cases for your friend Boston Blackie, Inspector. How do you know about Boston Blackie? Well, everybody knows about Blackie. Well, I don't need him. Don't either of you two leave town till you get my permission. I'm going to get to the bottom of this before I blow my top. There's Johnson's plane over there, Matthews. Let's go have a look at it. Somebody's in it, Inspector Faraday. Listen, he's gunning the engine. I know it, and I know who it is, too. Johnson must have thought I was kidding when I told him not to leave town. Hey, Johnson! Johnson! He's not here, Barney! Inspector, it's Blackie. The one guy I want to leave town. Blackie, what are you doing here? Turn off that engine! What'd you say, Barney? You know what I... <laughs> you, you know what I said. What are you doing here? Working on the Jack Evans murder case and trying to find Henry Wilson's diamond so I can deliver it to Mr. Blaine, who ordered it from Wilson. How do you know anything about Evans and Wilson and Blaine? Wilson called a lawyer for help, and the lawyer phoned me. No use searching Johnson's plane, Faraday. The diamond isn't here. Mm, Blanky, I could have you arrested for meddling with this plane. It's police property until, until I... Until the case is solved, I know. Yes. But I'm going to help you solve it. I understand the plane seemed to be in trouble when it came in for a landing. Mm. Well, it wasn't engine trouble. I just tested the motor, and it's okay. Well, that's the only thing about this case that is okay. Give me 24 hours and a few facts, Faraday, and you'll not only have Evans kill her, but Wilson will have his diamond. In 24 hours? Don't get excited, Inspector. The only way to find out what happened up in the air is to keep our feet on the ground. <laughs> yes, Miss Jones? Bob Johnson calling you, Mr. Blaine. Oh, thank you. Hello, Jensen. Hello, Blaine. How's the diamond business today? <laughs> Fine. How's the flying business? Couldn't be better. We sure have a lot of people baffled, don't we? <laughs> yes, we certainly do. <laughs> well, that was nice work, Jensen. You did a good job. Well, you made me a good proposition. Uh, you got the diamond all right, huh? Oh, yes, I have the diamond. <laughs> Everything went just as we planned. Well, I, I didn't think we'd have much trouble. It was too slick to miss. <laughs> you take care of everything else, too? Oh, yes. We have nothing to worry about except that... Well, I wish that detective with Wilson hadn't been killed. Yeah, same here, but that was an accident, Blaine, and accidents will happen. An accident can be called murder sometimes, too. The police will try to find out who killed that fellow. (laughs) They'll have to find out what happened first, and what happened to the diamond, who has it, and how he got it. And that's something they'll never do. (laughs) (laughs) No, I don't suppose they will, Johnson. (laughs) Have you been questioned much? Oh, yeah. A cop named Faraday threw a million questions at me. (laughs) He's just about gone crazy trying to figure anything out. I'll be down to talk to you in a little while. Yeah, good. So we're driving Faraday crazy, huh? Yeah. (laughs) Apparently, we not only have Wilson's diamond, but we've got Faraday's goat. Hello. Hello, Mary. Guess who? What? It's you. Isn't it, Blackie? Wait till I look and make sure. Yes, it's me. (laughs) What are you doing? Well, I was waiting for your call. And now that you've got it, you've got nothing to do, huh? Mm-hmm. Do you have time to meet me, Mary? Of course. What's going on? You and I are going on to a visit a certain Mr. Blaine. He's the fellow who ordered the diamond, which was 
stolen from that fellow Wilson on the mysterious plane trip. Oh, why are we going to see him? The most important reason is to see whether he can throw any light on what happened to the diamond, because that will tell us who killed the private detective. And maybe tell us how all of that was accomplished while the plane was in the air, huh? Perhaps. Good enough reason for your going to see Blaine? I know one just as good. What? I'm going to be with you. How much longer will it be before I can see Mr. Blaine? Well, any minute now, I'm sure, sir. Well, I hope so. Mary, you don't have to wait with me if you don't want to. I don't mind, Blackie. I don't have an appointment for three hours. Oh, maybe this Mr. Blaine saying he'll see you. Yes, Mr. Blaine. Uh, see that fellow Blackie now, Miss Jones? Yes, Mr. Blaine. Oh, sir. Mr. Blaine will see you now. Go right in. Oh, thank you. Come on, Mary. Are you sure you don't uh, want me to wait outside? Oh, I don't see why you should. <laughs> Come in, Jack. Come in. Come in. Mr. Blaine? That's right. Mr. Blaine, Miss Wesley? Wesley, Mr. Blaine. How do you do? How do you do, Mr. Blaine? I wasn't expecting a beautiful young woman when Miss Jones said Boston Blackie was here to see me. Oh, thank you, kind sir. <laughs> <laughs> no one ever knows what to expect from Boston Blackie. Oh, I think Mr. Blaine has a vague idea of why I'm here. Oh, no, Blackie, I don't. Oh, I thought perhaps you'd heard from Henry Wilson's lawyer. No. <laughs> but I expect to hear from Henry Wilson any minute now. How do you happen to know about Wilson? Oh, well, you might say I'm working for him, Mr. Blaine. Oh, yeah. Trying to find out who murdered his bodyguard and stole his million-dollar diamond. I read about that in the papers. <laughs> Too bad. I understand from Wilson that he was bringing it here to show you. Yes, he was. It was a small diamond, Mr. Blaine. Why was it worth so much money? Because it's the one diamond I need to complete a match set that I can sell for a million dollars. It has a very peculiar cut that can't be duplicated. Without that diamond, the set will not be bought by a certain party. I see. Ah. Well, who besides you knew that Wilson was flying that diamond here? I don't know one that I know of, but <laughs> the walls have ears. News might have leaked out, or someone might have been listening in when I made arrangements on the phone with Wilson. You arranged for the chartered plane at Wilson? I told Wilson where he could charter a plane, yes. And where he could get a bodyguard? That's right, Blackie. Where's the diamond? I don't know. Maybe the same place Evans' killer is, still somewhere up there in the clouds. But you said something interesting a second ago. Oh, I did? About somebody listening in on your calls. I'm going to talk to your secretary. <laughs> Miss Jones has been my secretary for five years, and I've never had any reason to mistrust her. Oh, now, Blackie, that girl looks so sweet and innocent. It's the sweet and innocent ones who sometimes are the guilty ones, Mary. Call her in here a minute, will you, Mr. Blaine? I'd like to talk to her. Of course. You mean, uh... Look at her, don't you? <laughs> now, Mary. Uh, Miss Jones. Miss Jones. Maybe she left her desk for a minute. Well, she never does that without telling me. What's the matter with her? Miss Jones. Miss Jones. Well, I'll go out and talk to her. If she's there, Blackie. She's here, all right. Miss Jones, didn't you hear that buzzer? Maybe she's hard of hearing, Blackie, except when she's listening in on phone conversation. Could be. Look, Miss Jones, I... Uh-oh. What's the matter, Blackie? Mary, did you say maybe Miss Jones couldn't hear well? Yes. Well, she isn't breathing well either. In fact, she's out of breath. She's dead. <laughs> Now, back to Boston Blackie. A million-dollar diamond is being flown across country in a chartered plane when apparently all three occupants of the ship black out. When the pilot, still in a daze, lands the plane, his two passengers are tied up and the diamond is missing. What's more, one of the passengers is dead from a blow on the head. Later, Boston Blackie visits Bill Blaine, the man to whom the diamond was to have been sold. Blackie suspects Blaine's secretary, Marilyn Jones, of perhaps being involved in the mystery, but when he steps out of Blaine's office to question her, she is dead. As we return to our story, Blackie is in Inspector Faraday's office. You like this case, don't you, Blackie? It's impossible, so you like it. Well, that could account for my liking you, too, Inspector. No, I'm impossible. Look, do you know I can have you thrown out of here? You're bothering me. I can't think while you're here, so you're... 
You're obstructing justice. I'll be so sorry in the morning. Listen, Faraday, let's get down to the facts. Three people, and only three, were in that plane. Brilliant. Positively brilliant. I don't know how you do it. You're obstructing my logic, but unfortunately, that's no crime. Uh, Now, get this. We know that the private detective didn't engineer this gimmick because he's dead. You continue to amaze me. It couldn't be Wilson, the guy who owned the diamond. He'd have no reason for stealing something that was already his. So, who does that leave? It leaves me with you. And don't think I'm not sorry about the whole thing. I'll beat it, Frankie. Leave me alone. Under normal circumstances, it would be a pleasure to leave you alone, Inspector. This circumstance is normal enough. It's just mixed up. And you want to know something? When you're around, I'm mixed up, too. Well, what's your excuse when I'm not here? Well, so long, Faraday. I'm on my way. Good. I promise not to interfere with you until this case is solved. That's better. You see, I've got a phone call to make at the airport. After I make it, maybe I'll know a little bit more about this mystery. You know, instead of being up in the air on this case, I'm going to find out what happened in the air on that plane. Pretty quiet up here in the control tower, ain't it, Joe? Won't be in a couple of minutes when Flight 81 comes in from the west. Take it easy. There'll be plenty to do in a... I'll grab it. Control tower. Hello, this is Boston Blackie. You don't know me. Who but don't I... know you? Everybody knows you, Blackie. Oh, thanks. That's the nearest I ever got to somebody asking for my autograph. Well, what's on your mind, Blackie? Well, first of all, were you on the control tower when that private plane came in yesterday? The one with the dead guy on it? Sure I was. Why? Your report says that it came in sideways and almost cracked up. I want to know if anything else unusual happened with it. Well, nothing at all, except it was supposed to have come from the west, wasn't it? So I understand. Well, it came in from the northeast, Blackie, and the wind wasn't coming from that direction, so that wasn't the reason. Oh? Another thing, we got a complaint. A plane, probably the one you're asking about, was flying awfully low about 50 miles northeast of here. A place called Holly Hills, just about a half hour before that plane came bouncing in. Oh, that's great. Thanks, pal. That plane coming from the west to right from the northeast, huh? Yeah. Maybe it wasn't on the beam, but believe me, I am now. <laughs> Blackie, you got a light? Uh, sure, Matthews. Anything to help out the police force? There you are. One light, by courtesy of my last birthday. And uh, my birthday present. <laughs> That's right, Mary. Pardon, Blackie. Now we go on looking, huh? Yes, we've covered most of Holly Hills with that metal detector you brought, Matthews, but so far, no results. You sure Mr. Blaine owns this estate, Blackie? Positive, Mary. I checked. And this estate is 50 miles northeast of the airport. That checks with a tip a fellow in the control tower gave me. This adds up too well to be wrong. Bring that metal detector over here, Matthews, and let's try going down this side of the hedge, huh? Better be along here somewhere, Blackie. We've covered just about all there is of Blaine's estate. Oh, what if he didn't bury it on his own property? Mary, don't make this case any tougher than it is. No. Ready to go down this side of the hedge, Matthews? Sure, Blackie. You sure this was Inspector Faraday's idea? It's a good idea, isn't it? Well, yeah, but... Uh... Then it doesn't matter who suggested it as long as we find what we're looking for. How will we know when we found it, Blackie? The metal detector will buzz when Matthews swings the indicator over metal buried in the ground. If there's any metal buried in the ground, out here we go. Hey, I've got my fingers crossed. Let's just hope the indicator crosses metal, Mary. It's just crossed oh. something, Blackie. Good. Exactly it looks what I expected. Like it. The ground there, it looks as if it's been dug up. And filled in again. Maybe I haven't been lugging this shovel around for nothing. Want some help, Blackie? No, thanks, Matthews. Ground soft. You must come up and dig in my flower boxes sometime, Blackie. <laughs> thanks, Mary. Uh oh. Hit something. Rang the bell, huh? Uh huh. That's what I'm looking for. Oh, say, uh. Give me a hand lifting this thing out, will you, Matthew? Oh, sure, Blackie. Uh, hey, what in the world is that, Blackie? It's what I was looking for, Mary. And it tells me everything I want to know. Now, look, Blaine, I came here to your house to tell you I want more dough than you're giving me. I deserve it. I took all the risks. What risks, Johnson? There aren't any risks. No? 
That detective uh, with Wilson got killed, and I'll take the rap for it if we get found out. Who's going to find us out? Somebody will, laughing boy. <laughs> laughing boy? <laughs> now, listen, your secretary knew all about us, didn't she? Sure, but she's dead. Yeah, yeah, she's dead, thanks to me. And that's another reason I want more dough. I didn't expect to kill anyone on this job. No one has asked you to do any killing. No? No. Private Dick was an accident, but I had to kill your secretary. When I came to see you, she told me she knew all about us. She listened in when you phoned me and when we made the plans to steal the diamond. She wanted 50% of the profits to keep her mouth shut. We could have made a deal with her. I gave her the only safe deal. Now, Blaine, I want more dough. Look, Johnson, you're being fairly paid, and there's nothing to worry about from the police. Nothing to worry about. No one can figure out who killed Evans and Miss Jones, or who has the diamond, or how it disappeared. We're completely in the clear. Well, I'm glad you think... Minor correction, Blaine? Blackie! You're right, Blaine, when you told me uh, in your office that the walls have ears. But so do I, and I like what I just heard. Now, do you and Johnson here want to come quietly, or shall we be noisy about it? I'll take care of this guy, Blaine. He's just my size. <laughs> Ah, nice work, Blaine. Uh, I think you cracked his head with that book. <laughs> a gun butt is harder than any man's head, Johnson. Well, we used the gun butt on him. When do we use the other end of it? Not here. When he wakes up, we'll take him for a ride in my car. Yeah. And then he'll stay awake yeah. for a little while before he goes to sleep permanently. Yeah. <laughs> Gently, boys, gently. Oh, why don't you stop? Oh, this blackie's awful heavy, Mr. Blaine. How much longer do we have to carry him? Just to my car. It's only a little way down the road. Good. Oh, gentlemen, I'm not heavy. It's those ropes that you've got me tied up with. Just carry me once around the park, and then I'll dismiss you. Uh, you made one mistake, you know. Yeah? What, wise guy? You left my fingers free. When you get me to the car, I can communicate with anybody passing by using the sign language. Some sense of humor. Okay, Johnson, here we are. Stop him. Hey, don't! Oh! You know, for a minute, Blackie, I thought you'd bounce. You mean I didn't? Well, Mr. Blaine, here we are. What goes now? You put him on the floor in the back of the car, drive the car out to the airport, and take care of Mr. Boston Blackie because he's too nosy. How did you find out about us, Blackie? Little bird told me, an owl. <laughs> Awfully wise, you know. Put him in the car. I'm getting tired of his talk. He left right up. He got up in the car door. Yeah. There. Now, help me throw him in the back. Hey, take it easy. I'm fragile. Throw him in. In he goes. Oh, you ought to be happy. You can still feel pain. Come on, boss. In the front. All right. Too bad you can't enjoy the scenery from back there, Blackie. I can see enough from the floor. Pretty rug you threw me on here. If I'd known you were going to land on top of it, I'd have loaded it with nails. Temper, temper. Ah, uh, shut up. Let's go, Blake. Uh. So, you know, uh, this job sure called for a lot of killing, Blaine. The price goes up each time. Now, you can't complain to me about this one, Johnson. You're in on this as much as I am. Let's we'll talk about that some other time. Comfortable back there, Blackie? Oh, very. Johnson, do you smell smoke? Huh? Yeah, a little. Well, maybe we just passed the bonfires. Smoke's coming from back here, kiddies. Hey, Blaine, look, Blackie's untied. Blackie, how did you get out of those ropes? I'll write your letter. And don't look around here to find out what made that fire. I've got to find out. Look out, Blaine, we're heading for a tree. I can't stop it. Okay, both of you, don't move. I can't move very well. That steering wheel got me in the chest. Fractured that laugh of yours. I can see that. Good thing. It's getting rather annoying. But the crash did give me a break. You let me lean over and borrow this gun of yours. How, how did you get out of those ropes, Blackie? I cannot tell a lie. I did it with my little cigarette lighter. Uh... You see, uh, you left my fingers free. I reached the lighter, snapped it on, and burned the ropes. But the fire's out now. Let's get down to headquarters and see if Faraday's in. <laughs> If you're a good boy, Faraday, I'll tell you exactly what the story is on this case. With gestures. Uh, what happens if I'm a bad boy, Blackie? No gestures. Now, listen. 
I found out that the plane, which was supposed to have come from the west, came into the airport from the northeast. Why? It's his story, and he asked me questions. Well, because it was supposed to come in from that direction. And it was supposed to fly low over Holly Hills, and it did. Mm Mm-hmm. Send the pilot Johnson a fan letter. I'll send him a fan letter, because that's where you just put him. Amusing. Listen, Faraday, I used the police department's metal detector on Blaine's estate in Holly Hills, and I found something he buried. You know what it was? A bone. He's really part dog. It was an oxygen tank and mask. Bob Johnson flew his plane high enough to make Wilson and Jack Evans black out, but he didn't pass out because he used an oxygen mask. Only he didn't want it found in the plane when he landed, so he ducked it over Holly Hills by arrangement. And Blaine found it by arrangement and buried it. But I found it where he buried it because I suspected that's exactly what he'd done. The only way that air fantasy could have been accomplished, actually. Mm -hmm. The pilot, Johnson, didn't black out at all. He went back in the plane to remove the diamond from Wilson, only Jack Evans was still conscious and saw him. So Johnson had to kill him. The diamond was dropped with the oxygen mask on Blaine's estate. But not buried with it. We picked up the diamond in Blaine's safe after you brought him and Johnson into headquarters. That ends that, I guess. Uh, thanks for your help, Blanky. You're perfectly welcome, Inspector. Uh, here, let me uh, light that cigarette for you. Why well, use that cigarette lighter? Those darn things never work. Hmm. I guess they're like a certain police inspector. Never work. Until there's something important to do. being invited into your office, Inspector. And I wasn't dreaming. You did phone and ask me to come down. I did? Blackie, um, do you know anything about a warehouse on Front Street? The one at the corner of Front Street and Bridge Boulevard? Yes. I thought you did. you know anything about the safe robbery there last night? And the murder of that watchman? Maybe. Just maybe, huh? Yeah. Well, sit down. I want to show you something. What? Never mind what. First turn out the lights and then sit down. Oh, you want me in the dark in more ways than one, huh? Yeah. Okay, the lights are out. Now what happens? I'm going to show you some movies. Watch the screen on the wall over there. Okay, John, turn them on. Okay. Are they good movies, Barney? They would be. Only you're in them. Tell me what you see. Mm. Nothing very interesting. Only myself walking toward a door. That's the door to the warehouse on Front Street. Yes, I recognize. What else do you recognize? I see a gun in my hand. Uh And now I'm opening the door. Okay. Starting in. Stopping at the door. And shooting. Oh, that's the end of the film, is it? And the end of you, too, Blackie. Turn on the lights, Johnny. Yeah. Blackie, we found the watchman's body just inside that door. Yes, I know. I read it in the papers. You just read about it, huh? Yeah. Blackie, $100,000 was taken out of the safe. And the safe that was robbed was a tough one. Only you could open it. Thanks for the compliment. Never mind the remarks. The watchman was killed by a bullet from the type of gun you carry. And as further proof... Somebody sent me these films showing you at the warehouse with the gun. Offhand, oh, Inspector, I'd say that you had a perfect case against me. Offhand, oh, you'd say. Yes. You'd say it after you thought it over, too, if you had sense. I don't know who took these pictures, and I don't care. Mm-hmm. The whole thing is set up so that it has to be you that did the killing and the robbery. Only, uh, I know it wasn't you. It's too good a frame. I know you didn't do the job. But thanks for your confidence, Inspector. Only I don't deserve it. You see, I did do it. And now, back to Dick Colmer as Boston Blackie. 
Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. I saw the morning papers, Blackie, but you didn't kill that watchman. I know you didn't. At this point, Faraday is on. At this point, you too. I did kill him, Mary. No. Oh, I, I don't believe it. Why? Now, why would you do such a thing? For that hundred thousand dollars, Mary. I needed the money. I didn't want to kill the watchman, but I... Blackie, just... this is no time to joke. This is no time to do anything but worry about zigging when Faraday's men are zagging. I think the whole police force is out looking for me. Blackie, I just won't believe Look, it. Look, Mary, you... I wouldn't have run out on Faraday if he didn't have the goods on me. They were moving pictures practically showing me killing that watchman. Don't the papers say that? Well, yes, but I don't believe any of it. Oh, Blackie, I don't understand any of this. You will someday. So long, Mary. What? Only if you were a smart girl, you'd see that this was goodbye. Uh, Blackie! Let's see that newspaper again, Billy Boy. Okay. I'm not sure I like what you read to me. Sure, boss. Here. Yeah. Boston Blackie confessed killer. It isn't like Blackie to confess, is it, boss? No. It was those motion pictures, Billy Boy. Those motion pictures we sent Faraday. Only I know what's on Blackie's mind. Yeah? He knew he was being framed, and he wants to find out who framed him. So he gets the whole police force looking for him? Yeah. That don't sound smart. It's true to form, though. Blackie's form. Well... Uh-huh. He wants us to think he's really on the wrong side of the law, so we'll take him in with us. So we're going to fool him, Billy Boy. We're just not going to let him find us, huh? We're going to find him. But, boss, that's just what he wants us to do. Yes, I know. That's what he wants us to do. He wants to get to us, get in with us, double-cross us, and then straighten things out with his friend Faraday. Well, Faraday's no fool, boss. I told you in the beginning he'd know that the movies of Blackie were faked. I'm sure he thought they were. But now Blackie is saying they were legitimate. So the police will be after him, and the story to us will sound real. But I'm not stopping with the pictures, Billy Boy. Oh, no? Blackie's troubles are just beginning. What do you mean? Blackie can explain the motion pictures after he finds us and turns us over to the police. We're going to fool him. I want you and Joe to go out and locate him. Okay. But first... Yeah? Here's another little job for you. Hmm? Here's $5,000 of the stolen money. I want you to give it away. Give away five grand? Are you nuts? What for? Insurance, Billy Boy. Our insurance. Miss Wesley. Oh, I'm in here, Inspector. Uh, in the living room. I'll stay there. I'm coming out. Did you find anything, Inspector? Was there anything in Blackie's bedroom? Yeah, a bed. Oh, Inspector. Give me that again. The story you told me that got me up here. Oh, some man called me and said Blackie had just called him. And I was to come up here and get some money Blackie had left. And you called me, and I've searched this apartment and I can find nothing. Which is what I expected. Miss Wesley, are you in this thing with Blackie? Inspector, I wish I were. Maybe then I could help him. I'll help him. I'll have him go to jail if I ever find him. I think I'll let him walk out of my office sometime. Hey, Inspector, look out. I am looking out. I tripped over this rug. Why do people always leave rugs in the middle of the room? Hey, wait a minute. Look what I tripped over. Yeah, that bulge this in the rug. This bulge in the rug. I've got an idea what it is. Well, something under the rug, isn't it? Yeah, you're as much of a genius as Blackie. Well, look what I've got here. What is it? Just what I thought it would be. An envelope containing part of the money stolen from that warehouse. The warehouse bands are still around it. Well, whoever's well, framing Blackie is certainly not sparing the expenses. There must be $5,000 in here. You're sure Blackie's being framed, aren't you? Of course I'm sure of it. You know he's being framed, too. Oh, I hope he is. Oh, come on now, Miss Wesley. It was Black you sent the message for you to come up here and get the money, wasn't it? Well... Yeah, he's playing a game with me, so I'll get sore, and he can tell a good story to the crooks who killed that watchman, get in with him, and grab them all. Well, Inspector, I don't know what this is all about. Well, I do. The real thief called you after planting the money here. Blackie doesn't leave evidence lying around like this. Uh, you've heard from Blackie, haven't you? Yes, I have. I thought so. And he told you the truth, too, didn't he? He's claiming he's guilty so he can trap the gang that really is. Inspector, if you must know the truth, Blackie told me he, he really did steal that money and kill that man. What? I know what you're thinking. Usually he'd tell me the truth to keep me from worrying, but well, this time the truth was that he's really guilty. Well, those motion pictures were real. I guess they were. And Blackie was fool enough to hide some of the loot here in this apartment. Yeah. Oh, I wish you hadn't told me what Blackie admitted to you, Miss Wesley. I wish you hadn't asked. So do I. Because if this were a gag, Blackie would let you in on it. It isn't a gag. I'm convinced now that it isn't. 
You know what that means, Miss Wesley? What? It means Blackie's a killer. And the force goes after a killer. You're a shoot to kill. Uh, the boss figured that Blackie would hide out down here at the waterfront, Billy Boy. And maybe the boss was right. But I don't see no Blackie. Just wait here till he shows up, will you, Joey? That cafe is the only eating place down here, and the guy's got to eat. Unless he sends out for food. He's still got to eat, don't he? Uh, and Blackie wouldn't trust anyone to go and get it for him. He'd rather go out where he has a chance of scramming if anybody recognizes him. Uh, give a lot to know what this thing is all about. Especially why the boss wants Blackie so bad. Who knows? I don't, for one. I think... Hey, I see him, Joe. That's Blackie now. Heading toward that cafe. Stick here, I'll go get him. I better go with you. Don't bother, I got company. My gun. Keep the engine running. Okay. If you need any help, yell. If I need help, I won't be able to yell. Hey, you. Yeah? Wait a minute. You mean me? That's right. Hiya, Blackie. Oh, you know me, huh? And so does almost every cop in town. You're in trouble, Mac. So maybe you better come along with me. To see the, uh, boss? Yeah. Okay. Swell. This is the car right here. The one with the door open and waiting? Yeah, open and waiting for you. Here he is, Joe. Hiya, Blackie. Hello, Joe. Glad you boys found me before the cops did. Yeah, I'll bet. In the middle, Blackie. Okay. Well, protection on both sides, huh? That's right. Here we go. Okay, Joe, we got him, so let's get going. Straight to the river. <laughs> <laughs> boy, you should have seen Blackie's face when I told Joe to head straight for the river. <laughs> yeah, boy, it was something to see. He nearly jumped through the windshield, too. Right, Blackie? I'm hardly in a position to argue. I didn't know Blackie was so afraid of water. I guess water is something he likes to stay away from, boys, except on Saturday night. <laughs> I like to stay away from guys with bad senses of humor every night. <laughs> Blackie, did you really think my boys were going to deposit you in the river? I wouldn't put it past those two characters of yours. Well, we did bring you straight to the river, didn't we? Because there's the river, all right. Right out the window. Do me a favor and jump in as long as it's so close. Oh, brother. I suppose you know why I had my boys pick you up? No, as a matter of fact, I don't. Why don't you tell me? You know all right. You let yourself be picked up, didn't you? I don't argue very well when an automatic is being held in the upper hand. It was me, boss. I had the gun on him. Yes, I know. Blackie, you let yourself be picked up so you could presumably join forces with us and later turn us over to the police. Oh. Is that what I did? Definitely. Quite an idea it was, too. Only not at all worthy of you. Very corny. You could explain the films as a frame, I suppose. But you'll have a much tougher time than that. Oh, I will, boy. Yes, you see, you're also going to have to explain about some of the money that was stolen from the warehouse. I'm not mistaken, the police have that by now. So they'll think you robbed the warehouse and killed that watchman. So, you're going to commit suicide. Nobody's going to believe I'd do that, my friend. I didn't believe they would at first. But now I'm sure they will. You see, you're going to leave a note saying why you did it. You're smart, Blackie. But how does it feel to be outsmarted? Now, back to Boston Blackie. When Inspector Faraday sees motion picture films showing Blackie in the act of shooting a watchman, he thinks the films are faked. But Blackie tells him that they're the real thing. He insists to his friend Murray Wesley, too, that he committed the crime. While the police are looking for Blackie, the real killers pick Blackie up and take him to the boss. Knowing that Blackie's actions are part of a plot to break up the gang, the boss says that the police will be convinced of Blackie's guilt when Blackie is found dead. An obvious suicide. As we return to our story, Billy, one of the boss's henchmen, is standing over Blackie, whom he is forcing to write a suicide note. You got that last line written just the way I told you, Blackie? Just the way you told me, Billy. 
Now put that gun away. Oh, uh, sure. I can hardly wait. Sign the note, Blackie. Okay. Uh-oh. What's the matter? Can't you sign your name? Not without ink. This fountain pen's dry. Uh, here's a bottle of ink. Dip the pen in it and sign your name to that note. Well, might as well fill your pen while I'm out of Billy. I don't like to use it and then return it to you. Empty. That's impolite. Okay, fill it up if you want it. Hey, Billy boy. Yeah, uh, Joe. You want me around for ending? I guess not. Well, I'll go to a movie then. After that, I'll go home and wait for you. Good idea. I'll call you if I need you. Okay. Oh, uh, the boss made me get a new hideout. You know where it is? Yeah, 180 Elm Street. Yeah. Hope you like the picture. Oh, I will. It's all about a penitentiary. No place like home, eh, Joan? Uh. All right, give me that note, Blackman. Hey, isn't that note signed yet? No, I wanted to get the pen good and full. And look, this bottle fuller's going to give you an eyeball. Look, you're blind me. I can't see, Blackie. You can't feel, though. My eyes. You can feel me grabbing your gun, no, can't you, I Billy can't Boy? See. You're my boy my now. Eyes. Who is it? Open up, Blackie. It's Mary. Okay, just a minute. Oh, Blackie. Mary, come in. Hurry up. Gee, was I glad to hear your voice on the phone. I wasn't sure you would be after what I read in the late papers. Hardy found some of the stolen money in my apartment, didn't he? Yes, yes, he did. Blackie, what's this all about? It's all a frame-up, Mary. I'll explain everything later. Frame-up? Why didn't you tell me that in the beginning? And why are you hiding down here in this room? I'll tell you about the room in just a minute. The reason I wanted you to believe I was guilty is that, well, you have a way of spoiling my plans sometimes by telling the truth. Oh, now, Blackie. And this is one time I didn't want you to know the truth. Blackie, if you just promise never to lie to me again... I promise never to tell the truth. <laughs> I don't think I'll try this kind of sin again, Mary. Now, about this room, it belongs to a guy named Joe. I heard him give the address to a pal when I was supposed to be running suicide. Now, Blackie, what is all this? Inspector Faraday is just sick. He doesn't want to believe you killed that watchman, but he has to. I'll have to straighten him out after a while. I know who killed that watchman and who has the stolen money and where the big boss is, too. Well, then let's go get them. Oh, no. It's doing it the hard way. And if Faraday sends his men after them, a few policemen might be killed. If my hunch is right, I'm going to catch these guys the same way they framed me. Yeah? Uh-oh. The pigeon who lives here is coming home to roost. Oh? I want to see you waiting for him. Huh? They're more like the yours. Shh, get back. You mean the elbow room. You mean best room, don't you? Uh. Hello, Joe. Like the movie? Blackie. You're not dead. You'll find out. Oh, look, Blackie. Billy Boy and me didn't have nothing against you personally. We was hired to grab you. I know. Well, here's where you'll really earn your money, unless you want to tell me about those films that frame me. I don't know anything about them. And I don't talk in front of no dame. Who is she? Oh, well, I'm Blackie's audience. He likes to have me watch when he starts flipping people like you. And so I can applaud. Well, why don't you hit him, Blackie? I'm getting bored. Okay, Mary. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Blackie. Take it easy, will you? Well? I got an envelope in my pocket that tells you what you want to know. I'll get it. Oh. No. <laughs> you didn't think I'd fall for that, did you, Joe? I'll take that envelope right now. <coughs> a forty-five. Yes. Well, you'll never be well dressed if you carry a forty-five, Joe. It's too big and bulky. <laughs> He's not saying anything you want to hear, Blackie. He will. Joe. Huh? Joey, boy, yes. stand up. Yes. Yes. Daddy wants to hear you talk, Joey, and talk loud. Yes. Otherwise, Joey gets a little pushing around. Oh, hold it, will you, Blackie? I'll tell you what you want. Good. Who took those movies of me, supposedly killing a watchman? I did. How and where and when? You want to know, Blackie. Remember when you got a telephone call tipping you there was going to be a robbery at the warehouse? Yes. Well, that was me who called you, Blackie. The boss wanted you down there because I had a camera all set up to take pictures of you prowling around. So that was the setup, huh? Yeah. Remember when you opened the door and somebody in the shadows reached for a gun and then ducked? Keep talking. Uh, that was Billy Boy waiting there so you'd take a shot at him when you opened the door. And then you remember what happened, don't you? Not for a while. Not until I came to. <laughs> that was the boss who knocked you out. Anything else you want to know? No, but there's something I want you to do. You're going to make a call for me so I can call somebody's bluff. What do we do about Blackie now? I don't know yet, Billy boy. <laughs> the next time you see me, you better carry a blotter. I'm going to get even with Blackie for squirting that ink. Probably, but before you get even, we've got to get Blackie. You get it, you Billy boy? Sure, boss. Hello? Hello. Who's this? Billy Boy? Yeah. This is Joe. Boss there? Yeah. Just a minute. Boss, it's Joe. You talk to him. I don't want to hear stupid excuses from him, too. It's bad enough listening to you. Okay, okay. Hello, Joe. The boss doesn't want to talk to you. And you know why. Yeah, I know why. But I got good news. I know where Blackie's hiding out. You do? Where? Backstage in that theater where that new play is opening next week. 
It's a great place for a guy to hide. But if you went in, you can make a good target out of him. Yeah, it sure could. Okay, thanks, Joe. Where are you now? Home. Okay, stay there and I'll talk to the boss. Boss, Joe knows where Blackie's hiding out. He does? Uh-huh, in a theater backstage. We could go in there after him, switch on all the lights and bingo. Be as easy as knocking off a sitting duck. You know what, theater? Yeah, sure. I think we'll go down there and see our friend Blackie. He's hiding in the theater, is he? I rather like this. I haven't been to the theater in months. Homicide, Faraday speaking. Hello, Faraday, old pal. Blackie, where are you? Out in the morgue, which is where I'd be if any of your men knew where I was. I'm glad you know that. Why don't you give yourself up? You'll be killed if you don't. Faraday, I'm calling just to tell you not to worry about anything. I'll see you in your office in 24 hours. I have to go somewhere right now. Where? To the theater. To the theater? I might have known. At a time like this, only you could go to a play. The play hasn't opened yet, Faraday, but what happens in that theater tonight is going to close this case. <laughs> Stage entrance to the theater, better boy. Better have your gun ready. Blackie may be waiting for us. It's ready, boss. So am I. Careful now. Probably in the dark. It... Oh, this is funny. Every light in the place is on. Uh, funny thing for a guy to hide with all the lights on. This isn't right, better boy. It's a trap of some kind. When we're not falling into it, we're getting out of here. I think that's a good idea. Hey, it was. Lights went out. It's making it all unhappy. Yeah. Those lights were on for a reason. And if somebody gave up on the idea when we started to leave. Now we can look for Blackie. Come on. Well, it sure is plenty dark in here. Yeah. Where are you, Blackie? Right here. Shoot, boss. I don't think I got him. You didn't. What? <laughs> Boss, I saw the flash of Blackie's gun. Never mind. Blackie isn't there now. That's right. I'm over here now. Yeah. <laughs> Keep moving around. But now I'm over him. here. We'll probably find him. Come on. Maybe we better separate, huh? No. Slow now. Slow. Hmm? It's got to be slow. I can't see a thing. Good. <laughs> Ran into something. Put the chair. Oh, I walked into a table and something fell off it. What was it, boss? Where did I find it to make sure? Somewhere around here, I know. Yes. Flashlight. Yeah, that's good. Yes, it works. All right, Blackie. This will help us find you. Look out the <laughs> you got the flashlight. All right, come and get me. He's at the back of the stage. Come on. Okay. You go to the left. I'll go to the right. Boss! Boss, you got slugged, you hurt, man? Not any worse than you're gonna be. Oh, okay. You got tight, Barry. You got... Ah. As soon as I turn on the lights, I'm gonna turn you two over to Faraday. Blackie, you were an idiot not to tell me the truth about those movies in the first place. Look, Faraday, there were a lot of reasons why I didn't. In the first place, I fell for a phony tip when Joe called me to go to the warehouse. <laughs> I guess that makes me pretty stupid. Ah, oh, you admit it, huh? Yes. And when I get down there, I get knocked out. Now, that makes me even more stupid. Mm, if possible. <laughs> it's possible. But the most important reason was that those guys framed me and I wanted to handle them myself. Well, did you have to get yourself shot at to get even with them? Hey, what was the idea of the theater, anyway? I was going to make movies of them. That's the way they took movies of me. Only they got wise to the trap when I saw, saw all the lights on. Yeah. So, when I saw they were leaving, I turned the lights out. And when the place was dark, they thought it was safe to come after me. Yeah. Safe, huh? Safe as the receiving end of a shooting gallery. Oh. I was a moving target, Farrell. And a moving target's hard to hit. Yeah. But you have to admit, even if my plan didn't work... I caught the watchman's clothes for you. That's nice of you, Blackie. I have a whole police force on my side, but you still think I need you. <laughs> so help me, Blackie. That's what you always say, Faraday. So help me. So I do. Oh, 
Blackie? Someone at the door. Want me to steal this? No, never mind, Mary. If it's trouble, I'll tell it to go away. I said we were going to the theater tonight, and I meant it. Uh-huh. I'll believe we're going after we get there. <laughs> That's my girl who said that. Package for Boston Blackie. Valuable package. Plenty valuable. You Boston Blackie? Uh-huh. Okay. Sign here, and you get the package. All right. What's in this thing that makes it so valuable? And who's it from? I can't say who it's from, and I don't know what's in it. Only I got orders to tell you something, too. Okay. Don't lose this package and what's in it and get it to the police as fast as you can. Here's an envelope with $1,000 in it for your trouble. So long. Hey, oh, wait a minute. Wait. Hey, Blackie. I know good things come in small packages, but trouble comes in small packages, too. Oh, this is some kind of a gag, Mary. A valuable gag, according to Messenger. I wonder what's in the package. Uh, no. But this could be a frame-up. I'm not taking it to the police until I see what it is. Well, if it's valuable, maybe the sender wants to take it to the police for safekeeping. That's a thought. I wonder what's so valuable about it. Oh, well, maybe it's a box of money. A million dollars. Oh, jewelry. No. no. it's too light for that. It was certainly wrapped carefully enough. It must be priceless. Well, open the box, will you? Okay, here goes. What the... Blackie, am I seeing things? Somebody gave you $1,000 to take this to the police? Yes. And all it is is a shoe. A worn and battered old shoe. <laughs> Want me to steal this? No, never mind, Mary. If it's trouble, I'll tell it to go away. I said we were going to the theater tonight, and I meant it. Uh-huh. I'll believe we're going after we get there. <laughs> That's my girl who said that. Package for Boston Blackie. Valuable package. Plenty valuable. You Boston Blackie? Uh-huh. Okay. Sign here, and you get the package. All right. What's in this thing that makes it so valuable? And who's it from? I can't say who it's from, and I don't know what's in it. Only I got orders to tell you something, too. Uh, don't lose this package and what's in it, and get it to the police as fast as you can. Here's an envelope with a thousand dollars in it for your trouble. So long. Hey, oh, wait a minute. Hey, Blackie. I know good things come in small packages, but trouble comes in small packages, too. <laughs> this is some kind of a gag, Mary. A valuable gag, according to Messenger. Wonder what's in the package. Uh, I don't know. But this could be a frame up. I'm not taking it to the police until I see what it is. Well, if it's valuable, maybe the sender wants to take it to the police for safekeeping. That's a thought. I wonder what's so valuable about it. Oh, maybe it's a box of money. A million dollars. Or oh, jewelry. No. Uh, it's too light for that. It was certainly wrapped carefully enough. It must be priceless. Well, open the box, will you? Okay, here goes. What the... Blackie, am I seeing things? Somebody gave you $1,000 to take this to the police? Yes. And all it is is a shoe. A worn and battered old shoe. <laughs> Thank you. 
And now, back to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. Oh, look, Blackie, it's bad enough when you clutter up my office with a bunch of worthless things, <laughs> including yourself. But when you bring me an old shoe... Now, wait a minute, Faraday. I thought this shoe was some kind of a gag, too. But I was paid $1,000 to deliver it to you. So someone has a good reason for wanting you to have it. Yeah, well, let him send a mate to it and I'll wear it. <laughs> what do I want with an old shoe? I... <laughs> wait a minute. I just thought of something. What? Listen. Yes, Inspector. Matthews, there was a case about nine or ten years ago that's still unsolved. Yeah. A case involving a shoe print. We never found the shoe that made it. I think I remember something about it, Inspector. Well, check the files, will you? Tell me what case it was. Yes, sir. Right away. Well, Blackie, what do you think of that? I think it's wonderful, Faraday, if this is the shoe that figured in that case. Some shoe made that print. We never found the shoe. Mm -hmm. Why would anyone want a shoe brought to the police unless it was some kind of evidence in some case? Well, there might be other reasons. What other reasons? Well, I don't know. Seems just a little too simple that this shoe is evidence in a murder case. Well, you always want to make things complicated, don't you? Well, this is one time... Yeah? Inspector, this is Matthew. Yeah? Uh, about that case, What Inspector, case was it? Could you find it? Yes. The only unsolved case we have involving a shoe prints, the Richards case. That was ten years ago. Thanks, Matthews. That's all I want to know for now. Okay. I remember the rest of the case. Yes, sir. Well, your memory's really sharp today, isn't it, Faraday? Yes, I know all about this now. The person who sent the shoe to you knows that it's evidence and doesn't want to be mixed up in it, which is also the reason it was delivered to you and not directly to me. We still have the plaster impression of that shoe print. Well, take the shoe and see if it matches the print. Now, by the way, who was the chief suspect in the Richards murder? Don't tell me what to do! Tut, tut, tut. Uh, the chief suspect was Eddie Maley. He was a punk at that time, but he's an east side big shot now. Eddie Maley, huh? That's right. Well, while you have a little conference with your footprint experts, I think I'll go down and have a little talk with Eddie Maley. <laughs> Mr. Melly, I heard over at the joint that Mickey Elvis is looking for you on account of that diamond robbery we pulled. Looking for me, is he, huh? Yeah. Well, he knows where to find me. Why doesn't he drop in? Because <laughs> he knows we'll drop him, I guess. I'm going to take this. Something, hey. something, Mr. Melly, something smashed away. Take guns where they are, boys. Mr. Melly, it's Boston Black. Oh, I see. What's the idea coming through the window, Blackie? Well, I wanted to get in to see you and some guy at the door. I had a different idea. I hope I didn't catch you when you were busy, Mailey. I'm never too busy to see an old enemy, Blackie. Tom, I'll talk to you later. Hey, sure, Mr. Mailey. Sit down, Blackie. No, thanks. I prefer to stand. That's up to you. What can I do for you? Just remember a few things about the Richards murder case, Mailey. The Richards mur... For ten years, the plaster impression of a footprint has been waiting at police headquarters for a shoe that would fit it. Well, we think that shoe turned up this evening. And it might be your shoe. Don't look at me, Prince Charming. I'm not the Cinderella you want. Mailey, you were never brought to trial in the Richards case, but you were Richards' only enemy. You don't know what you're talking about. If that shoe about. fits that plaster impression, and if Faraday can prove that shoe belonged to you, you'll go to trial in the chair. Thanks for the warning, Blackie. So long, Mailey. I'll be seeing you. You'll be sorry to hear. Uh, the wind is open. Why don't you go out the way you came in? You're going out of this world the way you came in. You're going to be carried out. So long, Yeah, Mr. Mailey. I'm black. He just left my office. You want us to muss him up as he gets to the front door, huh? No, let him go. But send Dan down to the airline's office right away and get me a ticket to Mexico on the first flight out. Mm, I had a lovely evening not going to the theater. <laughs> Mary, I'm sorry, honestly. I promise you we'll see that play tomorrow night, for sure. I'm sure we will. Unless tomorrow night you get another priceless shoe. The case of the priceless shoe is just about over, Mary. Huh? If Faraday was able to trace its owner, and if it, it fits a certain plaster impression, I'm going to run in and see him for a minute and get the good news. Well, I'll wait in the car, if you don't mind. Okay. Look, uh, there's time to go to a newsreel theater, if that's any consolation. Oh, it's better than nothing. I'll be right back. I'll use Faraday's private entrance so I won't get tangled up with the boys at the desk. Don't whistle at any characters while I'm gone. Any objections if I just whistle back? <laughs> Hello, Faraday. Well, Blackie. Well, what do you know? You didn't say get out of here. Well, and I know why, too. You want to thank me for helping you solve the Richards case. Yeah? It took ten years, Faraday, You have solved I... the Richards case, all right. Well, that old shoe fit the plaster impression, didn't it? No. That's what I... 
No. That's right, no. N-O, no. But Faraday... Frankie, that shoe not only didn't fit the impression of the print in the Richards case, but it's a style of shoe that wasn't made till four years ago. And the print in the Richards case is ten years old. Uh-oh. What's the matter, Blanky? You're not laughing. That old shoe gave our theory a good swift kick. Well, Faraday, you have a right to be wrong, but I know you want this time. Well, we'll have to forget about the Richards case and look for something else. Somebody sent me that shoe for a reason, you know that. Brilliant. Positively brilliant logic, Blackie. I know. That messenger had strict orders to deliver that shoe directly to me, but he was told that he was carrying something valuable. And I believe it, too. Here, take your old shoe and get out of here, will you? All right, Faraday. But I'll be back with it. Uh, never mind. And if I can find the messenger who brought it to me, I'll be back with proof that it's valuable, too. <laughs> Paper? Paper? Who'll buy a paper from an old... Oh, Miss Brown. Uh, you never fail to get a paper from me, do you? I haven't missed in years. How's everything? Well, the same as it's been at my newsstand every night since you bought my first paper. Yeah. Here you are. Thank you. And how's Mr. Brown? He's fine, thank you. See you tomorrow evening. Uh, good night. Good night, Miss Johnson. Paper? Paper? Latest paper? Let's wait for me, Mr. Mr. Like to change any minute. Well, might as well cross here as anywhere else, Bill. Paper? Will you buy a paper, please, gentlemen? Oh, why don't you get lost? What a disposition you've got, Rod. Buy a paper from the guy. Get lost, will you? Grandpa, this won't buy a yacht, but I'll buy a paper from you. Keep the chance. Thank you. Thank you very much. Paper? Who'll buy a paper? Hey, come on, Bill. Lights change. That's cross. Oh, come on, will you? Hey. Holy mackerel, what a disposition you've got. Did you inherit that from your old man? (laughs) I inherited nothing from him. I love this. Me with an old man worth a half a million bucks, and I haven't got a dime. You'll get the money soon. As your lawyer, I can promise that. So what do you care? I care because I want it now. I want to feel it in my pocket. I want to spend it. I want to be rich. I know. I was born to be rich, Bill. And until I am, I'm going to be miserable. I wonder if you won't still be miserable after you get your old man's money. Oh, yes, Blackie. We have a messenger who answers to that description. Well, I'd like to see him. He's here. Yeah, just a minute. I'll get him. Hello, Blackie. I hope he's the one. We've been to almost every messenger service in town. Well, we just don't know the guy who delivered that shoe wasn't from a messenger service at all. Will you come in a minute? Come, Slap. Hey, Blackie, this boy fits the description you give me. Is he the one? Yes, he is. Well, I had last. Oh, hiya, Blackie. Hello there. What's your name, son? Harry Young. Well, Harry... Yeah? Uh, did you know what was in the package that you delivered to me early this evening? No, I didn't. But well, it was this. This old shoe. Huh? Who told you to bring it to me? Well, I, I, I can't tell you that, Blackie. I promised I wouldn't. Well, give me the address of the place where you picked up the package. This shoe may be involved in the murder, Harry. Well, in that case, I went to 2121st Street. 2100. First Street. Yeah, that's right. Thanks, kid. Come on, Mary. Okay. okay. We're going to 2100 21st Street so we can learn something new about an old shoe. I love the way we went to the newsreel theater, Blackie. Oh, Mary, I know when to open until four in the morning. Uh-huh. Well, there's 2110, 21st Street. Uh Uh-huh, and there's 2108. 2106. 2104, going, going down. 2102. Uh, Next is 2100. Yes, there it is. The real estate sign says, yes, that's it. 2100 is an empty lot. So I see. And it's one time when a lot tells us nothing. Now, back to Boston Blackie. Blackie receives a package, the contents of which are supposed to be valuable. But all the package contains is an old shoe. Blackie surmises that the shoe is the one which made a footprint in a ten-year-old, still unsolved murder case. But it isn't. Blackie then finds out at what address the shoe was picked up for delivery. The address is an empty lot. 
As we return to our story, it is the next day. An old man is selling papers at his street corner newsstand. Papers, papers, who will buy papers hey, from an old... Mister? Oh, hello there, son. How's the messenger business today? Okay, Grandpa. Hey, but look, I got to talk to you. Why, did something go wrong? No, everything went off okay. You delivered that package to Boston Blackie and you told him to take it to the police? Yeah, sure, I took your dough to do it, so I did it. Hey, but look, Grandpa, what cooks? Well, what do you mean? Well, you said that package was valuable, but all it was in it was a crummy-looking old shoe. Son, I told you not to look at what was in that package. I didn't, but Blackie came and told me what was in it. And then you told him you delivered it for me. No, Son, no, I shouldn't. didn't do that. I didn't open my yap, Grant. And I, I even told Blackie that I picked up the package from you at an empty lot. Oh, thank you, son, thank you. You'll be rewarded for what you've done. Look, that dough you gave me was plenty for the job. But... I, I sure wish I knew what was such hot stuff about that old shoe. My boy. Yeah? To someone in this town, it's worth $500,000. Blaine leaving at gate 11 for Washington, Dallas, and Mexico City. Just about Hello there. Mexico you speaking of me? You don't mind? Well, maybe I do. Well, maybe you better not. Going somewhere, Mailey? How do you know my name? I make it my business to know the names of guys like you. And the faces, too. My car. My badge, huh? Yeah. Williams is the name, Mailey. Deputy Inspector Williams. Now that we're old friends, maybe you'd like to come along with me. Some other time, Williams. I have other plans right now. Plans for a trip on a plane, huh, Mailey? I don't think you'll like it in Mexico. The chili con carne might not agree with you. Besides, I don't think Inspector Faraday would like you leaving town. Look, I'm not doing anything wrong. No, but there's a chance you did do something wrong, and very recently. Come on, Mailey. Inspector Faraday wants to talk to you. You haven't any right to take me in. I know. Isn't that all? Come on, Mailey. Let's get moving. Hey, wait a minute. My plane's leaving. Isn't that a coincidence? Your plane's leaving. And so are you. Only you're heading in different directions. Homicide, Faraday speaking. Inspector Faraday, this is Deputy Inspector Williams at the Air Force. Yes, Williams. Guess who was down here getting ready to board the plane for Mexico? Oh, a Mexican? Yeah, a guy we don't like here and they won't like in Mexico. Eddie Maley. Maley, huh? Yeah, I spotted him just a minute ago. And Blackie talked to him yesterday about the Richard Murder case. Yeah, I know. But I found a lot of stolen diamonds on him. The stuff taken in that big hold up last week. Well. Don't go away, Inspector. I'm bringing him in. Roger. There's someone at the door. All right, you answer it, will you, Bill? How lazy can a guy get? All right, I'll answer. Yeah. Hi, Mac. I'm a reporter from the Star Journal. I'd like to talk to Roger Hollister. Okay, come in. Roger, it's a reporter to talk to you. You talk to him, Bill. You're my lawyer. Well, I'd like to talk to you, Mr. Hollister. What about? About the money you're coming into next week. I understand it's quite a lot and that you're getting married, too. Beat it, will you? I hate reporters. Oh, no, Roger, what's the matter with you? It won't do you any harm to talk to Look, him. you talk to him if you want to, Bill. I'm going to read a book. Hey, what's the matter with that kid? Nothing. He's just his usual disagreeable self. Well, look, maybe you'll tell me what I want to know. Maybe. <laughs> Young Hollister gets his dad's stone next week, right? Yeah, a week from the day. I understand nobody knows whether old Hollister is dead or alive. No, no one knows for sure. He just left home for his office one morning and was never heard from or seen again. Mm -hmm. Neither he nor his body have ever turned up anywhere. But it'll be seven years to the day next Wednesday, huh? That's right. And at the end of seven years, old Hollister is legally dead and young Hollister goes from rags to rich and from bachelorhood to married life. <laughs> Some break to the day in his marriage. Young Hollister inherits, huh? Why the hook of Joe it is, too. Yeah, Roger's the only living heir. His mother was killed in an auto accident two years ago. And neither she nor the son could touch a cent of the old guy's money all the years he's been missing. Not a dime of it. But next week, Roger gets it all. Well, some guys get all the breaks. Yeah, I know. But why is it, friend, that it's generally the wrong guys? <laughs> Blackie, will you stop it? You know you've been sitting there staring at that shoe for a half hour. I know it. Mary, look at it. Sitting there on the table. Now, what Now, how can you be interested in an old shoe when there's so much in the newspapers? What's in the newspapers with news? Well, Roger Hollister's getting married. So what? A shoe. An old shoe. Mm. Who's Roger Hollister? The sole survivor of the famous Hollister family. Just what an old shoe. See, the Hollister family certainly had tough luck. Roger's mother was killed in an accident two years ago, and the father disappeared nearly seven years ago. 
Hmm. Roger comes into a half a million dollars a week from today. When his father will be declared legally dead. Mary, why would an old shoe be valuable? I don't know. <laughs> wouldn't it be funny if old man Hollister were alive? I'll bet anything his son wouldn't be getting married mm, next week. Could be. He's marrying Sally Lawrence. And she marries for money at least once a year. Mary. What's the matter? Mary, the shoe. The shoe, I think I've got it. I'll say you've got it. You can have it. Mary, it's impossible. It just can't be true. I, I don't, Mary Blackie. I know it can't be true, but it is. All I can say is, if it is, I know why that shoe was sent to me, what it means, and how that one shoe is going to walk right down the aisle and break up a wedding. <laughs> Yes? Are you Roger Holliston? So what if I am? So you're just the guy I want to see. Hey, nobody invited you in. I took the invitation for granted. I'm Boston Blackie. Boston Blackie, huh? What do you want with me? Not much. From what I hear of you, you're not worth much. But you will be a week from today. Does this shoe look familiar to you? No. Should it? No, not especially. But would you say it was the size shoe your father wore? How should I know? I haven't seen my old man for almost seven years. And you've really missed him, haven't you? Look, what did you come up here for? To insult me? No, but now that you mention it, certainly isn't a bad idea. That is, if it's possible to insult someone like you. I'll tell you what is possible. You're going to be thrown out of here on your ear. Which ear? I'm particular about which one I land on. This ear. Right here, wrong 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 ear. Very unpleasant visit, Hollister. I'm going to see Faraday now. I'm going to see Faraday now, but if I were you, I wouldn't mention the fact that I was here. If you do, I might come back. Well, Faraday, whose fingerprints were on the old shoe? You only brought it back an hour ago. What do you think? We have nothing else to do but check it for you? No, but I think you did. We did. Your fingerprints were on it. And yours. Uh-huh. And the lab technician. Uh-huh. And another print, too. Uh, how fresh is that other print? Very. It was made in the last day or two, I'd say. And made very definitely, too. You know whose print that is? Yeah. We have a duplicate in our non-criminal file. Naturally. But I hate to tell you whose it was. You won't believe me. I'll tell you whose it was. Go ahead, whose. It was Martin Hollis's. What? The man missing for so long. Just give me an envelope and a piece of paper, lend me a policeman, and I'll find him for you, too. <laughs> Papers? Papers? Who's my hey, papers? Hey, from... Grandpa? Oh, hello there, son. Uh, Still delivering messages? Yeah, and this time I got one for you. For me? Uh-huh. A man came into the office and asked for him. Then he gave me this envelope and told me to deliver it to whoever sent that old shoe to Boston Black. Oh, I see. Maybe you better open it, huh? And maybe you want me to take a message back. The guy said he'd wait in the office. Yes, yes, I'll open it. Look, Grandpa, what cook? I don't know. I couldn't sleep last night thinking about that old shoe. Are you nuts or something? No, but there are some people who might think so, son. What? Look, there's no message in this envelope. What? It's a piece of blank paper. Well, maybe I should have written you a greeting, Grandpa. Blackie. Thanks for making it easy for me to follow you, Harry. And if you want to know who gave you that envelope to deliver, it was a policeman I borrowed from Faraday. Blackie, I didn't want anyone to find me, but... You know who I am, don't you? Yes, I do. You're Martin Hollister. What? Yes, I am. I'm glad to know you're alive, which is a sentiment that I don't think will be shared by your son. Well, Mr. Hollister, how does it feel to be back from the dead? <laughs> Never having been dead, Miss Wesley, I, I, I wouldn't know. <laughs> but as Blackie probably told you, my whole scheme was to make it known that I was still alive, but... Not to give up my disguise as the old newsstand owner on the corner. I had to break through your disguise to prove my theory to Faraday, Mr. Hollister. I may have brought you out of hiding, but I didn't upset your primary purpose in sending me that shoe. Oh, what was that, Blackie? To prove he was alive so his son Roger couldn't get his money? Exactly. Hollister was going to continue to let the world think him dead if his son Roger changed his ways. Yeah, but he didn't change, Miss Wesley. I opened my newsstand on a corner that he passed every day just so I could watch him. But he continued to be the same Roger Hollister I ran away from. And my wife was just like him. I see where your son's marriage to gold-digging Sally Lawrence has been called off. Yes, I read that. Huh? No money, no love. Well, I assure you, my son isn't upset about it. I don't imagine he is. No. I like the way you tied up your fortune so that it couldn't be inherited until you were declared legally dead. My family deserved to live in comparative poverty, Blackie. 
As you guessed, I hoped it would change them, but when it didn't, I decided never to let them see me again. No, let your remaining heir get your money. Well, you certainly accomplished your purpose. But I can't understand why your son never recognized you if he passed your newsstand every day. Well, you see, I've changed a lot. I left town at first and became quite ill. I had lost a lot of weight. My hair had turned quite white. And then I came back to open the newsstand when I was sure I wouldn't be recognized and could watch Roger without his seeing me. Oh, I see. Well, Mr. Hollister, I guess that's that. We've accomplished everything we set out to do. Oh, did we, Blackie? Oh, hey, that's right. We never did get to the theater, did we, Mary? Oh, we never even got to a newsreel. Say, I've got an idea. Suppose you and I and Mr. Hollister go to the theater tonight. No, no, thank you, Blackie. I, I don't care to get to the theater. Oh, in that case, Mr. Hollister, by all means, come with us. We'll never get there, either. Gentlemen, Mr. Jeffers. Be seated, gentlemen. Be seated. The entire board is here, Mr. Jeffers, except Williams at the credit department. And why is he not here, Mr. Wilson? His wife is sick, sir, but his reports are ready. I've brought them for him. Oh, thank you, Mr. Wilson. We'll get to the credit reports in just a minute. Uh, gentlemen, uh, this is a sales meeting, and the purpose of this meeting is sales. And uh, what creates sales, Mr. Wilson? A satisfied client and a client who is able to pay the price we ask. A satisfied client represents a sale already made, Mr. Wilson. To sell a product, the maker of that commodity must first create a demand for his product and then deliver to the satisfaction of his customer. But, uh, Mr. Jeffers, so far the market's been small. Our uh, prospects are limited. We sell an expensive item, Mr. Weatherby, but market research will reveal to us a larger demand for our product than you realize. So to make more sales, we must investigate the market more thoroughly. We're in business for profit, and we need a greater turnover. We mustn't forget the risks, though, Mr. Jeffers. Yes, we must give great consideration to credit risk, Mr. Wilson. And the percentage of profit must outweigh the percentage of risk. And where does our greatest risk lie? With uh, our clients? Exactly right, Mr. Weatherby. Therefore, the character, the reliability, the motives, and the credit rating of our prospective clients must be given careful scrutiny. Because we must remember, gentlemen, that the commodity we sell is murder.
Mr. Jeffers. Be seated, gentlemen. Be seated. The entire board is here, Mr. Jeffers, except Williams at the credit department. And why is he not here, Mr. Wilson? His wife is sick, sir. But his reports are ready. I've brought them for him. Oh, thank you, Mr. Wilson. We'll get to the credit reports in just a minute. Uh, gentlemen, uh, this is a sales meeting. And the purpose of this meeting is sales. And uh, what creates sales, Mr. Wilson? A satisfied client and a client who is able to pay the price we ask. A satisfied client represents a sale already made, Mr. Wilson. To sell a product, the maker of that commodity must first create a demand for his product and then deliver to the satisfaction of his customer. But, uh, Mr. Jeffers, so far the market's been small. Our uh, prospects are limited. We sell an expensive item, Mr. Weatherby. But market research will reveal to us a larger demand for our product than you realize. So to make more sales, we must investigate the market more thoroughly. We're in business for profit, and we need a greater turnover. We mustn't forget the risks, though, Mr. Jeffers. Yes, we must give great consideration to credit risk, Mr. Wilson. And the percentage of profit must outweigh the percentage of risk. And where does our greatest risk lie? With, uh... Our clients? Exactly right, Mr. Weatherby. Therefore, the character, the reliability, the motives, and the credit rating of our prospective clients must be given careful scrutiny. Because we must remember, gentlemen, that the commodity we sell is murder. And now meet Dick Colmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend. To those who have no friend. What's the matter, Blackie? Nothing to do? Plenty to do, Mary. Only I don't have any of the details. Maybe I'd feel better if I knew what you're talking about. It's just this. I've had at least three tips during the past week that a new murder gang is working in this town, and Faraday hasn't told me a thing about them, nor has there been anything in the papers. Maybe the gang hasn't started operations yet. That's not the way I heard it. I'm more puzzled by the fact that Faraday's keeping quiet than I ever was in any case I've worked. Have you tried seeing the good inspector, much as I'd rather you didn't? I've tried phoning him, but he won't answer once he finds out who's calling. And my trick voices don't work with Faraday. He's too smart. Oh, the inspector would give an awful lot to hear you say those words. One of the reasons they're so valuable is that I'll never say them to him. But I'm still puzzled about this situation. You could be just as puzzled at dinner, and I'd like it better on account of I'm hungry. Your appetite and your figure are the greatest contradictions I've ever seen. I keep thin worrying about you. <laughs> In that case, and rather than have you put on any weight, I think I'd better get down to headquarters and see Faraday. The police are selling tickets for some children's benefit, and I haven't bought any yet, so I might as well get them from a pal. There's nothing I can say to stop you from going, Blackie. Hmm? You want to keep thin, don't you, Mary? Oh, I see what you mean. Goodbye, Blackie. Ah, uh, come in, Matthews. My name isn't Matthews, Faraday, but I'll accept the invitation. Get lost, Blackie. I'm busy. If I get lost, you'll be busy trying to find me. The only place I want to find you is out. Well, that's where you'll find me. If you come to my apartment to sell me tickets to the children's benefits, so I've come down to your office to buy them. Well, I've got more to worry about today than selling tickets. Well, I'll make it easy for you. This is the last day of the sale. I'll buy every ticket you have left. I'll give you a check for them right now. Okay, here are ten tickets. Now get out of here! Well, I make out the check. Say, uh, what's troubling you today, Faraday? What's usually troubling me? Murder. Oh, uh, tell me about it, Inspector. Your troubles are over. It isn't it, it's them. And any minute I expect to hear about another one. I haven't seen anything in the papers about murders. That's because I can't prove there's been a murder. I know five killings in the last month. But I can't prove one of them. Elusive killers? Elusive corpses. In the last 30 days, five men have disappeared without a trace. I even know who killed them. But I can't prove murder because I can't find the victims. Good old corpus delecti, huh? Mm, complicates more murder cases. Who's the trigger man? It's not one trigger man. It's a whole corporation which is selling murder. Wholesale. Wait a minute. You know all this, but you can't do a thing about it? Nothing but wait for the corporation to make a slip. It's run like a business, Blackie. And by a former big businessman, too. Ed Jeffers. He used to be head of a large wholesale house. Here's your check for the tickets. Thanks. You certainly were informative, Faraday. You haven't told me about this case before. Why now? Because I don't want to be bothered with your questions. <laughs> but you do want to be bothered with my health, don't you? Oh, do what you want. Who cares? I care. 
Now, uh, just tell me where this murder syndicate can be found, and the corporation will have company. Hello. Mr. Jeffers, please. Speaking. Uh, Mr. Jeffers, this is Weatherby. Oh, yes, Weatherby. I've been waiting to hear from you. Did you close the deal with Harry Brown? Yes, sir. I just took care of it. Fine, fine. You fulfilled every clause in the contract? Yes, sir. You can tell Mr. Brown everything's been taken care of. I'll be happy to. I have another prospect for you, Weatherby. It's a Robert Engels of 11 Elm Road. But I must warn you to exercise the usual extreme caution. Investigate the prospective client's background thoroughly. Don't worry, Mr. Chambers. I know how to handle these things. I have the greatest confidence in you, Weatherby. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, uh, Wilson. Yes, Mr. Jeffers? There's a gentleman in the outer office waiting to see me. Will you send him in? Yes, sir. Thank you. Come in. Mr. Jeffers? Yes, come in. Thank you. My name is Jones, Mr. Jeffers. John J. Jones. Yes, sit down. Thank you. Uh, I'll come right to the point. I need your services. My services? I don't understand. I happen to know what you sell, Mr. Jeffers. And it isn't what the name of your company implies. <laughs> I don't know what ever gave you that idea, Mr. Jones. Uh, we import some of the finest woolens in America. Oh, then maybe I do have the wrong place. You have the wrong name, Mr. Boston Blackie. <laughs> My face is familiar. And your tactics, Blackie. Now, uh, what can I do for you? Nothing, I suppose. What you can do for me isn't important. If I were you, I'd worry about what I'm going to do to you. <laughs> Inspector Faraday, the Missing Persons Bureau, just phoned... Again, Matthews? Who's missing this time? A man named Johnson. The Missing Persons Bureau questioned his wife, and she said Johnson's only enemy was Harry Brown. Well, let's get hold of Brown. He's already done that, Inspector. He has a perfect alibi. Johnson left his own office at 5 this afternoon. He told his wife he'd be home at 6. Brown was at home at 5 and was still there when we questioned him at 8 this evening. Mm. Several friends were with him all the time, and one of them is a friend of the mayor's. Brown's alibi is perfect. Well, in that case, Brown certainly didn't kill Johnson. Now, Brown has money, of course. Yes, a lot. And this is another one of those things. Another killing by those guys who sell murder. You have everything but a body and proof, Inspector. Yeah, I've got everything, all right. The best police force in the country. The best scientific methods of crime detection. The best criminologists in the world. But I've also got a company specializing in murder. And that's exactly what they're getting away with. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm late. Have you ordered dinner? No. I've been waiting for you. I expect you to be late when you're working on a case. How do you know I'm working on a case? Your face has a puzzled look. <laughs> I know. Any of the pieces missing? None of the important ones. I don't think. <laughs> Let me see. One nose, two eyes. No. You're all there, Blackie. That's not Faraday's opinion, believe me. I just called the inspector and found there's been another killing. That makes six, and the police can't even find one of the bodies. How can you say there's been a murder when there isn't even a body? I can't, but Faraday's so certain the missing men have been killed. I've gone along with the murder theory, too. Uh-oh. Faraday even knows of the corporation that has killers for hire. Huh? It, uh, sounded just like you said something about a corporation that sells murder. It's not funny, Mary. I went up to see the president of the company this afternoon, and I think Faraday's right. Oh, Blackie, it's too fantastic to believe. Oh, by the way, I almost forgot. John Gardner phoned your apartment looking for you. Gardner? What did that weak sister want? Well, he said something about socking you on sight. That's the best news I've had all day. What? He's suffering from a bad case of too much money and too little feeling for his fellow man. He's putting pressure on a little shopkeeper I know, and I've warned him to lay off. Oh, that's my Blackie. Always helping somebody else out and getting himself in trouble. Oh, God, there's no trouble, Mary. I can handle three like him as an appetizer. Well, if you can, you'd better begin now. He must have followed me here because he's heading for this table right now. Oh? So I found you, have I, Blackie? So it seems. Go away, Gardner. I'm going to have my dinner. You won't have any teeth to eat it with after I get through with you. You're kidding, of course. Get up for that table and see if I am. Don't do it, Blackie, please. Hiding behind your girlfriend, are you? Well, that's what I thought. They call you Boston Blackie, but you're a little yellow. Excuse me, Mary. Blackie. What were you saying, Gardner? I was saying I'm going to knock your teeth in. 
right now. Yeah. My chief is still there. I wonder if your chin will be in a second. <laughs> Get up, Gardner. Get up and get out of here. All right, Blackie. Only I won't forget this. And believe me, I'll see to it that you never do either. Hello. Oh, hello, Blackie. This is Faraday. Oh, hello, Inspector. I, I don't just... want to hear what you say. I want you to hear what I say. Okay, say away. What's the idea of clipping John Gardner, Blackie? The best idea I've had in months. Oh, it was a good idea, was it? Well, this is not in my department, but I got wind of it. So I'm just giving you a little tip. You just slugged your way into a good case of assault. You don't say. Gardner just filed a complaint against you. Well, that's not the only complaint he has against me, but this is the first one he's ever had nerve enough to file. I don't know anything about that. I just want to tell you, a sergeant from the 18th Precinct is coming up to arrest you. I don't want you to pull any tricks. All right, Faraday. I'll promise to be a good boy. Good to myself. I'm leaving here right now. Blackie, if Gardner makes that complaint stick, you're going to be in a jam. Why did you clip him? I had a reason, Faraday. You see, he had a chin I love to touch. And now back to Boston Blackie. Ed Jeffers runs a well-ordered business in a strictly business-like manner. But what his company sells is murder. Police in Boston Blackie are sure of Jeffers' activities, but cannot prove murder against him because they have no evidence. And the bodies of six men his firm has allegedly killed cannot be found. Unable to make headway with a baffling case, Blackie apparently drops the matter to settle a personal difference with wealthy John Gardner. As we return to our story, Gardner is at home. Yes? Uh, Mr. Gardner, there's a gentleman to see you. Tell him I see people by appointment only, Jameson. I told him that, sir, but he says the matter is urgent. Now, tell this man... Well, all right, all right, Jameson. I'll see him. Very good, sir. Uh, Mr. Wilson, Mr. Gardner will see you in the library. <laughs> thanks, thanks a lot. Come in, sir. That'll be all, Jameson. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? <laughs> I think there's something I can do for you, Mr. Gardner. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Wilson. I represent the Jeffers Importers. I'm not interested in... Ah, but you'll be very interested in our services, Mr. Gardner. We, uh, we do specialized work, and I can assure you that we're the best and most thorough in the business. The best and most thorough at what? Uh, Mr. Gardner, we read in the papers last evening that you brought an assault charge against Boston Blackie. Yes, that's true, I did, but that uh, has nothing to do Mr. with... Mr. Gardner, it. if you won't take offense... Uh, during the past 12 hours, my company has taken the liberty of investigating your background, your character, and your financial status, and your, uh, well, uh, acceptability as a client. What in the world are you talking about? Your acceptability as a client, Mr. Gardner. This isn't the first time you've had trouble with Boston Blackie, and it probably won't be the last. But buy what we have to offer, and we'll settle everything for you. What, uh, what do you have in mind? <laughs> Murder, Mr. Gardner. Murder. You, uh, you'll, uh, kill Boston Blackie? Well, for a price, and I don't hesitate to say it'll quite naturally be a considerable sum. Yes, naturally. Of course, you're interested, Mr. Gardner. Well, I don't know. How can I be sure I, I won't be involved? Oh, you won't be. You see, our method is flawless. First, we investigate our prospective clients. Our investigation determines whether or not they'll cooperate with us in keeping quiet about what we do for them. Oh, I see. Then we, uh, we kill the person. Our client is not involved in the crime because we kill his enemy at a time our client is a perfect alibi. You're very thorough. Mm, very. The killer, one of our employees, can't be charged with a crime because the police can never prove a connection between the killer and his victim. <laughs> Besides, the victim's body disappears. Do you uh, see how perfect our method is? Yes, quite clearly. Well, uh, what do you say, Mr. Gardner? Mr. Wilson, you have a client. I got Gardner, Mr. Jeffers. Here's the money. He paid the entire amount in advance. You're a good salesman, Mr. Wilson. Well, Weatherby, we have another account for you to service. What do I call kill this time? Boston Blackie. Blackie, huh? Well, I hope we got a good price. Make the job as good as the price and we'll all be satisfied. Well, it'll be just as good as all the others. Maybe better. 
Where does Blackie live? At 6 Sunset Park, apartment 9A. Sam here will give you all the data you need on Blackie, the layout of his apartment, his habits, and so on, the usual material. Within 24 hours, the terms of our contract with Mr. Gardner must be and will be fulfilled. Hello? Hello, Mary. This is Blackie. Hello, Blackie. Where are you? In my apartment. Oh. Well, I told you your fight with Mr. Gardner would make the papers. Aren't you sorry you hit him now? I'm just sorry I didn't hit him harder. Blackie, what's the matter with you? Nothing. I just don't like guys who... Uh Uh-oh. Hey, what's the matter? Nothing. Nothing at all. (laughs) Blackie! 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 I'll get you another way, Blackie. Not with your gun. It stays on the floor where I just knocked it. Oh, no, it doesn't. Oh, then you go on the floor with it. Yeah, you fucking... Well, you want to get up for more? No, thanks. Then I'll help you. There. Who are you? None of your business. You came up behind me with a gun in your hand. I suppose that was none of my business either. You're one of Ed Jeffers' men, aren't you? I'm not saying. Well, I am. To tell you the truth, I thought someone like you might come calling. That's why I sat so I could look in the mirror and see what was behind me. You sound like you were expecting me. I was expecting someone. What's your name? You mean to say there's something the great Boston Blackie doesn't know? How would you like the great Boston Blackie to go to work on you to find out what your name is? It's Weatherby. That answers my first question. My next is, who sent you here? This was my own idea. Oh, it's going to be like that, huh? You wouldn't happen to know a man named Jeffers. Who? You're being awfully stupid, Weatherby. But then you were pretty stupid to think that you could keep getting away with what you and your boss were doing. Let's go down to police headquarters. Maybe Faraday can think of a way to improve your memory. Inspector, I've got to see you. Uh, Apparently. From the way you just crashed into my office, Miss Wesley. Look, Inspector, a little while ago I was talking on the phone to Blackie when suddenly something happened. I know what it was. He got tired of talking to you. No, 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 Inspector. He stopped so abruptly. I know something happened to him. I tried to get you on the phone, but you weren't in. I just got here. Well, Miss Wesley, either Blackie hung up or someone hung one on him. Now, I got no time. Oh, now, look. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hello. Hello, Barney. This is Blackie. Oh, fine. I've got Miss Wesley here. She's scared stiff. Oh, what goes on? Plenty. Tell Mary I'm all right. I tried to call her back, but the line was busy. Well, I'm busy, too. What is this, the telephone exchange? No, but I'm doing a little exchanging. I'm exchanging a theory of mine for the murder syndicate you're trying to grab. And I'll be down to headquarters with the syndicate's production manager in half an hour. Here he is, Barney. His name is Weatherby, and he's one of the syndicate's killers. How many men have you killed for Jeffers, Weatherby? Two, three, four? Uh, I'll handle them, Blackie. Sure, when I'm through. Weatherby, you were hired by Gardner to get me, weren't you? Come on, talk. Talking bores me. Weatherby, I'm going to give you two... It's no use, Faraday. We're going to have to find a way to make him talk. I know a way. Only regulations won't let me use it. How did you grab him, Blackie? He sneaked up on me while I was on the telephone in my apartment. That is, he thought he was sneaking up on me. Mm, But you just happened to see him in the mirror, huh? I was looking in the mirror, just waiting for him. And the minute he got close enough, I clipped him with the telephone. Great, so we got him. So what do we have? Nothing. You're not very complimentary, Inspector. Come on, this other room a minute, Faraday. I have one more idea. Well, if it works as well as your others, I hope it's your last idea for 20 years. Things are really working out better than you think. You almost get yourself killed and you say things are working out? Yes, Faraday. I'll tell you a little secret. Go ahead. I'm sure Jeffers plans to try to kill me. And I plan to stop him. The plan of one of us is going to work. Mr. Jeffers, I want to talk to you. Oh, sit down, Mr. Gardner, sit down. I know exactly what you want to talk to me about, too. Yes, you should. I know Boston Blackie is still alive. I know... And I know I paid you to kill Boston for me. But your man didn't kill him. Do you want your money refunded? I'd rather have Boston Blackie dead. In that case, I promise you, you are a satisfied customer. Give us another 24 hours and we'll fulfill the terms of our contract. Phone Blackie and have him up to your house for a reconciliation. Have him there at 10 o'clock tonight. All right. Make sure the servants are out. I'll ring the bell at 10. You'll open the door for me and then join some friends next door so you'll have an alibi. 
All right, Mr. Jeffers. Very good. I'll see you at 10, Mr. Gardner, because this job I'm going to do myself. Well, you're right on time, Mr. Jeffers, and you are doing this job yourself. I promised I would, Mr. Gardner. Is uh, Blackie here? Yes, in the library. Alone? I told you we'd be alone here. <laughs> Who's that? Blackie, in the library. I thought you said he was alone. He is. Oh, why is he laughing? We're going over some old cartoons. He must be leafing through the rest of them. You see, we patched up our differences. Uh, he thinks. He has no idea whom I came to the door to meet. Fine. Now, where is he sitting in there? In what position? Well, if he's just as I left him, he has his back to the door, sitting in a low back chair. You can open the door and get a clear shot at him. You're being a great help, Gardner. I really shouldn't charge you the full fee for this. <laughs> All right, never mind. Get the job done. It's as good as done right now. Oh, you're leaving? Yes. I want to be sure I'm next door when the shots are heard. You will be. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> Don't move, Blackie. Oh, hello, Jeffers. You want to see these cartoons? They're wonderful. I'll have to take your word for it. But you won't have to take my word for the fact that you'll be dead in 30 seconds. Take my gun's word for that. You're going to kill me, are you? That's what he thinks. <laughs> drop that gun, Jeffers. Faraday. I said drop the gun. <laughs> oh, my hand. You're not hurt, friend. Guns in guys' hands make me nervous. Oh, about fists. <laughs> you want to play, do you? <laughs> Keep away from here, Blackie. This is my fun. Okay. Go ahead. Enjoy yourself, Faraday. <laughs> Hey, hey, you handled your hands pretty well, boy. Nice going. Thanks. Well, we've got enough on this guy now to hang him. Providing we can get Gardner to talk, where is he? Yeah, he's supposed to be right outside the door. Oh, Gardner. Right here, Blackie. Well, apparently our plan worked. That's the president of the medicine he could lying around on the floor. Yeah, and we've got enough on him to hang him now. Thanks for your help, Gardner. Oh, that's perfectly all right. But the next time you and I stage a fist fight like we did in the restaurant, take it easy, will you, Blackie? <laughs> My jaw still hurts. Oh, well, I had to make that punch good. I had to hit you hard enough to knock out a gang of killers. Some night. Some rain, eh, Jack? Yeah, it is, Tom. What kind of a night to be hauling $100,000 in cash to the countryside? All you gotta do is protect the dough. I gotta drive this truck. And I ain't sure if we're in the country or the city. This rain's so thick I can't see ten feet in front of me. It is a heavy rain, all right. Yeah, it's some black night, too. If it wasn't for that white line in the middle of the road, I'd have to pull up and wait for the rain to quit. Oh, I guess there's no danger of running off the road as long as you can see that line, Tom. No, but it's the only thing keeping us on the road. Well, let's step on it, huh? We'll get where we're going fast. Uh-uh, enough. Jack. Nothing doing. The road's too slick. There's no telling who will meet around the next bend. There's nobody on this road on a night like this, Tom. Anyhow, this isn't the main highway. It's just the truck route. Truck route, yeah. If I was hauling anything but a load of cash, I wouldn't have to drive on a night like this. I'd be able to... Uh-oh. Turn up ahead. Boy, I'd have sure kept going straight if it wasn't for that white line. Boy, will I be glad when I get this... Tom, look out! We're off the road! You're heading for those big trees! Jump, Jack! Jump! 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 (laughs) What a plan, Harry. What a plan. That armor truck cracked up just the way I said it would. Yeah, Bob. Split wide open. Now all we gotta do is climb in and haul out that hundred grand. Ah, uh, sure thing. But first go around to the cab of the truck and see how the driver is. And if the crash didn't kill him, see that you do. <laughs> 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 